Hi guys. I would like to invite you to the audiobook service where we upload more than 300 hours of different audiobooks a week, link in details in the video description. Chapter 1 On the fifth day of March, when the day starts getting warmer and insects stop hibernating, it rained heavily. Lu Hung, who was lying on the eaves of the mountain god temple, looked out over the mountains and forests in the rain. He took a deep breath and tilted his head before letting out a long howl. Ow! The loud wolf howl echoed continuously, far into the mountain forest. Lu Heng sat in the rainstorm and let the rain wet his fur. He closed his eyes and began to absorb the energy of the early spring when everything is being filled with vitality. This may be a peaceful and calm scene, but if someone were to bump into it, they would definitely be scared on the spot and run away screaming. Because the one sitting knee deep on the roof of the mountain temple in the rainstorm was not a human, but a white wolf with a silver body. Although this wolf seems to be awe-inspiring, and quite extraordinary, it was still a fierce beast. And it was enough to make people who saw this scene turn around and run away in fear, thinking they had seen a demon. This is what Lu Heng looks like now, a huge white wolf. Crossed into this strange world for three days already, Lu Heng gradually received the memories belonging to the white wolf. In the wolf demon's vague and fragmented memory, it was originally an elite monster practicing in this cold feather mountain. And after inadvertently saving the life of a man decades ago, they built a temple and worshipped it. With the incense offerings, the white wolf became the mountain god of this cold feather mountain, lying under the altar of the god to practice. But the cultivation of spirits and mountain demons is not easy, and this cold feather mountain is not famous amongst the mountains and rivers. Also the town at the foot of the mountain is remote and barren, so little incense was offered to the temple of the mountain god. Even though the white wolf has shown its fierce face several times and forced the mortals in the village to offer incense to it, the incense offerings are still scarce and the cultivation process is always slow. In such a slow practice, the increasingly restless white wolf eventually went astray, attracting heavenly thunder to the head and the white wolf was roasted alive. However, after the white wolf was killed, Lu Heng came through and came back to life in the corpse of the white wolf. During these three days, Lu Heng did not travel too far from the mountain god temple. Because after the white wolf's soul was struck by heavenly lightning, its body also suffered heavy damage. In these three days, Lu Heng has been lying in the mountain god temple, using the few incense wishes within the temple to repair his body, until today he barely regained the ability to move. Coinciding with the day of the waking of insects, also the birth of all things, this day is a great time to cultivate in the memory of the white wolf. Lu Heng then sat on the roof of the mountain god temple to absorb the vital energy that drifted during the days, according to the memory of the white wolf. Although he was a little depressed about the fact that he had crossed over to a different world and had become a demon. Unfortunately this kind of thing is not something he can resist. There was a good saying, if you can't resist, then enjoy it. At the very least, this demon's body has the advantage of living long enough, although with various inconveniences. The white wolf in the mountain has cultivated for hundreds of years, so it was a standard long-lived species. To Lu Heng who died because of cancer in his early twenties, such a long life is a good thing that he could not have gained previously. If I practice well, sooner or later I will be able to transform into a human form, and may even ascend to heaven. With a bright future in mind, Lu Heng sat on the roof of the mountain god temple and practiced, ignoring such high-profile behavior that is so eye-catching. Anyway, this mountain temple is too remote, and with the white wolf's fierce reputation, there was no one whom dared to approach in the past. However, Lu Heng heard noises approaching him in the rainstorm while he in a trance. It seemed that a crowd of people were heading towards the mountain temple. He opened his eyes and looked in the direction where the sound was coming from. Under the gloomy sky, the torrential rain washed everything away in the dense forest. As Lu Heng broke away from his state of cultivation, his keen sense of hearing allowed him to hear more clearly the voices of the mortals who were heading this way. There were many of them. The crying of women, men complaining, and the elderly sighing the sounds broke the peace of the forest and made Lu Heng a bit curious. With such heavy rain, why is this group of villagers braving the rain into the mountains? Some people were blowing gongs and drums, is there a girl's wedding passing through here? Lu Heng thought so, leaping from the roof of the temple, 
and disappeared into the mountain god temple so as not to scare the group of mortals with his fierce appearance. Soon after Lu Hung disappeared, the group of mortals finally approached the range of the mountain god temple. But after approaching the mountain god temple, the sound of blowing gongs and beating drums stopped. The elderly village chief is walking in the front of the procession, followed by a group of villagers draped in red. They looked quite festive. In the middle of the procession, there was a young girl sitting on the rattan wood palanquin, with four of the same red decorated bearers carrying it. The girl was very small, about ten years old. Now she was wearing red wedding clothes, huddled in the rattan wood sedan, with fearful eyes. Her mouth was gagged with cloth, so that she could not even cry out, only able to emit a small sob. By the girl's side, in addition to an old woman who gave her an umbrella to prevent her from getting soaked, she was not accompanied by any relatives. There was only all those nervous-looking young and strong men dressed in red. Such a wedding procession came to a halt, before they entered the mountain god temple. What appeared in front of the villagers was the mountain god temple located in the middle of the woods. The temple was not tall, and had no outer wall, it did not look dilapidated for the villagers repaired it every year. But even so, it could not dispel the temple's eerie and horrifying atmosphere. And associating it with the ferocious bloodlust of the occupying demon a few youths with slightly weaker guts started to panic. Among them, the only one that could probably remain calm is the old village chief. Move fast. Do not annoy the Lord Mountain God. After the old village chief's serious whispered command, the four bearers hurriedly carried the vine palanquin hung with a big red wedding cloth into the open door of the mountain god temple. There was little light inside the temple. Facing the door on the altar, the clay statue of the deity was not a human deity, but a wolf, a fearsome-looking wolf. The rainstorm outside the house increased, and the rumbling of thunder cut through the sky. From time to time the miserable white light shone on the altar, seemingly more on the clay sculpture of the wolf, that was fierce and hideous to behold. The group of bearers simply did not dare to stay any longer, so they put down the vine sedan and then ran directly outside, leaving the vine sedan and the girl together in the mountain god's temple. Outside the temple door, the villagers had quickly completed the process of killing the chickens and slaughtering the sheep. Fishy red blood gushed in the mud in front of the temple, staining the muddy water. After the old village chief and his party recited the words to the direction of the mountain god temple, they did not dare to stay any longer after seeing the sedan chair was put down. This mountain god was unpredictable, nobody knew what would happen if you lingered. Anyway, the virgin girl had been sacrificed, and they also sacrificed the chicken and goat, the villagers no longer dared to nor wanted to stay any longer. They dragged the body of the goat that was slashed through the throat. Carrying the corpse of the rooster that was still convulsing and quickly left the vicinity of the mountain temple, soon disappearing into the surrounding mountains and forests. With the departure of the villagers, the small temple in the mountains once again fell into an eerie dead silence, only the rainstorm outside the house was still ongoing. In the temple, the girl on the rattan chair looked at the gloomy mountain temple in front of her in fear, with her body shivering. She tried to escape, but her hands and feet were tied to the rattan chair, she simply could not break free. A cold wind blew, the girl fiercely shivered, feeling that something in the darkness seemed to be watching her. That kind of eerie sight made her scalp tingle and a chill went down her spine, and her limbs stiffened from fear. Woo! A desperate whimper emanated from the girl's throat. She shook her head desperately, struggling desperately to escape, but could only shake the rattan sedan, making it creak. Instead, this creaking sound seems to have alarmed the temple, even if the rain is pouring outside and thunder roaring, the girl on the rattan chair clearly heard the low breathing sound coming from behind the clay statue. That low breathing seemed so heavy that it could not have come from human beings. The girl's little face was completely pale. She looked at the clay statue of the white wolf on the altar in despair and couldn't stop the tears from flowing out. Wu father mother who will save Xiao Ai, who will save Xiao Ai. The girl kept crying out in her mind, yet her mouth strangled by the gag could only whimper. That frightened and desperate whimpering in this deserted mountain looked so pitiful and helpless, but it was simply impossible for someone to save her. And the low breathing behind the divine altar began to move. A terrifying black shadow slowly peeked out from behind the idol. Inside the gloomy mountain temple, 
the girl vaguely saw the shadow's claws, and the fierce and overwhelmingly huge fangs. Woo! The girl struggled harder, tears of desperation having wet her chest and wetting clothes. What kind of monster was lying behind the altar? It looked like a wolf, but its head was bigger than that of the biggest bull in the village. Those eyes that reflected an eerie light in the dark, like ghost lights floating in the dead of night, gazed straight at her. The girl's body twitched in terror, and urine spilled out from her red wedding dress. However, the giant wolf behind the statue did not seem to have any compassion as it came out from behind the altar. Although it was in a normal standing position with all of its four limbs on the ground, the height to the ground from the bottom of its head was already more than two meters. Such a huge beast. It probably would swallow me in one bite. When looking at the monster's entire body, a surprisingly weird thought emerged in the girl's heart. Boom. Outside the house, there came a booming sound of thunder from the sky. The giant white wolf was standing inside the temple, and the lightning reflected the entirety of his body. At this time, he just lowered his head, watching the girl on the vine palanquin, her big red wedding dress and those terrified, quivering eyes. Then he tilted his head again and looked in the direction of the villagers. He was a little confused. What is going on here? Chapter, 2 Lu Hung was a little confused. He did not react to the sudden appearance and the departure of that group of villagers. Originally, he heard the sound of gongs and drums in the forest, he initially thought it was someone's daughter who got married in a stormy day, so the bridal party came to Mountain God Temple to avoid the rain. Lu Heng then disappeared behind the altar and used the power of the mountain god to dive underground so as not to disturb this group of mortals, intending to wait for the mortals to leave before coming out to practice. However, after listening underground for a while, he found that the group of villagers arrived and left quickly. They didn't stay long at all before running away, and left someone behind in the mountain god temple. Out of caution and curiosity, Lu Heng emerged from the underground to take a look, only to find a little girl left inside the temple. She wore an oversized crimson wedding dress, with her hands and feet tied to the palanquin. She desperately struggled but could not break free, and her mouth was strangled tight by cloth, so she could only make pitiful whimpering sounds. What on earth was this? Human trafficking. Or what? Lu Heng was surprised to see a little girl who had a pale, frightened face in front of him, and decided to calm the little girl first. He knew his demonic body looked scary, and would frighten the little girl if he didn't speak and pretended to be mysterious. With a harumph, Lu Heng said in a deep voice. Little girl, you do not need to be afraid, I will not eat you. Lu Heng's voice was low and husky, with a faint echo that could be described as a very cool voice, similar to an evil villain in a movie. And this handsome voice now really played a role. The little girl who heard the wolf speak twitched and passed out, and the temple became silent. Outside the temple, the rain was still falling. And inside the temple, Lu Hun was slightly embarrassed. Why is this little girl so timid? Lowering his head, he got close enough to look at the little girl. Well, it seems she had been scared into unconsciousness. Stretching out his front paws, Lu Hun used his sharp nails to cut loose the rope tied to the girl's body, as well as the cloth in her mouth, helping the little girl to regain her freedom. However, at this time, the little girl could not escape. She lay limp on her back on the Rotten sedan, with her limbs rigid and face frightened and eyes tightly closed. If not for her heartbeats, Lu Hun would have thought that this little girl was scared to death by him. Hey! What kind of situation was this? In his previous life, he was not exactly a handsome man, but he was not so ugly as to scare children into tears. In this life, he scared a little girl to passing out and becoming unconscious, as if he was a demon who committed all sorts of heinous crimes. Wait. Demon. Lu Heng stood by the vine palanquin, pacing and contemplating, once again flipping through the giant wolf's vague and fragmented memories. The wolf demon's soul completely disappeared after being heavily struck by the heavenly thunder, and Lu Heng only inherited some of its memory fragments when he crossed over. So he could only speculate about most of the wolf demon's life based on its fragmented memories. But he could not know every single thing about it. But now after carefully going through these memory fragments, he did find some useful information. 
It seemed that not long ago, the wolf demon informed the villagers at the bottom of the mountain to offer something to sacrifice. This sacrifice was related to the wolf demon's cultivation, although Lu Hang could not recall what the specific sacrifice requirements are, but it should not be any righteous cultivation method. Then he looked at the girl who was unconscious in front of him, and then thought of the villagers' weird behavior, Lu Hang immediately linked it with a legend, sacrificing a virgin girl to a demon. Damn! This wolf demon had been a mountain god here for eighty years, and it asked the villagers to offer it virgin girls because of its stagnant cultivation. This practice route was something a real demon would do. A mountain god for decades, and this was the result. No wonder it was severely affected by the heavenly thunder, it really deserved to die. In the mountain god temple, Lu Heng figured out everything, then once again looked down at the little girl in front of him. She wore a slightly wide wedding dress, and even in a coma she was also curled up. She was very insecure. What should he do to avoid scaring her into fainting again? Lu Heng thought about it, and directly jumped on the altar and went inside the clay statue of the god. Then he blew a breeze. After the breeze fell on the girl's face, her expression gradually softened as her eyes were tightly closed and her brow furrowed. And after a while, the girl slowly opened her eyes, slightly dazed after seeing the mountain god temple in front of her, and she suddenly remembered the horrible sight she saw before she fell unconscious. Help! The moment the girl opened her mouth in horror, she suddenly found herself able to speak. She hurriedly lowered her head, only to find that the ropes on her body had been untied and she was no longer tied up. And in this empty mountain god temple, although it still looked eerie and gloomy, the huge white wolf could not be seen. Inside the empty and cold mountain god temple, there was only one living person, the girl. She shrank nervously, looking around all this with trepidation and unease, wondering what was happening. Could the white wolf she saw before passing out an illusion? Why else hadn't she been eaten? And who untied the rope on her body? The girl scrambled to the door and looked out. Rain was still pouring outside the house, one can simply not travel on such a stormy day, and then she could not see any good people outside. She could only turn back again, looking nervously at the clay statue of the white wolf on the altar of the gods and shrinking her neck. Did. Did the Lord Mountain God help her untie the rope? With terrified and uneasy thoughts, the girl carefully surveyed the white wolf clay statue on the divine altar, feeling this white wolf clay statue somehow was not quite the same. It obviously looked the same as before, an ordinary clay sculpture. There was no change. But she vaguely felt this clay sculpture seemed to come to life, and the eyes of the clay sculpture was looking at her. Little girl carefully called out, Lord Mountain God. This low call sounded like weak mosquitoes, and a little farther away simply could not be heard. But the clay sculpture on the altar of the god suddenly moved, and the clay sculpture of the white wolf let out a low laugh. Surprisingly, you took the initiative to call out to me. Are you not afraid of me anymore? The moment the clay idol opened its mouth, the girl was scared and took several steps back, and her expression became frightened once again. But perhaps the clay statue did not look as scary as the giant wolf before, or perhaps the mountain god's low laughter did not sound menacing, so the girl did not faint from fear this time. Although still scared to death, the girl immediately knelt down and kowtowed desperately. Lord Mountain God! Please don't eat me! Please don't eat me! She desperately begged for mercy, and she could not think of any more begging words, only repeating such a phrase. The clay statue of the god on the altar once again made a sound. Okay, okay, don't kneel, I won't eat you. I am a mountain god, not a demon, how can I eat people? The clay statue of the god spoke such words, leaving the little girl was somewhat confused. She thought, Lord Mountain God does not eat people. Then why does the village offer the Lord Mountain God a virgin girl? The girl's face was bewildered. But Lu Hang was not going to explain. Although he crossed into the body of a demon, but he had a human soul, how could he do such things as eating people? Seeing that the little girl's emotions had finally calmed down, Lu Hang jumped out of the clay statue of the god. The moment that huge white wolf appeared within the mountain god temple, the girl was scared and trembled again, the impact of this huge size of demonic beast on mortals was too much. But this time the little girl was not stunned, 
although scared and shaking all over, she forced herself to kneel there, because she was afraid that she had annoyed the mountain god in front of her. Outside the house, the rainstorm gradually stopped. Lu Heng looked down at the little girl and asked, What is your name? Little. Xiao Ai, Ai of Mugwort. Xiao Ai. I know, Lu Heng nodded, spat out a wooden sign from his mouth and said, You can go back, go back and tell the people in the village that I no longer need you to sacrifice me young boys and girls. This wooden medal is my mountain god's order, which can take you out of Cold Feather Mountain and back to the village. If you follow the mountain trail with this wooden medal, the beasts of Cold Feather Mountain wouldn't dare to hurt you. You can go back now, if you delay too long it will get dark. Lu Heng looked at the sky outside the house, although the rainstorm has stopped, the mountain road was still muddy. The little girl would take a long time to go back alone. If she delayed too long, the mountain road after dark was not good. Of course, this time the fastest way was actually for Lu Heng to personally send the girl back. With the power of the mountain god, he could shrink in this cold feather mountain, or even directly disappear. It would not take long to get out of the deep mountains. But Lu Heng now still had a strong residual force of heavenly thunder in his body, so he was still in a state of serious injury. Without the dissolution of the thunder force in his body, he simply could not leave the mountain god temple, and he needs to rely on the accumulated wish power of the temple incense to suppress the heavenly thunder in his body. Anyway, with his mountain god order, this little girl can also get out of Cold Feather Mountain alone. Just a little tired on the way, the mountain god order was enough to protect her. With the mountain god order to send the girl away, Lu Heng once again disappeared into the ground and continued to practice, trying to dissolve the thunder force in his body as soon as possible, to restore the ability to move freely. It was a good time to spend all day in the ground practicing. Chapter 3 Xiao Ai felt a slight cold touch after receiving the small palm-sized wooden medal. This wooden medal was wrapped with a silver silk thread that could be hung around her neck. She gently pulled it, and found that this silver silk thread was too tough to tear. Raising her head, the girl looked at the giant white wolf in front of her, and once again heard the low voice of Lord Mountain God. Well, go now, go back to your family. Although this voice was still low and serious, and there seemed to be a faint echo in it, the girl was not so afraid anymore. She knelt down with understanding and cowed out hard. Thank you, Lord Mountain God. The rainstorm outside the house had stopped by now, but the roads in the mountains were still muddy and difficult to navigate. The girl wearing small red embroidered shoes did not go far, embroidered shoes had become muddy and wet, and even the skirt of the big red wedding dress was dirty. But she was happy. She thought she was going to die or be eaten by the mountain god, but instead of eating her, he let her go home, and this was a happy ending she could never have imagined. After walking some distance away, the girl turned back to look in the direction of the mountain god temple. In the gloomy light of day, the mountain god temple surrounded by dense forest was slightly eerie. And the white wolf inside the temple had also disappeared. If she hadn't seen it with her own eyes, she simply wouldn't have imagined that there would be such a big wolf in this mountain. Is this the mountain god that everyone fears? It did not seem to be the same as what the village elders say. The girl was a little confused. Growing up in Shueisheng village, since she was young, the legends she heard about the mountain god were all rumors that the mountain god was very powerful, scary, and would even eat people. But after meeting the real lord mountain god in person, she found that although he was indeed very majestic and intimidating looking, he was not at all cruel and horrible as rumored. And even a little. Friendly. The girl hurriedly shook her head to shake this thought out of her mind. How could Lord Mountain God be described as friendly? She should be in awe of such a majestic and powerful Mountain God. Thinking about this, the girl gripped the wooden medal in her hand again. The small wooden sign was made of some kind of mysterious material and was cold to the touch, making her feel very light and refreshed when she held it. Even though she should have been very tired after walking so far up the muddy mountain road. But now she did not feel tired, still feeling light on her feet. And holding this wooden sign, her mind surprisingly knew which direction to go to return to the village, obviously she had never been to Mountain God Temple before and had no idea of the mountain path. In the sky, the light gradually became gloomy and dull. 
It was not a sign that heavy rain was coming, but that it would be late and dark. Perceiving the change in the sky, the girl was a little anxious. If she couldn't get out of the mountains before dark, she wouldn't be able to walk in the dark without a lantern or torch when it got dark. Although Cold Feather Mountain was not a famous mountain, there were some cliffs. She was unfamiliar with the path. If she was walking in the dark, she would be dead if she accidentally fell off the cliff. The sign given by the Lord of the Mountain could only protect her from being eaten by the beasts, but it did not mean that she would not fall to her death. The girl walked more briskly at the thought. Her skirt was already full of dried mud, which solidified on the skirt and made it heavy. And after walking inside the mountain for so long, she gradually began to get hungry. Growl. Her stomach rumbled, incomparably harsh in the cold mountain forest. The hungry girl walked for a long time on the muddy mountain path, and eventually couldn't hold out any longer and sat down on a rock to rest. In the gradually dimming mountain, the girl covered her hungry and cramped stomach, and her eyes filled with tears. I am so hungry. So hungry. She could not walk anymore. Although she wouldn't get tired from walking with the mountain god sign in her hands, she still felt hungry and weak on her feet. The girl sitting on the rocks covered her stomach, teary-eyed haze looking at the increasingly dark sky, murmuring, so hungry. She did not know how long she had to walk, but she really could not walk anymore. If only there was something to eat now, the girl thought in her mind. But since she grew up in the mountain village, she also understood that during this time of the year there weren't any ripe fruits and vegetables that she could find and eat in this mountain. She had thought so. But something suddenly fell on her head, hitting her head and causing some pain. The girl picked it up and froze. Walnuts? Why were walnuts here? She tilted her head, and found a dozen monkeys squatting in the trees above her head. These monkeys appeared at some point, all standing on the branches, looking down at her, as if they were watching something funny. After the girl looking up, the monkeys threw out a dozen walnuts one after another, all still at the girl's feet. Seeing these monkeys' actions, the girl was a little confused. You guys. Are you giving walnuts to me to eat? She once heard the old people said that the monkeys in the mountains would collect dried fruits like walnuts in the summer and autumn to hide them for the winter. But these monkeys offered to give her food? Were monkeys so kind? The girl was confused, because these monkeys in the past days perched in the cold feather mountain. Once the crops in the fields became ripe, they would come down in groups to steal fruits and vegetables, so the villagers hate them. But now these thieving bandit-like monkeys were offering to feed her. Did Lord Mountain God send you here? The girl asked cautiously. But the monkeys left after throwing down some more walnuts and simply ignored her. Watching the monkeys disappear into the woods, the girl couldn't help but sigh. Yeah, these monkeys could not even talk, so how could they possibly answer her questions? But they suddenly came to deliver something to her to eat, must be sent by the Lord Mountain God. Otherwise, how could these monkeys be so kind? The girl knelt down in the direction of the Mountain God Temple and cowed out heavily before squatting down and picking up the walnuts on the ground, cracking them open one by one with a stone and eating the pulp inside. Although the pulp in these walnuts was not much, after eating more than twenty walnuts in one breath, the girl's hunger finally eased to some degree. At this time, the sky had become grey, the light of day almost gone. The mountain was so bleak that it was almost impossible to see the road in the distance. With her hunger relieved, the girl finally had the strength to continue walking. She walked in the dark for a short time, and the vision of the mountain road gradually became familiar with her memory. The girl was a little excited, because she knew she was almost home. She held the small wooden sign in her hand and quickened her pace, finally getting out of this strange mountain. Dark clouds obscured the stars and the moon in the dark night sky, with occasional blazing white flashes of lightning breaking through and rumbles of thunder ringing through the heavens, as if another rainstorm was about to fall. But the girl walking on the familiar mountain path was no longer afraid. Even though she was walking in the dark at night, she has not deviated from the right direction. Finally, after walking for an unknown amount of time under such a dark night sky, she heard the crashing sound of the river flowing. It's home. The girl excitedly held the wooden sign and ran quickly in the direction of the river. 
Just step over this bridge and cross the river, it won't take long to get back to the village. The girl was excited. Even though due to the darkness she could not see the outline of Shueishin village, her mood was still very good. Soon, the girl found the stone bridge leading across the river and saw the lights of Shueishin village in the distance in the darkness. Behind the girl in the mountain, monkeys who had followed her all the way to the village, at this time also turned around, and entered the densely forested Cold Feather Mountain, no longer following. Half an hour later, Lu Heng received the news that the girl returned safely to the village. And it was the group of monkeys who had been sent by Lu Heng to escort the girl who sent back this message. Chapter, 4 As the only mountain god and also the most powerful being in Cold Feather Mountain, Lu Heng can order other beasts in the mountain to do some simple things. Like escorting this girl named Xiao Ai back to her village. Although he can't leave the mountain god temple now, he can ask this group of monkeys to do something. Lu Heng was also not a member of any extreme animal protection organization, so there was no psychological burden for such things. After receiving the simple information passed back by the monkeys, Lu Heng dispersed the group of monkeys in front of the mountain god temple and let them go back. Knowing that Xiao Ai was safely back in the village, Lu Heng returned to the ground and started cultivating with a peace of mind. Or rather, repairing this seriously injured body. Although it did not seem to have any external injuries, Lu Heng's body was actually on the verge of collapse. The thunder power flowed between his limbs and bones, and his demon body could collapse at any moment. But once Lu Heng tried to dispel these thunderbolts in his body, the moment his mind touched the thunderbolts, his eyes would go black and he would feel a strong tingling sensation of pain. It was just like touching high voltage electricity. The only way to dissipate these thunderbolts was to rely on the incense wish power accumulated in this mountain god temple for 80 years. According to the wolf demon's residual memory, Lu Hang could use this incense wish power to slowly repair his demon body. Using it little by little to smooth out the thunder chi in the body, this was the least expensive way to use incense wish power. But Lu Hang didn't want to do that because it would take too long, at the very least several years, to barely remove the power of the heavenly tribulation in his body. He couldn't wait that long, and Lu Hang didn't care about the incense wish power either. One could say he even disliked it. The wolf demon built a temple on this site and received offerings from mortals, which helped his practice and gave him some convenience and authority as a mountain god. But in becoming a mountain god, the wolf demon was bound to this place and could not leave Cold Feather Mountain at all. The wolf demon did not care about this, but Lu Heng did not want to stay in this remote Cold Feather Mountain for the rest of his life. He wanted to go out and see the outside world. He didn't want to be a mountain god in this place. If he could use up this incense wish directly, it might be a good thing for him. Thinking about this, Lu Heng no longer hesitated and directly swallowed the wolf demon's incense wish power that had been accumulated for 80 years into his body. Guiding this power to swim in his limbs and bones, using this warm and soft incense wish power to disperse the power of heavenly thunder in his body. This process was not fast, but it was not slow either. With 80 years of incense wish power raging, Lu Heng clearly felt the body's thunder force gradually dispersed. At the end of the day, only a cloud of condensed and undissipated thunderbolt power remained inside the brain. Without hesitation, Lu Heng directly guided all the remaining incense wish power in his body to the brain, trying to erase this group of condensed and unbroken thunderbolt power in one fell swoop. But just as all the remaining incense wish power surged into his brain together to disperse the condensed thunderbolt, Lu Heng felt his head explode and his whole body jerked and shook several times. The group of thunderbolt power had not disappeared, but spread along Lu Heng's limbs and bones, and instantly spread to his whole body. Hiss. Lu Heng, who was filled with the power of thunder all over his body, sucked in a breath of cold air and felt tingling all over his body. I am going to die, with so much thunderbolt power coming out at once, I am going to die. Lu Heng despaired. But immediately afterwards, he noticed something not quite right. The thunderbolt force that filled his body did not damage his demon body, but slowly integrated into it. Huh. What is this situation? While Lu Heng was bewildered and amazed, a sudden thunderbolt exploded in the sky outside the mountain god temple. 
A blazing white light flashed, illuminating the heaven and earth in a ghastly white. Then, a huge thunderbolt cut through heaven and earth and viciously struck down on the earth in front of the Temple of Mountain God, finally spreading along the mud all the way to the ground and merging into Lu Hang's body. Holy shit! Again. The moment he was struck by lightning, Lu Hang's body twitched again. He simply did not expect that he could be struck by lightning even if he was hiding so deep underground. And this time, he clearly felt the painful sensation of his demon body being struck by lightning. This feeling, however, was different from the feeling of being struck by heavenly lightning in the wolf demon's memory. Although the pain existed, the pain was not strong. And the lightning did not destroy his body, it slowly integrated into his body just like the previous thunderbolt power instead. He moved his thoughts, and even vaguely felt that he could release the lightning from his body. And in a trance, he felt that he could rely on these thunderbolts in his body to connect the thunder in the sky. Realizing this, Lu Hung was a little confused. What is this about? In the wolf demon's memory, demons were clearly the most afraid of lightning. Even if the original wolf demon was successful in his cultivation, he would not dare to go out on a thunderstorm, but would hide underground for fear of being struck by lightning. But now Lu Hang seemed to be able to control thunder and lightning. Was he still a demon then? After a few seconds of hesitation, Lu Hang left the earth and returned above ground. At this time the night sky looked quite terrifying with lightning and thunder, just like silver snakes dancing wildly. And in the forest the wind howled and the mountains rained like a scene before the end of world. Standing in the midst of this raging wind and thunder, Lu Hang frowned and tried to hook up the lightning in the sky according to the kind of intuition that appeared vaguely within him. Then. Boom! A huge thunderbolt exploded, a blazing white lightning bolt lit up the sky and earth and struck the huge white wolf directly in front of the Temple of Mountain God. At that moment, Lu Heng's body trembled and his mind went blank instantly. A huge movement of thunder power surged into his body, almost causing him to burst. It was true that he can now control lightning, but taking two thunderbolts in a row was beyond his tolerance limit. Limbs twitching, Lu Hang fell limply in front of the mountain god temple, and shrunk back into the ground. He was afraid that the sky will send another thunderbolt to split him. This lightning was really not so easy on him. Lu Hang, whose body was tingling and twitching, thought this in his mind happily, although he was struck by lightning. Control thunder and lightning. This is the control of lightning. Although he did not know if it was caused by crossing over, the current Lu Hang was able to absorb lightning and release the lightning in his body. Even though taking two thunderbolts was currently the limit, as long as he continued to improve, he would be able to achieve true control of thunderbolts sooner or later. When the time came to encounter the enemy, he could directly strike out a heavenly lightning bolt. With the fear of thunder among the mountain spirits and demons in this world, as long as Lu Hang was not too reckless, at least he had the capital to live in peace. If he could constantly absorb thunder and lightning, refine his body, and finally reach the level where he could guide 10,000 thunder surges in one breath. Then even if he encountered the legendary demons, Lu Hang could probably also retreat in one piece. Thinking this in his mind, Lu Hang took a long breath. On his fourth day of crossing over into a demon, Lu Hang, as a demon in this bizarre world, had finally gained some sense of security. Chapter, 5 In the night sky, thunder flashed and huge lightning broke through the sky. The girl holding the wooden sign of the mountain god trotted through the freshly planted rice paddy and saw the entrance to the village. Woof! Woof! Before entering the village, the girl had heard the piercing bark of the big black dog at the entrance of the village. This big black dog that used to scare her now sounded friendly. She happily ran into the village and ran towards the house of her eldest uncle. The wind tore at the girl's thin body, but could not stop her happy pace of returning home. Although in the past, the girl had a lot of complaints about her eldest uncle and eldest aunt, they were after all her only family. And at this time, only they could bring her some warmth. Never before was there a moment when the girl was so eager to go home, to the home that did not belong to her. When she arrived at the door, she couldn't help but smile when she heard her cousins shouting inside the house. New clothes. I want new clothes too. I also want new clothes like Sister Xiao Ai. 
In the house, her cousin was complaining loudly, seemingly pestering his parents to buy him new clothes. This familiar yelling was still brash and nonsensical, but it sounded so cute at the moment, not at all like the usual which disgusted her. Immediately after, the house unsurprisingly resounded with the impatient scolding of Aunt. New clothes. You have been screaming all afternoon. Where is the money for you to buy new clothes? I will ground you if you keep shouting. The aunt spoke in a harsh and threatening tone. But obviously, her threat did not work, and her son was still rolling around noisily. I don't care I don't care. I just want new clothes. I just want new clothes. Sister Xiao Ai has new clothes to wear, why I don't get new clothes. I want new clothes. In the house, the chubby little boy squirmed desperately on the floor and cried out. Such a move completely annoyed the peasant woman. The money they secretly gave to the village leader and the money to buy that new set of wedding clothes had used up all of the family's modest savings. Now she was already in a bad mood, and her son was making a lot of noise. Even though she always spoiled him, she could not stand it. Viciously picking up the little boy, the peasant woman directly slapped him and scolded, you keep making trouble. If you make any more noise, I'll send you to the mountain and let the mountain god eat you up. Such a threat immediately had an effect. The little boy's body stiffened and his expression was somewhat frightened. But in the next second, he shouted again in defiance. Liar! You liar! Dad said that after offering Sister Shao Ai to the Lord Mountain God, he will not come and eat me. Sister Shao Ai has gone instead of me. The Mountain God will not eat me. You just don't want to buy me clothes, you're telling lies to cheat me. You buy new clothes for Xiao Ai, but not for me. You guys are biased. You guys are just biased. She's dying and she's wearing such a beautiful new dress. You guys waste money. Woo. The little boy covered his face and cried out in aggravation again. However, the little boy's crying made the girl outside the door freeze. She stood in the darkness outside the door, listening to the noisy crying in the house. Her expression was somewhat dumbfounded. In the story she knew, the mountain god needed child girls, so the village adults drew lots to decide. And finally she was unfortunately chosen and could only wear the new wedding clothes that her uncle and aunt spent money on and go into the mountain. Because she was chosen, her aunt, who had always hated her, took a rare interest in her and made her several delicious meals. The uncle also sighed several times, complaining about his incompetence, saying that he failed to protect his second brother's daughter, and that he felt very guilty. Then the girl suddenly realized that although the eldest uncle's family did not treat her well in daily life, they really did treat her as a family member. After she encountered such a thing, her aunts and uncles, whom she usually disliked the most, treated her the best. That's why after Lord Mountain God let her go back, she was so happy and wanted to run home to share her joy with her aunts and uncles. If her aunts and uncles knew that she survived, they would surely be very happy too, right? Originally, she had thought so. But now she heard something completely different. The girl's expression stiffened a little. She began to think back to those things before. After being chosen, her aunts and uncles began to treat her well and be kind to her. Could it be that all that care, all that love, was all fake? Everything they did turned out to be to trick her into being a scapegoat. The person chosen was not her at all. But the son of the eldest uncle. That's why her aunts and uncles, who had always disliked her, suddenly changed their attitude. The girl became frightened and desperate. After hearing these words, the door in front of her no longer had the slightest sense of cordiality, but was instead terrifying like the door of a ghost gate, at any time there may have a ghost jumping out to grab her. The constant noise and cries inside the door were no longer warm, but became like the howling of evil spirits in hell, which made her body chill and face pathos. Not like this. Not like this. Don't become like this. The girl's hands were clasped tightly to her chest as she kept backing away, shaking her head desperately. She even gave birth to an impulse to run away far away to escape from here. But where can I run? The girl in was despair. Her mother had died of illness, the whereabouts of her father were unknown, and now her only family in the world, 
her only place to stay, was the hut in front of her. But people in this house tricked her to be a scapegoat. Woo! The girl's heart had been filled with sadness. And at that moment, a shaky footstep sounded behind her, and someone was approaching the place. The girl with a dull expression subconsciously turned her head back and saw the person behind her. It was a crippled, drunken man with a shaky figure and a face full of stubble, none other than her own great-uncle, her father's older brother. A cripple. And when the girl turned back, the night sky just crossed a blazing white lightning. And the tragic white light shone on the earth, shining on the girl's face. Her small face with a desperate expression reflected in a tragic white. At that moment, the drunken man behind the girl clearly saw the weird scene. Because he was lame, the man who was called as AI Cripple by the village people stared in horror. Then he let out a heartbreaking, mournful scream. Ghost. A quarter of an hour later, the girl, who had been tied up by the villagers, was escorted to the door of the village chief's house. The night sky was still roaring with the sound of thunder, and the howling wind was blowing everything in the small village. All the young and strong men of the village have gathered here and formed a circle outside the village head's house. The torchlight waving in the gale reflected the expressions of the people in a gloomy and uncertain manner. And the little girl being escorted to kneel in front of the crowd, head bowed, desperate mouth sealed by cloth, even the cry of defensive words cannot be issued. In the front of the house where the most authoritative old man in the village lived. When a big event happened in the village, everyone immediately gathered here, waiting for the village chief's instructions. And before that, Someone had already come to inform the village chief of what had happened in advance. So they didn't have to wait long, and the door of the house opened. Immediately after, the village chief on crutches was supported by his son and walked out. Under the dim glow of the torches, the aged old man walked slowly and eventually came to the girl. The crowd watched nervously as the old village chief lowered his head, looked at the girl in front of him, and frowned. The little girl in front of him was dressed in a big red wedding dress, exactly the same as when she was sent up the mountain. But the skirt was full of mud, and shoes were already completely unable to see the original color. This dirty look showed that she clearly escaped from the mountains. After a few seconds of silence, the village chief then looked up at the villagers in front of him and asked in a hoarse voice, Where did you find her? When village chief opened his mouth to ask, everyone looked at the cripple in the crowd. Being stared at by the crowd, A.I. Crippler hurriedly came out and carefully reported to the village chief, she was found in front of my house, village chief. I thought at the time that she was back to claim a life as a vengeful ghost. I was terrified. The good thing was that we found that she had a shadow and was not a ghost, so we guessed that she had secretly escaped from the mountain, and immediately caught and brought her to you. And after she was caught by you, did she plead for herself? The village chief inquired, but his eyes stayed on the little girl's body. At this time, the little girl's face was pale, and there were bruises on the corners of her forehead. It seemed that the villagers did not have a smooth process of catching her. Noticing the village chief's line of sight, A.I. Crippler hurriedly defended, when we caught her, she struggled desperately and said nonsense that she had not escaped secretly and that the mountain god had let her go. She also used her teeth to bite people, in an emergency, we. Speaking of the latter, A.I. Cripple's voice became smaller and smaller, because the village chief was glaring at him with an incomparably stern look. When A.I. Cripple shut up and did not say anything, the old man then heaved the cane in his hand and stared at him coldly, no more. Keep talking, tell me how you injured the girl who was sacrificed to the Lord Mountain God. The old man's angry questioning made the group of men all dumbfounded, they silently bowed their heads, and did not dare to say a word. Seeing them like this, the old man became even more angry. He slammed his cane in his hand to the ground, he was so angry that his hair stood up straight, a group of pigs. Doing things without thinking at all. Even if you want to catch her, you can't hurt her. Why can't you think of such a simple thing? If you make her scarred, what if the mountain god doesn't like her and wants us to offer someone else? Which one of your children will be sacrificed then? If you are blamed, can you afford it? The village chief cursed angrily, but all of them cowered and obediently listened to the lecture, not daring to contradict. When the old man had almost finished shouting, someone asked carefully, then, village chief, what should we do next? 
Yes, village chief, what should we do? This little bitch escaped from the mountain secretly, the lord will be angry, right? Everyone was worried, afraid of angering the lord mountain god as a result. But the old man shook his head and fed everyone a peace of mind. If Lord Mountain God was really angry, our village would have been in big trouble long ago, so how could you guys be worried? There is no movement until now, perhaps he also did not find out about the little bitch's escape. So let's hurry now and send this little bitch back to the mountain, maybe it's still not too late. This time we'll send someone to keep watch, we absolutely can't let this little bitch run away again. Speaking of this, the village chief gave a hard pause on his cane, looked sternly at the crowd present, and said, let's go into the mountain now. If Lord Mountain God really gets angry, our Shueishing village will be completely doomed. Chapter, 6 In the dark forest, the wind was howling, and the path was rugged. While the villagers were walking on the trail with torches, they were very careful for they feared that they would fall off a cliff and die. This section of the mountain road was very dangerous because the road was narrow and was next to a cliff. Even the hunters who usually went into the mountains from time to time were a bit frightened to walk this road in the dark at this time of night. What's more, tonight's cold feather mountain was spooky everywhere, so that everyone was frowning, with heavy heart. In the night sky above them, thunder and lightning flashed as if silver snakes danced wildly. One after another huge lightning cut through the sky, and each time the earth would be reflected in a tragic white. In the past, if there was such weather, it would have rained heavily. However, tonight was different. The sky was full of lightning and thunder, but no raindrops fell at all. Furthermore, they realized that the farther they went into the mountains, the more intense the lightning and thunder in the sky was. It seemed that there was something calling thunder clouds in the night sky somewhere in Cold Feather Mountain. This horrible speculation surfaced in people's minds and soon turned into a whispered muttering. Tonight's thunder is a little abnormal. Could it be that the mountain god is angry? Will he send thunder to smite us? Who? Wang, what nonsense are you saying? How dare you say such things? That's it. Wang, do you want to die? This thunder and lightning is certainly not the Lord Mountain God's anger, and the Lord Mountain God will certainly forgive us. That's right, we are not wrong. The Lord will definitely forgive us. Blame it on this selfish little bitch who is afraid of death. She was obviously chosen, and she ran out on her own. Is this not a deliberate attempt to harm us? Yes, 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 it's all this little bitch's fault. The villagers were talking, and from time to time they turned around to glare at the girl in the middle of the procession. The girl in the big red wedding dress was tied, and then carried up with a long stick through the knots in the rope on her hands and feet. She was like a pig to be carried to the market for sale, quite miserable. But no one from the villagers expressed sympathy for her, instead they were full of resentment towards her. If not for the fear of Lord Mountain God, the villagers would have vented their anger on this damned little bitch already. And the girl, who was resented by the villagers, had stopped resisting at this time. She looked dumbly at the sky above her head, looking at the huge lightning that appeared from time to time in the night sky. Originally she was very afraid of thunder, but now she found that she was not afraid of these terrible thunder sounds anymore. Clearly she had explained the situation to everyone, and it was Lord Mountain God sending her back, why did the people just not believe her? They even scolded her with those vicious words. It was not that she fled for fear of death, but Lord Mountain God let her go back. And on her way back, the Mountain God also asked the monkeys to send her food, afraid that she was hungry. How could such a good god be the man-eating monster that everyone said? The girl's heart was full of grief and anger, thinking the adults must have been wrong. At first she tried to argue, but it didn't matter. No one would believe what she said. Even if she kept telling everyone that Lord Mountain God did not want sacrifices and did not eat people, no one believed her. Instead, people thought she was lying and even sealed her mouth. Are they the village adults? The girl looked at the night sky with lightning flashes in bewilderment, and her expression was somewhat bewildered. Growing up in the village since childhood, she was familiar with everyone around her. In the past, everyone was amiable, even if occasionally she got into trouble, the adults just shook their heads and generously forgave her. They really were very nice people. 
But today, the girl found that all this has changed. Those adults who always smiled gently and treated her well have all changed. Their faces could not see smiles, and their once gentle expressions had become vicious. Their eyes were full of resentment, and their originally familiar faces had become incomparably strange. She seemed to have come to a strange village, surrounded by a group of strange people. If only this was all a dream. The girl thought sorrowfully, and her dull eyes looked at the sky above her head. Boom! The sound of loud thunder roared through the heaven and earth. And in the night sky, there was a huge thunderbolt that suddenly cut through heaven and earth, viciously striking down in front of the mountain. Seeing that huge thunderbolt strike down, the villagers on the mountain road were terrified. Because that thunderbolt was too big, much thicker than ordinary thunder, and it struck the mountain directly. That seems to be Mountain God Temple. Someone recognized that direction and let out a frightened shout. This statement made everyone's expressions look bad. On this kind of stormy night, there was actually lightning falling in the direction of the mountain temple, and it happened on the day that girl secretly escaped. Village Chief The villagers looked nervously at the old man in the group, trying to gain insight. The one who had the most contact experience with the mountain god was the old man in the village. Now that this strange and unpredictable thing happened, everyone subconsciously looked at the old man. But at that moment, another lightning struck down in the sky. It was bigger than the previous one, just like a huge pillar of light that blasted down on the mountain. Boom! The deafening blast almost shook the villagers unconscious, they even felt that the earth was shaken by the lightning. The terrifying sight directly scared the villagers, and all of them fell limp and trembled. Even the villagers who grew up in the mountain had never witnessed lightning striking the mountain so close, and it wasn't even a normal lightning strike. How could there be such a large lightning strike? The villagers were incomparably frightened, while the old village chief at the front of the procession clutched the walking stick in his hand tightly. Everyone stood on the trail in fear, fearing that the next bolt of lightning would strike down on their heads, or possibly something even worse would happen. They waited for a while, but the mountain calmed. Not only did no third lightning bolt strike down, even the wind seemed to have subsided. The old village chief gave a hard pause with his walking stick and said in a hoarse voice, Go. Take the girl to the mountain god temple as soon as possible. We can't delay any longer. I've never seen the mountain god so angry. If we are late, something big will really happen. The old village chief's words startled all the young men. In the village, the old man's words were the law, and no one dared to question them. If the old village chief said so, it meant that the matter had really reached a very serious point. No one dared linger. The villagers immediately ran up the mountain path. Even if the mountain road was dark and rugged, and even after witnessing the horror of lightning, no one dared to slow down at all. They took turns carrying the elderly village leader, carrying the girl in the big red wedding dress, and ran wildly and difficultly through the rugged mountain roads. Finally, when everyone was panting and almost on the verge of running out of energy, they saw the mountain god temple standing in the jungle. Chapter 7 At this time the forest quieted down, as the villagers gradually approached the temple of the mountain god in the deep mountain, the roaring night sky and flashing lightning completely disappeared, no longer like before. Even the mountain wind whistling at this time also stopped, the whole cold feather mountain was quiet and spooky. The villagers walked in the mountain all with frightened and nervous expressions. The abnormal weather made everyone feel scared. Especially not long ago they witnessed the horrific scene of heavenly thunder striking the mountain, which seemed like a scene from the end of world and an extreme level of fear filled their hearts. So when they saw the mountain god temple, all the villagers subconsciously stopped breathing. They no longer dared to go forward, and were afraid of what horrible things might happen. It was not until the old village chief angrily urged the terrified villagers to move that they started moving towards the temple with their trembling feet while gritting their teeth. The temple was built more than 80 years ago, and according to the old people, it was originally funded by a wealthy businessman in the city. However, after the temple was built, the god of the mountain was discovered in the mountain and Shueishin village had to offer incense to the god in exchange for blessings. In the past 80 years, Shueishin village had almost never suffered from famine, and even the beasts in the mountain no longer came down to the village. 
even in the winter months, the hungry beasts would not come down to eat people. The villagers lived a fairly peaceful life under the blessing of the mountain god. But everyone knew that the mountain god in this cold feather mountain was not gentle, but rather fierce and brutal. If you dare to disobey it, you will definitely incur great calamity. The old people spread horror stories about the mountain god getting angry, tearing people alive, and even making the fields wither and crops fail. They warned everyone that they must respect the mountain god and never bring calamity to the village. But now, they seem to have angered Lord Mountain God. The girl who should have been sacrificed secretly escaped back to the village. This was a terrible scourge that made people's toes curl. But the villagers did not even dare to run away. They could only force themselves walking on trembling legs towards the Mountain God Temple, praying in their hearts that Lord Mountain God would let them live. In such fear and anxiety, the villagers finally arrived at the gate of the Mountain God Temple. In the dark mountain, the Mountain God Temple illuminated by the light of the torches seemed slightly eerie. The rattan wooden palanquin left in the temple during the day was surprisingly still there, and ropes that were cut by sharp instruments were scattered in the temple. Seeing that the rope was cut, the villagers were convinced that the girl had escaped on her own. They glared viciously at the girl, but at this time in front of the statue of Mountain God, no one dared to raise their voices. The girl was retied to the rattan palanquin, and the villagers carefully stepped back, intending to go outside to keep watch. This time no one dared to leave without permission, they must stay here and know that the mountain god would take the girl. But as the villagers retreated to the entrance of mountain god temple, the clay statue of the god on the altar suddenly moved. Then, a low, faintly echoing, as well as terrifying sound rang out in everyone's ears. What are you guys arguing about? The gloomy whisper was not loud, but it was like thunder exploding in the ears of the villagers, and all of them were scared and sat down directly on the ground. The only one who could remain calm was the elderly village chief. He was horrified to see that the clay god on the altar was staring at them coldly as if he had come to life. The old village chief had a jolt and immediately fell to his knees and cowed out desperately. I am begging you for mercy. I am begging you for mercy. The village chief's pleading cry woke up the group of frightened young men around him. Other villagers also hurriedly knelt down, following the village chief's example and cowed out desperately to beg for mercy. Beg you for mercy. Beg you for mercy. The orderly shouts of the people begging for mercy spread far and wide, stirring up a burst of echoes in the mountain. For mercy. For mercy. On the altar of God, Lu Heng looked at the group of villagers who kept kowtowing and begging for mercy at his feet and was a little confused. He was lying on the ground digesting the thunderbolt power in his body, and at this time, this group of villagers appeared inexplicably. What were these people doing here at night? But when Lu Heng saw the girl who was retied to the rattan chair, as well as the girl's forehead wound, he roughly understood what happened. Did you guys send her back? Lu Heng asked. As the statue spoke, the villagers stopped shouting and begging. They knelt in front of the temple door, bowing their heads and not daring to move. Only the old village chief raised his head trembling and explained, Lord Mountain God, we were the ones who sent her back. We caught her in the village and knew that you must be very angry, so we immediately sent her back. She was the one who escaped, we didn't even know about it. Please be merciful, Lord Mountain God. The village chief finished, and then knocked head heavily, making the yellow mud floor thud. Behind the village chief, the villagers also all followed him and cowed out vigorously, we are begging Lord Mountain God to show mercy. The scene of dozens of people kowtowing at the same time was spectacular, but Lu Heng looking at the scene was speechless. He really didn't expect that these villagers were afraid of him to such an extent that it could be said that they were scared birds of prey. However, thinking about the previous actions of the wolf demon, the villagers could not be blamed for having such a reaction. He sighed and said, All right, raise your head, I won't blame you. This little girl was indeed released by me, and she did not escape by herself. After saying that, Lu Heng did not care about the shocked reaction of the villagers. The clay statue on the altar exhaled a cold wind, brushing the girl on the rattan palanquin. This cold wind seems to have a wonderful power. After it brushed the girl's body, the rope that tied the girl automatically broke apart. 
The girl regained her ability to move freely again, and the cloth tied around her mouth was loosened. On a shadowy altar, the clay statue of the god looked down at the girl on the vine palanquin and asked, Why didn't you tell them the truth about what happened? The villagers were all startled and then a little nervous by the inquiry of the mountain god. The moment the Lord Mountain God asked the girl, they understood that they had made a mistake. This girl really did not escape privately, but Lord Mountain God let her go. Although they did not know why Lord Mountain God let her go, now they kidnapped the girl back and disturbed Lord Mountain God, they must have angered him. The villagers were scared to death, and the old village headman, who had always been calm, was trembling slightly. Everyone secretly looked at the girl on the vine palanquin, afraid that the girl would say something fatal next. But the girl on the vine palanquin did not speak when she regained her freedom. She raised her head dumbly and looked up at the clay statue of the white wolf on the altar. Faced with this vicious mountain god that the old people spoke rumors about, she was not afraid, but instead, endless grievance emerged in her heart. On the way here, the girl had thought she would not cry. But hearing the words of Lord Mountain God to do her justice, and thinking of the treatment she received back in the village, the girl's grievance completely exploded. Woo! The girl cried out directly. The cry spread far out and echoed among the mountains. Her cry was heartbreaking, making the villagers in front of the Mountain God Temple look embarrassed and uncomfortable. Chapter 8 The sound of crying lasted for a long time. The more she cried, the sadder she became. Unable to stop, her entire body convulsed from her endless tears. This desperate and sad cry made villagers finally start to feel both guilty and afraid because of their treatment of the girl. The old village chief nearest to her finally couldn't help himself hastily pulling her sleeve, and said to her cautiously, Stop crying, Shao Ai. Lord Mountain God. Never mind, the white wolf clay statue on the altar spoke gently, interrupting the old village chief, let her cry. If a child is aggrieved, it would be too cruel to not allow her to cry. After saying that, Lu Hang looked at the girl on the rattan palanquin and said, Cry, little girl. Cry as much as you want, you don't need to care what these mortals think. Cry out all the grievances in your heart, cry as loud as you want. It doesn't matter how long you want to cry, no one dares to get in your way here. Lu Hang's words were not harsh, but the lighter his tone, the more the villagers were afraid. The old village chief had shrunken into a ball, and both his hands were trembling. Fear of imminent disaster surfaced in his heart, and he no longer dared to say a word. He kneeled with head bowed low, looking fearful and humble. And the old chief's actions made the villagers frightened. Although they did not quite understand what happened, they were also nervous, everyone followed the old village chief's example of kneeling, bowing their heads, forehead flat to the ground, and did not dare to move. Dozens of people just knelt terrified and humble, listening to the girl's cry. And the girl on the vine sedan cried for a long time, finally sobbing, crying gradually stopped. Woo! Lord Mountain God! The girl was sobbing and her eyes were already red. She kept wiping her tears while walking down from the rattan palanquin, then she knelt in front of the altar and kowtowed heavily. Looking at this, Lu Hang on the altar of God felt reluctant. All right, all right, get up, don't kneel. The villagers looked at each other, then raised their heads and felt nervous and anxious. Lu Hang said, since this matter has come out, you can take the girl back. I don't need boys and girls anymore, so this is the end of the matter. In addition, this girl has suffered from all this, and has been very unfortunate, I hope she will not suffer any more harm. Lu Heng's words made the old village chief raise his head and hastily open his mouth, We promise to you, Lord. No need to promise, just do what needs to be done, the clay on the altar interrupted the old man again, now you can go back. Once these words were spoken, the meaning of expulsion could not have been more obvious. The villagers then respectfully kowtowed to the altar under the leadership of the old village chief before they carefully stood up and slowly retreated backwards. Inside the temple, the girl who had stopped crying looked behind her at the adults who should have been familiar. But tonight were incomparable strangers, and then looked at the dark altar in front of her and hesitantly called out softly, Lord Mountain God. The girl's voice was low, so low as to be almost inaudible. But the white wolf on the altar still heard it, and he lowered his head, 
gazed at the little girl in front of him, and asked, Is there anything else? The girl fell into a short period of hesitation and silence, and during this time the girl seemed to think a lot. But in the end, she shook her head in loss and murmured, No more things. Thank you, Lord Mountain God. She also followed the adult's example and count out to the Lord Mountain God on the altar, and she slowly walked out of the shadowy mountain temple. Behind her, in the gloomy mountain god temple, the clay statue did not move, and Lu Hen once again returned to the ground to cultivate. The little girl in the dirty, big red wedding dress then walked among the villagers and followed everyone out to the mountains. The dimly lit torches barely illuminated the road, and the villagers all slowed their pace and kept their mouths shut, not daring to make any extra noise for fear of disturbing the dreaded mountain god. Now, they just wanted to leave this eerie cold feather mountain, and return to their warm home of Shueisheng village, sharing everything they saw in the mountain tonight with their wives and children. The feeling of facing the god was too terrifying, and that feeling was now a little palpitating when you think about it. Usually the young and strong were bold, but at this time were not hardened, and they all lowered their heads, didn't dare to speak loudly. And the girl walking in the middle of the crowd did not say a word, and even if the misunderstanding had lifted, no one showed her intimacy again. But unlike the adults around her who were too scared to breathe, the girl was unafraid. In the process of leaving, she turned back from time to time, looking from far away at the slightly lonely and gloomy mountain god temple gradually disappearing in the jungle, with eyes full of sorrow. What happened tonight made her feel even more helpless and desperate than the day her mother died of an illness. She never thought that one day, the kind and gracious elders of the village would show such a vicious and hideous expression to her. It was clearly not her fault, and even the person who was chosen was not her at first. But when everyone found her walking out of the mountain, at that moment everyone's expressions became unbearably terrible. No one believed her, and everyone was cruel to her. In such a situation, the only one to do her justice and to make her feel warm was the vicious mountain god in the old legends that adults often used to scare the children. The loneliness and helplessness spread in the girl's heart. Bewildered, she followed the adults along the rugged mountain path, not knowing where she should go and what place might accommodate her. The wind in the mountain was gradually picking up again. But this time the mountain wind was not bitterly cold, and no one cared. They just quickened their pace, not wanting to stay long in the mountain. But as they walked, someone noticed something not quite right. Something seems to be following behind us all the time. Said Wang Lao Lu, a veteran who had hunted in the mountains for many years. He looked back in the direction he came from with a tense expression, Did you guys hear that? There seems to be a sound behind us all the time. Wang Lao Yo's sudden words scared the villagers. Because there were many beasts in the cold feather mountain. In the past, when the beasts lacked food in winter, they would go down to the village to take away children, or even attack the villagers who were left alone. After Shueisheng village became dedicated to the mountain god, the beasts in the mountain no long came down to attack the living. But if the villagers met those beasts in the mountain, they still ate people without hesitation. Late at night, if there were hungry wolves. Among the villagers, someone shouted angrily, Wang Lao Lu. Don't scare people, okay? There are so many of us that even if there really were beasts, how could they dare follow? That's it. Wang Lao Lu, you are always talking nonsense to scare people. Why at this time too? Can't you just stop? Don't be annoying. The villagers cursed loudly, trying to embolden themselves with such words. The little girl in the group subconsciously held the small wooden token hanging around her neck and felt the cold touch. She was not afraid because the sign of Lord Mountain God was still on her. And the beast that was following behind her seemed to be able to feel when she held this Mountain God sign. It's the monkeys. In the crowd, the little girl suddenly spoke up. She stared blankly at the dark woods behind her, and in a trance, seemed to see through the heavy trees the group of monkeys that had followed them all the way, clearly her eyes saw nothing, but there was a strong intuition in her heart. That following them all the way, was the group of monkeys. But why did this group of monkeys follow her? The girl looked in the direction of the mountain temple in a daze. In the mountain, it was so dark in the direction of Mountain God Temple. And they were already far away from it, where they could not see the old temple which was located deep in the mountain. 
But the girl's sight seemed to penetrate the barrier of the mountains and saw the temple located in the middle of the mountain and saw the white wolf statue on top of the altar. Lord Mountain God. The girl clenched the token in her hand and murmured in her heart. I must offer incense and worship to you every day for the rest of my whole life. Chapter, 9 It's the monkeys, as the little girl murmured, the adult's expressions changed. In this dark forest, even the experienced hunter Wang Lao Lu was not sure what was following behind them. But the girl was very sure that it was monkeys. Everyone had just left the Mountain God Temple and Lord Mountain God seemed intent on defending this little girl. The village chief silently paused his cane and decided to talk to the girl's eldest uncle, Cripple AI. He would not let Cripple AI's family bully this homeless girl. Thinking of this, the old village chief said, well, let's go. He glanced at the young men around him and said, whether it's a monkey or a tiger, they won't rush over after seeing so many people. Just stay close and don't stray off alone. Everyone subconsciously obeyed the village chief, and put away the anxiety and nervousness in their hearts temporarily to continue the journey. While walking in the forest, everyone was much closer, fearing that they would be separated and then caught by a beast. As the villagers gradually left the cold feather mountain, shortly afterwards Lu Hang inside Mountain God Temple also received the news back from the monkeys. The group of villagers had gone down and no one was bullying the little girl. This news gave Lu Hang some peace of mind. He was really worried that the little girl named Xiao Ai would be bullied by the villagers when she returned, so he deliberately said some words to take care of the girl before he drove away villagers. After all, the reason why this little girl was sacrificed was the original wolf demon's need. Now that Lu Hang has crossed over, the matter was more or less associated with him. It was great that this problem could be resolved, otherwise he would feel guilty. Now that this matter was perfectly resolved, Lu Hang went to practice once again after diving into the ground. However, today he was different from the original wolf demon, he no longer absorbed the spiritual energy in the earth veins. The previously absorbed thunderbolt power surged among his limbs and bones, filling up Lu Hang's body to the point of exploding. And he digested this power incomparably slowly, trying to absorb the thunderbolt power completely. But in the process of absorption, Lu Hang gradually felt his limit, because the power from the thunderbolt could not simply be directly refined into magic power. This thunderbolt power was completely different from the earth vein aura. It was stubborn like an unchanging iron stone no matter how Lu Hang knocked and refined, he could not change its thunderbolt nature. The good thing was that Lu Hang, after some experimenting, discovered that this special lightning power behaved similarly to his demon power. It seemed to use the same type of magic. So Lu Hang had no choice and could only continue to digest the thunderbolt power and store it as a new demon power. Gradually, the power in his body was divided into three distinct types, the demonic power that was cultivated for 200 years. The incense wish power that was accumulated for 80 years by the offerings of the mountain people, and the new thunderbolt power. Among these three powers, the thunderbolt power had the least amount, but it gave Lu Hang the strongest and most frightening feeling, like a heart-stopping sensation. Although the amount of strength was huge, 200 year of cultivated demonic power which had been slowly gained by the previous wolf demon was completely lackluster when compared to this heavenly thunder power. Therefore, Lu Hang felt that he might be able to try a new direction of cultivation. For example, with the absorption of thunder power as the main way of cultivation, he may be able to come out of a completely different path from the demons. Ten days later, Lu Hang, who had finally absorbed all the thunder power in his body, emerged from the ground. Now the thunder power in his body had grown much stronger. Although in terms of quantity, it was still far from the 200 years demon power, Lu Hang was confident in it. And during these 10 days, he finally repaired his cracked body completely, so he could move freely and no longer had to guard this mountain god temple. He raised his head to the sky and gave a long howl. The long wolf whistle spread far away in the mountain, stirring up countless echoes, just like a group of wolves howling. This funny echo made Lu Hang laugh. He was in a very good mood after his first successful practice. He ran directly through the mountains, not using the mountain god's power to shrink the ground, but running wildly like an ordinary beast. The two-meter-tall white giant wolf was like a silver lightning bolt, 
hurriedly passing through the mountain paths and cliff walls. All the birds and beasts seen along the way were scared and scattered, and the quiet mountain immediately became lively. In the end, after stirring up half the lives of Cold Feather Mountain, Lu Heng finally arrived at his destination, the largest river in the mountain. The river was about three feet wide and passes through Shueisheng Village and Cold Feather Mountain, and finally disappeared at the other end of Cold Feather Mountain. Not only did it support the villagers of Shueisheng Village, but it was also an important source of drinking water for the beasts in the mountain. When Lu Heng walked to the river, the beasts that were originally lying on the river drinking water all fled in fear. Now only Lu Heng could be seen on both sides of this large river. But he did not care, just standing at the riverside and looking down at his own reflection in the river. In the reflection of the river, the silvery white giant wolf was awe-inspiring and heroic, just like the beasts of myth and legend, without the slightest hint belonging to the demons and evil spirits. This body was not bad. Lu Heng said in his heart. But he didn't come here to enjoy his appearance. After standing by the river and looking at it for a while, Lu Heng then opened his mouth wide and took a deep breath at the river in front of him. Then, the power of mountain god was activated. Instantly the river churned, and one after another fish fluttered and leaped up from the river, flying towards Lu Heng's mouth. One, two, three. These leaping river fish, regardless of their size, instantly disappeared into the white wolf's terrifying blood mouth, without the action of chewing. After eating fifty river fish, Lu Heng was finally stuffed. And he stopped the power of mountain god, the river that was rippling and churning finally calmed down. Under the bright sunshine, Lu Heng, who had eaten and drank enough, was in a good mood. As a wolf demon that had cultivated for two hundred years, although Lu Heng could go on without food for a long time, the maintenance of the demon body would become difficult if he did not eat all the time. He actually did not like this way of eating. But there was no restaurant in this cold feather mountain. Even if he went down to the Shueisheng village to find offerings, he thought the offerings made by the villagers were only enough to stuff his teeth. Being a demon is so hard. I need to hurry up and cultivate a human form so that I can eat a big meal. He thought. Lu Heng turned away, and his pace was as slow as an old man walking in the park. It took a long time to return to Mountain God Temple. Then, Lu Heng started a new round of cultivation. Chapter 10 By now, Lu Heng's cultivation method had essential differences from the original wolf demon. The cultivation method of the wolf demon was to use the power of the mountain god to continuously absorb earth's spiritual energy and refine it into its own demon power, supplemented by wish power offered by the villagers. This way of cultivation was very slow, and it was easy to encounter a bottleneck. Whenever the demon power held by the body reached its limit, it had to stop and wait for the slow growth of the demon body. The effect of wish power was to accelerate the growth process of this demon body, which would allow the wolf demon to enter the next stage of cultivation more quickly. However, Lu Heng did not like this wish power, so he always left it alone. He also did not want to be bound to this cold feather mountain, so he did not want to be a mountain god anymore. When his cultivation was successful, he would break free from this cold feather mountain and go to see the outside world. As for the earth vein aura, he hadn't absorbed it in a long time. Recently, he had been indulging in the practice of thunder power, because he found that the absorption of thunder power seemed to have no bottleneck. Each time he absorbed thunder power into his body, the power would be integrated into his limbs and bones, constantly transforming his demon body and expanding the limits of its capacity. By the time he had absorbed all the thunder power, the capacity of his demon body had also grown, and then he could go on to absorb new thunder power. Such a nearly infinite cycle of cultivation mode was so different from the wolf demon's slow cultivation method. After Lu Heng opened up this cultivation mode, he completely abandoned the traditional cultivation method of the wolf demon, and the demon power in his body never grew again. Instead, thunder power slowly increased. Maybe one day, the thunder power in his body would completely surpass the demon power and take the absolutely dominant position. But at that time, would he still be considered a demon? Forget it, don't think so much, just continue to practice. He thought. Lu Heng, who emerged from the ground, did not go to the river to eat fishes this time, but looked up at the huge spiral cloud in the sky. 
Unknowingly, the amount of this thundercloud had become so frightening. At the very beginning, Lu Hang just tried to call up thunder power on a clear day to see if there would be thunder coming down. He succeeded. It was a sunny and clear sky, and as he used thunder power within him to call up clouds, a small thunder cloud slowly gathered in the sky. Although that thunder cloud was small in size, it did strike down thunder and was successfully absorbed by Lu Hang. After his successful experience, Lu Hang no longer concerned himself with the weather for his cultivation. Whether it was windy, rainy, or sunny, he directly connected heaven and earth, attracting lightning to strike the mountains. In this way, as Lu Hang cultivated, the thunderclouds gathered above Mountain God Temple became thicker and heavier and more massive. By now, it had turned into a huge spiral thundercloud, suspended forever in the sky above the Mountain God Temple. Even if the sun was shining and the sky was cloudless outside, the sky here at Mountain God Temple was still flickering with thunder. The atmosphere was horrible, and people felt that heavenly thunder may strike at any time. And because of the appearance of this thundercloud, the beasts of the mountain no longer dared to approach the Mountain God Temple. In the past, although the beasts in the mountain were afraid of the White Wolf, they would occasionally pass near Mountain God Temple. But now, unless Lu Heng summoned them, the beasts in the mountain would avoid this spiral cloud and were not even willing to come close. With the mountain god temple as the center, a five-mile radius of the mountain was so quiet that it even had no birds, no matter day and night. Only the spiral clouds in the sky occasionally resounded the low sound of thunder. And as the one who caused all this, Lu Heng's heart did not have the slightest feeling of unease. Anyway, now that he was no longer afraid of lightning, the spiral clouds in the sky couldn't scare him. He looked up at the sky, where the clouds were constantly roaring. Lu Hang took a deep breath, once again calling up to the sky thunder. Then. Boom. Deafening thunder blasts spread far and wide in Cold Feather Mountain. The terrifying sight of the huge thunderbolt cut through heaven and earth and struck the mountain. Even in the Shuaixing village, which was far away from Cold Feather Mountain, people could clearly see it. In Shuaixing village, the working villagers all subconsciously raised their heads after hearing the terrifying thunder blast and looked in the direction of Mountain God Temple. It was clear that the sky above the villagers' heads was blazing hot with the sun, and not even a single cloud could be seen. But in the deep of Cold Feather Mountain, there was a huge vortex cloud shrouded in constant rotation, with thunder flashes in the cloud, and now a heavenly thunder was striking down. Wan Lao Lu wiped the sweat on his forehead and said, Is Lord Mountain God angry again? He gets angry a lot in the last six months. Not far away, Cripple AI glared at him and said, Wan Lao Lu, you're talking nonsense again. The village chief has already said it is not the Lord Mountain God being angry, do not panic. If Lord Mountain God heard what you said, there will be no good consequences for you. Barefoot standing in the field, Wang Lao Lu smiled because he was not afraid, even if Lord Mountain God will be angry, the first one who will get punishment is certainly not me, but you, Cripple AI. Six months ago when we entered the mountain, Lord Mountain God was very fond of Xiao AI. And who in this village doesn't know how you treat her? Wang Lao Lu laughed, and Cripple AI was a little embarrassed. He glared at Wang Lao Lu and cursed, what's wrong with me? In Shuaixing village, everyone knows that it's me who kindly kept her, so that she did not starve to death. A straight foot is not afraid of a crooked shoe. The crippled man shouted in a stern voice, but Wang Lao Lu laughed more loudly. Cripple AI, you are really shameless. Are you kind? You are coveting the legacy left by Xiao AI's father and mother. Now that your little niece is here, do you want to talk to her about the location of her family's land and property? Wan Lao Lu laughed and squeezed his eyebrows. Hearing this, Cripple AI was startled and turned back in a hurry, and indeed saw his niece Xiao AI appearing far away in the field. Seeing his niece's appearance, the expression on Cripple AI's face instantly changed and became somewhat frightened. Sternly glaring at Wan Lao Lu, Cripple AI cursed in a low voice, Enough nonsense. I will not spare you. After scolding Wan Lao Lu, Cripple AI hurriedly rubbed his face, trying hard to squeeze out a soft expression, and waited until the young girl carrying the kettle and bowl came closer. He said with a smile, Xiao AI, here you are. 
Yes, the girl nodded in response. After placing the kettle and rice bowl on the ridge, she said uncle, and asked me to bring you some rice. She also said that little brother felt a little unwell, so she asked you to go back early to look after him. Okay, okay, Cripple AI smiled, you can go back, the sun is so strong outside, don't get sunburn. Well, then I'm going back, the girl greeted both Cripple AI and Wang Lao Lu in the field, Uncle AI, Uncle Wang, I'm leaving. Yes, Xiao AI, go back quickly, your uncle is afraid of you. Wang Lao Yu's laughter spread far and wide. The girl who had already left paused in her steps, but did not speak, as if she had not heard anything. She continued to walk forward. Half a year has passed since she was first chosen to be dedicated to Lord Mountain God. In these six months, everyone in the village had a huge change in their attitude towards her. First of all, her uncle's family, who had always treated her badly before, now was careful with her. And she was treated like her cousins at home. The attitude of others in the village was more complicated. Faintly, the girl felt that the villagers were afraid of her, and the village adults even forbade their children to play with her. Although no one dared to blatantly show this alienation and fear in front of her, the girl was still sensitive enough to perceive it. She didn't overreact. Although being isolated by everyone could be a little bit lonely, she was not the same as she was before. Even if no one her age wanted to play with her, she was not very sad. The experience six months ago had changed her a lot and she was not very interested in playing around anymore. When she was alone, she would not think of going to play with her peers. Now, she preferred to sit quietly alone on the threshold, staring blankly at the cold feather mountain. She wasn't quite sure what was wrong with her, but she found that she now didn't care much about many of the things she used to care about, and didn't seem to care about anything anymore. And in this case, the only thing she cared about was that every morning when she woke up, she must offer a stick of incense to Lord Mountain God in the shrine at home. It was something she had to do every day for these six months, and not a day had she dared to forget it. Chapter, 11 In the hot afternoon, Xiao Ai left the ridge of the field and walked towards the village not far away. It was already September, but the heat in the air had not yet dissipated. Walking under the hot sun, she felt a little breathless. While the weather was so hot in the village, Cold Feather Mountain was shrouded in thunderclouds and howling wind, as if a rainstorm was about to come. The villagers in Shuaxing village were accustomed to such a scene, after all, this lasted half a year. But Xiao Ai was always worried, no matter how many times she looked at it. She knew that the huge spiral clouds and the lightning that struck from time to time must be related to Lord Mountain God. But Xiao Ai was not sure whether these lightning strikes were good or bad for Lord Mountain God. So Xiao Ai had also sneaked into the mountain a few times, wanting to see what was happening in the Mountain God Temple. However, although she went to the temple several times, she failed to see the giant divine white wolf. The Mountain God Temple was also empty. There were no abnormalities. Only when she held the Mountain God sign hanging on her chest, could she vaguely feel that Lord Mountain God was still in this cold feather mountain. This feeling would bring her a peace of mind. Lord Mountain God Xiao Ai stood on the path into the village, staring blankly at the thunderclouds spinning over the mountain. She was spacing out and did not want to move at this moment. At this time, there were footsteps approaching, waking up the dazed girl. She looked back and saw a black-robed person walking towards the road outside the village. It was a middle-aged man with a serious face. He was in all black robes, but the beard on his jaw was a strange red color. And the most shocking thing was his earrings. From the black-robed man's earlobes each hung a green and a white earring, but as he got closer, the girl could see clearly those were not earrings at all, but two slowly wriggling snakes. These two wriggling snakes were hanging on the man's earlobe. If the tiny snakes had not been wriggling all the time, it would almost look like ordinary earrings. Using live snakes as earrings. Was he not afraid of being bitten? Xiao Ai was afraid and planned to turn and run. But she stopped when she heard the black-robed man take the initiative to speak. Little girl, I am Wu Zhu from the Thousand Needle City, named Gong Shu Jie. I've come here to chase a devil seed. I am not a bad person. May I ask if you've ever seen a strange wisp of black smoke anywhere? 
Although the black-robed man's face was serious, his words seemed to have some kind of power, making the girl subconsciously stop in her tracks. After she heard what the man said, she was even more surprised and widened her eyes. Master Wuzhu. The girl was a bit shocked. The village elder said that a Master Wuzhu is a big man who serves the fire god and would only stay in the city. But now there is a Master Wuzhu coming to Shueishin village. And he said that he was coming after a devil seed. Xiao Ai was a little scared and looked at the cold feather mountain at a distance. Although the white wolf was known as the mountain god worshipped in Shueishin village, people in the village secretly scolded it as a man-eating demon. They also said that if Shueishin village was not too remote to take care of, a master Wuzhu in the city would catch the wolf demon. Now, a master Wuzhu appeared. Xiao Ai was a little nervous, no. She panicked and lowered her head, whispered, I have not seen any devils before. As these words were spoken, a huge thunderbolt exploded in the distant mountain. Boom! The loud thunder reverberated between heaven and earth, instantly attracting the attention of the master Wuzhu. He looked towards the dark forest in the distance that was surrounded by spiral clouds. He frowned and said, Heavenly thunder! Could it be attracted by that devil seed? When he saw that thundercloud before, he had thought it was an ordinary weather, so he did not care about it. But now it seemed that the constantly rotating thundercloud actually contained a terrifying thunderbolt power. The lightning that fell just now was even a heavenly thunder that would only appear to kill demons and monsters. Could it be that the devil seed escaped into this mountain, and finally attracted the heavenly thunder? Thinking of this, Gong Shu Jie directly went towards the distant cold feather mountain. He took a step ten feet away and disappeared from the girl's view in a few seconds. Seeing this scene, Xiao Ai widened her eyes, now she knew that this master Wuzhu really had great magic power. Her expression immediately became anxious. She was worried if Lord Mountain God might run into the Master Wuzhu. She immediately ran in the direction of Cold Feather Mountain, trying to do something with her own efforts. After all, she was familiar with the path. Maybe she would find Lord Mountain God before Master Wuzhu, so she could inform Lord Mountain God to leave. Gong Shu Jia the Master Wuzhu did not know what Xiao Ai was thinking about. He used his magic to drift so fast in the forest, and soon left Shueishin village behind. Whether it was a rugged road, a dense shrubs road, or even a road beside a cliff, Gong Shu Jia crossed it with ease as if he were walking on smooth ground. Although he had never been here before, he had a clear goal. The huge spiral cloud spinning in the sky and the center of the spiral cloud were the best road signs. But the closer he got, the heavier Gong Shu Jie's mood became. Because as he kept getting closer, he also clearly felt the terrifying thunderbolt power that pervaded in the vortex clouds overhead. Originally, he thought that it was the devil seed who had attracted the heavenly thunder, so he rushed towards this direction. But after entering Cold Feather Mountain, he understood that he was wrong. The swirling vortex clouds in the sky were surging with fury, emitting a terrifying aura that made his heart skip a beat. Such a terrifying thunderstorm could not have been caused by that devil seed he chased, but a more terrifying demon. Although he was still at the periphery of the mountain, he had not entered the center of the cloud yet, so the pressure he felt was limited. But just the slight aura emanating from the periphery already made him alarmed, and he could hardly imagine what kind of scene the thundercloud center would be. And what kind of demon would attract such a terrifying thundercloud? If it was released, it would probably be a terrifying demon that could destroy a city, even ruin a land and disrupt a country. This cold feather mountain was always remote and desolate, how could it produce such a terrifying demon? It was a huge disaster. If he hadn't tracked the devil seed to this place today, he was afraid everyone in the outside world would be in the dark. No. This matter must not happen. He would figure it out. The demon in this mountain was so terrible, and if it was lucky enough to not die under the thunderstorm, it would definitely come down to the world and kill people in order to heal its wounds. He must kill it here, no matter the cost. Thinking of this, Gong Shu Jie sped up a lot. Soon, he saw the center of the thunderstorm, it was over the peak of Cold Feather Mountain with the most dense ground spirit aura. On top of the mountain, huge vortex clouds gushing and rotating, 
vast and majestic thunderbolt force condensed and did not disperse. From time to time there was a terrifying lightning in the clouds flickering, giving people a huge pressure. Under the thundercloud, the forest was deadly silent, people could not hear any sound of birds and insects, and could not feel the slightest breath of life. It was like a land of the dead. When Gong Shu Jie stepped into this land, he could not help feeling a shock. There was no living thing in this place. What kind of horrible demon was this? Even the insects disappeared in its habitat. Among all creatures in the earth, the ubiquitous insects were the most powerful species, to some extent. They had no fear, and did not know living and death. But now even the insects in the mountains were afraid of the demons in the forest. Realizing of this, Gong Shu Jie now felt a great pressure. Just how powerful is the demon in this mountain? Chapter, 12 With uneasiness in his heart, Gong Shu Jie's footsteps slowed down a lot. Although it was clear that the demon in the forest must have sensed his presence, he still cautiously observed the forest in front of him. However, the further he go, the more strange Gong Shu Jie felt, because the forest did not have the slightest devil aura belonging to the demon. There seemed to be no demon at all. The air was only filled with the purest and most terrifying thunderbolt power. Could it be that the demon had been struck dead by heavenly thunderbolt? But even if the demon was killed, it was impossible for the devil aura to dissipate so quickly. Gong Shu Jie's heart was filled with confusion. At that moment, a white light flashed in his vision. Immediately after, a deafening rumble sounded, and a frighteningly thick thunderbolt descended from the sky and viciously struck down in the forest. Boom! The ground beneath Gong Shu Jie's feet seemed to shake violently. Having witnessed the terrifying power of this thunderbolt up close, Gong Shu Jie's breathing almost stopped. There was more heavenly thunderbolt striking down. The demon was not dead. Gong Shu Jie instantly disappeared from the original place, moving towards the direction of the heavenly thunderbolt. When he could not sense the presence of Devil Aura, he could not find the demon in the forest. But now, this sudden heavenly thunderbolt guided the way to the demon for him. In the forest, a dry and hot gale was raised. Gong Shu Jie rose up in the wind and flew rapidly over the forest. In a few seconds, he arrived at the direction where the thunderbolt struck down and he saw the mountain god temple surrounded by trees. The mountain god temple was ordinary, and there was nothing unusual. However, in front of the mountain god temple, there was a huge white wolf standing. Under the gloomy sky, the white wolf was so big and frightening that its size was almost equal to the height of the mountain god temple behind it, and it was a completely vicious beast. But now the most terrifying thing was not the size of the white wolf, but the white wolf's thunderbolt power surrounding his body. The one hit by thunder was clearly the giant wolf in front of him. But the power of the thunderbolt that could make even a thousand-year-old demon get traumatized. Why was the white wolf unharmed? And it was not only unharmed, but its body surface was surprisingly thunderous. Electric thunder flashed across the silver white wolf fur. As the white wolf inhaled, all the thunderbolt power overflowing in the air was actually inhaled by it. Its huge body shape was like a bottomless abyss crazily swallowing the surrounding thunder. In just a few seconds, the thunderbolt power in front of the mountain god temple was almost completely absorbed into the white wolf's body. At this point, the white wolf slowly opened his eyes and looked in Gong Shu Jie's direction. When a man and a wolf looked at each other, Gong Shu Jie's mind was shaken to see a pair of pale eyes flashing with lightning. Although the next second, the lightning light dispersed and the white wolf's eyes returned to be normal, the wolf brought a huge pressure to Gong Shu Jie. His breath was slightly stagnant, and seemed to face a heavenly thunder tribulation. This white wolf was definitely not ordinary mountain demon. It was not struck by heavenly thunderbolt, instead, it was borrowing the heavenly thunderbolt to cultivate. Realizing of this, Gong Shu Jie was astonished. Regardless of human beings and demons, they were afraid of heavenly thunderbolt and kept far away from it. Now the beast in front of him could borrow heavenly thunderbolt to cultivate. Dispelling the hot wind around him, Gong Shu Jie was falling from the air, respectfully and politely saluted to the giant wolf. My name is Gong Shu Jie, a Wuzhu from Thousand Needles City. It is an honor to meet you, Mountain God. In the Mountain God Temple, 
the clay statue of the white wolf on the divine altar stood out. How could Gongshu Jie not know that the white wolf was the mountain god of Cold Feather Mountain? Although he guessed it right, there was still confusion in his heart that could not be resolved. Most of the mountain gods were actually demons and monsters. When their cultivation had become successful, some mortals built temples and shrines dedicated to them. Day after day, the demon or monster had been turning into a mountain god. But whether it was good or bad, these mountain gods could not get rid of their essence as a demon. The more profound the practice, the more dense devil aura it had. But this cold feather mountain god had not even the slightest devil aura. When Gong Shu Jie opened his magic eyes to watch, he could only see a blindingly bright thunderbolt power, as if the white wolf was composed entirely of thunderbolts. This weird phenomenon had overturned Gong Shu Jie's previous perception. There were such living creatures in this world. The white wolf's body only had the thunderbolt power, no demon power. Could it be a legendary ancient divine beast? Gong Shu Jie was a little nervous. Those divine beasts were not human nor demons or monsters. They were born with divine powers, powerful beyond the perception of common sense. They were hidden deep in mountains and swamps, and they usually had eccentric temperament. But if it was an ancient divine beast, why was it willing to be a small mountain god in this remote cold feather mountain? He did not understand. What Gong Shu Jie saw today had broken his past decades of perception. Now he could only bow and salute, said, I came here to pursue a devil seed. I was attracted by the movement of the heavenly thunderbolt, and I did not mean to disturb your practice. Please forgive me. Gong Shu Jie first illustrated the cause and effect, wanting to resolve possible misunderstandings. Demons and beasts felt offended when they were disturbed by outsiders during their practice. In fact, with Gong Shu Jie's identity as a Wuzhu, even in the face of those famous mountain gods, there was no need to be overly concerned. But the white wolf in front of him was not an ordinary mountain god, because the heavenly thunderbolt could not hurt him. However, after hearing Gong Shu Jie's respectful words, the huge white wolf only glanced at him coldly and nodded his head. I know. After saying that, the white wolf jumped into the ground and disappeared from Gong Shu Jie's view. This ambiguous answer made Gong Shu Jie feel dumbfounded. Did the mountain god forgive him? After hesitating for half a second, Gong Shu Jie finally remained in the place, not daring to leave without permission. He wanted to wait for the ancient divine beast to return before apologizing. This ancient divine beast was so fierce, if it was evil, he was afraid that the whole Fire Pass country was going to suffer. Gong Shu Jie did not dare to take the risk. However, Lu Hang, who had disappeared into the ground, had no time to pay attention to the uneasiness in Gong Shu Jie's heart. Now his body was filled with a huge amount of thunderbolt power that was ready to burst. He only wanted to quickly digest the thunderbolt power in his body to avoid exploding. Last month when he absorbed the heavenly thunderbolt power, he did not control the amount, so he was overwhelmed by the surge of thunderbolt power to the point it cracked his skin and flesh. He took a long time to recover. This time he didn't expect to absorb even more thunderbolt power. This method of absorbing thunderbolt power cultivation was good, but it was so difficult to control its amount. Chapter 13 Underground in the mountain god temple, Lu Heng once again entered into a state of deep cultivation, continuously digesting the thunderbolt power in his body. The thunderbolt power surged in his body and slowly merged into his flesh and blood. By now, the presence of demon power could no longer be found in Lu Heng's body. Because during this half-year's cultivation, with more and more thunderbolt power in his body, the original quantity of demon power was driven away and rejected by the surging thunderbolt power. The demon power finally shrunk completely into the sea of qi where the power is stored and solidified into a small ball. Therefore, the power surging in Lu Heng's body has completely turned into the thunderbolt power. If he did not keep the appearance of a giant wolf, no one would have taken him as a demon if they sensed him by power alone. As for the human Wuzhu who suddenly appeared outside, Lu Heng was actually a little worried. In the wolf demon's remaining memory, Wuzhu was the most dignified person in a city. He was in charge of the incense, offerings and sacrifices of a city. Usually, a Wuzhu was many times more powerful than a demon like the white wolf in the remote mountains. 
If a small demon encountered a wuju, it would either turn around and run or kneel down and beg for mercy. A demon couldn't even have the thought of resistance, because the gap between the two sides was too great. So Lu Heng chose to disappear into the ground quickly, he not only wanted to stabilize the collection of thunderbolt power, but was also afraid that the wuju would subdue him. However, in the process of cultivation, Lu Heng could feel that the wuju outside did not leave. Lu Heng was immediately shocked in his heart, could it be that this wuju was determined to get rid of him? Otherwise why was he guarding him outside? But after thinking about it carefully, Lu Heng felt that it was not quite right. If the wuju really wanted to subdue him, he would have done it already. Even if Lu Heng dived into the ground, the wuju should have a way to force Lu Heng to come out. On the contrary, the wuju had a modest attitude, and his words could even be said to be respectful to the extent that he did not want to fight with Lu Heng. Considering his status as a city wuju, it could not simply be to amuse Lu Heng. Then, why? The more Lu Heng thought about it, the more he thought something was wrong. Maybe the wuju was scared by the scene of absorbing the heavenly thunder. Maybe he thought Lu Heng was some kind of terrifying demon. That's why he didn't dare to make a move rashly. Such a conjecture emerged in his mind, but Lu Heng was not very sure. He knew that absorbing heavenly thunder seemed scary, but in reality it only looked scary. Lu Heng absorbed the thunderbolt power and transformed it into his own power, although it would become more pure, the amount was much less. Lu Heng cultivated for half a year and absorbed one heavenly thunder after another, but not much of it was really transformed into his own power. Not to mention fighting with a wuju, the amount was far from the white wolf's original demon power. Even if he had developed the heavenly thunder cultivation method, it was only potential and had not yet grown. He suspected that if he really fought with the wuju, he would be killed in one move. But Lu Heng hid in the ground for a full hour, and the violent thunderbolt power in his body had stabilized. The wuju named Gong Shu Jia was still waiting outside and did not leave, seemingly determined to guard outside until Lu Heng came out. Lu Heng had a headache. Emotionally, he was not willing to have any contact with this wuju. He was a demon, and Gong Shu Jie was a wuju to subdue demons. If they were in conflict, his little life seemed to be doomed. But if he did not go out soon, it was estimated to be bad luck. Thinking of the scene that the wuju was angry because he was hiding from him, and then killed him with one move, Lu Heng couldn't calm down. Forget it, just go out and ask him what the hell is going on. Lu Heng sighed slightly, leaving the ground, the body was quickly floating up. Finally, once again appeared in front of the mountain god temple. The light was dull around the forest in the afternoon. The huge swirling clouds in the sky enveloped the forest, blocking out the hot sunlight and making heaven and earth appear gloomy. The black-robed Wuju was sitting cross-legged under a tree. His eyes slightly closed, seemingly in deep meditation. The small snake hanging on his earlobe was asleep and no longer wriggling. The moment Lu Heng appeared, Gong Shu Jia immediately opened his eyes and stood up. Greetings, Cold Feather Mountain God, Gong Shu Jia took a fist and palm salute. With Gong Shu Jia's status, making such a gesture showed a great respect. Lu Heng was sure that he was really shocked by the sight of him absorbing the heavenly thunderbolt. Though Gong Shu Jia was humble, Lu Heng did not dare to play the big tail wolf. He said politely, Master Wu Zhu, my name is Lu Heng, now I am considered as the mountain god of this cold feather mountain. What can I do for you? Because of his overly large size and beastly body, Lu Heng could not salute like the Wu Zhu, and could only use words to express his goodwill. Gong Shu Jie did not dare to be arrogant and took a fist and palm salute again, you don't have to say that. I just see that the mountain god is protecting this location, so I feel respect in my heart and want to offer a talisman to make a good relationship. Then, Gong Shu Jie took out a bright yellow jade pendant, this is a mountain fixing talisman, and it can fix mountains and rivers. Although it is not very rare, it have some benefits if you wear it on your body. Please accept it. The moment Gong Shu Jie took out the jade pendant, the earth vein aura in this cold feather mountain seemed to react. As the god of Cold Feather Mountain, Lu Heng was even more clear of the effectiveness of it. This was not just some benefits. This mountain-fixing talisman was really a treasure for a mountain god. 
With this mountain-fixing talisman, Lu Heng's power and strength as well as his cultivation speed could be increased by several grades. If the original wolf demon had seen this mountain-fixing talisman, it would have been so greedy that he would have knelt down and taken it. What did Gong Shu Jie want to do when he gave such an expensive gift? Lu Heng looked at the bright yellow jade pendant for a while. And he could feel the rich earth spirit power inside the pendant. He shook his head. Thank you for your kindness. But this talisman is of no use to me, and without merit, I cannot accept this treasure. Lu Heng originally did not want to be a mountain god, and with the heavenly thunder cultivation method he could not use this piece of jade. And if he really accepted such a valuable treasure, he would owe a big favor later. What's more, if Gong Shu Jie found out that Lu Heng was not that strong, would he felt cheated and annoyed. A wise man will not not stand under a dangerous wall. Lu Heng did not want to covet a treasure that could not be used, or add a possible future enemy. Chapter, 14 The White Wolf's refusal did not surprise Gong Shu Jie. He understood that the ancient divine beast in front of him did not care about the mountain god position. In this world, there were indeed some demon cultivators who were willing to be a mountain god or a water god. They received some incense, and relied on the spiritual energy of the earth's veins to cultivate. But the ancient divine beasts were not like them. The heavenly thunder that demon cultivators feared was only the basis of ancient divine beasts' cultivation. It was just a passing cloud for these divine beasts that existed for a long time. Gong Shu Jie did not offer this piece of jade pendant for a potential reward, but simply because the only thing he could use to get close to the ancient divine beast was this mountain fixing talisman. Since the divine beast did not accept it, he had no other treasures. After taking back the jade pendant, Gong Shu Jie had no better words to say for a while. He wanted to ask the beast why he wanted to take incense here but he was afraid that he would break some taboo because of rashly asking. So Gong Shu Jie just stood in the same place, didn't say anything. The atmosphere suddenly fell into a strange deadlock. It was a good thing that someone helped him out at that moment. In the forest, there was a young girl panting sharply and running towards the mountain god temple. Although the distance was still far away, both Lu Hang and Gong Shu Jie sensed it. A man and a wolf looked in that direction at the same time. Gong Shu Jie was a little surprised, this Qi seemed to be somewhat familiar. As the mountain god, Lu Heng knew better who was coming. The mountain god sign, which carried some of his power, was still on the girl. Lu Heng slightly sensed it, and the mountain god's power was directly activated. The little girl who was running in the forest suddenly felt a huge change in the surrounding scenery, all the trees on both sides were falling backwards so fast that they even turned into a blur of shadows. Everything in her field of vision was spinning rapidly, and the colorful scenery completely messed up her eyes. Xiao Ai stared at this magical scene with wide eyes, and before she could react, she found that all those blurry shadows had disappeared. She was standing in front of a huge white wolf, and behind the white wolf, it was the familiar mountain god temple. She stared in shock, almost suspecting she was hallucinating, Lord Mountain God. She was clearly a long way from the mountain god temple. How could she suddenly arrive at the place in an instant? Could it be the Lord Mountain God brought her here? The giant wolf nodded calmly and said, It's me. He lowered his head, gazed at the little girl and asked, You rushed into the forest, did some urgent matter happen in the village? Lu Heng's inquiry made the girl come back to her senses and remember the purpose of her trip. Her expression was a little anxious, Lord Mountain God, there is a wuzhu outside the mountain, he said he came here to pursue demons. The girl's anxious expression showed that she was actually concerned about Lu Heng's safety. She was not even caring that her words would offend the mountain god as a demon. The girl's words did not make Lu Heng react, but Gong Shu Jia on the side was so scared that his whole body was dripping sweat. There must be a misunderstanding in this matter. Gong Shu Jia was so anxious that he hurriedly opened his mouth and interrupted the girl's words, fearing that the girl would say something again. Lord Mountain God, I really came here in pursuit of a devil seed that escaped from the city, and I definitely did not come for you. When he gave that talisman for the mountain god, he thought he had managed to get closer to this cold feather mountain god and make the atmosphere a little more cordial. If he did not explain clearly, 
he may have a conflict with this mountain god and suffer an unwarranted disaster because of a misunderstanding. And Gong Shu Jie's defense caused the girl in front of the giant wolf to freeze for a moment. Xiao Ai turned around, only to find Master Wu Zhu and not far behind her. The girl was so scared as to scream on the spot. I actually said those words in front of Master Wu Zhu. Master Wu Zhu had heard what I said. Master Wu Zhu had actually found Lord Mountain God. The girl's face was pale and she backed up repeatedly. She was so dumbfounded that she didn't even hear what Gong Shu Jie was saying. Probably only Lu Heng was the most calm one among them. He stretched out his huge paw and gently pulled the little girl to his side and said, Don't be afraid, this Wu Zhu doesn't mean any harm. He is not here to trouble me either, you don't have to worry. Seeing that the little girl had calmed down a bit because of his reassurance, Lu Heng then looked at the Wu Zhu not far away and said, Sorry for the little girl's impoliteness. Lu Heng's words made Gong Shu Jie feel relief. He waved his hand and said, Never mind. This girl's brave heart is praiseworthy. And it is indeed a good deed for Sir Mountain God to have this believer. After seeing Lu Hang's attitude toward the little girl, Gong Shu Jie finally let go of the worry in his heart. Although this divine beast was mysterious and powerful, it was so caring to an ordinary human child. Therefore, it was not the vicious and malicious type of divine beast. This powerful divine beast, they must be close to nature and have good temper because they were willing to descend to this cold feather mountain to take incense and shelter the villagers. After all, among the divine beasts, the kind that was vicious was the mainstream. Now that Gong Shu Jie's speculation had been verified, the fear in Gong Shu Jie's heart was put down. The divine beast in front of him was so easygoing, so he shouldn't worry about it coming down into the world and bringing disaster. But even so, it did not mean that Gong Shu Jie dared to neglect the ancient divine beast. He decided that after coming down from the mountain, he would immediately inform the Wuzus of several large cities near the Cold Feather Mountain. They could share their experiences. In any case, the Fire Pass country cannot offend the ancient divine beast in the mountain and must treat it carefully. What's more, this ancient divine beast had the power of ruling the heavenly thunder. This divine power was so rare, even among the powerful ancient divine beasts, this Lu Heng was the strongest one. The expression on Gong Shu Jie's face became more serious as he thought this, and he didn't dare to be the least bit disrespectful in his behavior. He was determined to leave a good impression in the mind of Lu Heng. Chapter, 15 Gong Shu Jie's attitude was humble and respectful, completely different from that of a mighty master Wu Zhu in the old people's stories. The little girl who witnessed everything was a bit stunned by this. In the old people's stories, when demons encountered the city's master Wu Zhu, they could only run away with their tails between their legs. If Shuaxing village was not remote and was blessed with a master Wu Zhu, the white wolf in the mountain would not dare to bully people at all. The old people occasionally discussed the white wolf like this. Therefore, Xiao Ai always believed that compared to a master Wu Zhu, the Lord Mountain God was weak. This was the reason why she hurriedly headed here. But now the girl found that the situation was not quite the same as the old people had said. It was clear that the Lord Mountain God was more powerful than this Master Wu Zhu facing the Lord Mountain God. Although she did not know the world too much, she could distinguish between the strong and the weak. Now seeing the friendly conversation between the Lord Mountain God and this Master Wu Zhu, the girl was completely sure of one thing. That is, the village elders were all talking nonsense. They didn't know the Lord Mountain God at all. They said that the Lord Mountain God settled in the mountain to oppress mortals, forcing everyone to offer incense and sacrifices. And he was a man-eating demon. However, after the village people sacrificed her to the Lord Mountain God, he did not want to eat her at all. He just let her go. And on her way back to the village, the Lord Mountain God ordered the monkeys to follow and take care of her. On the contrary, the village adults, after seeing her return to the village, they tied her up and sent her back to the mountain, and scolded her for being greedy and afraid of death. In the end, it was the Lord Mountain God who did her justice. And now, this Master Wu Zhu also did not make a move to subdue the demon. How could the Lord Mountain God be a vicious demon that eats people? The real Lord Mountain God was definitely not like the village adults said. 
and she decided that after returning to the village, she must find a way to eliminate everyone's prejudice of the Lord Mountain God, to let everyone understand that the Lord Mountain God was not as terrible as they thought. She made this decision with firmness of will. At this time, Lu Hang and Gong Shu Jie's conversation also came to a conclusion. The black-robed Wu Zhu bowed his head, in that case, I will go back to pursue the devil seed. The huge white wolf nodded calmly, please, Wu Zhu Gong Shu. Seeing Gong Shu Jie rising from the wind and disappearing from view, Lu Hang finally sighed with relief. The conversation with Gong Shu Jie did not involve anything important. Both sides were wary of each other, so what they talked about was basically related to the devil seed that Gong Shu Jie was hunting. The devil seed was in the vicinity of Thousand Needle City, and after it was defeated by Gong Shu Jie, it fled to this direction. Now Gong Shu Jie has lost it, he could only feel that the devil seed was hiding near the cold feather mountain. Gong Shu Jie thought that the devil seed was scared by the spiral clouds over the cold feather mountain and did not dare to appear. It may hide in the body of some living creature. Next, he had to search around the cold feather mountain for a long time, so he told Lu Hang in advance and wanted to get Lu Hang's permission. After Lu Hang allowed him to investigate the mountain, he left the mountain god temple. The conversation between them was not long, but Lu Hang still had a general idea of this black-robed Wuzhu. He thought that Gong Shu Jie's way of thinking seemed a bit different from normal people. During the conversation, Gong Shu Jie gave Lu Hang the feeling that he was somewhat similar to some kind of nerd who stayed at home all the time, almost insulated from socializing, and not very good at communicating with strangers. So Gong Shu Jie wanted to ask but did not directly ask Lu Hang's origin. He was just like a topic terminator. No wonder this guy behaved so cautiously, it seemed he was also clear about his weakness of not being good with words, and was afraid to accidentally offend Lu Hang. Shaking his head, Lu Hang then lowered his head to look at the girl at his feet. In the process of his conversation with Gong Shu Jie, the little girl had been standing at his feet, not moving, very well behaved. Now seeing Lu Hang look down, the girl kowtowed quickly to salute. But Lu Hang's front paw flicked and a breeze blew, and the girl could not kneel down. There is no need to kneel in front of me, Lu Hang said, and no need to kneel in the future. The girl froze for a moment, feeling the invisible breeze in the air that restricted her movement, and nodded her head. Lu Hang then began to ask, Wu Zhu Gong Shu said he met you outside the mountain about an hour ago. That is, after you met Wu Zhu Gong Shu, you immediately came into the mountain to inform me. Were you afraid that I would be killed by Wu Zhu Gong Shu? The girl subconsciously nodded, but then hastily shook her head. No, I know that Lord Mountain God is divinely powerful, surely. Okay, stop it, Lu Hang interrupted the girl and said, stop these fake words. Even if you really said something to make me angry, I will not eat you. Even if I want to eat people to cultivate, you are not enough to fill the gap between my teeth. Lu Hang's words were the truth. Since he used the heavenly thunder to cultivate in the past six months, his body size had become larger and larger. Originally he was only two meters high, but now he was taller than the mountain god temple. This little girl was small enough for him to swallow in one gulp. Xiao Ai then timidly smiled and lowered her head. Lu Hang looked at her, thought about it and said, You are not afraid of me, it is a bit surprising. I thought all the people in your Shueisheng village were the same. Okay, take out the mountain god sign, I'll give you something. Hearing Lu Hang's command, the girl hurriedly took off the mountain god sign and respectfully handed it to the mountain god. But Lu Hang did not take it, he just looked down at the small mountain god sign, slowly inhaled a breath and then exhaled. A ray of wish power along with the wind went into the mountain god sign. Xiao Ai saw a flash of emerald green light, and then the mountain god sign no longer felt cold. The girl was a little surprised, though she did not know what happened. Lu Hang also did not explain, you can go back. With this mountain god sign, the mountain beasts will not attack you. After saying that, Lu Hang dived into the ground again and continued to cultivate. He had not yet absorbed the thunderbolt power in his body. He just barely stabilized it, so he had no time to delay. As for the wish power he gave the little girl, it would enable the little girl to be less sick. 
Lu Heng did not mind giving her some rewards because of her good intention. Anyway, he would not use the wish power from now on. Chapter 16 After moving away from the range of the mountain god temple, Gong Shu Jie once again turned back to look at the cloud behind him. The huge spiral cloud above the main peak of the Cold Feather Mountain was still slowly rotating, with terrifying flashes of lightning from time to time. But there was no heavenly thunder striking down. For the extremely evil Devil Seed, the spiral clouds above the Cold Feather Mountain was a terrifying power. The Devil Seed even in the daylight had a great probability of attracting heavenly thunder from the sky. Now it was so close to the vortex cloud, even a slight leak of its devil energy would certainly attract the lightning and get hit by the heavenly thunder. In order to hide its devil energy, the devil seed must dive into a body of some living creature. It probably thought that the vortex cloud over the cold feather mountain was attracted by some demon, so it could escape after the vortex cloud dispersed. The devil seed definitely could not imagine that it was an ancient divine beast controlling the heavenly thunder. These spiral clouds would not disperse simply because it was the foundation of the divine beast's cultivation. The devil seed's only choice is cocooning itself. Because of this, now, the devil seed must always hide in a living creature it possessed. If it leaves unprepared, it would quickly attract the heavenly thunder and die. This provided a great convenience for Gong Shu Jie's pursuit. Usually, a devil seed had a great probability of being inside a living person. And almost all people were living in the Shuatian village, so his pursuit range was small. Riding on the hot wind to fly out of the mountain, Gong Shu Jia landed directly in the field of Shuatian village. He scared the villagers who were working. Cripple AI. Look. A black robed ghost is flying from the sky. Wang Lao Lu shouted in a low voice with a frightened face, scaring Cripple AI to cover his mouth. Do you want to live? Cripple AI shouted, body sweating, don't say such things. The two people witnessed the scene of Gong Shu Jie falling from the sky. Even if he was too far to hear them clearly, Cripple AI was still frightened by the words of Wang Lao Lu around him. He decided that he would never ask this old bachelor to help him again. This guy had no gate on his mouth, sooner or later something terrible would happen. After Gong Shu Jie landed, he glanced at the faraway Cripple AI and Wang Lao Lu over there, and didn't say anything. He said to the villagers in front of him, I am a Wuzhu of Thousand Needles City, where is the village chief? I have something to ask him. When the villagers heard that it was a master Wuzhu, they became excited and hurriedly took Gong Shu Jie to the Shuaishin village to look for the village chief. When Gong Shu Jie followed these villagers, a large group of people followed behind him. Not only the villagers working in the fields in the village followed him, even the women washing clothes by the river also all gathered around. Everyone did not dare to get near the master Wuzhu, but only stay far behind to see him. They were curious about why the master Wuzhu ran to such a remote place. After the old village chief received the news, he went ahead to meet Gong Shu Jie at the village's entrance. The moment he saw Gong Shu Jie, the old village chief had already made a long bow, I have come, Master Wuzhu. Gong Shu Jie nodded and said straight to the point, I came here in pursuit of a devil seed and lost the whereabouts of that devil seed. I hope the village chief can cooperate with me to find it, otherwise if it is lurking, it will surely harm people. The old village chief glanced at Gong Shu Jie's earlobe and nodded his head, of course. We are all at the command of Master Wuzhu. When he saw the two small snakes hanging on Gong Shu Jie's earlobes, the old village chief confirmed the identity of the Wuzhu in front of him. He had twice seen Wuzhus in the city afar when he went into the city, and knew that a Wuzhu would always have two strange snakes hanging on his earlobes. Even if he was not a real Wuzhu, he must listen to him because the village people said that this black-robed man came from the sky. Clearly they could not offend this powerful man. With Gong Shu Jie's request, the old village chief called for people to gather in the village. Men and women, the young and the old gathered at the grain farm at the entrance of the village, even the newborn babies must be brought out. And all of them looked up at the master Wuzhu on the clay stage. They were whispering and full of curiosity. After the old village chief talked with his son, he hurriedly went to Gong Shu Jie's side and bowed his hand, all the villagers of Shuaishing village are here, please give your order. 
Sitting on the stage, Gong Xu Jie then opened his eyes and looked down at the villagers. He did not explain too much, directly opened his magic eyes to lock the villagers below the stage and spoke, let them come up to the stage one by one and pass in front of me, I will check whether the devil seed is possessing them. The old village chief nodded his head in a hurry and passed this order down. So the villagers of Shueisheng village went up to the clay stage one by one, and apprehensively passed in front of the master Wuzhu. When being watched by Gong Xu Jie's magic eyes, everyone was nervous and afraid that the next second they would be designated as the devil seed. Fortunately, this did not happen even after the last villager walked by Gong Xu Jie. The villagers gathered below the stage whispered. The village chief and several clan elders looked at each other. Gong Xu Jie frowned his eyebrows, and his magic eyes was constantly sweeping in the crowd. Village chief, are you sure that all the villagers of Shueisheng village are here? Ah. Uh. The old village chief talked difficultly, actually there is still one girl missing, but that girl. The village chief stopped here. Gong Xu Jie's voice seemed calm but implied pressure, go ahead. The village chief then seemed to have the courage to say in a low voice, this matter is not really a secret. For Shueisheng village, it is a scourge. There is a mountain god in the cold feather mountain next to Shueisheng village. Eighty years ago, a rich merchant was saved by the white wolf in the mountain, and in order to repay the favor, the rich merchant financed the construction of the mountain god temple and opened incense for the white wolf. Since then, for eighty years, the white wolf has been located in the cold feather mountain, forcing us villagers to offer tribute to it in the name of the mountain god. Although we were reluctant, we had to meet its demands and offer three sacrificial offerings every New Year's Day. But half a year ago, the white wolf suddenly asked us for boys and girls, otherwise the village would be destroyed. We had no choice but to draw lots to decide a girl and offer her in exchange for a moment of peace. But after the girl was offered, she was not killed by the white wolf. Afterwards, the white wolf even led the girl back to the village to continue to live with us. We do not even know whether the girl is a demon now. We are all careful and we do not dare to offend her, more afraid to anger the white wolf into eating people, so. The village chief said hesitantly and fearfully, the girl is not coming here now, and we have not found her whereabouts in the village. It is possible that when you arrived, the girl feared your divine power and had already fled into the mountains to seek help from the white wolf. The village chief's words carefully told a story about how a mountain demon terrorizes villages. This kind of story, in fact, was not uncommon. If many monsters and demons in remote areas had no suppression, they would become a scourge. And there were even some who made living people as blood meals for their cultivation. Gong Shu Jie was ordained to the position of Wuzhu for nearly a hundred years, and he had also killed similar demons. However, he did not trust the village chief now. Gong Shu Jie looked onto the cold feather mountain, and his eyebrows frowned tighter. There, the swirling clouds was in the sky, and the terrifying thunderbolt aura surged through the mountains and wilderness, and even in a great distance he could clearly feel the mighty aura. Are you sure, that white wolf personally asked you for the blood of the girl? Gong Shu Jie asked seriously. The village chief nodded his head, absolutely. That white wolf personally asked us for girls, otherwise there will be a disaster of exterminating the village, all the villagers know this. I would never dare to lie to you. After saying that, the village chief looked at the Wuzhu with expectation in his eyes. But at that moment, a little girl's voice came from outside the village. Nonsense. They are talking nonsense. This sudden shouting instantly attracted everyone's attention. The villagers looked back and saw a girl running towards the road of the village. As she ran, Xiao Ai shouted, Lord Mountain God doesn't eat people. What they say is a lie. They are liars. The girl's sudden appearance frightened the villagers and caused them to take several steps back, even before the girl entered the village. Among the villagers, someone shouted, she came out of the mountain. She came out from the wolf demon's temple. This demon girl has lured the wolf demon here. This terrified shout instantly spread fear among the crowd. The villagers all screamed in terror and retreated one after another. The wolf demon is coming. The wolf demon is coming. The wolf demon is coming down the mountain. Help me, Master Wuzhu. 
The villagers fled to the other side of the clay stage and all knelt down in fear, kowtowing to Gong Shu Jie, crying out and begging. Gong Shu Jie watched the girl walk into the village and slowly waved his hand, no need to panic. His voice was not loud, but it seemed to have a calming power, and the villagers who were panicking gradually calmed down. Finally, Xiao Ai slowly walked into the village when she could only hear the wind whistling at the entrance of the village. She faced up to those villagers who were staring at her, as well as the Master Wuzhu on the clay stage. You lie. Lord Mountain God does not eat people at all, and I am not a demon. Chapter, 17 After the girl's voice came out, the people at the entrance of the village all looked at each other. The strange silence lasted for several seconds. Gong Shu Jia on the clay stage also did not say a word, just observed the reaction of the villagers. It was only after several seconds that someone in the crowd shouted in anger. You are the minion of that wolf demon, of course you speak for it. Master Wuzhu, this demon girl and the wolf demon are in cahoots, you can see that. The villagers shouted bitterly. And with the black-robed Wuzhu at their side, they had some sort of strength. However, Gong Shu Jie just watched all this happen and waited until the villagers were quiet before he asked the village chief. I ask you, village chief, after that white wolf opened incense in the mountain, besides forcing you to offer incense and sacrifice animals, has there been any other evil deeds? For example, hurting or eating people for no reason? Ah! Uh, there are no such acts! Said the old village chief in a small voice, we also do not dare to offend it. According to its requirements, we should worship its statue in our home, offer incense monthly, and offer three animals on New Year's Day. And even the village hunters did not dare to go near the location of the mountain god temple when they go into the forest, so indeed no villagers were eaten by it. Gong Shu Jia asked again, then when did the rumor about the white wolf eating people appear? It seems to me that everyone is certain that the white wolf will definitely come down and eat people. Did this rumor come about after he asked for the girl? Ah. Uh, this. The old village chief hesitated for a few seconds and seemed to be thinking about how to answer. Xiao Ai then spoke directly to answer, the village adults have been saying this for a long time. The girl glared at the old village chief on the stage and said loudly, when I was very young, I already heard the village adults say so. They all said that if children disobeyed, they would be carried away and eaten by the wolf demon in the mountains. They said it a long time ago. Gong Shu Jie looked at the old village chief, is that true? The old village chief was sweating, but he could only admit it, yes, but that is only to coax children. It cannot be taken seriously. Besides, although the wolf demon doesn't eat people, it has forced us to offer incense and satisfy its unreasonable demands. There is no fire god statue in the whole village, all of them have been forced by the white wolf to be replaced by his own statues. One of the most important duties of a wuzhu was to take charge of incense and offerings of the fire god. Now a mountain demon forced the villagers to abolish the worship of the fire god, which was an intolerable crime for a wuzhu. When Gong Shu Jie heard such a thing, his expression couldn't help but be serious. However, he did not immediately become furious and then went into the mountain to get rid of the demon as the village chief thought. Instead, a look of inward illumination came into his eyes. So that's it. Gong Shu Jie thought about it and looked at the little girl who was cursed and ostracized by the whole village, and asked, Little girl, let me ask you, is it true that there is no more statues of the fire god in this village? Xiao Ai hesitated for a moment, and finally could only nod her head stiffly, Yes, there is indeed no statues of the Lord Fire God in the village. Only then did Gong Shu Jie look at the old village chief and asked, after that white wolf forced you to make offerings, in the past eighty years, has this Shuaxing village ever had a disaster, like a bad famine? Have the beasts in the mountains ever come down to eat the villagers? Is there other demons wreaking havoc and killing people? Ah! Uh. The old village chief thought about it and hesitantly shook his head, no, since I can remember, the village has indeed not had a disaster. The beasts in the mountains have not come down to eat people, and no demons other than the white wolf have been seen. When he continued saying, the old village chief's voice couldn't help but be lowered. Gong Shu Jie nodded, some kind of guess in his heart was verified, in that case, then the truth is obvious. 
The fact that a small remote mountain village has not had any calamity for eighty years proves that although the white wolf has been taking your incense, it has also performed the duties of the mountain god and given you shelter. As for the rumors of eating people, it was just your speculations, and no one has ever been really eaten by the white wolf. Even the girl it asked you to sacrifice was returned intact. If what I expect is correct, this is probably a warning. Gong Shu Jie said, I have actually seen the white wolf in the cold feather mountain. I can tell you all clearly that it is definitely not the mountain demon you perceive, but an incomparably noble beast. The wish power you offer is not even a piece of cake for him. And in my contact with him, I can see that he does not want to be the mountain god, and does not care about the mountain god position and your wish power. With his noble status, he has been guarding this mountain and has been bestowing blessings upon you for eighty years. Is this not noble enough for you? No. You just don't know how to be grateful. You have been slandering him for years and years, damaging his reputation. If he had a bad temper, I'm afraid this Shuashin village would have been destroyed. Gong Shu Jie shook his head and said, and looking at your attitude, I'm afraid that even your offerings were not heartfelt. Though these offerings can provide wish power for him, there's not enough for it to be useful for him. So with all this, I suspect that the mountain god asked you to offer the girl for nothing but a warning. Otherwise, he has been in the mountain for eighty years and has not eaten anyone every year, why did he suddenly ask you to offer the girl this year? And after you offer the girl, he just let her go back to the village. How can you not see such a simple warning? After the girl returned, not only did you not stop slandering the mountain god, but intensified it and even tried to ask me to subdue the demon. Do you know what will happen to you if this is known by the mountain god? The more Gong Shu Jie spoke, the harsher his tone became, making the old village chief to sweat and shiver. And not only the old village chief was frightened, all the villagers who heard these words were all frightened. They looked in the direction of Cold Feather Mountain in fear, watching the huge vortex clouds hovering in the sky. The words of Gong Shu Jie was echoing. The white wolf in the Cold Feather Mountain is an incomparably noble beast. If he had a bad temperament, the Shuashin village would have been destroyed. The old village chief with a full head of white hair knelt down directly, and pleaded loudly, Please Master Wuzhu, save our Shuashin village. As the old village chief knelt down, the villagers responded. In an instant, all the villagers near the entire clay platform all fell to their knees, loudly begging. Please Master Wuzhu, save our Shuashin village. When everyone fell to their knees, the only one who did not kneel down was Xiao Ai standing in front of the clay platform. Gong Shu Jie looked at her and asked, Why aren't you kneeling down and begging me? The little girl said in calm, As you said, if Lord Mountain God really got angry with us, Shuashin village would have been destroyed long ago. What's more, if begging was useful, I wouldn't have been sent to the Mountain God temple in the first place. Gong Shu Jie took a deep look and nodded, no wonder the mountain god regard you with special views. You are different from these villagers. Chapter, 18 What surprised Gong Shu Jie was not that this girl could have the courage to speak so eloquently in front of him. But that when this girl said these words, there was not even the slightest emotion of resentment and hatred toward those villagers. Generally speaking, being treated in this way, the girl should hate the village people. When she was chosen by the whole village to be sacrificed to the demon in the mountain, she was frightened. After escaping from the mountain, she was isolated and rejected by the whole village, and now everyone was accursing her as a demon girl. But now, Gong Shu Jie could not see such emotions on her face. What he saw, instead, was a kind of open-mindedness, as if no matter how the villagers misunderstand her, she did not care. To be honest, if this kind of aloofness appeared in an old man who had experienced all kinds of things in life, or in a monk who had went through a calamity, Gong Shu Jie would not be surprised. But she was just an uneducated girl from the mountains. She couldn't even read or write, yet she could have such a state of mind. Gong Shu Jie felt that he understood the reason why the mountain god cared for her, such an outstanding little girl did make people look at her differently. If not for the fact that this girl and the mountain god already had a relationship, Gong Shu Jie would even consider bringing her back to the Thousand Needles city to teach and train. Gong Shu Jie sighed in his heart, 
once again looked at the old village chief kneeling at his feet and said, Well, you have heard the conversation between me and this girl. If the mountain god would really bother with you, why would he wait for now? So you guys can get up, no need to kneel to me. What's more, with the power of the white wolf god, if he really gets angry and wants to come down from the mountain to punish you, I can't stop him at all. So there is no need to kneel, I cannot help you. Gong Shu Jie said these words blandly and calmly, but the villagers were scared by his words. The old village chief was even more frightened, looked once again in the direction of that cold feather mountain, then asked uneasily, Master Wu Zhu, is that lord? Lord Mountain God really so powerful? In the villagers simple view, a Wu Zhu of a city was already the top of the world. As long as there was a Wu Zhu, any mountain monsters and demons would have to flee in despair. But now even Master Wu Zhu claimed to be no match for the white wolf in the mountain. Could that white wolf really be so terrifying? The old village chief could not imagine what kind of a demon would be more formidable than Master Wu Zhu. Gong Shu Jie looked at the old man, and decided to tell the truth so that this group of villagers would not continue to do stupid things to offend the white wolf in the future. So he nodded and said, Yes, the white wolf in the mountain is so powerful. If you really provoke him, not to mention me, no one in the entire Fire Pass country will be able to handle the wrath of the god. Speaking of which, Gong Shu Jie couldn't help but sigh. He thought carefully about what the villagers had done and began to admire that white wolf's good temper. It was not surprising that ordinary demons tolerate villagers' slanderous rumors for the sake of collecting wish power, as long as the villagers can provide wish power anyway. But the white wolf clearly did not care about the small village's offerings, nor did it care about the wish power. In this case, the villagers were allowed to maliciously slander the god behind his back, and it took a full eighty years before he decided to give the villagers a little warning. And after the warning, this group of villagers not only did not repent, they even intensified their slander. But even so, the white wolf god was not angry. This cultured temperament was rare even among humans, not to mention the divine beasts. Now Gong Shu Jie completely put his mind at ease. As long as the Fire Pass country treats him sincerely, this divine beast will not be a scourge. With such thoughts in mind, Gong Shu Jie asked the village chief once again, You said that the reason why the mountain god opened incense here is a rich merchant's deed eighty years ago. Do you know the name of that rich merchant? Where does his family live? This rich merchant may be the reason why the white wolf god was willing to stay here. With the dignity of a divine beast, there must be a hidden reason about why he was willing to be the mountain god and shelter a place for eighty years. If Gong Shu Jie could find the rich merchant, he may be able to know what really happened eighty years ago, and he could also understand more about this mysterious white wolf god. But the villagers obviously could not answer this question. Even the village elders on the stage looked at each other with blank stares, let alone the youngsters and kids. After all, it was already eighty years ago that a temple was built and a shrine was established for the white wolf. Now the oldest village elder in the village was only two years old at that time, so even the old village chief knew nothing about this matter. About this. We really do not know, said the old village chief awkwardly, that was long time for me, and now the merchant had already gone to rest in peace. Master Wuzhu, I think it is difficult to find him. The old village chief's answer was a little disappointing to Gong Shu Jie. But he also understood that he could only sigh, that's right, eighty years is too long. But a voice suddenly rang out from the crowd at that moment. I know. I know the name of that rich merchant. Master Wuzhu, I know. This voice instantly attracted everyone's attention. Gong Shu Jie heard the voice and saw a strong man in the crowd holding up his hand and shouting loudly. The villagers around him, however, hurriedly reached out to pull him and said, Wang Lao Lu. You're talking nonsense again. Yes. Don't you see what kind of occasion this is? The villagers were all frightened by this hunter with a big mouth, and tried to pull him and cover his mouth. Gong Shu Jie waved his hand and said, Let go of him and let him talk. Even if he says the wrong thing, there is no harm. Hearing the Wuzhu's command, the villagers subconsciously looked at the old village chief. And only after seeing the old village chief nod, they silently let go of the strong hunter. And the hunter named Wang Lao Lu said proudly, 
a group of dog-eyed guys, when did I lie to you? The rich merchant who built the temple was named Wu Chonggu, and he was a native of Fushan. These messages are carved under the altar of the mountain god, but unfortunately you all can't read and write, so you don't know. After Wang Lao Lu finished his speech, he looked at the Wuzhu on the clay platform, Master Wuzhu, what I said is all true. You can go to the mountain god temple to check it out, and you will know whether what I said is true or not. Gong Shu Jie nodded, looked at him curiously, can you read? The hunter in front of him was dark-skinned, sturdy and strong, and did not talk like he could read. Wan Lao Lu laughed and said, I can't read a word. I'm just a rough guy. But there is an ugly widow in our village who can read and write, and I heard from her when she went into the mountain once for a sacrifice. Gong Shu Jie was suddenly surprised. In this remote village, it was almost impossible for someone to be literate, let alone a woman. He asked, where is this woman now? She died two years ago, but her daughter is still in the village, here she is, Wang Laolu said, pointing to Xiao Ai who was not far away. The Wuzhu was surprised to look at the little girl and saw the lost emotion on the girl's face. Could this girl's mother read and write? Was that woman from your village? Gong Shu Jia asked again. This time, all the people shook their heads and spoke in a variety of ways. No, that woman is from outside. When she was picked up by A.I. Changsheng, she later lived in the village. Two years ago she suffered from lung disease and died. At a young age. The villagers' various words allowed Gong Shu Jia to roughly sketch the image of a woman in distress. Since she had been educated, this woman's background would not be bad. Her face had a natural birthmark, and looked very ugly. She was somehow stranded in this remote mountain, nearly froze to death in the snow, and was picked up by a kind-hearted young man from the village, after which she married the young man who saved her and settled down here. But she died two years ago due to illness, and the young man who saved her life suddenly disappeared three years ago. The couple left behind only a daughter named Xiao Ai, who now lived with her father's older brother and his family. After understanding these things, Gong Shu Jie stopped the conversation and asked the old village chief to disperse the villagers gathered at the entrance. In the end, only a few village elders and the village chief's son remained. The old village chief looked at Master Wuzhu, and asked hesitatingly. Master Wuzhu, have you found the devil seed? The old village chief had not forgotten about this matter. Although they were most afraid of the white wolf in the mountain, they were also afraid of the devil seed. The old village chief was really worried that Master Wuzhu had forgotten about the devil seed because of the white wolf god. Gong Shu Jie obviously did not forget about it. He looked at the cold feather mountain in the distance and said. That devil seed is either hidden very deep and has been integrated into the spirit of the person who is possessed by it. Or I have lost it and it is not here at all. In short, I will stay here for a while. I will not leave until I confirm that the devil seed is not here, so you do not need to worry. The most important thing you should remember is that you should not slander the mountain god in the future. The wolf god is broad-minded and does not bother with you, but you cannot insult him. Gong Shu Jie's words were so severe that the elders nodded their heads, we understand, we understand. Only then did Gong Shu Jie nodded in satisfaction and walked towards the outside of the village, all right, you guys can disperse and do what you need to do. After saying that, Gong Shu Jie disappeared from the sight of the villagers, and did not give the villagers a chance to get close. The remaining villagers looked at each other. Someone asked, what should we do next? The old village chief stomped the walking stick in his hand and had a serious expression, naturally, we should listen to the master Wuzhu. Forbid the villagers from slandering Lord Mountain God again. In addition, the double ninth festival is coming up, and we must prepare seriously for this harvest festival. We absolutely can't muddle through like before. Since Lord Mountain God is not a demon, we should make offerings sincerely. Go back and tell everyone that from today on, every family should offer incense to Lord Mountain God every day. Chapter, 19 In the days after that, Gong Shu Jie stayed near Shueisheng village to pursue the devil seed. He did not stay in the village, nor did he contact the villagers. During the day, he roamed outside the village and in the mountain, 
walking with his feet over every inch of land and looking for every place where there might be a residue of demonic energy. At night, he found a clean place to sit down and closed his eyes to rest. As a wuzhu, he did not need to eat or drink. As for the ugly widow who died two years ago, he was curious but couldn't find more information. The Fire Pass country believed in the Fire God, and people would be cremated after death and their ashes were scattered into the rivers. In addition to knowing that the ugly widow's surname was Mu, it was impossible to ask for more useful information. He also visited the mountain god temple twice, indeed, under the altar of the god he saw the inscription left behind when the temple was built. However, he failed to see the white wolf again on both visits. The divine beast still seemed to be in cultivation, and only the huge vortex cloud above Cold Feather Mountain was slowly circling and seemed to be getting bigger and bigger. The villagers were busy, as the Double Ninth Festival was approaching, a time of harvest. They not only had to harvest the crops in the fields, but also needed to prepare offerings for the mountain god. The village chief ordered that this year's sacrifice could not be as casual as previous years, but needed to be more sincere, so the villagers were much busier than previous years. And Gong Shu Jie's stay time in this place had almost reached the limit. As the city Wuzhu, in charge of the fire god sacrifice, he must rush back to Thousand Needles City to preside over this year's harvest sacrifice in such a major festival. As for the Devil Seed, during these days, Gong Shu Jie had confirmed that the Devil Seed was not here. The reason why he still stayed was because he wanted to see Lu Heng before he left. However, the Cold Feather Mountain was always calm, and the Wolf God did not come out, so Gong Shu Jie could only sigh at this. On the fifth day of September, a flock of birds suddenly took flight in the Cold Feather Mountain and a long wolf howl came from afar. In the sky, vortex clouds surged, although no heavenly thunder struck down. It seemed that even the clouds in the sky were rejoicing at Lu Hang's appearance. Who? Finally. After emerging from the ground, Lu Hang once again returned to the surface. The feeling of having his feet on the ground made him feel happy. However, after he stepped on the earth, Lu Heng suddenly noticed a strange thing. Hmm. Why has the wish power within this mountain god temple suddenly increased? Lu Heng who perceived this was surprised. When he repaired the demon body before, the wish power that the original wolf demon had accumulated for 80 years was almost all consumed by him. The remaining wish power was all given to the girl named Xiao Ai. In theory, there should be no more wish power in the mountain god temple. The original wolf demon asked the villagers to offer incense to the clay statue of the wolf demon at home every twelve days. Now, it was not yet time for the next incense offering, there should be no incense in the mountain god temple. But after Lu Heng sensed it a little, he found that the quantity of the incense accumulated in the mountain god temple was even quite a lot. It was almost as much as the amount collected by the wolf demon in the past six months. Lu Heng was a bit confused, and after sensing carefully, he found that all these incense came from the Shueisheng village under the mountain. He was even more stunned. What's wrong with this group of villagers? Why did they suddenly become so devoted? Back then, the original wolf demon forced and enticed them with various means, and even used the power of the mountain god to guarantee the harvest of Shueisheng village, but he could only get a little incense. Now he Lu Heng did not do anything, how did the villagers suddenly become devout? Could it be that the village had some kind of disaster so this group of villagers wanted to ask for Lu Heng's blessing? Lu Heng checked these incense wishes, and found that these incense wishes did not contain that strong wish of pleading. That means the villagers were simply making offerings to him. Lu Heng thought carefully and felt that this matter was probably related to the Wuzhu, Gong Shu Jie. When he was cultivating underground, Lu Heng also felt that Gong Shu Jie entered the mountain twice. Lu Heng did not want to meet him again because he was not as powerful as Gong Shu Jie thought, so he did not show up. Now five days have passed by and the double ninth festival was coming up, Lu Heng thought he would go back to his city. In this world, the double ninth festival was a major festival and it was almost as important as the New Year's Spring Festival. However, Lu Heng suddenly felt a burning aura coming from outside the mountain and was rapidly approaching the place. Immediately after that, Gong Shu Jie's clear voice echoed in the mountain. Greetings to you, mountain god. Not long after, 
a black-robed figure came from outside the mountain on the wind and landed in front of the mountain god temple. With a smile on his face, the Wuzhu bowed his head. The huge white wolf looked at him speechlessly, and was silent for half a second before saying slowly, Hasn't Wuzhu Gongshu returned to Thousand Needle City yet? The Double Ninth Festival is coming. Gongshu Jie smiled and said, In fact, I am going to go back today, but I didn't expect to meet Mountain God before I left. It seems that my destiny with Mountain God is not yet finished. Lu Heng looked at him and asked, How many days does it take to travel from this place to Thousand Needle City? Six days, said Gong Shu Jie as he stood up straight, but if you travel day and night on the wind, you can arrive in three days. Well, you are really persistent. Lu Heng helplessly shook his head and said, Did you find that devil seed? The devil seed has not yet been found, but I have checked inside and outside the village and confirmed that the devil seed is not here. Said Gong Shu Jie, but the devil seed is tricky and unpredictable, perhaps there is some kind of secret technique that I do not know of. If Mountain God has any time, you can also pay attention to it. Okay, I will pay attention to it, Lu Heng looked at Gong Shu Jie, my temple is small and poor, and there is neither tea nor tables, chairs and benches. Oh, I have a group of monkeys that can make fruit wine. If you don't mind, I can ask them to bring the wine. Gong Shu Jie smiled, I have also heard of the name of fruit wine, but have never tasted it. Now I'm lucky to have the chance. Good, then let's leave this place. Lu Heng gently tapped the ground with his front paw and used the mountain god's power to transmit the order to the monkeys in the mountain. Then he turned around and walked towards the main peak behind the mountain god temple. Lu Heng took one step, shrinking the ground into an inch, and then he and Gong Shu Jia appeared in the forest. With another step, the surrounding scenery changed again, and one man and one wolf were already standing at the top of the main peak of Cold Feather Mountain. Lu Heng stood on top of the mountain, overlooking the mountains and rivers beneath his feet, and said, Although there are no tables and chairs, the view is wide, so you can overlook the Cold Feather Mountain and see the village at a glance. Please wait for a moment, and the fruit wine will be offered. Gong Shu Jie stood at the top of the mountain. His feet stepped on the stones, and the mountain breeze blew on his face. He smiled, great. He sat on the ground and looked at the huge white wolf in front of him, feeling that this divine beast was indeed divine and extraordinary, significantly different from those fierce and brutal beasts in the legends. It might be a very good thing to have this divine beast in the Fire Pass country. Chapter 20 The huge vortex cloud was still suspended in the sky, slowly rotating. Within the vortex cloud, there were flashes of lightning from time to time. But there was no real heavenly thunder falling, and it seemed to be just ordinary rain clouds. Under this thunderstorm, even Gong Shu Jie also felt a little pressure. If the white wolf was an ordinary demon, it would have been scared to the bone and unable to move. Thinking of this, he could not help but sigh, once again looking at the forest and river beneath his feet. The Cold Feather Mountain was remote and inaccessible, except for the Shueisheng villagers outside the mountain, there was no one around. The mountain range was also ordinary, and it was not a famous mountain. But with the existence of the White Wolf as a mountain god, this small Cold Feather Mountain instantly became extraordinary. This time, Gong Shu Jie simply wanted to make friends with this ancient divine beast, so he was no longer under pressure and his mind was also much calmer. He sat at the top of the mountain, talking with the white wolf beside him and chatting about some interesting things within the Fire Pass country. He also talked about some calamities he had experienced in the past. The atmosphere between them was very cordial. Soon, the monkeys brought in the fruit wine they had brewed. It was only two bottle gourds, so Lu Heng and Gong Shu Jie shared one each. The monkeys under you are smarter than ordinary monkeys, Gong Shu Jie said, drinking a mouthful of fruit wine, this wine is really delicious. In front of him, the huge white wolf gently tapped the gourd with its front paw, and the stopper of the gourd opened automatically, then some wine flew out from the gourd and entered the white wolf's mouth. Lu Heng nodded and said, it does taste good. Lu Heng was not good at drinking wine, but this wine brewed from a lot of fruits was different from ordinary liquor, and the fragrance of the fruit overpowered the spiciness of the alcohol. There was a slight sweetness after drinking, even Lu Heng, who did not like to drink, found it good. 
and the scene of using the thunder power to control the wine made Gong Shu Jie's eyes bright. Using ordinary magic power to control things was not something to be surprised about. What surprised Gong Shu Jie was that the power Lu Heng used was the thunder power. This means that the foundation of cultivation within this white wolf was not magic power at all. He could not only control thunder and lightning, but was also controlling the power of heavenly thunder. This ancient divine beast was really extraordinary. Gong Shu Jie's heart was shocked, only feeling that he had opened his eyes today. In the past, he had only heard the stories about legendary beasts, but today he looked at it firsthand. To control thunder and lightning was already very powerful, but filling it with the power of heavenly thunder means that the foundation of his Tao was thunder. In essence, compared to Lu Heng, those who refined earth aura into magic power like Gong Shu Jie did were not at the same level at all. Gong Shu Jie sighed, the power of heavenly thunder is really formidable. This cold feather mountain is going to become a forbidden area for those that are evil. If these vortex clouds do not disperse, no demon would dare to approach without permission. The only pity is that the vortex clouds obscure the sunlight, making the mountain seem a bit gloomy. Gong Shu Jie's words showed a subconscious emotion after he saw that. However, he regretted saying it, realizing that his words were inappropriate. Why can't he control his own mouth? But Lu Heng was not angry, nor did he feel offended. He tilted his head to look at the huge vortex cloud spinning overhead, and looked at the mountain with dull sky light under the cloud, and nodded his head. Indeed, these clouds are obscuring the sky too much. With a guest here, it's impolite of me to let the black clouds overwhelm the view. Please wait for a moment, Wu Zhu. After saying that, Lu Heng slightly closed his eyes and sank his mind to sense. As the thunder power in Lu Heng's body surged, the huge vortex clouds spinning in the sky seemed to be affected as well. Immediately after, the pitch black clouds rotated and surged continuously, and among the clouds, lightning flashed. Finally, in the middle of the spiral clouds, the black clouds slowly dispersed, revealing a gap and showing the turquoise sky above the cloud. Along the center of this gap bright sunshine came in, falling just on the peak of the cold feather mountain, and then falling on Luhang in Gongshu Jie. The main peak of cold feather mountain, which was originally gloomy, instantly became bright and sunny. Only then did Lu Heng open his eyes and said with a smile, so, that's the way to treat a guest. The golden sunlight at noon fell on the white wolf's body, as if every hair was shimmering and glowing. This divine and incomparable image made Gong Shu Jie dumbfounded, and his heart was shocked beyond words. The magic power in the white wolf's body was already very terrifying, completely breaking his perception of cultivation. But now it seemed that this white wolf can even control the thunder cloud. It means that as long as Lu Hein was willing, he could gather thunder clouds and send down heavenly thunder anytime and anywhere. This is not just a mere wielder of thunder. This is a lord of thunder. Gong Shu Jie was inwardly shocked and felt a little frightened. The thunder clouds had overawed people and demons since ancient times. Regardless of the righteous or evil, demons or monsters, even the birth of treasures may lead to the appearance of thunder clouds. The fear of the thunder clouds was deep in the heart of sentient beings under heaven and earth. Not to mention the evil people or demons, even virtuous people also had a risk of being struck by the heavenly thunder. So from ancient times to the present, countless knowledgeable people had tried to study the nature of the thunder clouds and heavenly thunder. But all the evidence pointed to the same truth, that is, there was no specific creature that can control it, this was common sense. But today, this common sense was broken. Gong Shu Jie looked at the white wolf god in awe and shock, and had a terrifying guess in his mind. In the past, he had never heard of anyone who could control lightning, let alone that the foundation of someone's body was the thunder power. And among those ancient divine beasts in the legends, it seemed that none of them were a white wolf in shape and can control thunder clouds. This white wolf maybe. Thinking of this possibility, Gong Shu Jie could not help but sweat on his palms and feel frightened inside. Maybe it is not just a divine beast. Chapter 21 Gong Shu Jie's heart was in awe because of his conjecture. But now, he dared not to ask, for fear that he might say the wrong words again. 
he could only try hard to stay calm and talk about some inoffensive anecdotes. At least, the white wolf god was easygoing. Even if he was really that kind of existence, there was no need to be too nervous. Gong Shu Jia gradually calmed down as he and Lu Heng had a cordial conversation. However, during the conversation, Gong Shu Jia found that the white wolf god really did not know much about the mortal world and could be said to have no common sense. For example, Lu Heng asked a question that made Gong Shu Jia unable to answer. Wu Zhu Gong Shu, I wonder if there are any immortal cultivation sects within this fire pass country? Lu Heng asked. This was something Lu Heng had long wanted to know about. Since there were demons in this world, then there must be a variety of immortal cultivation sects as well. Lu Heng wanted to know what those immortal cultivation sects thought about demons like him, as well as the strength level and distribution of these immortal cultivation sects. So as to prevent accidentally offending a powerful sect when he went down to the world in the future. After all, the wolf demon was only a small demon in the remote mountains and knew very little about the outside world, so it was almost impossible for Lu Heng to understand the world he was in. The specific details of this world would have to be explored by Lu Heng himself after all. However, after he asked this question, Gong Shu Jie was confused. Immortal Cultivation Sex Gong Shu Jie hesitated for a few seconds and asked, What is this? This answer from the black-robed Wu Zhu made Lu Heng pause for a moment. Could it be that there are no immortal cultivation sects in this world? Or no immortal cultivators? Or is it that the immortal cultivators in this world are not called that? After thinking about it, he said, Immortals are beyond death, and not involved in the mortal world. Neither do they receive incense, nor have the great calamity in their life. They are out of heaven and earth, and do not belong to the five elements. They are touring the world, free and carefree. And immortal cultivators are people who pursue to become immortals for their whole life. Immortal cultivation sects are collective organizations that inherit the cultivation method and guide those people with natural talent to enter the cultivation path and pursue the state of real free and true immortality. They usually rely on the cave heaven, or rely on the famous mountains and rivers, to establish a sect. They also subdue the demons and maintain the order of the world. This is the immortal cultivation sect. Lu Heng explained as much as he could, but after listening to it, Gong Shu Jie sighed repeatedly. So there were such sects that existed in the ancient times. Unfortunately, no such sects exist in this world today. Although in addition to the divine path, there are many schools of inheritance in the earthly world that cultivate the body and train the mind. But most of them have lost their original forms, and none of them can reach the level that can be described as immortals. If such sects really exist in the world, and if they can subdue demons and help maintain order in the world, perhaps my righteous path will be able to flourish. Gong Shu Jie's emotion came from the bottom of his heart. But Lu Hain was a little disappointed. In this world, is it true that there are no immortal cultivation sects? Not even immortal cultivators? After continuing to talk with Gong Shu Jie, Lu Hang learned that, even the concept of immortal does not exist. Although cultivation can achieve long life, but not immortality. The soul would return to earth when the life was over. As for the concept of heaven and hell and so on, it was completely absent. If a person died, except for the resentful ghosts, all souls would return to earth and cease to exist. There is no reincarnation, no concept of the immortal world. Even what kind of existence is the fire god worshipped in the fire pass country, it was difficult for Gong Shu Jie to explain. He only knew that it was an existence far above the mundane, sheltering the fire pass nation, a deity that will truly shelter one side. The order of this world was more chaotic than he imagined. The one in charge of maintaining order in the earthly world was the Wuzhu of each city. After Gong Shu Jie knew that Lu Hang had the intention to go down the mountain and enter the world, he gave Lu Hang a fire talisman, saying that with this fire talisman, he could travel unhindered in the fire pass country. The conversation between one man and one wolf lasted for more than two hours, and each of them felt that they had gained a lot. Lu Hang did not talk too deeply about the way of cultivation. After all, he was only a small demon, so he would not make a fool of himself in front of a city wuzhu like Gong Shu Jie. However, some topics that Lu Hang said casually shocked this wuzhu completely. 
After all, Lu Han once lived in the era of information explosion. In his previous life, the amount of information he received in a day was more than some ancient people had experienced in their entire lives. Although Gong Shu Jie as a Wuzhu was also considered to have experienced a lot, he was still shocked. He found that the white wolf god was like a moving treasure trove of knowledge. Although he did not know much about common sense in this world, he talked about more profound issues. Whether it was astronomy or geography, or the human history, or the way of order, this white wolf god knew a lot. His remarks were often thought-provoking and contained valuable philosophies. He usually talked concise and straight to the core of the problem at the same time. If Gong Shu Jie was once in awe and fear of Lu Hang, now he completely admired him. He was even more convinced that this white wolf god was not an ancient divine beast. Because the legendary divine beasts were simply powerful, they were not so bright. This white wolf god in the cold feather mountain was completely different, not only could he control the heavenly thunder, his wisdom was also excellent. Just about the words he said today, if it was spread, it would shock the world. His heavy knowledge and profound speech could compare to a first-class saint in ancient times. Before leaving, Gong Shu Jie bowed deeply, no longer having any fear for the divine beast in his heart. This salute was his admiration for Lu Heng as well as his gratitude for the preaching of the god. In just two hours of conversation, though they did not discuss much, Gong Shu Jie had a lot of insights. To him, the opportunity to sit and discuss with such a saint was unattainable. He was thoroughly convinced that the white wolf god in this cold feather mountain would not be a calamity of the Fire Pass Kingdom. A saint with such remarkable insight and knowledge was definitely not some evil creature who relied on his natural abilities to show off his viciousness. He could also probably understand why the villagers under the mountain were so disrespectful to the wolf god and the wolf god never reacted. It was not that wolf god was mild, but for a saint like him, his eyes were focused on the world. And what he saw was the beings in the whole world, so he would not limit it to one city or one place. The foolish villagers were probably only one of the thousand sentient beings to him. If all that he saw was heaven and earth, how could he be angry at the sound of small insects and birds? The wolf's state of mind had transcended to a realm beyond Gong Shu Jie's reach. Chapter 22 Lord Mountain God, I have gained a lot today. Please accept my gratitude. Before leaving, Gong Shu Jie made a deep bow towards the white wolf in front of him as a sign of respect. Lu Hang stood at the top of the mountain, and watched Wu Zhu departing with the wind. He was somewhat speechless. The conversation between the man and the wolf could originally be considered as ordinary small talk, which was about some anecdotes and folklore. But when they inadvertently talked about the situation of Thousand Needles City, Gong Shu Jie asked Lu Hang for advice. For Lu Hang, he did not know the livelihood of this world, but when he listened to some clan problems and management disputes that Gong Shu Jie casually complained about. He felt that the administrative way of this fire pass country was too primitive and rough. Although Lu Hang had never managed a country or a city, he had at least seen the process of human beings moving from the ancient slave society to the modern society step by step in history books. So, according to his memory, Lu Hang talked with Gong Shu Jie about those historical stories. At first, it was just a casual talk between two friends. Lu Hang also did not propose any detailed method of governance. After all, he was not good at management, so he was really just simply telling stories. But unexpectedly, Gong Shu Jie listened more and more seriously, and then asked similar questions. At that time, Lu Hang felt that something was wrong. After telling several historical stories, Lu Hang intended to digress from such topics, but Gong Shu Jie had to leave because it was already late. Looking at Gong Shu Jie's eager face before his leaving, Lu Hang's heart was a little apprehensive. I just told you some historical stories, what are you planning to do? Will this guy attract trouble when he returns to Thousand Needles City? Lu Hang was a bit speechless, because he did not know what Gong Shu Jie would do. Just intuition told him that after Gong Shu Jie went back, someone was going to be in trouble. Either Gong Shu Jie himself, or those old clans that Gong Shu Jie complained about. Never mind, this matter has nothing to do with me. Lu Hang stood atop Cold Feather Mountain, watching as Gong Shu Jie disappeared into the horizon, 
and heaved a long sigh. Lu Huang looked at the vortex clouds in the sky. Since the guest left, then the gap in the center of the clouds was not necessary. With Lu Hang's mind, the power of heavenly thunder in his body surged, and then silently connected with the vortex clouds in the sky. The black clouds slowly rotated and surged, and soon returned to its original shape again. The huge clouds shrouded the entire cold feather mountain above and lightning flashed. Clearly outside the mountain was a sunny day, but the sky here was dark, depressing, and gloomy. Lu Hang directly leaped down from the top of the mountain, and his huge wolf body fell hundreds of meters in height and landed on the land in front of the mountain god temple. Then he connected with the clouds, attracting lightning to strike down. Deafening thunder booms rang out again in the mountain. A series of heavenly thunderbolts fell on Lu Hang's body. In front of the mountain god temple, there was a flash of thunder and lightning. In this flashing lightning light, it seemed that even the color of the ground has become darker. This time, Lu Heng did not attract too much thunder, because in a short while it would be the double ninth festival, and he did not want to miss this festival. In the memory of the original wolf demon, on the double ninth festival, the villagers would offer three animal sacrifices. The three animal sacrifices were not only beneficial to cultivation, but also tasted delicious. Lu Heng did not care about the benefits of cultivation, after all, now his cultivation is based on the thunder power and three animal sacrifices would not help him. But he wanted delicious foods. In the last six months, his only food was the fresh fish in the river. And because there was no cooking conditions, he just swallowed them in one gulp. Lu Hang had been looking forward to the delicious and unusual three animal sacrifices in the wolf demon's memory for a long time. After receiving the lightning strike, Lu Heng didn't delay and dived into the ground to continue his cultivation. In order to be able to transform successfully as soon as possible, Lu Heng did not dare to be lazy. In the past six months, he repeated the process of attracting thunder and absorbing it. Although the cultivation time was not long, there were no bottlenecks in thunderbolt cultivation. Therefore, Lu Heng's cultivation speed could be said to be flying compared to other demon cultivators. It would take a long time to surpass the original wolf demon's 200 years of cultivation, but Lu Hang's future is bright and far-reaching. The Shueisheng villagers outside the mountain, on the other hand, were now bustling with activity. At the time of harvest, every household was busy. Villagers, both men and women, gathered in the fields outside the village to harvest the ears of rice. It was a busy and tiring process. The weather was still hot, so it was necessary to get up early and reap the ears of rice before the noon sun rose. At noon, people can rest for a while because of the scorching sun. And after working all morning, they also needed to rest. In the afternoon, when the sun was not so hot, the villagers, who had been refreshed, went to the fields again and continued harvesting. Bundle after bundle of the ear of rice was threshed, and the white, clean ear of rice mixed with the fragments of rice was carried away, while the threshed rice stalks were piled up in bundles in the middle of the fields. Some of these stalks were taken by the villagers to their homes to start fires, while the rest were left in the fields to fertilize them. This simple and mechanical process would take several days. When the harvest was over, most of the young and strong people in the village were exhausted. But after seeing the white rice grains at home, their faces were full of smiles. For the villagers in the remote mountainous area, it was the happiest thing in life to harvest a full barn of rice after a busy year. The only group in the village that did not participate in the harvest process were the village elders. Most of them were old, and it was difficult for them to catch up with the young people. On the other side, the preparation of the ritual was often the elders' responsibility. The ritual work used to be quite easy in the past, but this year was stressful for the old people. Realizing the high status of the mountain god, the villagers dared not take the ritual lightly. The warning from the master Wuzhu still seemed to be echoing in their ears, and coupled with the strict order from the old village chief, this year's harvest festival was the most solemn one in the whole Shueisheng village for decades. And with such tight preparations, the double ninth festival has finally come. Chapter 23 The double ninth festival was very important in this world. In Lu Hang's previous life, due to the change of times, people were not so interested in traditional festivals. 
However, in this world, no one dared to ignore the double ninth festival. This festival was related to harvest and sacrifice. Every year, the most solemn and grand rituals were held on the day of the double ninth festival. This world had the spring festival, too. Usually, the spring festival was a festival for people themselves, a festival of family reunion and celebration of the new year. On the other hand, the double ninth festival was for the god they worshipped. People needed to pay sacrifices and praise to the god. The villagers could afford not celebrating the spring festival, but never dared to ignore celebrating the double ninth festival. Even so, after the busy preparation, people felt very happy about the festival. Lu Heng just collected some sacrifices and took some incense. He did not contact those villagers. He stood on the main peak of Cold Feather Mountain, looking out at the busy group of villagers, and did not show up. Very early this morning, before the sun came out, the villagers of Shuaxing village had already went into the Cold Feather Mountain and came to the river bank at the foot of the main peak. Every year on the Double Ninth Festival, these villagers would carry all kinds of food, cooking tools, and ritual supplies to bring to the river bank. This river flew through Shuaxing village and Cold Feather Mountain and disappeared at the other end of the Cold Feather Mountain. It went around the mountain and formed a river bay at the foot of the main peak, where there are a lot of plants and fishes. The villagers started the stoke and light the fire at the river bay. They had to start cooking all kinds of food they brought, including chickens, goats, vegetables and fruits. So to speak, they were very busy. In addition to the three sacrificial offerings prepared for Lu Heng, the villagers had to prepare meals for themselves. On the double ninth festival, they would stay at this river bay for a whole day until the sun sat in the west, and the stars and moon were high in the sky, and they would leave after nightfall. In the tradition of the villagers, this was a ritual for the god. They were also singing and dancing at the foot of the mountain, praying to the god for good weather and rain in the coming year. The original wolf demon found the villagers' program interesting and would hide in the mountain to watch. However, Lu Heng thought that the sadness and happiness of humans and demons were not similar, so Lu Heng only felt that these villagers were so noisy. And as a spectator, Lu Heng found that the number of villagers in Shuaxing village were more than he thought. In Lu Heng's world, ordinary villages usually only had a dozen or twenty families. However, the villagers here were roughly estimated to be four to five hundred people. In the memory of the wolf demon, Lu Heng knew that this world was rampant with demons and fierce beasts. Most of the human settlements were large in number, because there were more people to fight against the fierce beasts. When the young and strong people of Shuaxing village went into the mountain before, there were dozens of them, so Lu Heng knew that the villagers were quite a few. But now after he saw the whole village, he realized that the number was much bigger. If it was in Lu Hang's original world, a small remote village would definitely be unable to feed such a large population. But this world wasn't quite the same, with the blessing of a god, the crops in the land would always have a good harvest. In addition to the abundance of fruits, vegetables and animals in the mountain, as long as the village hunters could hunt one or two fierce beasts, they could provide food for the whole village. In such an environment where there was no shortage of food, a small Shuaxing village could support so many people. And as for the big cities and towns outside the mountain, there would be more humans and monsters. Thinking of this, the desire to travel the world was becoming even bigger. He was eager to see the customs that he was completely unfamiliar with, and how they differed from his original world. But with his current cultivation progress, it would take several years. Lu Heng sighed. At noon, the villagers finally had prepared the offerings. And under the leadership of the old village chief and a group of clan elders, the villagers sent the offerings to the mountain god temple. However, the person who walked to the front and led the way was unexpected by Lu Heng. The leader was not the elderly village chief, but the girl called Xiao Ai. Under Lu Heng's gaze, the little girl coldly walked in front of the team. Although she was not wearing the original big red wedding dress, the cloth she wore now was far better than the clothes of the villagers behind her. It was a dress that the villagers specially prepared for the ritual. Leading the villagers to the mountain god temple, Xiao Ai took the place of the village chief and presided over the ritual. According to the tradition, this should be considered a big honor, but Lu Heng could not see the slightest elation on the girl's face. 
So Lu Hang began to be curious about Xiao Ai. But he did not appear in front of people. The villagers acted in accordance with the established process of sacrifice and worship, then they silently left. When everyone had left, Lu Hang then came out of the mountain god temple. He came to the offering table and looked at the sumptuous offerings. He could not help but sigh. This year's offerings were much richer than previous years. However, in terms of the duties of the mountain god, the original wolf demon was many times more attentive than Lu Hang. But they were treated differently. Lu Hang even had some sympathy for that wolf demon. From another perspective, it was no wonder that the wolf demon's mood was bad after guarding this place for eighty years and eventually set out on an evil path. This simple-minded demon was still too stupid, in addition to coercion, it did not think of using other means to induce the villagers to believe in it. Finally, it became a tragedy. But all of this had nothing to do with Lu Hang. Walking to the offering table, Lu Hang took a deep breath, only to see some white mist wafting out from the offerings and being inhaled by Lu Hang into his belly. At this moment, Lu Hang finally felt the long-lost food delicious. Lu Hang did not need to taste the offerings by eating them. This kind of offerings were poured in with the villagers' faith and sacrifice. He only needed to inhale the sacrificial beliefs in the offerings into his belly, and they tasted better than if you actually ate them. After Lu Hang finished this, the tribute's inner essence on the table had completely disappeared although they looked intact. After enjoying the offerings, Lu Hang went back to the ground. Although these offerings only took a breath, their fresh taste could last for a long time, and it was equivalent to eating a delicious meal all the time for several hours. This was a delicious meal that only came once a year, and its taste was better than all the delicacies Lu Hang had eaten in his last life. Lu Hang had to enjoy it to the fullest. It was not until after dark that Lu Hang, who had finished enjoying the feast, emerged from the ground. At this time, the offering table in front of the mountain god temple had been removed. Once again the mountain god temple returned to the usual quiet. But the bay at the foot of the mountain was bustling as the villagers gathered after harvesting the rice and getting a good year's harvest. They were laughing, singing and dancing. The men clashed their porcelain bowls and drank the brewed rice wine. The women gathered at the side, laughing and discussing some jokes. The light of the bonfire shone brightly at the river bay, and the children were harmonious and lovely and played some games. Looking at this scene, Lu Heng knew that these villagers were about to leave. When the day's rituals were over, the dishes and tables were packed up. Now the villagers' laughter was the last remnant of this double ninth festival. Such playfulness continued for another half hour or so, with the village elder's order. All the people in the village would gather together and bow down together in the direction of the mountain god temple to pray for blessings in the coming year. Lu Hang hid in the forests and looked at the smiles on the faces of the villagers by the bonfire from afar. A different feeling rose in his heart. Although the villagers were ignorant and short-sighted, they were also simple, unpretentious and optimistic. Their happiness was so simple that Lu Hang was even a little envious of them. Thinking of this, Lu Hang was bewildered for a long time before coming back to his senses at the sound of a child's cry. Ooh! My nose! My nose! Lu Hang followed the sound and saw a five or six year old boy. He was lying on the ground, covering his bleeding nose and howling. Probably he fell down while running in the dark. The boy's mother soon came over and helped the boy to stop the bleeding. After that, she used a branch picked up by the river to whip the boy's buttocks. Let me see you run around. Let me see you run around. The boy's mother scolded and beat him painfully. The little boy, on the other hand, cried out while tilting his head to stop the bleeding. Oh! I will not do that again, mother. I won't. That bawling made the adults around the campfire all laugh. In the night wind, Lu Hang who saw this scene also made a smile. This joyful scene made him smile, but at the same time made him have some emotion. Unknowingly, he had come to this world for half a year, and had gradually gotten used to this boring life of cultivation in the mountain. He did not know about his friends and family in his original world. In this strange world, he could no longer contact his friends and family. The only thing he could do was hope they could find true happiness in his heart. From a point of view, 
whether the villagers in this mountain, or his friends and family in his previous life, or Lu Hung himself, they were all just simple and ordinary dust in the whole world. What people can do is to be themselves. Thinking of this, Lu Hung let out a low laugh and turned around to walk into the mountain. After coming to this world, he had been cultivating and had never experienced the feeling of sleep. Perhaps this night, he could put aside his cultivation and have a good sleep, reminiscing about the feeling of being a mortal once. Perhaps, he could have a good dream. Chapter, 24 Under the moonlight, the figure of the white wolf lost in the mountain. Leaving the hustle and bustle of the river bay, Lu Heng planned to return to the quiet mountain and find a place to sleep and enjoy the pleasure of mortals, this was Lu Heng's original intention. However, after walking a short distance towards the mountain, Lu Heng suddenly perceived a familiar aura, which made him stop. Lu Heng was a little surprised. At this time, why did this little girl not reunite with her relatives down by the river bay? Lu Heng put aside his intention to enter the mountain and walked in that direction. Not long after, Lu Heng came out of the forest. What appeared in his view was a huge mountain rock that rose towards the sky. When standing here, he could overlook the scenes at the river bay. But on the river bay side, people were unable to see this place because of the dense trees below. It could be said to be a good place with an open view. Now, the girl named A.I. was sitting quietly with her hands on her knees, alone on the edge of a boulder, staring at the bustle of the river bay below. This dark and silent forest and the distant noisy river bay was forming a stark contrast. Some kind of silent darkness in the little girl's heart seemed to show more loneliness. Lu Heng came out of the darkness and asked, Why are you hiding out here alone? Why not go down to reunite with your family? The voice that suddenly rang out scared the little girl. But when she turned to stand up and saw the huge white wolf behind her, the fear disappeared. Xiao Ai stood there rashly and kneaded the corners of her skirt. Lord Mountain God, you. Why are you here? In the girl's voice, there seemed to be some surprise. Today, when facing Lu Heng, Xiao Ai was no longer afraid, but on the contrary, she was happy. Lu Heng noticed this change in mood, he asked, When you hide alone in the mountain, are you not afraid of being carried away by beasts? There are a lot of beasts in this mountain. The little girl said, With the mountain god sign given by you, Lord Mountain God, the beasts in the mountain will not attack me. Lu Heng laughed, I forgot about that. Looking at the little girl, Lu Heng once again thought of the sacrifice at noon. At that time Xiao Ai was pushed out by the villagers, wearing the ritual dress that did not match her age. She wrinkled her small face and arranged for the crowd to do things according to the steps of the ceremony. There was a kind of calm on her face, just like a small adult, but that was not cute. On the contrary, now this little girl who was a bit rushed but in a cheerful mood, was more in line with Lu Heng's memory. Lu Heng stood beside the girl, looking at the river bay with her and said, At noon today, I saw that the sacrifice ceremony was conducted by you. Because of me, everyone in the village is very afraid of you now, right? Lu Heng's words made the little girl hesitate. Lu Heng then spoke lightly, Just say what you want to say, I don't like to hear false pretenses. Xiao Ai nodded her head hastily and said, I know, and I don't dare to hide anything. Ever since Lord Mountain God let me go back and said the words of care in front of the village chief, everyone in the village has rejected me a little. It's just that they are afraid in their hearts, so they don't even dare to show their rejection too obviously. But that was before, ever since Master Wu Zhu made everyone understand the greatness and honor of Lord Mountain God, everyone in the village is no longer afraid of Lord Mountain God, nor of me. They all treat me very well and respect you, Lord Mountain God, that's why they let me conduct the ritual. Xiao Ai's answer made Lu Heng turn his head and look at her quietly, and then asked, Then why are you hiding here alone and not going out? The girl hesitated for a few seconds and said, Because. Because everyone is in awe of me although they are not afraid of me anymore. If I am down there, everyone will be nervous and unable to be happy and lively. And. And. The more the girl said, the smaller her voice became. Lu Heng looked at her and asked, And what? And I. I already don't like it when it's lively, Xiao Ai lowered her head and said softly, I like to stay alone, 
so I don't have to take care of everyone's mood. Only when I am alone, I do not need to take anything into account. This is actually very good. I would rather be alone. Xiao Ai's gentle narration made Lu Hun silent. He looked at the girl in front of him and sighed in his heart. After talking with Gong Xu Jia, he knew the stories about Xiao Ai. This little girl lived without parents, just like a rootless duckweed in the village. Now she was given special treatment by Lu Huang, and even dared to stand up against the village adults when everyone thought Lu Huang was a demon. After all these things happened, the little girl could no longer be integrated with the villagers. Thinking of this, Lu Huang said, Raise your head and look at me straight in my eyes. Then answer me a question. Xiao Ai obediently raised her head, looked at the frighteningly huge white wolf in front of her and saw the deep eyes of the white wolf, and she heard a cold inquiry. If the chosen girl was not you, but someone else, would you be willing to do it all over again? The white wolf's eyes were deep and sharp, and the sharp sight was full of oppressive power and seemed to penetrate the girl's heart. Xiao Ai was in a trance and had a feeling of being completely seen through under this gaze. She felt that in front of the Lord Mountain God there was no hint of secrecy to speak of. Also, she actually did not want to hide any secrets. Facing the sharp gaze of the white wolf, the girl shook her head and said, I do not want to start over. Without waiting for Lu Heng to ask the reason, the girl smiled bitterly and explained, If I was not chosen. I would never have known the nature of the villagers, and I would never have known that the one who pushed me into the fire was my last relative. That way, I might still have held unrealistic fantasies and expected that one day they would be good to me. Then someday in the future, I would have suffered more terribly. That's why I don't want to start over. Xiao Ai took a deep breath and said, Lord Mountain God is the best to me in this world, except for my parents. I vowed to serve you for the rest of my life. The girl's words were sincere. Her eyes shone with a light, a kind of emotion that could even be described as devotion. Lu Heng was shocked and silent. In the dark forest, the slightly cold night wind brushed through the trees, stirring up the rustling of grass and leaves, and brought the voice of people under the river bay. Bang, bang. The sound of wooden boards pounding echoed in the mountain, and at the river bay below the mountain, the aged old village chief was shouting. The hour is up. The hour has come. Everyone kneel down facing the mountain god temple. Bow down to the mountain god. The playful villagers now all gathered in one place and faced the direction of the mountain god temple. But the village chief called out anxiously. Where is Xiao Ai? Go get her back quickly. Hearing this voice, Xiao Ai hesitated for a few seconds and said, Lord mountain god, I want to go back to no need, Lu Heng interrupted her in an indifferent tone and said, They are just going to worship me anyway, it is the same if you are here. With a move of Lu Heng's mind, and in the next second, the huge vortex clouds that covered the entire cold feather mountain in the night sky slowly opened up. Then the clouds slowly scattered a gap. The moonlight fell down along the gap and shone on the cold feather mountain, exactly on the huge mountain rock where the girl and the wolf were. The trees below the rock all swayed and lowered their branches. The rock that was originally blocked by the canopy of these trees now appeared clearly in the view of the villagers at the river bay as the blocking trees moved away. When the villagers tilted their heads, they clearly saw the huge rock in the mountain and the huge white wolf on it. The cold moonlight fell on the white wolf's body, and every hair of the white wolf seemed to be emitting a silvery glow, divine and extraordinary. All the villagers stared in awe. And at the moment they saw the white wolf, they also saw the young girl beside him. Compared with the huge size of the white wolf, the tiny girl was so small that she could be ignored, but at this time no one dared to ignore her. And everyone recognized who that little girl was. That was clearly. Xiao Ai. The villagers were talking about her, but the old village chief scolded in a low voice, shut up. No discussion. Then the chief walked to the front of the crowd and took the lead in bowing towards the wolf and girl on the mountain rock. Lord Mountain God. Behind the old village chief, the villagers also all knelt down and heavily kowtowed. The villagers' shouts echoed in the wind. Xiao Ai on the mountain rock had a confused expression and became restless once again. 
the cold moonlight formed a silver-white pillar that fell on her and Lu Hang. At this moment, they were the most attention-grabbing focus of the entire cold feather mountain. Lu Hang gave a low laugh and said, let them fear you a little more. After all, it is better to be feared than to be hated. Feeling dazed and confused, Xiao Ai looked at Lu Hang, and she saw the Lord Mountain God smiling. In a trance, this scene of the giant wolf smiling under the moon seemed to be engraved in the girl's memory forever. Chapter 25 After the double ninth festival, the remote Shuishing village became quiet. After the harvest in the fields, there was not much farm work for the villagers. Most of the villagers were at home, and the only thing they needed to care about was the food reserved for the winter. In this year, the rice was abundant, so there was no need to worry about food for the winter. They just prepared some necessities before the snow closed the mountain. It was even more quiet in the cold feather mountain not far away. The huge swirling vortex clouds in the sky still covered the sky of the entire cold feather mountain, with lightning flashing from time to time. Every once in a while, there was some heavenly thunder striking down, and the deafening thunder was heard by people outside of the mountain. But the villagers of Shueishin village had gotten used to this terrifying thunder and were no longer afraid. The only thing they were curious about was what the Lord Mountain God was doing. And as time went on day by day, it gradually entered late autumn. The grass and trees in the mountain began to wither and yellow, and the wind whistling between the forests gradually became cold. Since the late autumn had arrived, the cold winter was not far away. While the weather was not yet completely cold, the young adults were preparing to go to the nearest city. They all brought food and water and were going to purchase the necessities of life. Almost all of the village youths went to the city except those who stayed guarding the village. The wilderness was difficult to travel through, with beasts and monsters rampant. Once people leave the range of the cold feather mountain, they may encounter beast attacks at any time. And the journey was long and would take a long time. The nearest city was said to be close, but with the villagers walking speed, it would take five to six days to make the round trip. During these five or six days, the villagers would eat and live in the wilderness. Walk during the day, rest at night. If there were just a few people, they would not be able to resist the monsters and beasts in the wilderness. If they were unlucky to encounter beasts that were hungry, they would clash, leading to injury and even death. But this year, nothing happened. The villagers followed the route of previous years, crossed the wilderness and arrived at Luoya City without any problems then they spent a day to purchase the necessary supplies for the winter. On the way back, there were no accidents either. They did not get attacked by any horrible demons. Although they encountered a few beasts at night, they were just ordinary beasts, and the villagers waved torches and weapons and shouted angrily, then the beasts were scared off. After the young adults returned to the village, the villagers then conducted another celebration of sacrifice to the mountain god under the leadership of the old village chief to thank for his blessing. Although this ritual was not on the level of the double ninth festival, it also provided a large amount of incense and wish power. That massive influx of wish power even woke up Lu Hang, who was in cultivation under the ground. He was stunned to check, only to find that the villagers were making a sacrifice to him again. Today was not a festival, why the villagers engaged in rituals again. He did not understand the cause and effect, and could only make some guesses. Time passed day by day. Gradually, the leaves in the mountain all withered. It completely turned cold and had no remaining heat of the autumn. When the mountain wind blew on the face at night, there was some stinging sensation. In the Shueishing village, the life of the villagers had returned to the usual calm. The winter supplies had been purchased and hoarded, and people only needed to stay inside the warmth of their homes to survive in the cold winter. However, an uninvited guest had come to Shueishin village at this moment. It was a frost day in late October. In the early morning, a thick white fog covered the cold feather mountain. It obscured everything, and even the huge vortex clouds in the mountain could not be seen. Wang Lao Lu, who had put on his hunting bow early in the morning and was ready to call his companions to go hunting in the mountain, heard a strange sound in the mist outside the village after he stepped out of the house. Dong, dong, dong. A heavy and slow sound resounded outside the village. It was like a heavy beating drum or some horrible beast walking. Immediately after, 
the earth began to slowly shake. Although the magnitude of the trembling was not obvious, Wang Laoyo's face had changed. He hurriedly ran to the direction of the village entrance, and indeed, it did not take long to hear someone was shouting. Monster! Monster! Dang, dang! The bronze bell hanging at the entrance of the village was struck with great force, emitting a sharp warning sound, and the originally quiet village instantly boiled up. Hearing this warning bell, many villagers who were still asleep climbed out of bed in panic. The men all picked up their weapons and rushed towards the village entrance. Wan Lao Lu arrived at the entrance with his hunting bow on his back, ahead of everyone else. Standing beside the fence surrounded by logs, he saw the scene outside the mists. What a monster it was! Its huge figure was several meters tall and like a moving mountain. The huge head alone was as big as Wang Laoyo's small house. The village fences in front of this giant beast were like a fragile flower in the blowing wind. Wang Lao Lu stared in horror at this scene and almost lost the ability to speak. But the villagers who were on guard on the fence, in turn, were much calmer because they had already been shocked by the huge size of the monster. And what made them put aside their fears for the moment were the figures beside the monster. This giant tortoise-like behemoth was followed by many people. Those people were all dressed differently from the people in the Fire Pass country, and most of them were carrying backpacks and things, as if they were migrating. When looking closely, even on the spacious turtle armor of the huge monsters, many bags were tied to the turtle armor. It seemed that the huge giant turtle monsters were just pack horses for these people. The villagers were all nervous and fearful. They had never seen such terrifying monsters before, and even the wolf god in the mountain was not as large as this giant turtle. And the number of this group of monsters and foreigners seemed to be not a few. In the mist, looking at the villagers on the fence that were in fear and unease, a young girl wearing a grass wreath turned back, and found an old man sitting in the mist resting. The young girl ran over happily and excitedly and said, Grandpa Priest, there is a village ahead. It's amazing that such a remote place is inhabited, and it looks like there are many people. But they seem to have never seen a spinning turtle and fear it. Do you want to go to talk to their village chief? Hearing the young girl's narrative, the old man sitting on the roadside resting raised his head. The old man with a head full of white hair was leaning on a pitch-black snake staff, and his cloths was painted with many pale patterns. Although the muscles on the old man's body had slackened because of old age, this old man in his youth must have been a brave and strong Hercules. The old man stood up with his snake staff and said, Since there are townspeople living there, we should explain everything to them and not scare them. He walked towards the mists ahead with the help of the girl. And at the entrance of the village, the old village chief had arrived with the clan elders. But they all stood on the ten-foot-high fence, and they were nervous and awed while observing the giant beasts and figures outside. When the old priest was helped out by a young girl, the villagers on the fence all noticed them. And when the old priest came out of the crowd, these foreigners outside the village all saluted the old man. The old priest arched his hand to those nervous and uneasy villagers on the fence and said, We are the Lee tribe. And we are migrating to this land. We did not expect to disturb you, so I hereby apologize for my tribe. We are not bandits, you do not need to be afraid. Next, my people will temporarily settle in the vicinity, next to you all. If you need help, you can seek help from our clan. Our people will help you within our ability. Although the old priest was old, his voice carried throughout the entire Shuatian village. Whether it was the young adults on the fence at the entrance, or the women and children in the village, the old priest's voice was clearly heard. This extraordinary performance immediately made the villagers' eyes widen, knowing that they had met someone special. The old village chief even gripped his walking stick tightly and muttered, The Lee tribe. He suddenly remembered something and hastily asked, Is it the Lee tribe that migrates everywhere, lives by water, and are good at metallurgy? Before the old priest said anything, the young girl who was holding the old man and wearing a grass wreath laughed and said, You are very knowledgeable. Yes, we are the Lee tribe you are talking about. Chapter 26 The Lee tribe? What kind of tribe is it? Village chief, what is the Lee tribe? Unlike the old village chief's sudden realization, all the youths in the village had never heard of this Lee tribe, so they all asked curiously. 
Looking at the old village chief's reaction, everyone knew that the group of foreigners were not bad people, so their nervousness eased a lot. The old village chief bowed respectfully to the old priest outside the village and said, You are the priest, right? Please come into the village to talk. The old priest shook his head and said, No, thank you for your kindness. I feel sorry for disturbing you all in the fog, so I will not enter the village. But we are going to stay in the vicinity, we still need village chief to intercede, and our clan will be grateful. Okay. If you have any requests, you can send someone to inform us. The old village chief stood on the fence and talked a lot with the priest below, seeing him off with his clan. After the group of strangely dressed foreigners and the huge turtles all disappeared into the mist, the villagers gathered around and asked questions. Village chief, what tribe is this? They seem so powerful. Will that giant turtle eat people? It's so big. The villagers' curiousness continued, but the old village chief waved his hand and did not answer the questions. He looked at the direction where the group of foreigners disappeared and said, You will know later what the Lee tribe is. Anyway, during this period, the village gate should not be opened at will. With Lord Mountain God here, even if these people are not really from the Lee tribe, we don't have to be afraid. The old village chief's words made the villagers who were originally nervous and anxious become calm. Yes, we have the blessing of Lord Mountain God. Yes, yes, those giant monsters look scary, but it's just a big head, how can it compare to the divine power of Lord Mountain God? One thunderbolt from him will turn it into dust. That's right, with Lord Mountain God here, this group of people won't dare to mess around. Once they thought of the existence of the wolf in the mountain, the villagers' mentality was suddenly different. The mountain god who was respected by the master Wuzhu was blessing them now, so they didn't need to be afraid of this group of foreigners outside. The villagers put their hearts down and dispersed to their own places. The village chief summoned the village elders and the backbone of the young and strong to discuss the matter of this Li tribe with them. This early morning, the quiet Shuaxing village was bustling after being disturbed. The women and children also came out of their homes, asking what was going on at the entrance of the village and who was speaking in the voice they had just heard. After all, the voice carried throughout the village without sounding harsh, which was too powerful for the villagers. No one had seen such magic in the past. On the other hand, after stepping through the mist and leaving the village, the Lee tribe continued to walk in the original direction. They stepped over the river outside the Shuaxing village and entered the outer edge of the cold feather mountain. The hills were still thickly fogged, and nothing could be seen in the distance. The old priest, supported by a young girl, stood by the river and asked his attendants to take out the bronze compass and other survey instruments. After carefully and earnestly surveying the water and soil of this location, the old priest then asked the attendants to put away the survey artifacts and said, Yes, this is the place. Although this mountain is located in the remote area, the geodesic trend is clear and it is the king mountain of this area. Our clan can reside here for a few years. The old man patted the girl's palm and said, Qian, you go find Han and ask him to lead people to explore along the river and find a place with open terrain to set up a fortress. We have rushed for so many days, it is time to take a good rest. The young girl nodded and turned around to run towards a short distance. But after a few steps, the girl came back. She looked at the misty cold feather mountain in front of her and said, Grandpa Priest, didn't the village chief of Shuaxing village say that there is a venerable wolf god existing in this cold feather mountain? Since we are setting up our fortress under his rule, shouldn't we pay a visit in advance? The old priest then looked into the depths of the mist and shook his head, although this cold feather mountain is the king mountain of the nearby mountains, but the mountain is barren and the earth spirit energy is not obvious. Even if there is a mountain god, his Tao level will not be profound. Probably it is just some mountain spirit that got lucky to obtain the incense, not enough to worry about. When our clan settles down, it will come to us. The old priest's tone was very calm, neither did he think highly of himself, nor was he scorning the mountain god in this mountain, he was just imparting knowledge to the young girl. However, just as the old priest finished his words, a terrifying thunderbolt suddenly rang out in the cold feather mountain. Boom! The deafening sound of thunder blast instantly spread across the mountains, reverberating inside and outside of Cold Feather Mountain. 
Likewise, it was also heard by the crowd of the Lee tribe who stayed at the river for a short rest. Wow! It's thundering. Is it going to rain? But the mountain is so foggy, it doesn't look like it's going to rain. People in Lee tribe were all surprised and curious, and some even began to prepare rain gear. However, the moment the thunder exploded, the old priest in the crowd froze. He looked in the direction of the cold feather mountain, astonished. Because the mist covered the mountains, he could not see the mountain scene. But in the moment of the thunder blast, he vaguely sensed some creepy aura. It seemed that in that cold feather mountain, something horrible happened. This kind of presence. The old priest's eyebrow instantly wrinkled, and it seemed that he has encountered something incomprehensible. Heavenly Thunder Tribulation. In a place like this? The old priest frowned and thought about it, and then shook his head to deny his suspicions. This cold feather mountain's veins were barren and its spiritual energy was not obvious, so it seldom had a vicious devil rampaging or a foreign treasure coming out of the ground. How can it attract the heavenly thunder tribulation? This was what the learned knowledge possessed by the old man reminded him. However, with such a decision in his heart, the old man did not have the time to speak to the young girl beside him, when another terrifying thunderbolt came. The ear-piercing thunder reverberated continuously among the mountains, and a certain grand and terrifying aura seemed to spread among the mountains along with the sound waves of this thunder blast. This time, not only the old priest, many spiritually sensitive people of the Lee tribe perceived the terrifying and horrifying aura. Then it didn't take long. Boom! Another terrifying thunderbolt exploded, and this time, the old priest who had prepared in advance finally sensed it clearly. This aura. It is the heavenly thunder tribulation. The old priest's expression instantly turned concerned. Could it be a demon has come here? Or maybe it's really some kind of treasure coming out of the earth. But when ordinary foreign treasures come out of the earth, there was usually only a single heavenly thunderbolt. If three thunderbolts comes in a row, it can be considered a rare treasure. Or, it was that some fierce demon attracted three thunderbolts. Another terrifying thunder blast. 4. Four heavenly thunderbolts. This demon in Cold Feather Mountain had actually attracted four heavenly thunderbolts. The old priest had been completely stunned, but immediately after that. The terrifying blast of the fifth heavenly thunderbolt once again reverberated in the mountains. The old priest stood in a daze by the river, listening to the sound of the sixth heavenly thunder that resounded again after the mountains had been quiet for a while. This time, it was finally the last thunderbolt. After this terrifying thunder ended, the entire cold feather mountain was completely quiet, and no more thunder came after the sound. However, in the mist, the people of the Lee tribe by the river were all quiet, and they looked at each other. The most honored and most profound old priest was now standing there bewildered and shocked, it was something the people had never seen. Half a second later, the old priest came back to his senses. He turned his head in a panic, looking for the young girl. Chien. Chien. Quick. The old man grabbed the young girl's hand and said urgently and anxiously, hurry up and get everyone to exit Cold Feather Mountain. Go back. To the Shueisheng village side. And then. The old man looked in the direction of the Cold Feather Mountain with a gloomy expression. Prepare gifts, let's go to the village. To talk with that old village chief. The situation in the Cold Feather Mountain is even more dangerous than we imagined. Chapter, 27 The evacuation instructions issued by the old priest were quickly conveyed. The people of the Lee tribe who had just crossed the river immediately retreated back along the way they had come. Unlike the younger members of the clan who were still in a dazed state, the old priest, although seemingly calm, could be said to have had a storm raging in his heart. The young girl supporting him looked back at the cold feather mountain in the mist and was a bit confused. It was the first time that she had seen the old priest so distraught. Even when the Lee tribe encountered the terrifying beast, Ba Snake, the old priest was always calm and never panicked. He was the backbone of everyone. But today he was like a different person from his old image. Grandpa Priest, the young girl asked, even if there is some kind of evil demon in this cold feather mountain, there were six heavenly thunderbolts in a row. Why should we be so afraid of it? 
What's more, only six heavenly thunderbolts, proving that the demon is powerful but not to the extent of invincible. With you and all the warriors of the Wind Raiders, we don't have to be afraid, right? The young girl's heart was full of questions, because she did not know the reason why the priest reacted so fiercely. Although the demon may be powerful, the force of Wind Raiders was strong. If there is a conflict, it is not yet determined who will die. She was very confident in the strength of her tribe. The old man glared at the young girl and said, You little girl, you don't know what you're talking about. Have you ever thought if is not a demon or monster? The heavenly thunder is the world's most vicious and horrific force of tribulation. Whether he is a wuju or a demon, it is difficult to resist the power of it. If someone is unfortunately hit by the heavenly thunder, he will die and his soul will be extinguished out of existence. And if you die because of getting hit by heavenly thunder, all your years of power cultivation will be broken down and scattered as the most primitive spiritual energy. So after the tribulation, the place where the heavenly thunder hit will have a huge outbreak of spiritual energy. The stronger the sufferer, the more massive the outbreak of its spiritual energy. If the fierce demon who could suffer six heavenly thunderbolts died, the raging outbreak of spiritual energy would have turned into a gale of aura and blown away all the mists between these mountains. The old man's narrative still did not solve the girl's confusion. But the girl did not open her mouth to ask, because she knew that the priest would continue to explain. As expected, after a few breaths of silence, the old man slowly spoke. Although the power of the heavenly thunder is terrifying, there are also various abilities in the world, and occasionally there are one or two people with special abilities who can survive. However, even if the heavenly thunder does not kill the target, the mighty heavenly power will also remain in the world for a long time. But when you carefully sense, can you sense the breath of the heavenly thunder remains? Now we are completely unable to sense the presence of that power. This situation, it is almost like some creature has swallowed the heavenly thunder. It is appalling. The old man's explanation made the young girl finally understand. Her eyes were wide with disbelief, swallowed the heavenly thunder. Who can do that in this world? The old man's expression was grave, the creature in this cold feather mountain may be an ancient divine beast that has never been seen before. The young girl nodded in a daze. If it was the legendary ancient divine beast, then no wonder the priest was so nervous. In that case, we should indeed talk to the villagers of that Shuation village. They have lived here for a long time, and if there is really a divine beast in the mountain, we might be able to get their help so that the divine beast can allow us to live here temporarily. When the girl said this, the old man smiled and patted her hand, but didn't say anything. After he arranged for the young girl to check the gifts prepared by the clan, he sat down on the roadside to rest, without saying a word. Among the mountains, the mist was still deep, and the old man still couldn't see through the scene in the mist. However, some kind of uneasy emotion in his heart constantly spread. He did not say the real reason for his worry. With the force of the wind raiders, plus the magic human-faced drum, even if they came across an ancient divine beasts, he did not need to be so worried. He was now out of control because of the revelation received from the Holy Maiden when the nine branches of the Lee tribe gathered at the Holy Mountain last time. It was that the Lee tribe was in danger of being exterminated by the Lord of Calamity. And the aura of the Lord of Calamity seemed to be highly similar to the existence on this cold feather mountain. Thinking of this, the old man's hands were unconsciously clenched. If the existence in this mountain is really the prophesied Lord of Calamity, will their wind raiders going to be the first branch to be exterminated of the nine branches of the Lee tribe? Will the danger of extinction really come so quickly? Chapter 28 the return of the wind raiders made the villagers of Shueishin village nervous again. Although the village chief said that the people of the Li tribe would not kill, the villagers feared that this group of foreigners was lying. The villagers' nervousness was tinged with anxiety. Now most of adults are gathered at the entrance of the village, once the foreigners outside had any strange movement, they could timely resist. But they stopped a short distance from the village. The only ones who went to the entrance of the village were two figures, an old man and a young girl. I am Li Ju, the priest of the Wind Raiders of Li tribe, and I have an important request to see the chief of your village. The old priest arching his hand to the villagers behind the fence said, Please. By the side of the old priest, 
only the young girl named Xian was accompanying him. The rest of the people all stayed in the distance and did not approach. By now, the fog in the mountains had faded, and a slightly more distant scene could be seen. After the villagers confirmed it, they opened the door and welcomed them in. The old village chief personally greeted them with a smile on his face, Master Priest, if you have any orders, just send someone to say so, you don't need to go by yourself. The old village chief acted very warm. There was a saying that the people in Li tribe lived in no fixed place and migrated from place to place. If they lived temporarily in a certain place, they would dig up and cultivate the wild fields, and smelt iron and golds. But they would not stay in one place for a long time. When they left, the reclaimed fields and smelting metals would often be given to the nearby villagers. So they were welcomed by many people. When the old village chief was young, he had heard the legend of this tribe in Luoyi city, but he had never seen them. Now since they had migrated to this place, things they left would all belong to Shueishin village. The village chief personally welcomed the old priest into his home and took out the best tea he had bought not long ago. I wonder if master priest has any orders. After serving tea, the old village chief asked, we will certainly assist you. The old priest glanced at the young girl beside him, and she immediately understood it and handed over the gift box she carried. This is a two hundred year old water Ganoderma, born in the cold abyss, gathering the essence of water. It was inadvertently obtained during the migration and is now given to you. The water Ganoderma can prolong your life. As the old priest spoke, the young girl Qian opened the gift box, revealing a pure blue water Ganoderma inside. This water Ganoderma was lean and elegant, and had a light blue aura flowing inside. When Qian opened it, the house was instantly full with fragrance. Such a treasure made the old village chief instantly stare in disbelief, this. Such a treasure, how can I accept it? Please take it back quickly. The old village chief gulped, forcing himself not to look at the water Ganoderma that could prolong life, and tried to smile and express his sincerity in wanting to make friends, there is no need to be so polite. The old priest gestured for Qian to close the gift box, and then spoke, to be frank, the people of my tribe are a wandering tribe and do not live in one place for a long time. Since ancient times, the Li tribe has followed the guidance of the sacred mountain and the blessing of our ancestors, and has moved from city to city. And now, following the revelation, our Wind Raiders Department will have to temporarily live near this cold feather mountain for a few years. But we heard what village chief said before, there is a noble wolf god existing in this cold feather mountain, which is the right god of this mountain. I think if my clans want to live here temporarily, we should not only get your consent, but also call on the wolf god and get his consent, so as not to be rude. But with the dignity of the wolf god, I am afraid that if we rashly visit him, we will not be able to enter the door. If we disturb the wolf god, the situation will be even worse. So. The old priest looked at the old village chief and said, I wonder if village chief can help introduce us, and I would be grateful for all the wind raiders. The old priest's request made the old village chief hesitate for a few seconds, this. The old man stole a glance at the gift box and looked at the statue of the wolf god on the shrine in the hall. In the end, the old village chief said with a bitter smile, Please understand, I cannot do anything for you. Even the master Wuzhu of the Thousand Needles City has to be careful in front of the mountain god, how dare we mortals disturb the mountain god? The old village chief said with sincerity. He was really unwilling to offend the wolf god in the mountain, even when the water Ganoderma was placed in front of him. The priest asked with a serious expression, the Wuzhu of Thousand Needles City? Can you explain this matter? This Shueisheng village was remote and was not within the blessing of the Wuzhu. What's more, the Thousand Needles city was far away from here, even if there was a Wuzhu coming here, it should be a Wuzhu from Luoyi city. Although the old priest had never met the Wuzhu of Thousand Needles city, he had also heard of his deeds. Gong Shu Jie was a cynical and fearless person, even the most powerful demons can't insult his mind and break his pride. So why was Gong Shu Jie cautious of this mountain wolf god? And after the old village chief's narration, the old priest know the cause and effect of this matter. He also had a clear understanding of the wolf god in the mountain. This wolf god might not be the prophesied lord of calamity. 
but such an extraordinary existence was definitely not an ordinary ancient divine beast. Its origins was perhaps even more terrifying. After all, according to the village chief, thunder would strike down from time to time on that cold feather mountain covered in huge black vortex clouds. The villagers were so ignorant that they could not tell the difference between ordinary thunder and the heavenly thunder. But the old priest knew that it was the real heavenly thunder. Moreover, the heavenly thunder was probably related to the cultivation of the wolf god in the mountain. Previously outside the cold feather mountain, the old priest sensed that after the heavenly thunder struck, there was not the slightest aura of destruction overflowing out, but instead gradually disappeared. Thinking of this, the old priest couldn't help but stand up. I wonder where is the girl named Xiao Ai you mentioned? The old priest said seriously, even if I can't see the wolf god, would be grateful if you can introduce me to this girl. Chapter 29 The old priest's request made the village chief freeze for a moment. To see Xiao Ai. This request was not considered to be an imposition, after all, although the village chief did not dare to meet the mountain god, he could meet that girl. But. After a few seconds of hesitation, the old village chief felt that he should explain it clearly in advance. He said, although this girl is young, she is the one who is favored by the mountain god. At the double ninth festival, when all the villagers paid homage to the mountain god, she alone stood next to the mountain god and received the ceremony together. Even we, the village elders, are cautious in front of her and would never dare to take offense. So. The latter words, the village chief did not say, but the old priest already understood the village chief's meaning. We know, you need not worry, said the old priest, I also understand that this girl is special, so I will never offend her. You can put your mind at ease. The old village chief then breathed a sigh of relief, then please come with me, master priest. He was really afraid that the priest would think highly of himself and bring trouble to the village. Since the initial selection, the village people felt they had offended the little girl. After that, this little girl was favored by the mountain god, standing beside the mountain god and receiving the villagers salutation. Now everyone knew that Xiao Ai could not be offended. And Xiao Ai's character was colder and colder by the day. Neither did she play with the village children, nor talk with the elders. People often saw that she was sitting alone in front of the house, looking dazedly at the cold feather mountain. Even if someone took the initiative to talk to her, her attitude was also cold, making people inexplicably panic. So the old village chief was a little nervous about taking the priest of the Li tribe to see Xiao Ai. The good thing was that when they left, the old priest and the young girl did not take away the gift box on the table. The two hundred years of water Ganoderma was just forgotten in the old village chief's house. This gave the village chief a little courage. They walked through the village and came to Cripple Ai's house. From afar, the old village chief saw Xiao Ai sitting in front of the house, fanning the fire of the boiling stove. The old village chief immediately revealed a smiling face and said in a gentle tone, Xiao Ai, are you concocting the medicine? The girl turned around and saw the smiling old village chief, as well as the two foreigners behind him. Without much reaction, she just nodded and explained, My brother's illness is not yet healed, and Grandpa Bai said that this medicine has to be taken twice a day regularly, and for more than half a month before my brother will be cured. The person named Bai that the girl spoke of was a clan elder in the village, who knew herbs and could cure diseases, and had been making medicine for generations. The villagers all sought medical treatment from this old man when they were sick. After the girl finished, she looked at the two foreigners behind the old village chief and asked, Is there anything I can do for you? The old village chief's heart was timorous now, and the smile on his face grew wider and wider. There are two guests from the Li tribe that wants to meet you, I wonder if you are free now. Xiao Ai looked at the old priest behind the village chief. Seeing the girl looking over, the old priest arched his hand, I am Li Ju, the priest of the Wind Raiders of the Li tribe. Oracle, please, I want to meet the Divine Wolf God. Considering the old man's status, this was already a big salute. Xiao Ai hesitated for a moment and also arched her head and said, Master Priest, I am not the Oracle of Lord Mountain God. If you have something to say, just say it directly. The girl's response made the old priest somewhat surprised. 
Although the girl was dressed in simple clothes, her speech and manner were modest and courteous. She was not an ordinary countryside villager, and she was special in this environment. After thinking about it, the old priest said, Then I will be straightforward. Since ancient times, we, the Li tribe, have been following the guidance of the sacred mountain and have been migrating from place to place. And this year, according to the guidance, I need to move to your land and live there temporarily for a few years. But I heard that there is a wolf god in the mountain, so if we want to live here, we must get his permission. But we have no one to introduce us. Therefore, I would like to ask Miss Ai for help. The old priest said earnestly, This matter is of great importance to my tribe, whether it succeeds or fails, my tribe will be grateful. After the old priest finished speaking, everyone present looked at the girl in front of the house. The old village chief and a few nearby neighbors were secretly watching, and everyone was curious about how the girl would answer. The old village chief was even more eager, and he could not wait to answer instead of Shao Ai at this moment. He thought that the priest of the Li tribe was generous, and if he could make them owe a favor, it would be a great thing. However, Shao Ai shook her head and said, Sorry, Master Priest, I can't help you. She said with a serious expression, Lord Mountain God is so kind to me, and I can't repay this kindness now. If I use the Mountain God's name to get benefits, I would be guilty. Therefore, I can't help you. But, Master Priest, you actually do not have to worry too much. Lord Mountain God is a good God. As long as you do not do evil things, I think the Lord Mountain God will not make things difficult for you. The girl's answer made the old priest smile and gain a little more awareness of the little girl. He did not continue to pester her, but smiled and arched his hand to thank her, in that case, then I thank Miss Ai for your guidance, and I will bear it in mind. After expressing his gratitude, the old priest and Qian left directly. Although the village chief wanted to stay a little longer, he needed to personally send two people to the village entrance. Along the way, he was constantly assured that after returning he would find a way to convince Xiao Ai, so that the priest would not be discouraged. But all the way, the old priest just smiled, and did not say anything more. Only after the two people left the village far away, Qian asked curiously, Grandpa Priest, why didn't you take out the gift you asked me to prepare? If the gift is brought out, perhaps the oracle will help us. The old priest shook his head and said, You little girl, you think things too simply. There are some people in this world who can be bought, such as the village chief. But there are also some people who cannot be bought, such as the oracle named Xiao Ai. Although she is young, she is not someone who can be bought with a few treasures. It would be worse to pester her, and it would be better to leave, so that we can make a good relationship and leave a good impression. Qian pouted, a little unhappy, but if we just leave, we won't be able to find anyone to help us ask to see the wolf god in the mountain. Do you think that old village chief can really convince the oracle? The old priest laughed and patted the little girl's head, saying, Actually, the oracle has already given a hint, you just didn't notice it. Qian immediately froze, Ah! What hint? The old priest smiled and said, the oracle said that as long as we are sincere, the mountain god will not make things difficult. Since she potentially allowed us to visit the wolf god, we could enter the mountain directly without having to ask for any introduction. The old priest's explanation made Qian suddenly understand, then I will go immediately to prepare the tribute to the wolf god. Well, go, move faster, the old priest thought about it and added, just in case, bring the human face drum with you. Okay, Grandpa Priest, wait for me, I'll be right back, the girl said happily, jumping away. The old priest smiled, watched the young girl leave and then turned his head to look to the direction of Cold Feather Mountain. By now it was noon, as the blazing sun rose, the mist in the mountain gradually dispersed, and the old priest was finally able to see the full picture of the Cold Feather Mountain. Now there was some huge vortex clouds that covered the sky. The black vortex cloud slowly rotated, and from time to time there were flashes of lightning. This group of black vortex clouds were like a huge eyeball, and they were indifferently looking down on the world. And if someone looked at these huge vortex clouds for a long time, he would have a creepy feeling. So people wanted to look away subconsciously. The old priest's expression was slightly gloomy. Having personally witnessed these huge heavenly clouds, 
he confirmed more and more that the wolf god was definitely not an ordinary mountain god. It was more terrifying than everyone imagined. And they had to live under the rule of this wolf god for several years. The old man shook his head bitterly. Nowadays, he could only hope that the Lord of Calamity mentioned in the Holy Maiden's prophecy was not the mountain god. Otherwise, they were pretty much doomed. Chapter, 30 The preparation of the offerings was soon completed. When Qian returned, she saw that many people had gathered around the old priest. The leaders of all the branches within the Wind Raiders were all here, and everyone was listening to the old priest's orders. Seeing this scene, the young girl was a little curious, why is everyone gathered here? The old priest smiled and said, This trip is dangerous, so I asked everyone to prepare early. If there is an accident, we will be able to respond in time. After saying that, the old priest looked at the group of branch leaders around him and said, That's it, you guys split up as I said and retreat to twenty miles away. If something bad happens in the mountain, and Qian and I fail to return, you will immediately flee this place and find a way to inform the Holy Maiden of what happened here. If nothing happens, wait for news from me in the same place, and do not act rashly. Do you understand? When the old priest spoke, he deliberately stared at the most robust man in the crowd and said, Han, do you understand? The sturdy man who was called Han nodded vigorously, indicating that he understood. Only then did the old priest wave his hand and say, Okay, you guys can go. Once you are gone, Qian and I will enter the mountain. Yes. The branch chiefs got the orders and left. Outside Shueisheng village, those people resting among the mountain fields soon moved. According to the old priest's instructions, they evacuated in different directions to avoid being caught in a net. And with the evacuation of those huge turtles, the earth trembled again. The villagers were all startled and gathered at the entrance of the village to see what was happening, and then saw the departing of the foreigners. The villagers were all a little confused. Why do these foreigners come and go, and now leave again? It's so strange. The villagers did not understand at all what the movement of this group of foreigners outside meant. But the wind raiders did not need to explain to them, and they left directly. Now only the old priest and the girl stayed. The old priest sat on the ridge and watched the clan members gradually going away. His expression was kind and amiable, but he did not say a word. Qian sat beside the old priest and took out the offering for the wolf god from the gift box, saying, Grandpa priest, do you really want to give this thousand days drunk wine to the wolf god? If you give it to him, you really won't be able to drink it in the future. The old priest slowly sighed, I can't drink it anyway, so I might as well give it away. Qian smiled, why don't we try it first before giving it to the wolf god? This is the divine wine made by the holy maiden, it would be a pity to give it away without even tasting a little bit. The old priest laughed, you want to drink it, right? Don't even think about it. They just sat in the ridge of the countryside and waited for the clans to finish retreating. Eventually, after all the clans had disappeared from their view, they stood up and walked towards the cold feather mountain. The midday sun fell on the two humans. But it was no longer hot in late autumn, and both of them were walking quickly. Although the road in the mountain was rugged, it could not stop their steps. They did not go too fast, just like ordinary mortals. As for the destination, both of them knew very well that it was the location right in the middle of the vortex clouds, the main peak of Cold Feather Mountain. But after walking a little way into the mountain, Qian cooed in a low voice, Grandpa Priest, there are groups of monkeys behind us all the time. Do you think these monkeys could be the eyes and ears of the wolf god? The old priest patted her hand and said, Don't worry, it's just an ordinary group of monkeys, not demons. The old man calmed the young girl's uneasiness, but in fact, the further he went into the mountain, the more uneasy the feelings in his heart became. The heavenly clouds that loomed over Cold Feather Mountain were too horrible, causing great psychological pressure on the old man. With every step he took forward, the oppressive feeling in his heart became stronger. On the contrary, because her cultivation was not so good, the pressure Qian felt was not yet so great. But even so, Qian was also much quieter. In such apprehension, they walked for a full hour, and finally arrived at the main peak covered by the clouds. Here, the pressure of the heavenly clouds was strong to the extreme. 
Even the old priest, who was used to seeing great storms, could not help but be nervous at this time. When they passed through the woods and saw the mountain god temple surrounded by trees from afar, Qian even shrank her neck and was frightened. What a terrifying aura! The young girl's face was a little pale, this place is almost like the center of the heavenly tribulation. Standing in the forest, Qian even felt an illusion, as if she had provoked the wrath of heaven, she would be struck by the thunderbolt and her body and soul would be destroyed soon. And the old priest beside the girl also had a similar feeling. But he knew very well that this was only the place where there were thunderbolts falling all year round, resulting in the thunderbolt's aura to be condensed and not scattered. It had been giving people the illusion, and it was not the real heavenly tribulation. Thinking of this, the old priest took a deep breath and led Qian towards the mountain god temple. They stood in the open space in front of the mountain god temple, but did not dare to enter. I, priest in charge of the Li tribe's wind raiders, pay respects to the wolf god. The old priest's old and serious voice slowly echoed away in the mountain. The voice wasn't big, but it had a wonderful penetrating power and traveled so far that even Lu Heng, who was diving underground, heard it. Hearing this unfamiliar voice, Lu Heng froze for a moment. What is this? Another guest from the mountain. Sinking his heart into the senses, Lu Heng felt the respectful old man and young girl waiting outside the mountain god temple, and also saw the old priest's vigorous aura. This old man, seems to be a bit strong. Lu Heng thought about it and did not appear in his body, but moved his mind. In the next second, in the mountain god temple, the white wolf clay statue on top of the divine altar moved. I am Lu Heng, priest, what do you want from me? The clay figure jumped down from the divine altar, walking outside into the sunlight, and asked the old man outside. The old priest hurriedly bowed, I dare not, just a small favor. I came here only to pay a visit to you and beg you to allow the people of my tribe to live here temporarily, we would never dare to offend Lord Mountain God, so I hope Lord Mountain God will understand. The old man's words were earnest, but Lu Heng was a bit confused. To ask me for permission to come and stay here. What kind of strange request is this? I'm just a mountain god, not a land god, of course you can live here if you want to. Lu Heng looked at the old man with amazement, thought about it and said, as long as you do not disturb the villagers of Shueisheng village under the mountain and do not do evil things, you can live here. Lu Heng's words made the old priest and the girl freeze at the same time. This. This wolf god is so easy to talk to. Qian just thought that this wolf god was not as intimidating as she imagined. But the old priest thought more. No wonder the little oracle was humble and courteous. Taught by this wolf god, it's hard to think of being a bad character. And although this wolf god only descended in an avatar, the power was enough to make people's hearts palpitate. If his real body descends, the power will be even stronger. But compared to the terrifying power of the wolf god, what the old priest was in awe of today was something else. The divine beasts had most of the beastly nature, cruel and murderous, and they were often foolish and brutal. In the eyes of the old priest, the so-called ancient divine beast was just relying on the natural magic to commit the evil deeds. Even if they had a long lifespan, they were just a puddle of filth in the world, not worthy of respect. But the wolf god in front of him was definitely not the so-called ancient divine beast. It was friendly and good with people, without a trace of evil and fierce aura. If what he expected was correct, this wolf god was most like some existence. An existence far beyond the mundane. Chapter, 31 With a guess in his heart, the old priest put his heart down and no longer worried about the safety of the tribe. Although he was no longer afraid, he more marveled at the wolf god's potential identity. Maybe, this white wolf god is a real deity. The old priest did not dare to say it openly, not even dare to tell others about this. He buried this conjecture silently in his heart. Usually, this type of existence is ethereal and rarely manifested in front of people. But this wolf god was different, not only did he appear in front of people, but he even lived in the mountain. Even the ordinary villagers outside the mountain knew his existence and had seen his figure. When he was visited by a migrant outsider, the wolf god had not the slightest hint of rowdiness. There is only one explanation for such behavior, 
that is, the wolf god does not want the world to know his true identity, but only wants to walk in this world as a normal being. Although the old priest didn't know the true intentions of the wolf god, that kind of existence was not something that ordinary people can fathom. Thinking of this, the old priest bowed deeply and said respectfully, I, on behalf of all the people of the Wind Raiders, thank you for your kindness in taking us in. We will definitely live here in peace and never cause trouble. When the old priest bowed, the young girl Qian also hurriedly bowed and said, Qian also thanks the wolf god for his great kindness. The young girl was cheerful and playful as always, however, the moment she lowered her head, she saw the earth under her feet and froze. Now she was standing on the earth in front of the mountain god temple. This piece of open space was hit by the thunder power in a long time, and the soil's color had turned into a dark red. And faintly, this dark red was with a little black. Qian looked carefully again, this time she saw more clearly. This dirt was no longer powder like ordinary dirt, but gravel like dirt. Each grain of sand was dark red with a little black, showing some condensed thunder aura. The thunder aura around the mountain god temple actually derived from this changed sand. This sand is clearly. Qian looked at the priest beside her and was about to speak, but she saw the old priest glare at her fiercely and implied her to shut up. The young girl immediately lowered her head, not daring to speak. She knew that Grandfather Priest also recognized these heavenly thunder sand, but Grandfather Priest did not let her speak. And these small movements were seen by Lu Hung. But he did not care. After politely declining the gift, and promising that they could live here, Lu Hung did not stay outside for too long. His mind once again returned to the body underground and continued to cultivate. For Lu Hung, after all, cultivation was the most important. This wolf body was too inconvenient, he still liked the feeling of being born as a human and wanted to transform as soon as possible. On the other hand, after Li Ju and Qian walked out of Cold Feather Mountain, the young girl who had been holding her mouth all the way could not help but speak. Grandpa Priest, that was heavenly thunder sand. Qian said, and large amounts of it. If Grandpa Li Pe saw it, he would be overjoyed. This much heavenly thunder sand is definitely enough for him to forge the mountain splitting sword. The young girl was in a happy mood, because Li Po was the priest of the Great Sea Department and he was the most powerful swordsmith of the nine departments of the Li tribe. Because of various reasons, his wife was suppressed in the underworld Sea of the Abyss, and she was never allowed to see the light of day. In order to save his wife, Li Po sought out all metals and tried to forge a divine sword that could cut through the underworld sea. But he was unable to find enough heavenly thunder sand, so he could not achieve his long-cherished wish. Heavenly thunder sand was an extremely rare thing in the world, only left behind in places the heavenly tribulations occurred. But a heavenly tribulation was very rare, and even when it happened, usually it would have only a few heavenly thunderbolts, so the amount of heavenly thunder sand was extremely low. Lipo was searching all over the world, but he could not find enough heavenly thunder sand. So he was forced to delay the rescue of his wife under the abyss. This was a tragedy that the entire Li people was well aware of. But now unexpectedly, there was so much heavenly thunder sand. Qian smiled with joy. But the old priest glared at her and said, There is indeed a large amount of heavenly thunder sand, but does it have anything to do with you? If Lu Heng doesn't agree, who dares to covet the heavenly thunder sand under him? The old man questioned seriously, but the young girl remained happy, said, This wolf god is so gracious, surely not an evil god. If we explain the situation to him and plead him, I don't think we'll be stingy. And Grandpa Lipa has collected so many good things, he can use them to exchange for the heavenly thunder sand. Qian was very optimistic. But the old priest was a bit speechless. You silly girl, what stupid things are you thinking of? How can mundane things catch his eyes? Those treasures are just like dust. But the old man could not say the identity of the wolf god to Qian, so he could only sigh in his heart. He was speechlessly silent for half a second before he slowly said, I will send someone to inform the great sea about the heavenly thunder sand. But this matter will be handled by Li Pe himself, you are not allowed to interfere. And you are not allowed to spread any information about the heavenly thunder sand. Otherwise, I will personally send you to the sacred mountain and suppress you forever. 
The old priest's stern tone scared Qian. It was the first time she had seen Grandpa Priest get so angry. Surreptitiously, the young girl glanced at the direction of Cold Feather Mountain, and an enlightenment rose in her heart. Even Grandpa Priest was so careful. This was the most powerful mountain god she had ever seen. Chapter 32 After getting Lu Heng's permission, the Wind Raiders stayed outside the Cold Feather Mountain. For a wandering tribe, it was not difficult to build a village and set up a fortress in a new environment. After choosing an open and flat place, they took down the tents on the back of the tortoises and set up a camp on the spot. As for a wooden fence surrounding the settlement, the Wind Raiders did not need it. They were not afraid of beasts and demons, and did not need to follow the ways of the ordinary villages to establish a defensive fence. If a beast mistakenly entered the camp, they would catch it. The Li people were strong by nature. Even a three-year-old child left in the wilderness, as long as he did not meet any real demons, there was no danger. Ordinary beasts were not a threat to the Li people. And after the camp was built, the wind raiders began to reclaim the nearby barren hills, and raise livestock, and build their new homes in an orderly manner. However, their act of reclaiming the barren hills made the villagers of Shuaxing village very puzzled. All the land in the plain area outside the Cold Feather Mountain that was suitable for reclamation into rice fields had been reclaimed by them already. But the Li people seemed to have no intention of reclaiming barren fields in the plains where water could be easily diverted for irrigation, instead they reclaimed fields in the overgrown hills. This kind of field, except for growing some vegetables, simply cannot grow crops. But soon, their confusion was solved. Because after the Li people finished reclaiming the land, they sent people to visit Shuaxing village, and sent many crops they discovered by themselves. The two items of food that were used as staple food by the Li people were something new that the villagers had never seen before. The first one, which looks like a small yellow mallet, was densely covered with yellow particles. The Li people call it yellow rice, and they strip it down, break it into pieces, and then steam and eat it, just like the people of Shuaxing village eat rice. The other one, the Li people called ground potato. It was said to be dug out from the ground, and it could be steamed and fried. According to the Li people, these two things were different from rice, so they did not need to divert water for irrigation, that is, they could be grown on the barren land of the wild mountains. So the villagers knew why the Li people reclaimed the barren mountain, these Li people grew crops that were different from the rice they grew. Some people in the village were interested in these two things, so they tentatively asked how to grow them. It was just a casual question, in case this was a secret of the Li people. However, the Li people taught the villagers how to grow these two crops and what to look for, and even agreed to come to the village in the coming spring to teach the villagers who were willing to learn. The villagers were shocked by the enthusiasm of the Li people. But when the villagers went to ask the village chief after the Li people left, they learned that this group of Li people had always been like this. Every time they migrated to a new place, they would teach the locals how to grow yellow rice and ground potatoes, and would also enthusiastically offer their special seedlings. However, the old village chief did not say anything about the fact that the land left behind by the Li people would be given to the local residents every time they migrated away. He didn't want everyone to know about such an important matter. When the Li people leave, they can continue to use those barren lands completely. The village chief intended to turn around and pay a separate visit to the old priest of the Li tribe to talk about the future ownership of these lands. The day after the Li people sent the crops, they set up a small bazaar in the wilderness outside Shuaxing village, exchanging farming tools and kitchen utensils with the residents of Shuaxing village. These Li people exchanged their brand new iron tools for the villagers' worn-out iron tools that had been used for many years. And the iron they cast were all well made. The villagers did not know whether these foreigners were good or bad, but no one refused such a good deed, so they all swarmed to the bazaar to exchange for the new iron tools. By the end of the bazaar, the image of the Li people had been totally changed. They were like a good man who did not ask for anything in return. The original barriers had now disappeared. The villagers all warmly welcomed the Li people, and were eager for them to stay here for a few more years. And just on the day the bazaar ended, Lu Heng also woke up from underground. He vaguely felt the bustle in the mountains in recent days. But the Li people only moved around the periphery of the mountain range, 
and did not enter the mountain forest, so there was not much noise, and did not disturb Lu Heng. Lu Heng also concentrated on cultivation, ignoring external affairs. Now out from underground, standing on the top of the cold feather mountain overlooking the side, the scene outside the mountain immediately made Lu Heng freeze. These wind raiders were so many. In his vision, the outer area of the cold feather mountain had five living camps. The scale of each camp was not small, at least a thousand people or more. Moreover, after careful observation, Lu Heng found that the Li people were all vigorous, strong and powerful. Not to mention the adults, even a five-year-old child's blood vitality and the body strength could equal that of the tigers in the mountain. They could carry a hundred pounds of rock to play around, and could jump several meters high. Where did they come from? Compared to the villagers, they were not the same species at all. Although when he saw that old priest, Lu Heng knew that there were many powerful people in these wind raiders of the Li tribe. A tribe that could migrate around this savage world where monsters and demons were rampant was certainly not weak. But no matter how, this was too powerful. The more he observed the movement of the Li people, the more alarmed Lu Heng became. Lu Heng had a sense of crisis after seeing such a powerful group of neighbors. He looked up at the huge vortex clouds above his head and pondered. Until now he had been busy cultivating, because he wanted to transform into a human soon. So he did not research on the means of attack. After all, this cold feather mountain was remote, so he did not worry about the demons. Even if he encountered a demon, with the power of heavenly thunder in the body, Lu Heng was not very worried. But now there comes so many terrifyingly people. He has to study something new. Otherwise, if the Li people had bad intentions, like rush into the mountain and break the temple, he could not resist them. Thinking of this, Lu Heng gazed at the direction of Li people. He will have to study some powerful means of self-defense. Chapter, 33 After the conversation with Gong Shu Jia, Lu Heng had a certain understanding of the power of heavenly thunder tribulation. This world did not have the immortals. Once the heavenly thunder tribulation appeared, the person condemned by the heavenly thunder would almost certainly die. The scale of the heavenly thunder tribulation was related to the demon's power. The more powerful the demon, the more terrifying the heavenly thunder will be attracted. So cultivation based on heavenly thunder was very frightening. But just frightening. If Lu Hain could lead the heavenly thunder to strike him, that was because he had the power of heavenly thunder in his body and it could connect the tribulation clouds. But Lu Hain could not manipulate the heavenly thunder to hit other people or things. Although under the clouds, Lu Hain had an ultimate skill, that is, regardless of the cost of connecting the clouds in the sky, he could completely release the power of heavenly thunder and make the heavenly thunder crazily strike down. It would have the terrifying effect of 10,000 thunder surges. But the problem is that once this move was used, Lu Heng would also be struck by heavenly thunder. This kind of heavenly thunder was randomly struck down. If Lu Heng was unlucky, or the enemy was very strong, then it was more likely that Lu Heng would be struck first. And once it was released, Lu Heng was afraid that the entire cold feather mountain would be cut off, and the original mountain forest would directly become a hell on earth and have no life existing. If not necessary, Lu Heng did not want to use this kind of move. Of course, he could also directly blast the enemy by the heavenly thunder in his body. But the current Lu Heng could only release six heavenly thunderbolts at a time, although it was very powerful, it was not unstoppable. At the very least, Gong Shu Jia, and the priestly Jew, who now lived on the periphery of Cold Feather Mountain, could certainly resist it. And in addition to the powerful old priest, there were so many strong and horrible Li people outside the mountain. Lu Heng used to feel that the six heavenly thunderbolts were enough to defend himself, but now he felt very insecure. So Lu Heng had to stop the process of cultivation and began to study using the power of heavenly thunder. The best result was that he would be able to research some kind of precise way to guide the thunder striking down, and could precisely control the target that the thunder struck. If he could do this, then Lu Heng could be free of worry for the time being. Then Lu Heng no longer delayed, he directly began to try to accurately control the heavenly thunder. So the originally slow-moving heavenly thunder clouds now began to violently surge, like a revived terrifying beast. 
The terrifying heavenly thunder aura swirled between heaven and earth, and even the villagers outside the cold feather mountain felt creepy, not to mention the Lee people with extraordinary abilities who were even closer. They felt more deeply the frightening aura. That huge heavenly thunder cut through the sky from time to time, blasting down in the cold feather mountain, and even the earth was trembling. This terrifying scene had been continuing, and the entire cold feather mountain were boiling up, and the previous quiet and peaceful village was a world away. The people of the Lee tribe, who had been busy outside, now all retreated to their respective camp tents, looking in awe at the cold feather mountain where thunder struck from time to time. They did not know what was happening. Those children who once jumped for joy now were all huddled in their own tents, hiding under the arms of their parents, anxiously looking at the mountain. They no longer dared to go out to play. Everyone in the Wind Raider tribe knew that the mountain god was an incomparably noble existence, and the old priest had long warned the clans not to disturb the wolf god by entering the mountain. But now the heavenly thunder moved. Could it be that the wolf god does not welcome us to move in? Or is it that some of the things we have done recently have angered the wolf god? All the people of the Lee tribe were nervous and anxious, and the old priest, who was standing by the new sword casting furnace, came out of the furnace in a hurry and found the young girl Qian. When the old priest saw Qian, she was sitting in the main tent and practicing. The young girl was a little surprised to see the old man rush in. Grandpa priest? Aren't you staying at the sword furnace to hold the fire? Why have you come here? Qian asked curiously. The old man walked up to her with a gloomy face and asked, Did you go to the mountain to beg to see the wolf god? Qian shook her head, No, didn't you say that I was not allowed to disturb the wolf god? So I've been busy with the Shuaxian village recently. You don't think I've offended the wolf god, do you? The young girl looked towards the direction of Cold Feather Mountain. Through the tense curtain, she could see the heavenly thunder cloud surging and thunder flickering there. This scene looked simply like that wolf god was angry. The girl understood the old man's thoughts, and quickly shook her head to deny, I obeyed you, grandpa priest, you cannot blame good people. It could not dispel the old man's suspicion. He looked at her suspiciously and asked, you really didn't bother the wolf god? The girl's face was aggrieved, I really didn't. If you don't believe me, you can ask everyone around here, I've been staying with everyone every day during this period of time, so I didn't have time to bother the wolf god. Then what is this constant striking of heavenly thunder in cold feather mountain? This. How do I know? The girl wanted to cry, I just sat in the tent to cultivate. Even if the wolf god is angry, it is certainly not because of me. And outside the tent, the chiefs of the various branches of the wind raiders had gathered over. All of them looked at the constant thunder in that cold feather mountain. They found the old priest at first time and asked for the old man's opinion. Master priest, is it that our recent behavior has angered the mountain god? Master priest, what should we do now? Should we prepare a tribute now to go into the mountain to ask for understanding? Could it be that our act of reclaiming the wasteland has made the mountain god angry? He won't allow us to move the land in the mountain. But we didn't destroy the earth's spiritual energy. All people were confused and talked about it. The old priest was silent for half a second before looking once again at the vortex cloud shrouding, and slowly said. The situation is unclear. Perhaps this matter has nothing to do with us. Since no one has gone into the mountain to disturb the wolf god, then there is no need to worry too much. If it is really our fault, since the wolf god did not directly smite us with the heavenly thunder, then there must be a way to solve this matter. Patting Qian's head, the old priest said, what are you still standing there for? Come with me, let's go into the mountain to see the wolf god and find out what happened. Qian froze and shook her head in a hurry, no, 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 I will absolutely not go. Last time I went with you, I almost took the blame. Li Ju glared at her and forcibly dragged her up, go. Dragging the young girl, the old priest walked directly out of the tent and flew to Cold Feather Mountain. At the summit of the main peak, a huge white wolf was standing proudly, looking down coldly at the mountains below. The heavenly thunder surging around it, and from time to time, a thunderbolt struck down around the white wolf, shining the heaven and earth to a miserable white. 
Looking at this scene from afar, the old priest understood that no matter what had happened, the wolf god was in a bad mood now. Chapter, 34 The thunder clouds were surging in the sky, so the old priest did not fly too high. He and Qian merely flew at a height of several feet above the forest trees so as not to fly too high and be accidentally injured by the heavenly thunder. However, their figures were obviously seen by the wolf god at the top of the mountain. After Li Ju and Qian entered the range of the main peak, the huge white wolf standing at the top of the mountain looked at this side indifferently. At that moment, both the old priest and Qian clearly saw that there was a fierce lightning flash in the white wolf's eyes. Together with the pitch black heavenly thunder clouds in the sky and the huge heavenly thunderbolts falling down the side of the wolf god. Today's white wolf was simply different from the wolf god they saw before, and now he was full of the aura of destruction. The young girl Qian shrank her neck, subconsciously grabbed the old priest's hand and whispered, Grandpa priest, why don't we go back? I think today's wolf god must be in a bad mood. Now we shouldn't take the initiative to see him at such a time, maybe it is not good. The old priest glared at her and said, you know nothing. Don't open your mouth later, unless I let you speak, understand. Oh, okay, Qian was deflated, but still nodded in agreement. Soon, they flew above the main peak. They hovered on the air below the white wolf and bowed. Li Ju has met the wolf god. Qian has met the wolf god. After the old man and the young girl bowed, Qian closed her mouth and obediently kept quiet. And the huge white wolf at the top of the mountain looked down at them and nodded as a greeting in return. Why did you come here? Lu Heng's voice did not sound angry, but it was also devoid of much emotion, and it carried a vague aura of thunder. The old priest dared not hide, and directly explained the purpose of this trip, asking if the little girl beside him or some of their recent actions had offended the wolf god. Although Qian claimed that she was obedient, the old man still wanted to confirm it. The matter was too important. And after listening to the old man, Lu Heng then understood the old priest's intention of coming. They saw the sight of the heavenly thunder surging in the mountain and thought Lu Heng was losing his temper. Now they came to the door to apologize. Although in some ways, I am now invoking thunder to split the mountain indeed because of you wind raiders, but it is not the reason you think. Lu Heng sighed and said, Priest, you are worrying too much. I'm just simply cultivating, and I'm not angry. It's just that the heavenly thunder is so powerful that even if it's just ordinary cultivation, it's still too loud. If there is any disturbance, please understand. Lu Heng's reply made the old priest put down his worries for the time being. At the very least, it confirmed that the wolf god had no intention of blaming the wind raiders. However, Lu Heng's next sentence made the old priest heart flutter. But you just asked if this girl had offended me. Why? For this matter, Lu Heng was confused. He could see that this lively and mischievous young girl was dragged over by the old priest. In addition to the old priest's words, this was clearly a child making trouble, then the elder carried the child to apologize. But Lu Heng had never seen this girl again since last meeting. The old priest, on the other hand, hesitated, this. Priest, don't worry, if you have something to say, Lu Heng said, I am not a small-minded person. Li Ju hurriedly bowed his hand, I dare not, but I am ashamed to say this. But since the wolf god asked, I can't hide it. The cause of this matter is a tragedy. Next, the old priest spoke in a gentle tone and told the story of Li Pe and his wife in general. Then he mentioned last time Qian wanted to ask Lu Heng to give the heavenly thunder sand, but was stopped by him. The old man was a bit apprehensive during the storytelling process, after all, he was not sure how important this heavenly thunder sand was to the wolf god. What if this sand was the wolf god's greatest treasure and the wolf god thought that they were coveting his treasure? The good thing was that the wolf god had been calmly listening to the story and did not have an overreaction. Until the end of the old man's narrative, Lu Heng then understood the cause and effect, and had some new knowledge. The sand on the land at the entrance of his temple, was the so-called heavenly thunder sand. Lu Heng stood in that position every time to make thunder to smite the mountain, unknowingly, the soil in that area had undergone some kind of qualitative changes. It had become hard and incomparable, and contained the aura of thunder. 
Lu Heng did not know about the existence of the heavenly thunder sand, so he did not care much of it. He just treated it as soil that was broken by the heavenly thunder. Now that he knew this thing was so precious. Lu Heng then asked, if you want to cast the sword, how much heavenly thunder sand do you need? Is this sand in front of my temple gate enough? Hearing this, the old priest understood immediately that the wolf god was willing to give the sand, so he quickly replied, it won't take that much, just less than 1% of the whole amount will be enough. In that case, Lu Heng thought about it and said, since this Li Pe is the most outstanding sword maker among your Li tribe, can I ask him to help me forge a heavenly thunder sword? A sword that can attract the power of heavenly thunder for my own use. In this afternoon's experiment, Lu Heng found that he really couldn't make the heavenly thunder strike the target. Perhaps in the future, he could control the heavenly thunder in the clouds like his arm, but today he was still too weak. Every time he tried to use his body's thunder power to guide the direction of the heavenly thunder to fall, Lu Heng could feel a strong sense of loss of control. That feeling was like a three-year-old child trying to forcibly reverse the direction of a mad cow running. After continuous failure, Lu Heng was a little discouraged. But the old priest's story made him have a flash of inspiration. This heavenly thunder sand could contain the aura of thunder and can also gather it. If he could use this as the foundation, he would get a weapon that can receive heavenly thunder. Once he met the enemy, he could release the heavenly thunder inside the sword, then it could also achieve the effect of control of thunder. And after Lu Heng said his vision, the old priest directly froze. This. Using the heavenly thunder sand as the main body to forge a divine sword that can receive the power of heavenly thunder. This. This kind of thing can be done. Li Ju had a shocked face. But after thinking about it carefully, Li Ju had to admit that if a large amount of heavenly thunder sand could be provided, this idea really seemed to be achievable. Just that in the past, no one had ever been able to collect so much heavenly thunder sand. And beings were usually afraid of the heavenly thunder, so they dared not to envision it as a weapon. As for the ordinary thunder, powerful humans and demons would not fear it, so no one would use it as a weapon. This wolf god's idea was really unconventional and extraordinary. The old priest frowned and pondered for a few minutes, and only after repeatedly thinking about it did he seriously say, if you provide enough heavenly thunder sand. Together with my mystical true fire and Lipo's burning sky fire, perhaps a divine sword that meets your requirements can really be forged. Having gotten the desired answer, Lu Heng nodded his head. Good, he said, you can go and inform that priest named Li Pe to come here. If you can help me forge this sword, I will definitely offer as much heavenly thunder sand as the priestly Pe needs. Chapter, 35 after the conversation with Lu Heng was over, Li Ju and Qian went back. Qian was very happy because the wolf god had promised to give the heavenly thunder sand. It was a great thing. However, Li Ju had a serious expression and a heavy heart. Although the wolf god promised to provide all the heavenly thunder sand and let them use it to cast the sword, such a divine weapon would be appalling, supposing it could really be forged. Even if it could theoretically be forged, it was only a theory. The difficulty laid far beyond the imagination of ordinary people. He only hoped that with his and Li Po's strength, they could complete the commission of the wolf god. The old priest sighed in his heart and could not be as optimistic as Qian. The clan member who informed Li Pe to come here had left several days ago. But his great sea department was far away from here, so it would take a long time for Li Pe to arrive. During this time, he could only finish the sword furnace first. Every time the Li tribe migrated to a new anchor point, they had to build a sword furnace on the spot to smelt gold and iron. But this time, in order to fulfill the commission of the wolf god, the framework of the sword furnace built in the past few days probably could not be used. And a new one had to be built that could accommodate both the mystical true fire and the burning sky fire. The old priest immediately started the reconstruction of the sword furnace after he returned to the camp. And in the cold feather mountain, Lu Heng once again resumed his cultivation. Nowadays, it was obvious that he could not really control the thunder and lightning, so he stopped his useless work and continued to cultivate, waiting for the priest to forge a sword for him. After inducing six heavenly thunderbolts in a row, Lu Heng disappeared into the underground. 
With the disappearance of Lu Hain, the cold feather mountain has settled down. The frightened people of the Wind Raiders all breathed a sigh of relief when they saw the thunder and lightning stopping. The only one who was not affected too much was probably only the villagers of Shueisheng village outside the mountain. After all, the villagers did not know the fear of the heavenly thunder, so they did not care. However, the next day, a big event happened in the village, making the quiet Shueisheng village directly uproarious. My water Ganoderma. Where's my water Ganoderma? What the hell? Who stole my water Ganoderma? In the early morning, the old village chief's house resounded with heartbreaking howls. Kneeling by the bed, the old village chief looked at the empty box at the bottom of his bed. The water Ganoderma should be in this box. According to the teachings of the Li people, he divided the water Ganoderma into ten pieces and took one piece every three days, but now he had only eaten two pieces and the rest had disappeared. Who stole it? Who? The old man cried and screamed, hammering the box. He was so angry that he fainted on the spot. His sons looked at each other and decided to follow the old man's request to find the water Ganoderma. And with all this fuss, most of the people in the village knew that the treasure given to the old village chief by the Li people had been stolen. But there was no second village within a hundred mile radius, who was the thief? It must be someone in the village. This was something that everyone understood. Next, each of the village chief's sons led people in the village to start looking. The people of Wind Raiders once said, the water Ganoderma was a strong medicine, so ordinary people could not bear and must take it in several times. So the thief must not finish eating the water Ganoderma. But honestly, the village chief's sons had little confidence to find the thief, because the thief only needed to hide the water Ganoderma to some secluded place, then no one could find it. But in order to be able to reassure their old father, they had to search the village. When Xiao Ai went out, she saw such a scene, the son of the village chief had just searched the house of Wang next door and was saying goodbye to her. Seeing Xiao Ai carrying the wooden basin out, people hurriedly greeted her with a smile, Xiao Ai, going out to wash clothes. Yes, the little girl nodded, looked at the crowd, and said, Uncle Lu, you can go to my house and take a look, too. Maybe the thief hid something in my house. The adults quickly waved their hands and refused, no, no, we'll just go to the next house. Who dared to offend this little girl in Shueisheng village? But Xiao Ai insisted, you still have to go to the search, and search it carefully. It is not possible that the whole village house are checked, but left my uncle's house. Please. The little girl was very serious about this, so they had to agree. Good, we will check this house at once. Xiao Ai, you do not have to worry. Okay, the little girl nodded, and did not stay, carrying the wooden basin directly went away. As for whether this group of people could search the water Ganoderma in the house, she didn't hold the hope. Or rather, everyone knew that this water Ganoderma was probably not going to be found. But the whole village's house was searched, and if no one searched Xiao Ai's house, there would be gossip later. That's why the little girl insisted that the adults go and search. Seeing several adults had gone into the house, Xiao Ai then carried the wooden basin to leave towards the river outside the village. But when she came to the riverside, she found that she had forgotten the pestle used for clothes. Oh! Only go back and get it. Xiao Ai silently sighed, put down the wooden basin, and turned around and walked towards the village. When she went through the village and returned to her home, she saw from afar that the adults who had finished searching the house were coming out, seemingly without any results. Xiao Ai was not surprised by this and continued to walk towards her house. Her steps were not fast and her pace was light. When she walked into the yard, she saw that the wooden door was closed. The sound insulation of the wooden room was very poor, so Xiao Ai happened to hear her brother's hoarse voice resounding inside the house. Hum. A group of fools, you want to get the water Ganoderma back. Just mortals like you, it's a waste to eat it. Hearing this voice, Xiao Ai froze for a moment, subconsciously stopped, even her breathing slowed down a lot. The voice rang out in the house was indeed her cousin's voice. Although low and hoarse, even the tone of voice was completely different from cousin. But why her cousin was talking about the water Ganoderma? 
Could it be that he was the one who stole the water Ganoderma? Xiao Ai's heart was slightly shocked. Then she heard a low, painful hiss from his cousin in the house. Hiss. Damn Gong Shu Jia, I will not let you go. After I absorbed the power in the water Ganoderma. And outside the house, Xiao Ai's face was already pale. Gong Shu Jia. Isn't this the name of Master Wu Zhu? After Master Wu Zhu left, everyone thought that the devil seed was not in the village, so everyone was relieved. But if Master Wu Zhu had made a mistake, the devil seed did not leave, and had been hiding in the village. Now it possessed cousin. Xiao Ai immediately thought of her cousin's recent illness, and Grandpa Bai's medicine was not cure. And when cousin began to get sick, it happened to be the day that Master Wu Zhu came to the village. Xiao Ai's footsteps were slowly backing up. At this time, the devil seed in the room said, Cripple Ai, take the water Ganoderma and come here. Hiss. Dan Gong Shu Jie. The wooden voice of the cripple Ai rang out immediately. Yes, master. Next, the house was temporarily quiet. While outside the house, Xiao Ai had been completely frightened. The girl thought of when Master Wu Zhu and Lord Mountain God discussing the Devil Seed, they had mentioned that this Devil Seed had the ability to control the mind of mortals. Did Uncle get controlled by the Devil Seed? Realizing this, the girl's heart became even more nervous. She held her breath, and slowly stepped backwards. She was afraid of alerting the Devil Seed in the house. Must go get help. No. That thing is a devil, the village people cannot deal with it. And she does not know if the rest of the village are also controlled by the devil seed. Now the only one she can rely on is the Lord Mountain God. Right. Go find the Lord Mountain God. As long as the Lord Mountain God knows about the devil seed, this devil cannot harm people. Xiao Ai quietly went away from the house, then directly went towards the outside of the village. However, just as she walked out of the village, she came across her aunt. The girl instantly stopped her running pace, aunt. Her aunt seemed normal as usual, nodded and asked, where are you going in a hurry? Ah. Uh. I went to the riverside to get something, the little girl immediately made up an excuse, I just had something dropped in the river. Then you go, said the woman, I go home first. Today we cook ground potatoes to eat, you come back early. Okay, Xiao Ai tried to make a calm appearance, then continued to run towards the river. But behind her, the woman looked at her and frowned. Chapter, 36 Shuaxing village was located on the outskirts of the Cold Feather Mountain. If one person wanted to actually reach the main peak, he would need to walk about two hours. Xiao Ai had the Mountain God Medal hanging around her neck, so once she entered the Cold Feather Mountain, she could run as much as she wanted without feeling tired. But even so, it would take her about an hour to reach the Mountain God Temple. After entering the Cold Feather Mountain, the little girl's heart had calmed down and was no longer panicked. The black vortex clouds that loomed over the mountain was like a giant eyeball, indifferently looking down on the world. Under the vortex clouds, other people may feel fearful, but Xiao Ai was filled with a sense of security. Upon entering the range of the vortex clouds, it was the Lord Mountain God's territory. However, Xiao Ai's feet gradually stopped. Her face, once again, became pale. Because not far in front of her on the mountain road, a six-year-old child was sitting quietly. The child looked at her with a sneer on his face that was not like the expression someone of that age should have. Sister Xiao Ai, where are you going? Didn't you go to the river to find something you lost? Why have you ran inside the mountain? The little boy said with a sneer. Behind him there were standing two figures, it was Xiao Ai's uncle and aunt. But these two once familiar relatives now were all dull-eyed and had wooden expression. They were obviously controlled by the demon. Xiao Ai subconsciously took a step back. Now she had already entered the range of Cold Feather Mountain. Even if she called out loudly, it was impossible for anyone to hear and to save her. But Xiao Ai knew that the beasts in this mountain all obeyed the orders of the Lord Mountain God, so if she seeks help from the beasts. Help. However, the moment she opened her mouth, her consciousness instantly went blank. 
The blank and dull state lasted for an unknown period of time. When she regained consciousness again, she found that her uncle was standing in front of her with a dull expression, using his thick hands to strangle her neck. The painful sense of suffocation made Xiao Ai struggle immediately. But with a young girl's strength, there was no way to break free from a farmer who worked in the fields all the time. Xiao Ai's legs were kicking hard in the air, and her hands were desperately grasping the man, but she could not relieve the feeling of suffocation. Her vision gradually became blurred and ears began ringing. Her struggle became slower and slower. Vaguely, Xiao Ai heard a voice. The devil seed said, breaking free so quickly. You little girl has some gift. But unfortunately, if you did not wake up, you would have little pain. Coldly smiled at the little girl's struggling movements, the little boy then said indifferently, bury her now, don't let that wolf know. After saying that, he looked up at the pitch black clouds above his head with some awe in his eyes. Although he did not know the origin of the white wolf in this mountain, these clouds were his mortal enemy. If he revealed even a hint of devil aura, he would certainly attract the heavenly thunder. The good thing was that he could control the mortals and order them to work for him. Hum. That Li tribe was a lucky chance. By using the water Ganoderma, he could leave this place soon. As soon as he digested the medicinal power of this water Ganoderma, he would have enough power to control this body to leave this place. Once away from here, he did not worry about attracting heavenly thunder anymore, and then did not need to hide in the mortal body. When the time comes, the sky is unlimited for birds to fly at ease. Apparently, the devil seed was very angry to the days when he was forced to hide in the body of a child. Now was not the time to vent his anger. He urged the couple to dig a mud pit nearby, and directly threw the little girl's body into it, quickly covering it up. This little girl seemed to be treated special by the white wolf. If the wolf knew about his existence, he would have a bad ending. The good thing was that he reacted in time and blocked this little girl otherwise. The devil seed thought of this and could not help but feel relief. When he saw that they have roughly covered the little girl's body, the devil seed ordered them to go back. The medicinal power of the water Ganoderma still needed one to two days of time to absorb. In these two days, he needed to think about how to muddle the disappearance of this little girl. The devil seed and the couple had left. This place that just buried corpse was gradually quiet down. Until. Ki, ki. A sudden monkey cry rang out in the mountain forest. Immediately afterwards, a white ape jumped down from the tree. Behind it followed the whole group of monkeys. The monkeys stood on the ground, surrounding the land that had just covered the corpse, all chirping and squeaking. In this underground, they felt some familiar aura. The white hairy monkey king called out and gave an order, the other monkeys all crowded over and began to dig the soil. The monkeys moved quickly, and the soil was soft, so soon the little girl buried in the ground was dig out. The moment they saw the little girl, the monkeys exploded. Kiri. Kiri. The monkeys all shouted in horror, recognizing who the little girl was. The leader of the monkey scratched its ears, and then it reached out a hand to touch the little girl's nose, finding that the little girl was no longer breathing. The monkey king shouted anxiously and gave an order again. The monkeys hurriedly lifted the little girl up and ran towards the mountain. From a distance, the sight of the monkeys carrying a girl running through the mountain was strange and striking. When the monkeys passed one of the camps of the Li tribe, Qian who was washing clothes by the river immediately noticed the movement. She looked up and saw a group of monkeys running with a human girl on their backs. The monkeys were shouting and screaming, while the girl the monkeys were carrying had her eyes tightly closed and was motionless, as if she were dead. This strange scene made Qian's eyes widen subconsciously. What is this group of monkeys doing? She was stunned and her powerful eyesight allowed her to clearly see the appearance of the girl that the monkeys were carrying. That girl's appearance was clearly the oracle of the wolf god. And it looked as if she was no longer breathing. The wolf god's divine ambassador died. In the cold feather mountain the wolf god's divine ambassador died. Qian immediately jumped up from the river, and did not even have the time to care about her clothes being washed away by the water. She flew directly into the sky and headed towards the direction of the sword furnace. 
As she flew, she shouted anxiously, something big has happened. Grandpa Priest. Something big has happened. Chapter, 37. When Qian found Li Ju, the old man was walking out of the sword furnace with a serious face. Where are your manners? How can you be the future priest of the Wind Raiders? The old man's expression was stern and his words were reprimanding. If it were in the past, Qian would have hastily apologized, and said that she would not dare to do it next time. But now, she was so anxious that she didn't have time to care about it. After falling from the sky, the girl grabbed the old priest's hand and said anxiously, It's bad. Grandpa Priest, the wolf god's oracle is dead. Now the monkeys are carrying the oracle towards the wolf god's divine residence, do you think something big will happen in the mountain? The old man, who originally had an angry face, froze when he heard such words. The wolf god's oracle died. His expression immediately became grave, staring at the young girl's eyes and asking seriously, Are you sure? It's really the oracle. It's already dead. Yes. Qian was so anxious, her breath was gone, and all those monkeys who carried her away were scared to death. If the wolf god knows it, will we be unlucky because of his anger? The old priest was silent for a few seconds and looked in the direction of the main peak of Cold Feather Mountain. There, the huge vortex clouds covered the light of the sky, and the slow rotation of the vortex clouds gave people a huge pressure. If the wolf god is furious, the heavenly thunder surges. Take me to see the oracle. The old priest said with a serious expression, we need to find out what's going on. After saying that, the old man and the young girl soared up at the same time. They flew towards the direction of the monkeys. Soon, they found the monkeys in the mountain. As Qian said, the monkeys were screaming in anxiety and fear, carrying a girl without breath. The monkey king scratched his ears and kicked the monkeys behind him from time to time, urging them to hurry up. Obviously, even this monkey king had realized the importance of the matter. The old priest was aghast in his heart. The moment he saw the monkeys, he also recognized that the girl carried by the monkeys was indeed the oracle of the wolf god. But now she was dead for some while. And what made the old priest worry most was the murderer who killed the girl. If the murderer can be found, perhaps it is okay, if the murderer cannot be found. Grandpa priest, what do we do? Qian said, do you have some way to save her? The old priest shook his head and said, birth, senility, illness and death are the order of heaven and earth, and the foundation of humanity. Even if the power is strong, it cannot bring back the dead. I'm afraid that it is already too late for the oracle. Why don't we go to the mountain god temple? Qian asked worriedly, are we going to help these monkeys? These monkeys are running too slow. The old priest shook his head again, though the wolf god had divine power, it is also unable to reverse the order of heaven and earth. After a person died, except for a small number of people with grudge who will remain in the world as grudge ghosts, most people's souls will dissipate and cease to exist. But these monkeys are indeed running too slowly, looking down at the monkeys running wildly in the mountains, the old priest gave a long sigh and said, help them. After saying that, the old priest lowered his head and sent a breath out to the monkeys. Immediately, a gale of wind was raised in the mountain, and the monkeys running in the wind suddenly became dozens of times faster. Soon, these monkeys came to the mountain god temple. Seeing the familiar temple, the monkey king still did not know what happened. It hurriedly looked around, almost suspecting that it had seen wrong. And not far behind the monkeys, Li Ju and Qian descended from the sky at the same time and stood with these monkeys in front of the mountain god temple. Qian asked in a low voice, Grandpa Priest, why did the wolf god not come out? The old man's face was calm and did not speak. The next second, a huge figure appeared in front of the mountain god temple. The frighteningly large white wolf stood as if it appeared out of nowhere. Looking at the scene, Lu Heng, who had just woken up from his cultivation state, froze for a moment. He only felt Xiao Ai's mountain god token approaching the mountain god temple at an unusually fast speed, so he woke up to see what happened. However, after coming out from underground, what he saw was a group of monkeys, and the priest and a little girl. Why? These Li people were looking for him for something. 
But when he saw Xiao Ai carried by the monkeys, he was stunned. Xiao Ai. He immediately perceived the abnormality of the little girl. She had no breathing, no pulse, and even the aura of the living was almost gone. This little girl. Is dead. In the sky, a ghastly heavenly thunder descended fiercely. The blinding thunder light instantly reflected everything beside the mountain god temple to a miserable white. The huge white wolf stepped on the raging thunder and slowly walked towards the monkeys. The gloomy and terrifying thunderbolt aura surged in the air. The monkeys all trembled in fear, lying on the ground and not daring to move. And Xiao Ai was lying quietly on the back of the monkeys. Now she was different from the girl that was tied for the first time. The huge head of the white wolf slowly lowered. The dark golden pupils stared indifferently at the girl's body. The old priest at the side took a few steps forward and said in a low voice, We do not know who is the murderer, but my whole clan members are willing to assist the wolf god and find the murderer. In this gloomy and terrifying atmosphere, probably only the old priest dared to speak up. However, Lu Hang just gave him a cold look and didn't say anything. He asked, What's going on? Lu Hang asked the monkey king, who was lying at the front of the monkey group. The white ape immediately chirped and gestured, telling Lu Hang about how they found Xiao Ai. During the white ape's narrative, Lu Hang suddenly felt something. He lowered his head again and came closer to the girl's body on the monkey's backs, then confirmed that feeling. This little girl was not yet dead. Previously, Lu Hang injected a wisp of wish power into the mountain god token. His original intention was to bless the girl so that she would be less sick and live a few more years. But he didn't expect this wish power to have such an effect now. Although the girl's breathing stopped and her life was ended, the wisp of wish power in the mountain god token locked her soul and held her last breath, so she didn't die completely. If so, perhaps he still has a way to save her. After a few seconds of silence, he directly took the body and instantly disappeared into the ground. The mountain god temple was once again quiet. The sky also gradually returned to the usual calm. The monkeys were still trembling and did not know what to do next. Qian was also a little uneasy, she tugged the old priest's sleeve and asked in a low voice, Grandpa priest, the wolf god seems to not be angry. Why did he suddenly take away the body of the oracle? Does the wolf god have a way to save her? The old priest subconsciously shook his head, it is impossible. However, after saying these words, the old man was silent. Because he also felt the wolf god's sudden change of attitude, as well as the mood of leaving everything behind and eagerly trying to save someone. If the oracle was really hopeless, the wolf god would certainly not react in such a way. Realizing this, the old priest also inevitably had the same absurd speculation like Qian. Even he himself felt that this speculation was absurd and ridiculous. Could it be that the white wolf god is able to reverse Yin and Yang and raise the dead? Chapter 38 In the underground shrine of the mountain god temple, Lu Heng gently put down the little girl's body. He didn't have time to care what the old priest outside was thinking. Right now, he only wanted to try to save the little girl whose body had started to freeze and stiffen. When he talked with Gong Shu Jia, Lu Heng knew that there was no heaven in this world, and there was no destination after death. Death in this world could not be reversed. Once one's body died and the soul was destroyed, even the greatest divine power could not save you. But Xiao Ai's condition was not quite the same, the wish power in the mountain god token locked her soul and held on to her last breath. So theoretically, there was a slight possibility of saving her life. Previously, when Lu Heng was cultivating the heavenly thunder power, all the demon power in his body was squeezed into the sea of qi and condensed into a small group. Lu Heng once thought about how to use up the demon power, but found that the demon power would be restored again even after it was consumed. The demon power was the essence energy of the wolf demon that had been cultivated for 200 years. However, after going through the wolf demon's memory, Lu Heng found an evil sorcery that could consume the essence energy. That is, enslave ghost. After the demon killed living creatures, he could use this sorcery to enslave the souls of the creatures and turn them into his own ghosts. This sorcery had to consume the demon's energy and was detrimental to the cultivation of the demon, so the demon hardly used it. 
even if they enslaved ghosts, they would control the number of them. The core of this sorcery was that the demon needed to inject demon energy into the soul of the victims, so that the soul of the living people could be enslaved like a severe ghost. But Lu Hang's purpose was to save Xiao Ai's life, not to enslave her soul, so the use of the sorcery had to be changed. Lu Hang put down Xiao Ai's body, and then took a deep breath. First, he restrained the thunder power in his body, and then slowly drew out the demon power that was collected in the Sea of Qi. Under Lu Hang's guidance, the demon Qi power was slowly injected into Xiao Ai's body and merged into her soul. Now the little girl's fragile and tattered soul that was about to dissipate gradually stabilized. Even without the wish power, this soul would not dissipate. But this was just the beginning. Because Xiao Ai's body was now dead. With this state, even if the soul was stabilized, this dead body could not regain vitality. So Lu Hang did not stop injecting the demon power, but began to spread it into the little girl's stiff limbs and bones, slowly transforming her body. This process was not fast, because enslaved ghosts did not need to control the corpse, so no demon had ever done this thing. However, Lu Hang suddenly discovered something, the girl's corpse was like a bottomless pit. The injected demon power could make ten ghosts, but he still didn't feel the limit. Lu Hang immediately understood why the corpses usually were directly eaten by the demon when he made ghosts. The transformation of the corpse needed to consume too much power. As Lu Hang's demon power was injected, Xiao Ai's body gradually had some breath and her heart seemed to start beating. Although the interval was long, it proved that Lu Hang's demon power could indeed transform the corpse and rejuvenate it. Perceiving this, Lu Hang was slightly relieved. At least it proved that his method worked. But with the continuous injection of demon power, Xiao Ai's appearance gradually changed. First, her hair, originally black, was gradually dyed with a pale color, and finally it actually all changed into the color of Lu Hang's wolf hair, silver. And this was not the end, as all the hair changed into silver, her face, the back of her hands, and the pores of her whole body gradually sprouted silver fur. Her bones began to squirm, and her face began to distort, approaching the form of a wolf. Lu Hang widened his eyes and immediately slowed down the process of injecting demon power. He suddenly realized what he did was the process of power transmission. The power transmission made Xiao Ai become a devil girl. No. If she became a wolf demon, she would definitely not be happy even if she became alive. Lu Hang clenched his teeth and tried to sense Xiao Ai's power. Now, the demon power was surging in the girl's body, and the aura belonging to a human was gradually fading. The only place that did not change was the location of her chest. There was hanging Lu Hang's mountain god token, and the wish power in it was still protecting Xiao Ai's soul. Could the wish power stop the girl's body's mutation? Lu Hang immediately poured the wish power accumulated under the mountain god temple into the girl's body. With the wish power from the human sacrifices injected, Xiao Ai's body gradually stopped mutating. Immediately after, she no longer grew white hair, and the skeletal transformation also gradually stopped. Even those wolf hairs that grew out before, now also slowly shrunk back into the pores, and her face gradually became normal. Only then did Lu Heng breathe a sigh of relief and continued to inject demon power into Xiao Ai's body, while using the wish power to stabilize the human shape and prevent her from moving closer to the demon. Then, Xiao Ai's heart rate began to return to normal. By this time, there was not much left of the demon power the wolf demon had cultivated for 200 years in Lu Heng's body. On the contrary, the wish power accumulated in the mountain god temple was still abundant. After all, the consumption of the wish power was relatively small. As for the little girl, although her breath was restored, the silver hair could not be changed. And in between her silver hair, a pair of pointed beast ears were born. This. Lu Hang was silent for a while. But this was already the limit of what he can do. It was impossible that one could be unaffected with such a huge amount of demon power injected into the body. Although this look was quite cute, it seemed to not be allowed in this world. When she wakes up and sees herself with two more beast ears, will she accept it? Lu Hang thought helplessly. He looked at the girl who had come to life, thought about it, 
and poured all the remaining demon power into the girl's body. Anyway, there wasn't much left, and he didn't need the demon power, so he might as well give it to this little girl. Then, Lu Heng injected the wish power again. With the injection of the demon power and the wish power, the girl's breathing gradually became long and rhythmic. Vaguely, Lu Heng even felt a strange aura. A kind of aura between a demon creature and a divine cultivator. Neither demon, nor human, she had two opposed breath mixed together. Even Lu Heng was surprised now. This little girl seems to have become extraordinary. Chapter 39 In the quiet underground holy temple, there was a faint spirit chi of the earth. The sleeping little girl was suspended in the spirit of the earth, her silver hair fell, and her appearance different from before. However, compared to her appearance, her aura was far more noticeable. It was a kind of aura made from demon and wish power. It was extremely chaotic and gave people a strange feeling. Lu Heng stood by and whispered. Xiao Ai, wake up. His voice was not loud, but it was directly transferred into the girl's soul. Although she did not become an enslaved ghost, Lu Heng rescued her by using the method of enslaved ghost. Lu Heng and the girl now had a soul connection similar to that of a master and servant. Even if the girl is seriously injured and dying, he can forcibly wake her up, not to mention that the girl has now recovered. However, after a few breaths, the girl suspended in the holy palace still closed her eyes, motionless, and was not awakened. And her confused and strange aura seemed to become more and more disordered. Lu Heng frowned, realizing something was wrong, and reached out his forepaw to touch the girl's forehead. In an instant, Lu Heng felt the condition in the girl's body. The cultivation base of the wolf demon for two hundred years and the wish power injected by Lu Heng, the two opposite forces of good and evil, are now violently colliding in the girl's body and completely out of control. Lu Heng was shocked. He quickly suppressed the two forces of the riot with the heavenly thunder in his body and forcibly restored calm. With Lu Heng as the leader, the two forces in the girl's body became quiet again and no longer rioted. But Lu Heng had a headache. Now his will is dominant, and the two forces in the little girl's body are perfectly integrated, and there is no riot. But if he lets go again, it was obvious that the little girl, as a mortal soul, could not control these two powerful forces. At that time, these two forces will riot again. This no I should save people to the end. Lu Heng sighed, and with some pain he separated a wisp of heavenly thunder from his body and injected it into the little girl's soul. The little girl's soul is too fragile to control the cultivation base of the wolf demon of two hundred years. However, with the blessing of the heavenly thunder, the situation should change. This is the heavenly thunder that Lu Heng painstakingly cultivated. It is the foundation of his path. Every strand is extremely valuable. It is naturally able to suppress evil spirits and wish power. Lu Heng tentatively released his claws and observed the little girl's condition after carefully integrating the wisp of heavenly thunder into the girl's soul. But after he released his claws, the girl's body, suspended in the spirit of the earth, suddenly shook. Then there was a burst of the aura of thunder in her body, which instantly spread to the little girl's whole body. Then the little girl's aura changed again. The original atmosphere between evil spirits and cultivator of the Shinto has undergone drastic changes. Two completely different forces seem to have been forcibly fused, and the demonic spirit and the aura of wish power disappeared at the same time. In the end, what escaped from the girl's body was no longer demonic spirit, but there was also no aura of wish power, but a faint presence of the aura of thunder, which was different from Lu Heng's. With a little dignity, a little evil, a little pressure. When this kind of breath appeared, her eyebrows flashed with a light golden trace, which seemed to indicate the completion of this change. Silently, her eyes slowly opened. Obviously Lu Heng didn't call her, but she took the initiative to wake up. At that moment, Lu Heng saw the girl's eyes, which were no longer the black and white pupils of human beings, but the golden animal pupils of wolf demons. At the moment when one girl and one wolf looked at each other, the girl was stunned and suddenly realized something. Wolf Lord Wolf God. She quickly sat up and found herself suspended in the void. The place seems to be a completely enclosed space, and the dark yellow spirit chi of the earth is floating in the air. 
The girl's expression was a little confused. She remembered that she seemed to have died but. I saved you, said the huge white wolf calmly, but, when you were sent by the monkeys, you were no longer breathing. In order to save you, I had to change your body. You should be able to feel the power in your body. Lu Heng's voice seemed to have an irresistible dignity, which made the girl subconsciously calm down and obey the orders of the wolf god. Then, she instantly felt the powerful force inside her body. The girl's expression was a little shocked. This this is what Lord Wolf God gave her. She hurriedly looked at Lu Heng, but the huge white wolf shook his head and said, Don't be happy too early. There is a price. Your body is no longer human. Although you may not be able to accept it, let me show you. With that, Lu Heng breathed out a breath, and the spirit of earth in the air gathered in front of the girl into a bronze mirror, which roughly reflected the girl's present appearance. This the girl stared at herself in the mirror, unconsciously reached out and touched the silver hair and the two animal ears on her head, and said nothing. Lu Heng said, you will probably live in this appearance all the time in the future, although you may not accept it huh? Lu Heng, who was halfway there, was stunned. He looked at the little girl in front of him with great amazement. Although the little girl had no expression on her face, she looked cold and calm. But through the connection between souls, Lu Heng can clearly feel her mood. The feeling of surprise. Ah! Pleasantly surprised. The huge white wolf tilted his head and became silent. He doesn't quite understand, the little girl seems to like what she looks like now. But according to the mortal concept of the world, this kind of monster with silver hair and ears should not be welcome. They will be ostracized even by the demons. Lu Heng frowned and asked, You don't seem sad. Well, Xiao Ai nodded heavily. She carefully touched her extra two wolf ears and said, These ears are very beautiful. I like them very much. Well, Lu Heng shook his head, and didn't intend to interfere with the little girl's aesthetics. After all, he also thought the color of her silver hair and animal ears were very cute. Since the little girl was not sad, he put down his only worry and asked. Now tell me, who killed you? Lu Heng's eyes were somewhat gloomy. People in Shueisheng village should not have the courage to hurt your life, right? Chapter, 40 After giving up all the demonic energy belonging to the wolf demon in his body, Lu Heng now has only the purest heavenly thunder left in his body. Although it seems that his own state has become more powerful, this is not the time for cultivation. The murderer who killed Xiao Ai must not be let go. With the character of this little girl, Lu Heng believes that she didn't do anything evil that could antagonize the villagers, otherwise, she would have acted domineering in the village using his name. And a thug who can kill an eight-year-old child is definitely not a good man. After pulling the little girl back from the abyss of death, the next thing to do is to punish the murderer. Next, Lu Heng calmly listened to the story told by the little girl. Possessed mortals. The uncle's family who controlled Xiao Ai. Did the demon seed that Gongshu Jia pursue hide in Shueisheng village? Just because it was hidden too deep, no one noticed. However, it's really a coincidence that there are so many people in the Shueisheng village, but this kind of devil is attached to Xiao Ai's cousin. Ah! After nodding, Lu Heng said, I understand. Just follow me. With that, Lu Heng thought for a moment, and left the underground holy palace, the holy palace is just an underground cavity full of spirit qi. Using the power of the mountain god, he took Xiao Ai to shuttle underground and returned to the ground after a few moments. In front of the mountain temple, the monkeys were still lying on the ground and did not dare to move. Not far away, the old priest of the Li tribe stood with his hands on his back and closed his eyes. The girl named Qian squatted beside the white monkey king and looked at the monkey curiously. In the sky, Vortex clouds surged, and the Hanyu mountain in the afternoon was too quiet to hear a trace of insects. Lu Hang's treatment of the girl was a complex process, but it didn't take much time. Now, seeing a human and a wolf appear again, Qian immediately widened her eyes. This. 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 She looked at the little girl beside Lu Hang with a shocked face, and was shocked by the strange appearance of the little girl's silver hair and ears. The wolf god not only really saved the little oracle, 
but also made the little oracle more beautiful. Qian clearly saw that the little oracle's skin had become more delicate, and some freckles on her face had disappeared. Her little face was now white and flawless, masking the pale golden animal pupil was even more exotic and beautiful. Although the sharp wolf ears were strange, Qian had seen many demons and didn't think it was terrible. Qian's eyes suddenly became very eager, isn't that beautiful? The Li priest on the other side opened his eyes and stared at the little girl beside Lu Heng. He could hardly believe what he saw. Birth, old age, and death are the order of heaven and earth which cannot be changed. Once the body is dead, no matter how powerful the magic power is, it cannot be reversed. At most, it can be turned into something like a vengeful ghost and remain in the world. But now he can clearly feel that the girl in front of him is not a zombie, nor a vengeful ghost, but really alive, and her body is no longer lifeless and still. In this world, is there any power that can reverse yin and yang and bring the dead back to life? The old priest was shocked and lost his words for a while. Lu Hang looked at him and asked, Mr. Li Ju, I wonder if you could answer me a question. How long will it take for a seriously injured devil to fully absorb the water Ganoderma lucida medicine you gave to the village head of Shuaxing village? Lu Hang's inquiry awakened the old priest from his days. He came back to his senses and said, Wolf God, you need to explain the situation with this demon in detail. Lu Hang nodded. That is natural. Without any concealment, Lu Heng quickly told the story of Gong Shu Jie's pursuit of the Devil Seed, the Devil Seed's attachment to mortals and the death of Xiao Ai. After that, he looked at the old man in front of him and waited for an answer. The old priest frowned and thought for a while, and said, Judging from what you said, this kind of demon can hide in the soul of mortals and avoid the pursuit. It must sneak into the soul of the possessed, and the loss of magic qi is enormous. It has been hidden in mortals for so long that it has not been separated. It is a devil who can fight with a wuju. Now the evil spirit qi has dried up. It will take about two days to fully absorb the water Ganoderma lucidum. Therefore, if there is no accident, this demon seed must still stay in the Shuashin village. Its cruel killing of the little oracle was just to buy time for him to absorb the power of water Ganoderma lucidum. However, this demon seed would never think that the wolf god could reverse life and death and save the dead little oracle. Hey! It's unbelievable. If I hadn't seen it with my own eyes, I wouldn't believe it. The old priest said more and more with emotion, but Lu Heng shook his head and said. You misunderstood. Xiao Ai was not dead at that time, so she had a chance of life. If she lost her last breath at that time, I would have no chance. Although I could barely save her now, I paid a great price. If Xiao Ai encounters such a situation again, I won't be able to save her again. Of course, what Lu Heng said is true. Saving the little girl depends on the wolf demon's 200 years of cultivation power, the accumulated wish power, and a wisp of heavenly thunder from Lu Heng's hard work. Now all the cultivation power of the wolf demon had been poured into Xiao Ai's body, and Lu Heng's body is no longer evil. The next time he encounters a similar situation, he really can't replicate today's miracle. Lu Heng spoke modestly, but the shock in the old priest's heart did not diminish at all. Or rather, Lu Heng's story coincides with his guess. This kind of heaven-defying method of reversing yin and yang and bringing the dead back to life has never been heard of before. It can be said that it is trampling on the order and rules of the world. It is absolutely impossible for the cost of going against the laws of heaven to be small. After Lu Heng confirmed the time required for the demon seed to absorb the water Ganoderma lucidum, he didn't delay any longer. He dismissed the monkeys in front of the mountain temple and said to the old priest on the side, I want to go to the Shuaxing village to eliminate the demon seed. Would you like to go with me? The old priest said with a smile, That is what I want. I will see the power of the wolf god on this trip. Lu Heng shook his head and said, No, I won't do it this time. The white wolf gently pat the little girl beside him with his huge front paw, and said, This demon seed will be handled by Xiao Ai. Oh. The old priest looked at the little girl with a little surprise, and then he noticed the strange aura from the girl's body. Her aura was somewhat similar to evil spirits, yet reminiscent of the aura of a wuju. 
but when he looked carefully, he found that it is not these two types, but the aura of thunder, which is awe-inspiring with a little power of heavenly punishment. However, unlike the wolf god's unfathomable, impenetrable and towering feeling, the strength in the girl's body is not strong, which is probably equivalent to the 200 years of Taoist cultivation of ordinary demons. Just out of thin air, this little girl has been given a demon's cultivation for about 200 years. And the aura is so special. The old priest took a deep look at Xiao Ai and realized that the little divine envoy had indeed changed a lot. This female doll is really favored by the wolf god. The wolf god not only reversed yin and yang and trampled on the order of heaven and earth, but also personally helped her to cut the marrow of the I Ching and reshape her soul. Thanks to this, the girl named Xiao Ai is going to break away from the mundane and soar high into the sky. Chapter, 41 After inviting the old man to accompany him, Lu Heng did not delay any longer. He directly used the power of the mountain god and left with the three people in front of the mountain temple. In front of the mountain temple, the huge white wolf and the three people disappeared in an instant. With the power of shrinking the land into inches, Lu Heng took a single step, and the world around him changed dramatically. Forest and mountain scenery, rivers and wilderness, everything on Could Feather Mountain was like a rapidly shaking picture, flashing around the travelers, and then disappearing. Finally, when Lu Heng stopped, the sunny Shuaxing village appeared in front of everyone. It was late autumn at this time, and the wind blowing across his face was a little cool. It's sunny and warm today, so the wind didn't feel wet and cold. Outside the Shuaxing village, the rice fields that will be empty after harvest are paved on the plain one after another, just like a simple puzzle. The soil in the paddy field has already dried up, and the dry, hard and cracked mud blocks are scattered with withered and yellow straw stems, on which grasshoppers jump. When they arrived, Lu Heng saw some children running and playing in the rice fields, and a cheerful voice came from afar. In the village in the distance, as evening approached, a curl of cooking smoke rose from the village. The barking of dogs is the only noisy sound in this quiet village. On the wooden fence at the entrance of the village, the young man on duty fell asleep with his arms folded and his back against the fence. The straw hat on his head blocked out the sun for him, so that he could be lazy at his leisure. No matter how you look at it, the village in front of you is just a quiet and peaceful mountain village. If you are just passing by, no one can imagine that there is a demon seed hidden in this small village. The old priest looked at Lu Heng and asked, Do I have to enter directly? Lu Heng nodded and said, Go straight in. As he spoke the heavenly thunder in his body surged. In the sky above the Shuaxing village, a curl of white clouds emerged from the sky and slowly gathered. Then, these ethereal white clouds slowly thickened, and the color of the clouds gradually darkened. In the end, the clouds hanging over the Shuaxing village were dark and gloomy. Terrifying thunder light loomed in clouds and a musty smell instantly shrouded the whole village. In the Shuaxing village, the demon seed who closed the door tightly and sat cross-legged in the dark room suddenly opened his eyes. In the kitchen next door, the peasant woman is cooking. The smell of rice wafted over, making the demon seed hungry. But now they have no time to care whether the body is hungry. He climbed down from the bed and shouted towards the door. Somebody. Soon, the door of the house was opened, and Cripple AI with a dull look in his eyes appeared in his field of vision. The demon waved to Cripple AI and said, help me out for a walk. At this time, it has been hiding in the mortal soul for too long. Its demon chi was greatly consumed, and its body became weak. Although it has eaten the water Ganoderma lucidum, it would take time to fully absorb its power. Since it doesn't want to consume too much demon chi, it needs help to control the body. With the help of Cripple AI, the demon seed walked slowly towards the outside. At this time, the village was quiet and peaceful, without any noise. In the afternoon, most households spend time preparing meals. Even those who like to visit others return to their own homes. In such a quiet environment, it should have been relaxed, but the demon seed was inexplicably worried. It even felt a vague sense of panic. It sensed that something terrible was about to happen. What a terrible thing is that girl not dead. No no way. At that time, he saw the girl die with his own eyes. 
he can guarantee that the girl is absolutely dead. The place where the girl's body was buried was so remote that almost no one passed by. Even if someone passed by, they would never think that there was a girl's body buried underground. Even if the girl's body was dug up, no one could trace it back to him. All the villagers in the Shueishin village are afraid of the girl and did not dare hurt her. Once the girl died, the most suspected group was of Li tribe people outside the mountain. From what he knows, even Gong Shu Jia is willing to make friends with the white wolf in the mountain, although it is somewhat unusual. However, the mountain god of a remote hill, even if he has a little strength, can never arouse the people of the Li tribe. No matter how the Li tribe reacts to this matter, the white wolf will never dare to act rashly. As long as the white wolf doesn't dare to act rashly, the matter will be postponed for a while. When it absorbs the medicine of water Ganoderma lucidum, it can directly leave here and stay away from the inexplicable cloud in the mountain. At that time, everything in the mountain has nothing to do with him. Even if the white wolf knows that it killed the girl, what can it do? But the cloud in the mountain TSK. As it thought about the heavenly thunder clouds, the demon seed felt more and more unlucky. It didn't think that it could run into heaven's scourge cloud in any direction. Within the scope of the heavenly thunder clouds, it doesn't dare to act rashly. Otherwise, the evil chi in its body will trigger the heavenly thunder clouds, which will directly lead to the heaven's wrath. In the beginning, it had thought that the heavenly thunder clouds were brought by some demon or strange treasure. As long as it hid in this mortal body and waited until the heavenly thunder clouds cleared, it could continue to flee. However, it hadn't expected that it would have to be in the boy's body for so long, the heavenly thunder clouds still not disappearing, and the gloomy and terrifying atmosphere remaining to shroud the world. If it wasn't for the water Ganoderma lucidum sent by those Li tribe people, it wouldn't even dare to wake up and would continue to sleep in the boy's soul. Who what bad luck! Fortunately, the Li tribe sent the water Ganoderma lucidum in time. As long as he managed to endure a little longer and absorb the power of the water Ganoderma lucidum, he could finally leave. As for what the heavenly thunder cloud is, it didn't dare to pay any attention as he couldn't risk the response. There are so many strange things in the world. It's not so strange to see frozen heavenly thunder clouds. As long as he doesn't get close to the range of this mountain in the future, it will be okay. The demon seed thought in his heart, and with the help of cripple AI, he walked out of the house and came outside. Ominous thunder bellowed throughout the dark clouds. However, the dark cloud only covers the Shueishin village, and the sunshine is still bright outside the Shueishin village. The moment he saw the terrible cloud above his head, the demon seed's body froze. This this cloud floated out of the mountain. Just above it. Is it the demon chi in his body that attracted the heavenly thunder cloud? The demon seed subconsciously looked in the direction of Hanyu Mountain, but was stunned to find that the deep of Hanyu Mountain was still shrouded in a huge dark cloud. The heavenly thunder clouds that have covered the main peak of Hanyu Mountain for the past year have not moved. Then the cloud above my head. The demon seed's heart suddenly pounded, and a sense of horror and crisis that was even stronger than when he was almost beaten to death by Gong Shu Jia suddenly came out of his heart. With a premonition in mind, the demon seed suddenly looked in the direction of the village entrance. In this peaceful village, a huge white wolf slowly came out of the houses. The huge shining silver animal glanced at the thin boy. And the demon seed attached to the boy's body. The demon seed's breath stopped instantly, and his face became very pale. The white wolf in the mountain actually came out. Chapter 42 Shueishin village is located in a remote area. Most of the houses in the village are simple wooden tile houses, which are not high. The huge white wolf came from a distance. Wherever he went, the houses where the villagers lived were even slightly smaller than him. It looks like a huge fierce beast invading the world. However, there was no scream in the village, and the presence of such a behemoth in the village didn't cause any panic. The villagers all ran out of their homes and knelt down on both sides of the road passed by the white wolf spontaneously, devoutly, and respectfully. Through the village road with kneeling people on both sides, the huge white wolf stopped outside the house where the demon seed was located, and the distance between the two sides was just several feet. The demon seed's breath was slightly sluggish and his expression was a little frightened. 
The white wolf was surrounded by three figures. Except for the two peep in the tribe clothes, there remained a little girl, with a cold expression, silver hair and ears, and dark red golden eyes. No matter how you look at it, she wasn't ordinary. But this girl this girl. The demon seed could hardly believe his eyes. Wasn't this girl dead? Did he lose sight of it? The girl didn't die. Otherwise, how could a dead person appear here? Moreover, her appearance has changed greatly. It is clear that her body and soul had been reshaped. Demon Seed's expression turned pale. His eyes wandered around the white wolf and the old priest of the Lee tribe was it because of the priest of the Lee tribe? But why did he do it? This Shuatian village has nothing to do with him, right? Thinking constantly, Demon Seed soon found that the priest of the Lee tribe was not ahead, but slightly behind the white wolf. The leader of this trip is clearly the white wolf. But how arrogant are the people of the Lee tribe? The priests of the Lee tribe divisions are all heroes with no equals. Now they are willing to bow down to others. Isn't the white wolf simple? Demon Seed's eyes stayed on the huge white wolf again. But hidden in the human soul, he could not see through the depth of the white wolf in front of him. If he used his demon energy, the heavenly thunder clouds over the Shuashing village will surely fall. Thinking of this, Demon Seed's face became more and more ugly. Even though he didn't understand the cause and effect in his heart, when he saw that the girl appeared here, he already knew that the three men and a wolf were looking for him. In order to seize the opportunity, the Demon Seed took the lead and shouted at the priest of the Li tribe. Li Ju, I have no quarrel with you in the past. Why do you help the white wolf to harm me today? Demon Seed took the lead in opening his mouth, making everyone present look at the old priest of the Li tribe. Including the huge white wolf. However, in the eyes of the crowd, the old priest faintly said, I won't do anything, I'm just watching the ceremony. You don't have to care about my existence. The words of the old priest made the demon seed instantly happy. As long as the old man of the Li tribe doesn't take action, his probability of living today will be one point higher. Then the demon seed looked at the white wolf and said with a dignified face, Wolf demon, I know you are here for this girl. But both of us are demons. We are all the same kind. Why bother to kill each other? Although I'm indeed at fault, now that you have rescued the girl, how about leaving this matter alone? I would like to make a poisoned oath. If you let me go today, I will repay you with a generous gift. You are the god of the Hanyu mountain. All your Taoist cultivation is related to the spiritual power of the local veins. However, the terrain of Hanyu Mountain is remote and the local veins are barren. Even if you are the god of the mountain, it is difficult for you to cultivate, right? But if you let me go, I can help you find a precious mountain talisman to help you cultivate how about it? I know where it is. I wouldn't dare lie to you. If you don't believe me, I can swear by heaven so you don't have to worry about betrayal. In the face of this mortal crisis, the demon seed didn't dare to have any reservations. Although Gong Shu Jia, who has the mountain talisman is not an easy opponent, he will have to fight with Gong Shu Jia sooner or later. As long as he takes away Gong Shu Jia's mountain talisman, he can complete today's pledge. As for the mountain talisman, it is the treasure of the mountain gods. For these mountain gods, it's the first class treasure in the world. As long as it is a mountain god, it is absolutely impossible to refuse the temptation of the mountain talisman. Demon Seed has played the biggest card he could at present. As long as the white wolf nods, he should have no worries today. However, after the Demon Seed's words, the white wolf just gave it a cold look, not seeming as happy as the Demon Seed expected. The white wolf just patted the little girl on the shoulder and said, It's up to you, Xiao Ai. The Demon Seed is now hidden in your cousin's soul. It's very weak. As long as you do what I just taught you, it can't resist you. The words of the white wolf are clear and light, without any anger. When talking with Gong Shu Jie before, Lu Heng talked about the demon seed. Naturally, he knows how to deal with the demon seed. Now he has taught Xiao Ai the way. With Xiao Ai's 200 years of wolf demon energy, it is not a problem to deal with the weak demon seed. Although the little girl was a little nervous, she still saluted respectfully. 
as Lord Wolf God wishes. With that, the girl looked at the demon seed in front of the house and the middle-aged man who was supporting him. Taking a deep breath, the girl's dark golden eyes flashed a little cold. She walked directly towards Demon Seed, with an awe-inspiring aura all over her. Seeing this scene, the Demon Seed stepped back a few steps in panic and shouted. Wolf Demon! You are killing your kind today. It will only make your enemies happy. What kind of benefits did Gong Shu Jia offer you? It made you willing to help him harm your own kind. The Demon Seed screamed, trying to force the White Wolf to stop with words. However, the wolf demon just looked at it indifferently and said nothing. The old priest of the Li tribe shook his head slightly. The expression on his face was not disdain or ridicule, but absurd. It seemed that the demon seed said something very funny. The Li tribe girl beside the priest could not help but laugh. Are you of the same kind as the wolf god? Ha ha ha. The girl named Xian trembled with laughter. This is the funniest joke I have ever heard. A mere demon seed dares to pretend to be a wolf god's kindred. Are you too thick-skinned? Do you know how the wolf god exists? Can you be a wolf god's kindred? Ha ha. The young girl couldn't help but laugh, but the old priest glared at her, Chan Chan. The girl was startled and stopped laughing. When she stood up and saw that the old priest no longer stared at her, the girl secretly put out her tongue. While the girl's laughter stopped, the wolf girl named Xiao Ai came to Demon Seed. The Demon Seed looked panicked and felt great pressure. The response of the priest of the Li tribe and the ridicule of the girl has made it understand. The white wolf is definitely not an ordinary demon. The Li tribe's priest clearly feared the existence of the white wolf. Even the priests of the Li tribe are in awe of the wolf demon. The white wolf is definitely not a so-called mountain monster. So do the heavenly thunder clouds in the Hanyu mountain also have something to do with it? The more the demon seed thinks about it, the more he panicked. Because he finally realized that the heavenly thunder clouds which appeared suddenly over the Shueishing village also followed the white wolf as it came down the mountain. If the heavenly thunder clouds were attracted by the demon chi in its body, the thunder of the scourge would have been broken down. However, today, the heavenly thunder clouds are still calm without any thunder, which proves that the appearance of heavenly thunder clouds has nothing to do with it. The white wolf god is in Hanyu Mountain, and the sky over Hanyu Mountain is covered with heavenly thunder clouds all the year round. Now he goes down the mountain to the village, and the quiet and peaceful Shueishing village is immediately covered by heavenly thunder clouds. The demon seed swallowed its saliva and was completely scared. But the white wolf girl with silver hair and ears did not give it a chance to continue to guess. The girl came to it, and pointed her finger directly in the middle of the eyebrows of her cousin. The blue light of thunders broke out between them. The thin boy's body immediately froze, and the demon seed in his body gave out a painful howl, frantically drilling out of the boy's soul, trying to escape. But now, what is the use of its evasion? However, within a few moments, it was dragged out of the boy's soul by the white wolf girl and appeared in front of the public. The gloomy evil spirit's wail reverberated in front of the village. The cold girl pinched the black fog in her hand and looked at the ferocious face in the black fog, which was crying with pain, without any pity. In the sky, the normally calm heavenly thunder clouds suddenly surged violently because of the appearance of the demonic fog. The aura of thunder is becoming more and more powerful. In the heavy thunder clouds, the lightning flashes, and the scourge thunder is about to fall. The fear of dying made the demon seed scream bitterly, he didn't care about anything else. You can't kill me. You can't kill me. I am under the green hell cave you can't kill me. You are determined not to kill me. The voice of demon seed is extremely bleak. In order to survive, it wasted no time to expose its roots. However, heavenly thunder clouds surged in the sky, and the demon chi linked to the sky thunder. In a moment, a pale sky thunder fell from the sky. Xiao Ai, who had already prepared, threw the demon seed into the sky at the moment when the thunder fell. Rumble. With a loud noise, the demon seed thrown into the air was just hit by the falling thunder. In an instant, the shrill howling of the demon seed disappeared into the magnificent thunder. 
The evil demon Qi was directly defeated and scattered, and turned into the purest heaven and earth spirit Qi, and spread across the vast sky. Originally, a single thunderbolt could not have killed the demon seed. However, it had been hidden in the human boy's body for too long, and was already very weak and on the verge of collapse. Now a single falling thunderbolt was capable of completely erasing it, leaving nothing behind in the world. In the small village, all the villagers were frightened by the scene of the scourge. Fortunately, after the demon seed dissipated, the heavy thunder clouds gradually dispersed and finally disappeared completely, revealing the red sunset sky in the evening. When everything calmed down, the villagers were relieved. However, Lu Hain, who sat in the middle of the villagers' worship, was silent. He looked up at the sky where demon seed dissipated and said nothing. At the moment when Demon Seed shouted the Green Hell Cave, somehow, Lu Hang's mind came up with a woman's laugh. Laugh like a real demon. If you go to the Green Hell Cave and practice this demon skill, you won't have to depend on the worship of the mortals at the foot of the mountain. He he you don't have to cultivate after you start on this road. From then on, you and I will be the same family. Even these Wuju will kneel before you sooner or later. Chapter, 43 over the quiet and peaceful Shueishing village, as the heavenly thunder clouds dispersed, the heaven and earth aura that the demon seed had split up gradually dissipated. Everything was once again calm. When the demon seed disappeared, Cripple AI who was controlled by the demon seed also recovered his consciousness and quickly knelt down in front of the wolf god and cowed out. However, the wolf god, who was sitting down, was lost in thought and others could not know what had come to his mind. After a long time, Lu Heng spoke slowly. Old sir, Lu Heng asked, looking at the priest of the Li tribe beside him, have you ever heard the name of the Green Hell Cave? Well the Green Hell Cave? The old man thought for a while, shook his head and said, I haven't heard of it. I've never been in touch with evil people, whether evil spirits or righteous gods, so I haven't heard of the name of the Green Hell Cave. Lu Heng nodded to show understanding. But Qian opened her mouth curiously, Lord Wolf, is the Green Hell Cave very powerful? Lu Heng thought for a while, shook his head and said, I have never heard of it. In other words, Lu Heng never heard of it after crossing. But the original wolf demon must know, and also had contact with the Green Hell Cave demon. Only the memory of the wolf demon is vague. Lu Heng doesn't know what kind of existence the Green Hell Cave was. It was only when he heard the scream of the demon seed before his die that he recalled some vague memories. Now, it seems that the wolf demon has been a mountain god here for eighty years, and finally converted to the devil's way to force the mountain people to sacrifice boys and girls. It turned out that it had not turned bad out of thin air, but was seduced by the evil people. The only thing he could remember was the female laughter. He thought that it was probably a fox demon. The wolf demon even provoked this kind of thing and cultivated the demon's skill. No wonder it attracted the heavenly thunder. The green hell cave is not a good place. We should be more careful when we go down the mountain. Today, I killed a demon seed. I'm afraid I'll have to do it again in the future. But even so, Lu Heng is not worried. The green hell cave teaches demon skills and cultivates demons. Lu Heng is not afraid of such demons. If the evil spirits of the Green Hell Cave appear in his vision, Lu Heng doesn't need to do anything. He just needs to summon the heavenly thunder clouds. Within the range of the thunder clouds, heaven's punishment will take the initiative to kill those demons. Lu Heng doesn't have to do anything at all. So Lu Heng was not worried. He looked at Xiao Ai in front of him. After getting rid of the demon seed, the girl with silver hair and ears stood quietly in front of him without saying a word. Seeing that the little girl had something to say, Lu Heng asked, Do you want to talk to me? Lu Heng's inquiry made all the villagers present look at the little girl in front of the white wolf. Everyone saw the unusual appearance of the little girl's silver hair and ears, which seemed out of place in the crowd. If they didn't know better, they would have shouted monster in horror. But who doesn't know Xiao Ai in the Shueishing village? Who doesn't know the wolf god? This little girl's ears and eyes are exactly same as those of the wolf god. The villagers all know that Xiao Ai may have benefited from the mountain god. After all, it was this original weak girl who just killed the demon seed. 
If you were a mortal, how could you hold such power? While the villagers peered curiously, the little girl standing in front of the white wolf took a deep breath and knelt down directly to the white wolf in front of her. Xiao Ai wants to stay with the wolf god. I want to accompany the wolf god and serve you. The girl knocked her head heavily on the ground, knelt down, and said devoutly and respectfully. This sentence has been in her mind for half a year. At the beginning, she was misunderstood by everyone in the village, bound and abused by the adults in the village, and carried into the mountains. It was the wolf god who rescued her. When she was betrayed by her relatives and abused by the adults in the village, only the wolf god cared for her. At that time, she wanted to beg the wolf god to let her stay and not let her go back to the village. But at that time, she was too weak to survive alone in the mountains. Even if the wolf god was willing to take her in, she would only become a burden. So the girl didn't dare to speak, nor did she want to speak. She had to follow the adults back to the village silently. Since then, she has looked in the direction of the Hanyu mountain every day and offered worship to the wolf god every day. But now it's different. The wolf god has made her anew. She is no longer weak. Even alone in the mountains, she can take good care of herself and will not become a burden. So the girl could no longer suppress her inner emotions. She knelt down in front of Lu Hang and said her wishes nervously but firmly. The girl's plea made the villagers quiet for a while. The villagers looked at each other and said nothing. Lu Hang looked at the little girl kneeling respectfully in front of him, felt the uneasy anticipation in the other party's heart, sighed and said. Well, I'm in need of a sword attendant. Since it is your wish, you can practice in the mountains with me. You won't have to meddle in the village anymore. Lu Heng couldn't transform into a human right now. Even if his heavenly thunder sword is successfully made, he can't hold a sword with a wolf body. There's no way he would go out with a sword in his mouth, right? He can temporarily leave the sword to her, since it is impossible for Lu Heng to even hold the sword currently. When the girl heard Lu Hang's answer, she immediately fell down and kowtowed. However, Lu Hang released a breath, and the girl could not kneel down. I have already said that no matter what happens in front of me, you are not allowed to kneel again, Lu Hang said lightly. This is your last mistake, and you are not allowed to make it again in the future. The girl was stunned. She quickly stood up and nodded respectfully, Xiao Ai will remember. After solving the little girl's problem, Lu Hang looked at the old priest and said, It's over now, but the old man seems to have something to say. It doesn't matter. Lu Hang took the initiative to speak, and the old man laughed. He touched his chin's beard and said, Miss Xiao Ai must be extraordinary in the future because she has joined the wolf god's gate today. It's just that the Hanyu mountain is secluded. The little girl is used to the village life, maybe she is not used to it. If the wolf god doesn't mind, I can help Xiao Ai build a house in the mountains besides smelting gold and iron, I am also good at civil engineering. The old priest smiled and said, releasing his kindness. Most of the young people in the tribe have nothing to do. It's better to find something for them to do and make a good relationship with the wolf god, killing two birds with one stone. Lu Hang looked at the little girl beside him and nodded, indeed, as the old man said, Xiao Ai still needs a house to live in. In this way, I will trouble you. The old priest smiled and shook his head. It's just a small effort. Wolf God, you don't need to be so serious. Well, let's go back, Lu Heng said, looking at Xiao Ai in front of him. After you bid goodbye to your relatives, you can pack your bags and go directly to the mountain. From now onwards, the Hanyu Mountain will be your home. Chapter 44. After leaving the Shuaxing village, Lu Hang said goodbye to the old priest of the Li tribe outside the village. He was awakened from the state of focused cultivation. The heavenly thunder in his body had not been fully digested. Now he needs to return to the mountain to continue his practice. What's more, Lu Hang felt that his state at this time seemed to have changed after the 200 years of demon power belonging to the wolf demon disappeared. Without the demon power condensed in his body, the flow of heavenly thunder in his body seemed to be smoother. Lu Hang was eager to find out the specific changes. Therefore, 
After saying goodbye to the Li tribe's elders, Lu Heng didn't wander in the mountains but directly used his power to quickly return to the mountains and sneak into the temple under the mountain temple to practice. This holy temple was the gathering center of the spirit qi of Hanyu Mountain. Although it was only an underground hole, it was silent. Lu Heng would not be disturbed by anyone here. As for Xiao Ai, she had the wolf demon's 200 years of cultivation power, so Lu Heng didn't need to worry about her safety. After saying goodbye to her relatives and handling the affairs in the village, she would go into the mountain by herself. With this in mind, Lu Heng entered a state of latent cultivating. The blazing white lightning filled his field of view in an instant. In a trance, he seemed to enter a strange world full of lightning. Both the body and soul are floating in this lightning flashing world. All the thunder and lightning that passed through his body contained terrible power, but didn't cause any harm to him. On the contrary, Lu Heng was floating in such a thunder and lightning ocean, and he felt a warm force gradually immerse in his soul. This was a feeling he had never experienced before. Not only was his demon body being tempered, but even his soul was floating in this lightning world. It was a kind of addictive and ethereal feeling. Unconsciously, Lu Heng's consciousness slowly sank into the ocean of thunder and lightning, falling into a confused and trance state. In this strange state, he forgot everything, but instinctively went up and down in the lightning. He seemed to hear many voices and see many scenes. Mountains, rivers and strange treasures were born. The despairing demons who were punished by heaven, the angry demons who refused to give in. In the hazy haze, Lu Heng saw countless strange scenes. He seemed to have transformed into pure heavenly thunder clouds, gathering and dispersing in the world, appearing in different areas, observing all kinds of strange individuals, in anger, despair, fear, howling, crying for mercy, etc. In this picture, which flashed like a lantern, he finally saw a familiar scene. Under the dark sky, a huge white wolf knelt in front of the mountain temple and howled bitterly. In the white wolf's body, there is a newly cultivated evil spirit Qi. It is this evil spirit Qi that leads to the aggregation of the heavenly thunder clouds. In the face of heaven's punishment, the white wolf wailed and knelt down to pray. However, the heavenly thunder clouds in the night sky surged without the slightest pity. Finally, with a roaring sound, sky lightning cut through the night, and the white light drowned the white wolf in the mountain temple. Buzzing. Lu Heng, who saw this scene, suddenly woke up with a sudden shock. The feeling of numbness and pain flows among the limbs. In a trance, he seemed to return to the time when he had just crossed into the white wolf. However, after he became a little more conscious, he found that he was still lying in the underground temple, and the air was filled with a faint yellow spirit chi of the earth. And his body was not overwhelmed by the thunder. The feeling of numbness and pain was just an illusion. Lu Heng frowned slightly and sat up. Not only had he never seen this ocean of thunder and lightning before, but even this trance state of consciousness was new to him. Now, although he had woken up, Lu Heng didn't even know how long he had slept. Only in the process of mental induction, did he vaguely find that his soul seemed to have undergone a qualitative change. Originally, although the demon body was constantly transformed by heavenly thunder, his soul was always fragile. But now it was different. He felt that his soul had become countless times more powerful. After a thought, Lu Heng found himself floating slowly. However, after lowering his head, he saw a huge white wolf standing at his feet, and he was now suspended on the white wolf's body. This is Soul Projection Lu Heng thought about it and saw the white light surging in the holy temple. He doesn't need a mirror. He can feel the surging power of lightning in his soul. Has my soul been reshaped by the thunder? Or has it become pure thunder itself? Completely composed of the power of thunder? Looking down at his hands, Lu Heng found that although his soul had undergone qualitative changes, it still maintained its former human form. After getting used to the wolf demon's body, Lu Heng suddenly had hands and feet again. He was a little unaccustomed to it. But this state of being out of the body made him feel a little fresh. After a thought, Lu Heng's soul left the temple directly and flew away towards the ground above. Almost in an instant, Lu Heng broke through the layers of soil and returned to the ground again. 
the sky is still shrouded in dark heavenly thunderclouds. The huge whirling clouds, like an eyeball, silently stare at the land. However, the scene under the heavenly thunderclouds was completely different from Lu Hang's memory. The original low and shabby mountain temple has disappeared. In the original temple location, there is a large hall built of logs and tiles, which covers an area and scale several times larger than the original low mountain temple. On the altar in the hall, there was a huge statue of the white wolf. Compared with the crude clay statues, the white wolf statues in the hall are several times larger in appearance and size. They are almost lifelike, just like the real Lu Hung standing there. On both sides of the main hall, there is a slightly smaller house on the left and right. The architectural style and workmanship are similar to those of the main hall, and people can live there. In the middle of these three magnificent halls, the original rugged earth ground was now paved with flat bluestone floors. The only area where the floor can't be paved was the soil where the thunder sand was located. However, a bronze tripod had also been erected on it to cover up the lack of bluestone floor in this area. Lu Heng turned around and looked out of the mountain. Seeing the bluestone floor extending outward along the forest, the road is surrounded by green trees, and the bluestone path in the shade is quiet and elegant. Lu Heng continued to walk outward along the bluestone path and soon reached the edge of the flat land. Standing here, you can overlook the river bend below and the mountains in the distance. Originally, there was no road here. The mountain paths were rugged and surrounded by trees. But now it has also changed. In the lush mountain, there is an extra path extending to the foot of the mountain. Carefully polished stones pave the path forming a long stone staircase, which extends from Lu Hang's foot to the bend at the foot of the mountain. And in that spacious and open bend, a simple ferry was built. If there were no boats near the ferry, Lu Hang would think he had come to a strange area. This. This is the Hanyu Mountain. Lu Hang's mouth twitched and he thought of what the Li tribe's old priest said with a smile before his latent training. Besides being good at smelting gold and iron, the Li tribe is also good at civil engineering. Is that what you call good at? Although Lu Heng didn't know how long he had slept this time, it shouldn't be long before he could see the scenery in the mountains. In such a short time, you renovated the whole Hanyu mountain. Originally, it was just a low mountain temple in the barren mountains and forests. It was dilapidated. Now, it has taken on a new look. Lu Heng almost thought he had come to some tourist attraction. Such a huge change, such a large amount of work can be completed in a short time. Is this what the Li tribe people call, good at civil engineering? Lu Heng shook his head wordlessly. For a moment, he didn't know what to say. Chapter, 45 After witnessing the great changes in Hanyu Mountain, Lu Heng's soul wandered around the mountain, and soon felt that the soul's state became unstable, and even felt that it was about to disappear. Lu Heng understands that he can't be separated from his body for too long, otherwise he is likely to disappear directly. After a thought, Lu Heng returned to his body. In the underground temple, with the return of Lu Heng's soul, the huge white wolf slowly opened his eyes. He got a lot from this latent cultivating. After the demonic chi belonging to the wolf demon disappeared, now the heavenly thunder no longer has any sense of stagnation in his body. He can feel that his power has become purer and purer. He didn't expect that he would receive such a good thing for himself after saving Xiao Ai. Lu Heng sensed that the little girl was now in the mountains. It's almost time to meet the little girl who has been left alone in the mountains for so long. Lu Heng thought like this. He left the underground temple directly, walked through the soil quickly, and soon found the girl in the mountain. Shrouded in gloomy thunderclouds, the sky behind the main peak of Hanyu Mountain was dim. Even if the sun outside the mountain was bright, the light here was still gloomy. In a mountain forest with slightly flat terrain, a girl with silver hair and animal ears, carrying a hoe higher than her head, stood in the wasteland and waved the heavy hoe with her lips pursed. Each time the hoe fell, it would bring a canopy of dry and hard soil. Behind the girl, a small piece of soft wasteland has been cultivated. There are many roots and grass stems dug from the ground, which are all covered with soil. When Lu Heng emerged from the ground, he saw the scene of the little girl reclaiming the wasteland alone. 
He was silent for a few seconds and asked, Xiao Ai, what are you doing? Hearing the sound, the girl who had just raised her hoe threw away her hoe and turned around nervously. Facing the huge white wolf, the little girl subconsciously pulled her dirty clothes and trousers, trying to tidy up her appearance. Lord Mountain God, the girl saluted respectfully, Xiao Ai is reclaiming land to prepare for planting next spring. With that, afraid that the mountain god could not understand, the girl quietly explained, although it is inconvenient to divert water from the mountain and grow rice, Sister Qian of the Li tribe is willing to teach me to grow their crops. The crops called sweet potato and yellow rice can be planted in such dry lands. The girl's explanation was easy to understand, but Lu Heng didn't know what to say when he looked at her serious appearance. Although after having 200 years of the wolf demon's energy, the farm work of reclaiming wasteland has not been difficult for the little girl. But. Does this little girl really want to live alone in the mountains? Lu Hung was a little speechless. With her current identity, she doesn't have to work in the field. Just say a word, the villagers at the foot of the mountain will spontaneously send all kinds of necessities to the mountain. Why bother to work in the fields and waste time? However, Lu Heng appreciated this one-sided character, so he didn't say anything to prohibit it. He nodded and said, this kind of life in the mountains is boring. In your spare time, planting crops and raising flowers and plants can also cultivate your body and mind. But you can't spend a lot of time on farm work when you practice in the mountains with me. You need to remember that your own cultivation is the most important, okay? Lu Heng's words were not harsh, but the girl was still a little nervous, so she quickly saluted respectfully, Xiao Ai remembers the instructions of the wolf god. Well, don't be so stiff in front of me, Lu Heng said. I don't like the way you keep on bowing. Since you practice with me, you should have pride, and never be weaker than others. Remember, nothing in this world is worth kneeling down. Even in front of me, your knees must not be soft. Compared with you now, your usual cold appearance is more to my taste, and your respectful appearance makes me unhappy. Lu Heng's tone was not harsh, but the content of his words stunned the little girl. She looked up a little blankly, saw the serious eyes of Lord Wolf God, and knew that Lord Wolf God wasn't joking with her. But these words are different from what she knows. Both the adults in the village and their mother told her that the elders and children were in order. What's more, he is such a great Wolf God. She must not be rude because of the love of the wolf god. But the wolf god said he didn't like her behavior now. The girl hesitated for a few seconds and said, Xiao Ai. Xiao Ai understands. With that, the little girl stood up uneasily, trying to show her usual cold expression. But in the presence of the revered wolf god, she could not do so at all. She forcibly suppressed her inner emotions. However, Instead it made her face twitch, and her expression looked very strange. Lu Heng looked at her uneasy appearance without words. Knowing that the little girl misunderstood his meaning, he had to say, I meant, just relax in front of me and keep an ordinary mind. Don't be respectful and submissive. Do you understand? Xiao Ai suddenly nodded, Xiao Ai understands. Well, now come out of the field. Seeing that the little girl's expression was much more normal, Lu Heng said, Next, I will teach you the method of demon cultivation. Based on the 200 years of demon energy in your body, you can bring in the spiritual chi of heaven and earth and wash your soul. If you can get rid of the troubles of mundane life and set foot on the right path of cultivation, it will not waste my effort to help you. After Lu Heng's transformation, the little girl's cultivation is based on the 200-year cultivation of the wolf demon, but she is different from ordinary demons, that is, she can't feel demonic chi. Lu Heng was curious about the step she could take and what she would eventually look like if she continued to practice. The demon cultivation method is not difficult, because there is no so-called cultivation method for demons. The method of demon cultivation is just a simple and crude way that absorbs energy and uses it to wash the soul. It is a kind of pure time-consuming painstaking effort and doesn't have high requirements for talent. Although the little girl is a human being, perhaps the best choice is to practice human cultivation. However, Lu Heng doesn't know the cultivation method of human beings, and can only teach her the most common demon cultivation method first. If he can get the human cultivation method in the future, 
he can try to let the little girl practice. As for now, let her make do with the demon cultivation. Lu Heng asked the little girl to come out of the wasteland. Without choosing a place, he asked her to sit cross-legged in the mountain forest, put his front paw on the girl's head, and said, close your eyes and heart, and feel the rhythm of the energy of the sky and earth. In order to enable the girl to get started faster, Lu Heng helped her receive spirit qi into her body personally. While telling the girl in words how to receive and control the flow of spirit qi in her body and how to turn spirit qi into her body. This process lasted about half an hour. Lu Heng was surprised to find that the little girl seemed to have a strong understanding. In less than half an hour, the little girl had mastered the cultivation skills very skillfully. Even if Lu Heng loosened his front paw and no longer helped her, she was also able to smoothly receive spirit qi into her body and cultivate herself. Such a fast learning speed makes Lu Heng think of himself when he just came to this world. With the wolf demon's memory and cultivation instinct, coupled with the mature adult mind, Lu Heng spent a whole day stumbling through the spirit qi cultivation process. And the little girl in front of him did it in less than half an hour. This. The gap between people is really so big? This little girl is a spiritual genius. Lu Heng looked at the little girl in front of him in surprise. He felt as if he had accidentally picked up a piece of treasure. He was filled with emotion about Xiao Ai's cultivation talent, but Lu Heng didn't envy her. After all, his cultivation of bringing thunder into the body is a unique way of thunder cultivation in the world. Even Lu Heng is not sure what kind of realm he will be able to reach in the future. But the little girl's cultivation talent is so outstanding that Lu Heng is becoming more and more eager to go down the mountain and join the world. With this girl's talent, he will definitely find a cultivation book for her in the future to help her cultivate. It would be a waste of the girl's talent to let her cultivate this crude and simple demon cultivation method all the time. With such an idea in mind, Lu Heng didn't tell the little girl his intention, but asked her to continue practicing in the mountain. After that, Lu Heng returned to the mountain temple. In front of the wolf god temple. The original low and shabby mountain temple has been completely transformed into a magnificent hall. The plaque on the hall is engraved with three big characters wolf god temple. Although the wolf demon didn't go down to the world, he also knew the words of the world. In that vague memory, it seems that these words were taught by the rich merchant who built the temple for the wolf demon. However, Lu Heng didn't know what the rich businessman looked like. Even the names of the rich merchant were known only after reading the inscriptions on the altar in the original mountain god temple. His name is Wu Chonggu, and his family is in Fushan. It has been 80 years since this man set up a temple for the wolf demon. Wu Chonggu has probably already died after so many years. Thinking of this, Lu Heng sighed. Soon after, roaring thunder resounded through the mountains and forests. A total of seven thunders landed on the main peak of Hanyu Mountain. The dazzling thunder drowned everything between heaven and earth. It also announced that Lu Heng was once again in meditation. Chapter 46 Life in the mountains is boring. Cultivation is the only thing Lu Heng can do to pass the time. However, this time, after Lu Heng settled down, he didn't enter that vague and blurred state again. Although he felt that his soul seemed to roam in a blazing white sea of lightning, he never turned into healthy thunderclouds, nor did he see so many strange scenes. Only his consciousness was floating in the thunder and lightning, floating lightly, between half-dreaming and half-waking. In this state, time seemed to pass faster. Although Lu Heng could clearly feel how much time had passed, and he could easily wake up fully, he was comfortable in this state. The passage of time made him feel no more suffering. It seemed that only a few breaths had passed, but when he finished his latent cultivation and opened his eyes again, he understood that it was already seven days later outside. After waking up this time, Lu Heng felt a little hungry. Although he became less and less dependent on food with the improvement of cultivation, he still could not live without eating. After a thought, Lu Heng left the underground temple and headed above. When he returned to the wolf god temple again, he didn't find Xiao Ai there. He sensed deeply and found that the little girl was not reclaiming wasteland in the back mountain, but in the bamboo forest not far from the wolf god temple. And not alone. 
Lu Hung was curious and walked directly towards the bamboo forest. At this time, it was already winter. Although there was no snow yet, most of the trees in the mountains were withered. Many dead leaves were scattered on the bluestone path in front of the wolf god temple. Although Xiao Ai cleaned the path every day, the withered leaves were endless. Even if she cleaned three times a day, she couldn't sweep them away. In the chilly wind, Lu Heng walked along the bluestone path leading to the foot of the mountain for a while and then headed for the mountain forest on one side. Before long, he heard the rustling sound of the cold wind blowing through the bamboo forest. Bamboo is an evergreen, so even in the winter, the bamboo forest was still lush and green. The ground among the bamboo forests was covered with a soft layer of withered and yellow bamboo leaves. The soft touch of stepping on it was very comfortable. But in the quiet and dusty bamboo forest, there was a white ape sitting on a rock with closed eyes and crossed knees. Beside the white ape stood a little girl with an expressionless face. Holding a bamboo stick in her hand, the girl stood silently behind the white ape like a haunting ghost. Once the white ape secretly opened his eyes and looked around, or was distracted, the bamboo stick in the little girl's hand would be heavily drawn on the white ape, and the white ape screamed. The white ape would quickly close his heart and eyes and continue to cultivate, so as not to be beaten by the bamboo stick again. Lu Hung, who saw this scene, twitched at the corners of his mouth. He recognized the white ape, who was the leader of the monkeys in the mountain. He was the one who found Xiao Ai's body in time and transported her to the mountain temple so Lu Hang could save the girl. Obviously, Xiao Ai was teaching the monkey to cultivate and wanted to guide the monkey into the path of cultivation to repay his life-saving kindness. But the wild monkey only wanted to play and have fun. If you forced it to sit in a place to meditate and practice, it would be even worse than killing it. Moreover, it is even more difficult to guide spirit qi into the body in the first step of demon cultivation. It takes a very long time, and it can't be completed in a few days. With Xiao Ai's severity today, I'm afraid that the white ape's fur will be whipped off before it learned how to guide the spirit qi in its body. This little girl's way to repay the white ape's kindness is really. Lu Heng shook his head wordlessly. He really didn't know what to say. After standing in the bamboo forest for a long time, Lu Heng saw that the ape burst into tears. Lu Heng really couldn't stand it anymore. He shook his head and turned away. He didn't appear to disturb Xiao Ai and the ape. Although Xiao Ai's method is somewhat strict, it is a good thing for the wild ape in the mountain to step into the right path of cultivation. The ape understands this too, so although he felt pain, he had no intention of resisting and running away. He always sat there and tried to guide the spirit qi in his body. But an ape is also a kind of a monkey, even if it wants to study hard, it can't help being lazy. From this point of view, Xiao Ai's strict means of supervision may be the most suitable for this white ape. Thinking of this, Lu Heng couldn't help laughing, and began to look forward to whether the ape could really step on the path of demon cultivation. After leaving the bamboo forest, he didn't wander in the mountains. He went down near the river, bent and directly swallowed dozens of live fish in one bite by taking advantage of the power of the mountain god. He lamented that his appetite had indeed become much lower. At the same time, Lu Heng returned to the mountains to cultivate again. The roaring thunder woke up the monkeys in the bamboo forest. The white ape subconsciously raised his head and saw the blazing white thunder and lightning falling in the sky. The aura of thunder, which makes all things afraid, surges in the bamboo forest. Gee! The white ape just wanted to talk, but the bamboo strip behind him suddenly pulled over. Close your eyes. Stop. Cultivate obediently. The little girl mercilessly slapped the white ape. The pain almost made him jump up. It was not until the seven thunders fell and the mountain became quiet again that the girl looked in the direction of the wolf god temple and knew in her heart that the wolf god had been in his cultivation again. Alas! The wolf god is so noble, but he still keeps practicing. He is never arrogant because of his own divine power. Under the gate of the wolf god, I will also cultivate hard. Thinking like this, the little girl looked at the ape in front of her, and her eyes became more and more severe. She must teach the monkey to cultivate as soon as possible and free herself from the shackles of teaching. 
Only in this way can she continue her latent cultivating and never fail to live up to the expectations of the wolf god. In the little girl's heart, she silently made up her mind and decided to be more strict with the ape. Lu Hain, who returned to the underground temple, didn't know that his busy cultivation made the white ape's life more miserable in the future. Time flies by. The days of cultivation in the mountains are simple and boring, but after a long time, they can gradually get used to it. Under the strict instruction of the girl, it took a full seven days for the white ape to finally complete the first step of demon cultivation and learned how to guide spirit qi into its body. Later, when Lu Heng went out, the little girl asked Lu Heng. With Lu Heng's permission, Xiao Ai taught the white ape the demon cultivation method that Lu Heng taught her. So when Lu Heng was doing his underground cultivation, the girl and the ape also cultivated in the mountain. But the white ape was afraid of the girl. After learning the demon cultivation method, he ran away and wanted to cultivate alone. However, a monkey is a monkey after all. Although he learned the method of demon cultivation, the white ape still played with monkeys in the mountains all day long, and his cultivation speed soon fell down. Half a month later, Xiao Ai stopped the monkeys in a mountain stream. If you want to cultivate alone, I will let you. But now that half a month has passed, I should check your cultivation progress. The little girl said expressionlessly, holding a slender bamboo strip in her hand. With the girl's gentle waving, the bamboo made a whirring sound. When the monkeys saw this scene, they all screamed and ran away. Only the white ape dared not run away. Facing the little girl who blocked the road ahead, he shouted in horror and retreated again and again. Gee! Gee! The ape cried for mercy, but the little girl was indifferent. She walked towards the ape indifferently and said, Close your eyes. Close your heart. Let me see how your cultivation is progressing. In the cold winter wind, the monkey closed his eyes in despair and stood still. After a few breaths, the shrill cries of the white ape rang out in the mountains. Gee! 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 It startled the birds in the forest. Chapter 47 The Eighth Day of November, the Winter Solstice Outside Hanyu Mountain, snow had begun to fall heavily. After Lu Heng finished his usual training, he left the underground temple and returned to the surface. However, there was no snow in front of the wolf god temple. The gloomy heavenly thunder clouds shrouded the sky, and there was not a trace of snow on the main peak of Hanyu Mountain. That is to say, on the vast land covered with snow, Hanyu Mountain is the only place that has not been stained with white. Lu Heng was surprised to see this scene. But after thinking carefully, since the heavenly thunder clouds shrouded Hanyu Mountain, the main peak had not even rained, not to mention the snow. Although the dark vortex cloud slowly rotating in the sky is dark, it didn't seem to rain. Lu Heng was worried. If it doesn't rain all the time, the vegetation on the mountain will not wither away, right? It seems that I have to find a way to make some changes. Lu Heng thought so and continued to walk forward. Although it is troublesome that there is no rain or snow in the mountains, there are more troublesome things that Lu Heng needs to deal with. Walking along the bluestone path, Lu Heng came to the top of the stone steps leading to the foot of the mountain. The girl named Xiao Ai was sitting on the steps with a broom in her arms and her cheeks in her hands. She was staring at the snow outside the mountain, thinking about something. Under the gloomy skylight, the girl sitting on the stone steps was thin, and the withered and yellow leaves fell behind her, with a little bleak breath. Lu Heng walked up to her and asked with a smile, Xiao Ai, why don't you urge that ape to cultivate today? The girl quickly recovered, Lord Wolf God. She said with some joy, have you finished your cultivation this time? Well, it's time to go out for a walk. Lu Heng said, walking to the girl, sitting side by side at the top of the bluestone ladder, watching the snow flying all over the mountain. Why are you so leisurely today? At this time in the past, you should be teaching that naughty ape a lesson. With that, Lu Heng glanced at the girl beside him and said with a smile, at this time in the past, the mountains were really windy and I could hear the cry of the ape when I was underground. Why didn't the monkey cry today? Did you give it a holiday? Lu Heng's teasing made the little girl blush and embarrassed. Lord Wolf. The little girl cried out in embarrassment. 
Lu Hen laughed for a while and then said, Okay, okay, I won't make fun of you. Come on, what's the trouble? I think you've been sitting here for a long time. The ape is too naughty to teach. The little girl hesitated for a while, and then she said, Lord Wolf God, you. Do you think I should force him to cultivate? Lu Hang looked at her with a smile and asked, What do you think? The little girl let out a long sigh, and said with her little face wrinkled, I don't know. She stared at the flying snow outside the mountain with a worried expression. It is a wild monkey in the mountain. It plays with monkeys in the mountain every day. It is happy and has no worries. Although its life is short, it is carefree. I want to lead him to cultivate and teach him the method of demon cultivation. Although he is willing to learn, his mind is obviously not on cultivation. Compared with cultivation, he is more willing to play with other monkeys. I forced him to cultivate hard with me. Although he didn't complain, he was not happy. But if I gave up, I felt that I had not done my duty. The little girl looked helplessly at the wolf god and asked softly, Lord Wolf God, what should I do? The little girl who always wanted to be strong now showed a rare weak expression. In the bleak wind, she seemed so weak and helpless. Although her weak and helpless appearance is lovable, Lu Hing really wants to laugh at it. This little girl is young, but she already has the trouble of being a parent. Is that why the little girl let the ape into the mountain today? She wondered whether she should continue to force the white ape to cultivate. Lu Hing thought for a while and said, Xiao Ai, do you know the reason why there are so many creatures in the world, but there are so few of them who can cultivate? The little girl was stunned and shook her head. She wondered why Lord Wolf God asked this question. Lu Hang looked at the snow-covered land outside the mountain and said, The spirits in the mountain are different from human beings. Human beings are born with a body of five elements, and they can step on the path of cultivation at any time. Even if they are old people, as long as the fate comes, they can also cultivate themselves and rejuvenate themselves. But the spirits in the mountains are different. Most of them are not taught. They don't know how to cultivate. So the spirits in the wilderness depend on their natural instincts at the beginning. Everything in heaven and earth will have a mouth of inborn essence chi when it is born from the womb. This inborn essence chi is strong and weak, let's leave the weak aside. However, for those with strong energy, the innate energy in the body will unconsciously guide spirit chi into the body. Therefore, the monsters in the wilderness rely on this innate energy for their initial cultivation. When the spirit chi accumulated in the body gradually increases, they will become more and more intelligent, and begin to consciously use the innate vitality in the body to cultivate. They will also gradually pull away from ordinary beasts. So before they can transform into the human shape, this innate vitality is the most important foundation for demon cultivation. If it breaks, you will lose your accomplishments. That ape is the monkey king in the mountains, he has long lost its innate vitality on the female monkey's bodies. If no one taught him, he would never be able to cultivate demon cultivation all his life. Even if you are willing to teach and guide him with the demon cultivation method, but without the innate vitality as the foundation, it will be very difficult for it to cultivate. And that ape is old enough. If he doesn't cultivate well, he can only live for a few years at most. You are neither its parent nor its teacher. If you just want to repay his kindness, there is really no need to force him to cultivate. Because he is so absent-minded, even if he is forced to cultivate with you, the results will be limited. At most, it will only prolong his life, but he will lose freedom and happiness. The losses outweigh the gains. In that case, why don't you go along with it? Lu Heng said with a smile, don't force the ape too much. You just need to give him a little supervision. It all depends on himself to tread in the demon cultivation path. Many things in this world are about fate. Even if you force a person to cultivate, if he can't understand it, you are wasting your efforts. You should do what you have to do and have a clear conscience. If even the ape can't find a way, it's not your fault. Anyways, you and I can keep the ape safe on this mountain. To repay a debt of gratitude, you don't have to teach it to cultivate or to make it live longer. To protect its peace and to make it happy every day, this is also a way to repay a debt of gratitude. What's more, you are not a monkey. 
Do you know the happiness of monkeys? Lu Hang said this and couldn't help laughing. Maybe in the eyes of the ape, it's better to be a carefree wild monkey in the mountains than to cultivate into a demon. Lu Hang's words stunned the little girl. She lowered her head and mumbled the words of the wolf god. I'm not a monkey. I don't know the happiness of monkeys. After half a ring, the little girl raised her head and looked at the wolf god in front of her as her eyes became firm. I know what to do. Thank you for your instruction. The little girl's expression at this time was much more relaxed, and she was no longer as gloomy as before. It seems that the knot has been solved. Lu Hang stood up with a smile and said, In that case, you should continue to sweep the floor. I should also go back. Ha! Huh. While talking, Lu Hang suddenly felt something and looked out of the mountain. Outside the Hanyu mountain, in the heavy snow, two figures cut through the sky and flew here rapidly. Although the distance is far away, ordinary people may not see anything, but Lu Hang and Xiao Ai are not ordinary people. They clearly see that the two figures cut through the sky and finally landed in the Hanyu mountain. Looking in the direction, it's probably the Wind Raiders Department of the Li tribe. Xiao Ai was surprised, Lord Wolf God. Lu Heng thought for a while and said, it seems that someone is coming. He turned and walked toward the tree-lined path behind him. Well, let's put aside the ape. If I'm not wrong, it should be the priest from the Great Sea Department of the Li tribe. Go, clean up and get ready to welcome the guests. Yes, Lord Wolf God, the little girl bowed and watched Lu Heng disappear into the forest. In the Hanyu mountain, there was only the roaring sound of the mountain wind. Chapter, 48 The cold mountain wind roared through the mountains and forests, and the white snow continued to fall, turning everything between heaven and earth into a world of white. In such a deep winter, the villagers of Shueisheng village have been huddled in their own houses, sitting around fireplace for warmth, unwilling to go out and suffer from the cold. However, in the Wind Raiders department camp not far away, it is still busy. The Li tribe people in thin clothes seem to ignore the cold of the wind and snow, and are still busy with their own affairs in the snow. All the adult men were topless, and their muscles were exposed to the cold wind without fear. Women only wear short-sleeved narrow skirts that are easy to move in, and their bare skin doesn't feel cold in the chilly wind. Most of those naughty children just wore a pair of underpants and were rolling around in the snow, playing. If it weren't for the heavy snow, anyone who strayed into the camp would not think it was winter when they saw the cool and thin dress of the Li tribe. Among the thin and cool people in the Li tribe, Qian, who wears a white gauze skirt and a wreath on her head, is the most normal one. Although the thin gauze skirt has no ability to resist the cold. When the snow was flying, she was carrying a wooden bucket twice as big as her through the camp and came to the hill at the edge of the camp. Here, a simple fence is built with logs, in which lies a huge spinning turtle. These huge animals are pets kept by the Wind Raiders Department that are also used as pack animals for travel. They can carry a lot of luggage. The turtle in front of the girl was raised by the young girl. In the wind and snow, the huge spinning turtle is sleeping. The snowy wind in the dark sky and freezing temperature of winter couldn't affect the creature. After lying in the snow for such a long time, a thick layer of snow has accumulated on the huge tortoise shell. Qian came to the fence with a huge wooden barrel and knocked the bell on the fence. Dinner! Dinner! Qian shouted, and the sound of the shaking bell woke the sleeping turtle. The turtle opened his sleepy eyes and saw the girl standing outside the fence, pouring all the things in the huge wooden bucket into the trough. In the clattering sound, all the rocks poured out of the barrel were fine and hard, with some soil mixed between them. I'll give you something good to eat today, the girl said after pouring out the stones in the bucket, lying on the fence with her hands on her gills, watching the turtle slowly climb inside. This is granite. I just picked it from the mountain yesterday. You have a nice meal today. In the girl's gentle hum, the huge spinning turtle had come up, stretched out a strange bird's head, and began to swallow and chew the stones and soil in the trough. The girl outside the fence can be seen to be in a good mood, as she can be heard humming songs. Each of the nine departments the Lee tribe has its own iron eaters. This turtle is the iron eater raised by their wind raiders department. 
It has a long service life and likes to eat gold iron clay. It can purify and refine the clay, gold and iron chewed and swallowed into high quality ore for smelting by the people of the Wind Raiders Department. Today, she fed the turtle a meal. In a few days, she will be able to come back to pick high quality ores. The girl thought like this, smiled and reached out her hand to touch the strange bird-like head of the spinning turtle, and said with a smile, good good eat slowly and eat more. I've given you such delicious granite. You have to refine some high-quality minerals for me. The girl smiled and comforted the turtle. She didn't know whether the turtle understood her words. It didn't answer her, but buried its head and continued to go through the stones in the trough. Crunch crunch. The smile on the girl's face became more and more happy in the crisp sound when the turtle chewed the stone. But at this moment, she suddenly felt something and hurriedly looked back to the outside of the mountain. In the blizzard outside the mountain, two figures from front to back cut through the sky and were flying here. One of the people was Guan Han, who was sent by the old priest to the Great Sea Department. The other is... Grandpa Lipa. The girl jumped up happily, ignoring the huge empty barrel outside the fence, and trotted directly to the camp. There, two figures from outside the mountain just landed in the camp. Although most of the Li tribe people in the camp looked up in surprise, they recognized the identity of the person, so they bowed their heads and continued to work on their own affairs. The girl was running in the camp, looking at the direction of the main tent from afar and waving happily. Grandpa Li Pa. The girl's voice made the two people who had just arrived at camp look at her. In front of the huge main account, standing next to the tall and burly Han, was a middle-aged man with gray hair and a face of vicissitudes, but not old. Likely Jew, the old priest of the Wind Raiders Department, he was also topless, and his muscles were marked with black tattoos. The tattoo pattern is different from what the Wind Raiders Department wears. Seeing Qian's appearance, the priest named Li Pe smiled and said, Qian where's your old man? Isn't he in the camp? Qian came over with a smile and said, Grandpa Li Ju is holding the fire in the sword furnace. Grandpa Li Pe, I will take you to find him. Li Po was stunned by the girl's reply. You've been here for a long time. The sword stove hasn't been built yet. The girl took Li Pe to the back of the camp and said, The sword furnace to be built this time is different from the past, so Grandpa Li Ju needs to spend more time building it. Just come with me. It's a long story and should be kept secret, so you can't tell too many people. After the girl took Li Po away, the strong man named Han took the initiative to leave and return to his home. The girl pulled Li Po while walking through the camp and soon they came to the quiet open space behind the camp. After arriving here, the chill in the air can no longer be felt. The blazing high temperature evaporates the rain and snow in the air. There is no snow on the ground. The soil is dry and hard. It looks like it is being baked at high temperatures all year round. Not far ahead is the sword furnace built by the Wind Raiders Department. Even if it is far away, you can feel the blazing heat in the sword stove. As the girl was leading the way, she asked, Grandpa Li Pe, did you see the heavenly thunder clouds in the mountains? The priest named Li Pe unconsciously looked towards the main peak of Hanyu Mountain and nodded. Well, Han told me when he came here. He said that there was a white wolf god in the Hanyu Mountain. It was very strange. The master suddenly asked me to come here. Maybe it was related to the white wolf god does the white wolf god really have enough thunder sand? The girl smiled, nodded, and said, yes, the white wolf god in the mountain is amazing. Not only can it order the thunder, but also resurrect the dead and reverse yin and yang. Grandpa Li Pe, you will go with us to visit him later and ask him to give thunder sand. The amount of thunder sand there amounts to more than the total treasure reserves in the world. If you can fulfill his requirements, there will absolutely be enough materials for casting the mountain splitting and sea breaking sword. The girl happily shared such good news with Li Pe, but Li Pe was stunned and surprised. Order the thunder resurrect the dead and reverse yin and yang. Han had mentioned to him the divine power of the thunder. So before coming here, Li Pe knew that the wolf god in the mountain was very unusual. But resurrect the dead and reverse yin and yang. Li Pe frowned and said, Xian, this is no joke. Birth, old age, and death are the order of heaven and earth. 
No matter how powerful the divine power is, it is impossible to reverse yin and yang did you see the wolf god resurrect the dead? Of course. The girl nodded heavily and said, not only me but Grandpa Li Ju was also there. We saw with our own eyes that the wolf god saved a dead girl. Now the resurrected girl is cultivating with the wolf god in the mountain. Maybe we can see her later. With those words, Qian explained how she saw the monkeys carrying the girl's body into the mountains, with the priest grandpa to witness the wolf god saving a mortal girl who died. When she finished, the priest named Li Po was a little speechless. Although the power of the heavenly thunder is terrible, there are extraordinary beings everywhere in the world, and there are even more terrible magical powers. But life, old age, and death are the rules of order that no one has been able to break since ancient times. But now there are people who can trample on the order of heaven and earth and bring the dead back to life. If this is true if he wants, the life and death of all things in the world are no different from a joke to him. Can such a supernatural power, which cannot be tolerated in heaven and earth, even exist? Isn't he afraid of heaven's punishment when he acts against heaven? Li Pe, who was so impressed, suddenly thought of another thing. That is the white wolf god in the mountain it seems to be able to control the heavenly thunder. Well, this. Considering this, Li Po was speechless. If the white wolf god in the mountain can really resist the punishment and control the thunder, he really doesn't need to worry about the scourge. It's just this behavior really. Li Po shook his head and felt that he should not continue thinking. If he continues to think about it, he might offend the wolf god. Chapter 49 at the sword furnace, Li Pe met the old priest of the Wind Raiders Department. In front of this highly respected old man, he didn't dare to disrespect him at all. He saluted the older generation and said, Old man, I haven't seen you for a long time. The old man sitting beside the fireworks smiled and raised his hand to signal Li Pe to sit down. This girl Qian must have told you about the wolf god. I won't waste much time talking. The old priest said, looking at Qian outside the door, and said, You go to the mountain to meet Miss Xiao Ai, and say that the great sea department priest has arrived and is waiting in the mountain. Please let the wolf god know. Okay, I'll go. Goodbye, Grandpa Li Pe. The girl smiled, waved her hand and left with a cheerful pace. With the girl's departure, the sword stove was temporarily quiet. Only the red flame suspended in the center of the sword stove sent out an amazing heat wave. Li Pe sat down opposite the old man, watched Qian leave, and then asked, that Xiao Ai girl really came back from the dead. Li Pe still couldn't believe that there were people in this world who could come back from the dead. But the old priest nodded and looked serious. When we found her, she had been dead for more than half an hour. It was the wolf god in the mountain who saved her. However, the wolf god frankly said that this cost him a lot, and I'm afraid he won't be able to replicate similar miracles in the future. Li Pe nodded and said, it must cost a lot to do such an unnatural thing. If there was no limit, it would be unbelievable. But the wolf god is so extraordinary. Have you ever guessed his origin, sir? When I asked Qian, the little girl knew nothing. But you are a living fossil of the nine parts of the Li tribe. Maybe you have a guess in your heart. Li Po's inquiry made the old priest fall silent for a long time. After half a ring, the old man slowly opened his mouth by the hot fire. Seventeen years ago, the nine departments gathered on the holy mountain, and the saint gave a revelation. It was predicted that the nine departments of the Li tribe would usher in a catastrophe never seen before. If we could not survive, our tribe will be destroyed. But the one who destroys our tribe is the master of misfortune. He is the one who sends disasters and punishments, brings down misfortune, and brings chaos to heaven and earth. When I first came to Hanyu Mountain, I saw the scene of the wolf god ordering the thunder in the mountain, and subconsciously thought of the saint's prophecy. There was a kind of worry in my heart, is it the god of Hanyu Mountain who will destroy our Li tribe? When the old man said this, he couldn't help but smile bitterly. But in the next moment of contact, I temporarily dispelled this worry. The wolf god in the mountain is noble and broad-minded. He is by no means the master of disasters in troubled times. Although I have guessed a little about his origin, I dare not make a rash assertion. 
It's because this kind of existence was born to become a saint. He must have a profound mission. If I guessed and spy on the secret of heaven, maybe nothing will happen if I guess wrong. But if I accidentally get it right and reveal the secret of heaven, I'm afraid my soul will go back to the holy mountain ahead of time. The words of the old priest made Lipa frown. So serious? Seeing the old priest's cautious expression, he realized the danger of this trip. The old priest thought for a while and then said, However, I can tell you something. You must have a hole in your heart to see the wolf god. Just don't say everything, don't do anything. If you have guessed something, you can't open your mouth to reveal it. You can only bury it in your heart. Good. Lipa nodded heavily and bowed with a serious expression, please answer my questions. Lipa saluted solemnly, but the old man beside the fire fell into silence and seemed to be thinking. After a long while, the old man said slowly. Three years ago, my Wind Raiders department encountered a strange animal, the Ba Snake, in the wild and deep stream in the north of the country. The fierce beast was cunning and cruel, and our department was trapped in the deep stream for half a month. Finally, there was a sudden roar from the East Sea. With the fierce wind and rain, we were able to retreat. The direction of the vast animal roar seems to be the rumored Liobo Mountain. The old priest said so with a serious expression, it is necessary to know that after the world catastrophe, ancient gods and beasts were hidden in the world. Mountain spirits and demons were hidden in the wilderness, and incense gods were hardly sanctified in front of people. The humanitarian order was initially established. However, since seventeen years ago, the saints suddenly got the revelation from our ancestors and predicted the coming of the Lord of Disaster. Then the Ba Snake appeared for many years and Liobo Mountain reappeared again. Here on this remote Hanyu Mountain, there is an extraordinary wolf god. The old priest shook his head and said, These things seem to have nothing to do with each other, but if you go deep into them, I'm afraid they are a sign of something very bad. As a priest of the Great Sea Department, you need to be careful to command the people and protect them. If you can't forge the mountain and sea breaking sword successfully this time, you are not allowed to travel around in the future. Heaven and earth seem calm on the surface, but the tide may be surging in the dark. It's said that disaster will come down one day. You need to prepare the people against it before you can live up to the position of priest. The old man's words were not harsh, nor did they mean too much criticism and admonishment, but simply made heart to heart with this young generation. However, Lipa bowed with a serious bow, thank you for your advice. I will remember it firmly in my heart. The old man nodded, but he sighed slightly in his heart. The priest in front of him was once the most talented young hero in the Lee tribe. If such thing hadn't happened to his wife, the young man would have gone even further. Now he finally has the hope of casting a sword to break the mountain and the sea and save his wife. The old man understands the eagerness in Li Po's heart. There are just some words that the old man didn't say clearly. If there is real chaos in the world and another earthly catastrophe, the underworld sea of the abyss will not be quiet. Li Po's wife, who was suppressed in the sea, would probably. Considering this, the old man could not help sighing. He just hopes that this trip can be smooth. If Li Pe can be granted the thunder sand by the wolf god, he would be able to rescue his wife in time. The old man thought so and looked out the door. However, Qian ran in happily and said with a smile, Grandpa Li Ju, Xiao Ai said that the wolf god knew that Grandpa Li Po was coming. Now he is waiting in the mountain. We can just go under the mountain to pay a visit without waiting. As soon as the girl's voice fell, Li Pe stood up with an excited expression, really? Although he was ready, he was still excited when he heard the news. During the two hundred years of separation from his wife, he suffered day and night. Now that he finally saw the dawn of hope, Li Pe could no longer resist his inner emotions and hurriedly asked. Old man, shall we go now? The old man nodded with a wry smile and said, If I delay, I'm afraid you will die of anxiety so let's go. We shouldn't leave the wolf god waiting. Chapter, 50 After leaving the sword stove, the old priest and Qian flew towards the mountain with Li Pe. The main peak of Hanyu Mountain shrouded in heavenly thunder clouds is the only area in the snowy world without snow. As they closed in on the mountain, they flew beneath the heavenly thunder clouds. 
At that moment, even with psychological preparation, Li Pe, who entered the heavenly thunder clouds for the first time, could not help but feel a shock and great pressure. This slowly rotating vortex cloud is too strong for sentient beings. Although Li Po was not evil, he could not exempt himself from the pressure of the heavenly thunder clouds that day. On the contrary, the old man and Qian around him are used to it. Obviously, they are used to the existence of heavenly thunder clouds in the mountain and no longer feel pressure. Qian said, The wolf god is on the main peak. I saw him just now. We can see him from here. Qian said this and dropped onto the top of the bluestone staircase first. Behind her, two priests of the Li tribe also descended one after another. On the tree lined path, the bleak cold wind stirred the mountain forest. It is obviously a snowy day, but there is no snowfall on the main peak. Compared with the snow outside the mountain, the transition is a little abrupt. Li Po was just about to speak when the heavenly thunder clouds overhead suddenly flashed white, and then the roaring of thunder suddenly rang throughout the whole Hanyu mountain. A huge thunder light streaked through the heavenly thunder clouds, and the dark vortex cloud that had been rotating slowly suddenly became violent. In the mountains and forests, the wind was howling, and the breath of thunder and heaven punishment suddenly became strong several times. Seeing this scene, Li Pe, who was already under some pressure, was instantly shocked and subconsciously tensed up. And on the faces of the old and the young around him, there was an expression of surprise. Because Qian and the old man saw such a scene for the first time. In the past, although there was thunder roaring in the mountains, it was all thunder splitting down the mountains. Today, however, the thunder didn't break down the mountains and forests. Instead, it was surging and flashing in the heavenly thunder clouds, just like the whole heavenly thunder clouds were in a riot. Such an abnormal scene made the old priest's heart tremble and wonder what had happened. And from the path lined with tree, a small figure slowly came out. With long, soft and beautiful silver hair slightly drooping, sharp animal ears and a tight mouth that made her seem a little cold. She was only a child of seven or eight years old, but she showed a cold temperament that refused to be seen thousands of miles away. Facing the three people on the bluestone ladder, the girl named Xiao Ai saluted and said, The wolf god knows your intentions and requests for you to meet him. Please follow me. With that, the girl turned and walked towards the tree-lined path. She didn't want to explain the change of heavenly thunder clouds in the sky. The old priest and Li Pe looked at each other in silence. Qian followed up with a smile. The girl followed Xiao Ai with hands on her back and asked with a smile, Xiao Ai, where's that monkey? I didn't see him when I came here just now, is he not here? Why don't I see him today cultivating with you? Xiao Ai walked forward without hesitation, but her eyes moved away silently. I let it go on vacation, Xiao Ai said coldly. Qian was stunned for a moment and was surprised, eh? Take a vacation. You said he was lazy all day and had to keep an eye on him all the time. If you let him take a vacation suddenly, won't the monkey play all day and neglect his cultivation? Xiao Ai bowed her head and said nothing. Behind them, two priests followed silently. Listening to the dialogue between the two girls, the old priest looked calm and composed, but Li Po's eyes wandered to the mountains. In his observation, the mountain forest in front of him seems to be just an ordinary and remote small peak, with neither steep scenery nor dense spirit chi. No matter how you looked at it, it seemed so ordinary that no one would think that there is a mysterious white wolf god in the mountain. However, as the wolf god temple appeared in the field of vision, Li Pe found something strange in the mountain forest. No insects. On such a large main peak, there were no insects chirping around the wolf god temple. Most insects only rely on their instincts, they don't have intelligence, and feel no fear. Even the ancient demons could not eliminate the existence of insects and ants. But in front of the wolf god temple, insects and ants are extinct and silent. Are the fearless insects afraid of the divine power of the wolf god? Li Po was amazed. At this time, they have arrived at the wolf god temple. On the open space paved with bluestone, the bronze tripod has been removed, revealing the thunder sand below. Xiao Ai stood aside and said, The wolf god wanted to meet you in person. 
But just now, when he was resting, the wolf god suddenly had an inspiration and had to cultivate again. However, before the wolf god cultivated, he ordered that the thunder sand here could be collected by you at will, as long as the heavenly thunder sword was successfully forged. At Shao Ai's feet, the soil that has been qualitatively and utterly changed due to years of baptism by the thunder is dark red, containing the aura of thunder. Seeing such a large number of thunder sand, Li Po's breathing stopped slightly and he was excited. That's enough that's absolutely enough. The quantity of thunder sand is more than he imagined. He asked a little excitedly, may I ask whether the wolf god has a time limit for the casting of heavenly thunder sword? Xiao Ai shook her head. There is no time limit. You can do your best to forge the sword. On the day the sword is completed, the wolf god promised that you can take as much thunder sand as you can hear. Okay. Thank you for your help. I will take the sand now. Li Pe was so excited that he walked directly towards the thunder sand. When Li Pe thought about it, he breathed out a dark blue flame in his mouth. This is their great sea department's inheritance of burning sky fire. It has mysterious power. Thunder sand is made of special materials, and only such magic fire can burn, cut and melt it. With the appearance of the faint blue fire, the temperature in front of the already bleak wolf god temple dropped sharply again. The faint blue fire didn't emit any heat, but made the surrounding air colder. Instead of helping collect the thunder sand, the old priest raised his head, looked at the swirling cloud above his head and narrowed his eyes. Is the sudden closure of the wolf god related to the heavenly thunder clouds in the sky? Now the vortex clouds in the sky are surging and rotating violently. In the vortex of clouds, there were flashes of lightning, and the aura of the thunder aura filled the air with a rage never seen before. The old man was curious. The wolf god suddenly started cultivating again. Did he have any new understanding? At the same time, at the top of the main peak of Hanyu Mountain, under the dark skylight, a huge white wolf stood and looked up at the heavenly thunder clouds above. The sounds of roaring thunder came from the heavenly thunder clouds from time to time. The blazing white light flickered and staggered in the vortex cloud, and the vortex cloud that was originally rotating slowly fell into a violent state. The culprit of all this was naturally Lu Hain, who was standing above the mountain top. Originally, he was just waiting for the priest of the Li tribe to visit in the mountains and wanted to personally receive priestly Pu of the great sea department who came from afar. However, while waiting, Lu Hain, who was idle and bored, let his soul leave his body again. His soul walked around the main peak of Hanyu Mountain and found that the vegetation and trees in the mountain had been short of water for a long time. If there is no rain in the mountains, the trees on the main peak will probably die. However, it seems that the heavenly thunder clouds overhead has no function of rainfall. Lu Hung was a little distressed. He subconsciously looked up at the heavenly thunder clouds in the sky. But at this moment, his mind suddenly flashed and found a strange thing. In the state of soul, he seems to be more closely connected with heavenly thunder clouds. Without the shackles of his body, he could feel the power contained in the heavenly thunder clouds in the sky that day more clearly and gained a deeper understanding of the essence of the thunder. Heavenly cloud is the power of destruction. It can destroy everything and is irresistible. But ultimately, death begets life. The aura of heaven's thunder contained in this vortex cloud is too huge, and its death aura is strong to the point of almost qualitative change. If he can break through that limit and reverse death into life, it seems that this vortex cloud can really show a different power. With such an inexplicable feeling in his heart, Lu Hang immediately seized this glimmer of light and came to the top of the mountain alone to continue his attempt. This kind of epiphany is a precious opportunity. If you miss it, it won't happen again in the future. Without any hesitation, he directly triggered the heavenly lightning in his body and linked it to the heavenly thunder clouds in the sky, making the vortex clouds that had been rotating slowly completely riot. With Lu Hang's actions, the vortex cloud, which was already extremely unstable and violent, has now become completely chaotic. The dazzling thunder cut through the sky one after another, and the terrible roar of thunder echoed in the mountains. The terrifying sight of lightning and thunder was like a storm approaching. 
However, the flicker of heaven's thunder also carries the power of thunder which is countless times more terrifying than the natural lighting. In the Hanyu mountain, the wind is howling and thousands of animals are wailing. In the strong wind, Lu Hang looked up at the huge vortex cloud overhead, constantly releasing the heavenly thunder in his body to stimulate the vortex cloud and make it more violent. That wonderful feeling became more and more clear in his heart. With the deepening of his relationship with the heavenly thunder clouds, Lu Hang's ideas have become more and more clear. Seeing the dazzling thunder light flashing all over the sky and listening to the roaring thunder ringing through the mountains and forests, Lu Hang thought of waking insects somehow. The waking insects is an image of birth, which means endless life. In the season of waking insects, the atmosphere of all things recovery pervades heaven and earth. It is a good time for the spirits and monsters in the mountains to cultivate as well as the beginning of spring plowing. However, the symbolic feature of waking insects is the surge of spring thunder. The so-called spring thunder startles hundreds of insects is the origin of the name waking insects. In other words, the lightning actually gave birth to new lives after the destruction. Ha I see. I see. In the Hanyu mountain, Lu Heng suddenly burst out laughing freely. The laughter spread far away and reverberated in the whole Hanyu mountain, deafening. The three people of the Li tribe, who had just taken the thunder sand away, arrived at the foot of the mountain and heard the happy laughter. The three subconsciously turned back and looked at the main peak of Hanyu mountain behind them. On the main peak, lightning flashes, thousands of thunder surges, and the breath of terror is surging outward. The old priest and Qian, who are used to the thunder in the Hanyu mountain, are feeling a little breathless now. Li Pe asked in astonishment, is this the wolf god? The old priest nodded solemnly, but his eyes were fixed on the direction of the top of the mountain. Vaguely, he felt that something terrible had happened there. However, the mountains and forests covered his sight, so he could not see the specific picture, and he didn't dare to peek with magic powers. But after a few breaths, a golden light suddenly rose from the top of the main peak. The blazing divine light pierced the dark clouds and the darkness, and instantly penetrated into the surging and violent heavenly thunder clouds. Boom! There was a deafening noise, and the heavenly lightning was so big that it cut through the sky. The huge heavenly thunder clouds floating over Hanyu Mountain suddenly calmed down and stopped its surging fury. However, the dazzling thunder still flickers in the heavenly thunder clouds, and the roaring thunder echoes in the mountains. Rumble. In the explosion of thunder, the three subconsciously raised their heads and looked at the sky above them. Patter patter. Drops of water slowly fell from the gloomy sky. At first, it was just a loud and clear sound. However, as the rain became heavier and heavier, the sound of the rain became louder and denser, and finally became a crackling sound like a pearl rolling in a jade plate. Seeing this scene, the old priest behind the rain curtain was stunned. He reached out his hand, touched the rain falling from the sky, and felt the dense spirit of water in the rain, as well as the incredible vitality. His eyes were a little shocked. The rain falling from the sky is so dense with such powerful water-type spirit chi. And the rain seems to fall from heavenly thunder clouds, right? How could such vigorous rain fall from the heavenly thunder clouds, which always destroy everything wherever it goes? The old priest looked in amazement at the direction of the top of the mountain. His sight seemed to pass through the forest and saw the huge white wolf standing on the top of the mountains. Use the heavenly thunder clouds to produce rain. Is this the new magic power obtained by the wolf god's epiphany? But anyway, isn't this ridiculous? It can even be said to be completely outrageous. Chapter, 51 In the mountains and forests, torrential rain poured down. The sound of rain is the only sound in the world. Standing in the rainstorm, Li Pu expressed surprise, can the white wolf god also control clouds and rain? The old priest shook his head. It's the first time I've seen this. It seems that it's a new magic power of the wolf god. Moreover, the rain is different from ordinary rain, and the spirit chi in the water is abundant. The old priest didn't go on, because Li Pe could certainly feel these things. The two priests looked at each other and understood the surprise in each other's hearts. It is not a rare magic power to control clouds and rain. 
Dragons can affect the cloud and rain climate of one city or place with a little Taoism. Many other animals can do similar things with their divine powers. However, such rain is just ordinary rain, which is not the same as the rain falling from the Hanyu Mountain. The main peak of Hanyu Mountain, which was originally barren and ordinary, will gradually become dense in spirit qi after the rain with abundant water spirit qi falls. Not only do the plants and trees in the mountain benefit a lot, but if someone cultivates in the mountain, it will also be helpful to cultivate. If the spirit qi rain can continue to fall for several more times, this remote and barren Hanyu mountain may become a rare blessed land in the world. Moreover, the fact that rain fell from the heavenly thunder clouds meant for punishment simply breaks common sense. Since ancient times, heavenly thundercloud has been a symbol of destruction and scourge. Imposing and frightening, it is the ultimate power of destruction. But now there is something that can reverse the essence of the heavenly thunderclouds and send down the rain of recovery. Although such a feat is not as frightening as reversing yin and yang and bringing the dead back to life, it is also an extraordinary thing that breaks common sense. Both priests shook their heads, wondering why the wolf god suddenly did this. However, Qian felt that the spirit qi was gradually getting denser in the mountains and was envious. While I'm afraid this Hanyu mountain will become a blessed place for cultivation in the future, said the girl enviously. Xiao Ai, this girl, can cultivate with the wolf god every day she's blessed. The girl looked envious, which was her first reaction to the rain. If only I could cultivate in such a blessed place. When the two priests heard the girl's words, they were all slightly shocked. Is it true that the wolf god committed this act against heaven to help the girl named Xiao Ai cultivate? The only thing they can think of is that this guess is the most realistic answer. Otherwise, why would the wolf god, who has always kept a low profile, to the point of living in this Hanyu mountain for 80 years, while the villagers at the foot of the mountain don't even know his dignity? They just regarded him as an ordinary wolf demon. Why is today so unusual that he felt the need to show his holiness? It is probably true that in order to transform this Hanyu mountain, he wanted to transform it into a blessed place suitable for Xiao Ai's cultivation. Just for the sake of a girl under the door, he's willing to do this extraordinary feat. It's really. The old priest couldn't help smiling bitterly and agreed with Qian's point of view, indeed, the wolf god really dotes on this girl. Taking into account the previous events of bringing the dead back to life and reversing yin and yang, as well as the shock of today's rain, the girl named Xiao Ai can be appreciated by the wolf god. It's really an enviable fate. The old priest sighed in his heart, but gradually got used to the unusual behavior of the wolf god. Such a supernatural existence must have magical powers that ordinary people cannot fathom. Although the fall of spirit Qi rain was shocking, the old man was no longer as shocked and speechless as when he first met Lu Heng. He was very easygoing. After watching the rain in the mountain for a while, at the urging of Li Pe, the three left the Hanyu mountain in the heavy rain. Unlike the old priest and Qian, Li Pe was surprised by the spirit Qi rain, but no matter how amazing it was, it was not as important as his wife. Now he just wants to quickly take the thunder sand taken from the wolf god temple back to the sword furnace and immediately start to forge the heavenly thunder sword for wolf god. If he can forge this sword one day earlier, he can also get enough thunder sand one day earlier, and then go to forge the mountain breaking sword to save his wife. For Li Pe, casting that sword is the most urgent thing he wants to accomplish. While the three of the Li tribe left Hanyu mountain and headed for the wind raiders department sword furnace outside the mountain. In the downpour of rainstorm in Hanyu Mountain, a white ape was chirping, running and climbing in the mountain, and soon came to the Wolf God Temple. In front of the Wolf God Temple made of pure wood, a girl named Xiao Ai was sitting cross-legged under the eaves of the Wolf God Temple, closed her eyes, and began to cultivate. The dense water spirit Qi in the air, with the girl's breath, swirled around her slowly and gently immersed in the girl's body. The cool rain water, dripping down the eaves, collided and crackled on the blue stone slab. Aware of the appearance of the white ape, the girl with silver hair and ears slowly opened her eyes and looked at the white ape who was wet and half muddy because of running in the rain. The girl asked, Why are you back? When the white ape saw that everything was normal at Wolf God Temple, he immediately breathed a sigh of relief. 
Then he hurried over and stood under the eaves pointing at the girl for a long time, screaming incessantly. Although the white ape could not speak, she understood his worries. Are you asking about the thunder and rain, worrying about me and the wolf god? That's why you hurried back. The girl shook her head and said, don't worry. The rain was brought down by the wolf god. Spirit chi is dense. Practicing in the rainwater is of great help. If you have had enough fun, you can also sit down and cultivate with me. Of course, if you still want to play, go back to the mountains to find your companions. Come back to me when you want to cultivate. You can come back any time and find me in front of the wolf god temple. The girl's expression is calm, her tone is indifferent, and there is not much emotion, which is quite different from the severe and cold teacher image some time ago. Seeing that the girl looked like this, the white ape was so scared that he knelt down on the ground and cowed out, screaming for mercy. The girl looked at it coldly and said, Don't be afraid. I'm not lying to you. The way of cultivation is hard. I can force you for a while, but I can't force you for a lifetime. It was my fault to blame you a while ago. Forcing you to settle down really goes against your nature. So I won't force you to do anything you don't want to do. Anyway, I've taught you the cultivation method and led you to the door. How much you can do next depends on your own nature. The girl's calm and indifferent voice reduced the white ape's fear. In the rain curtain, he secretly raised his head, looked at the little girl in front of him, and tentatively asked, Chatter. Chatter. The girl nodded and said, Since you want to go back to find your partner, go. There is nothing wrong in the mountain. Just take care of yourself. Although the cold appearance of the girl is not pleasant, it is completely different from the fierce and serious image before. White Ape was relieved to confirm that the little girl's words were sincere. It just jumped up with a happy face and kept chirping. In the rain curtain, the happy white ape seemed to have taken off some heavy burden, and then chirped and ran towards the mountains and woods to find his companions. Behind him, the little girl sitting cross-legged in front of the wolf god temple watched the disappearance of the white ape. After a long silence, she sighed slowly. The white ape didn't stay to cultivate in the end. Chapter, 52 After the three people of the Li tribe left, Hanyu Mountain returned to its former tranquility. Lu Hang summoned the heavenly thunder again and returned underground to cultivate. The sudden epiphany made him understand the magic power, heavenly thunder clouds rain, and also made him learn more about the nature of the heavenly thunder. So this seclusion will probably take longer than usual. Before the wolf god temple, Xiao Ai did most of her work except cleaning dead leaves. With the wolf demon's 200 years of cultivation, she doesn't require three meals a day like ordinary people. Some vegetables were planted in several wastelands reclaimed in the back mountain, plus rice, oil and salt brought from the Shuashing village, which were enough for the little girl's daily life. Other than the white ape not going to wolf god temple, everything in the mountain seems to be the same as usual. The biggest change seems to be the vegetation in the mountains. In Hanya mountain, which had withered in the middle of winter, many trees whose leaves had fallen off began to sprout, just like early spring. A wild peach forest in the back mountain even blooms in the cold winter out of season. The refreshing aroma of peach blossoms wafts in the mountain, which can be smelled in front of Wolf God Temple, which is quite far away. Outside Hanyu Mountain, in the camp of the Wind Raiders Department, the newly built sword furnace ignited a raging fire. The astonishing, scorching heat and the strange cold air crisscross in the sword furnace day and night. In the daytime, the wind was cold and the sword stove was as cold as an abyss. When the night came, the red flame appeared from the sword stove. It was scorching everything in the air with a frighteningly high temperature. With the sword stove as the center, the plants within the mile had withered. The strange environment of alternating cold and heat makes the Lee tribe people living in the Wind Raiders Department camp feel a little uncomfortable. If the villagers from the Shuashing village outside the mountain come to live here, they may not be able to stay for a quarter of an hour, and then they will run away. However, the two priests who made efforts to forge the sword never came out after they entered the sword furnace. In order to prevent external interference, they even sealed the inside and outside of the sword furnace until the day when the sword was completed. So Qian got bored. After the old priest secluded himself, 
she was responsible for all the big and small affairs of the clan, but most of them were trivial things that bothered the young girl. But if you want to be lazy, you can't be. You can only deal with the boring trivia in the tribe with a hard head and a helpless face. After the heavy snow stopped, the Shueishing village outside the mountain became much more lively. Because the heavy snow stopped, the weather in recent days has been good, and the Wind Raiders Department and the Shueishing village have resumed communication. Two ethnic groups with different cultures and even different living habits have temporarily chosen an open place outside the mountain as a market to exchange things with each other. The Li tribe smelted metal and iron tools, collected various types of pelt, herbal medicine from the mountain, and other things during the journey. The Shueishing village took out its own brewed wine, fed livestock, and even villagers set up stoves to fire in the market and fried food for the Li tribe on the spot. The market is held once every six days, which is quite lively. Qian was very interested in the market. After all, it was fun, so she took the lead in establishing the market. It is a pity that the fair was only been held three times, before it had to be temporarily suspended because of heavy snow again. At this time, New Year's Eve is approaching. Even outside Hanyu Mountain, which is remote and not connected with the outside world, the flavor of the new year in the village is gradually becoming stronger, not to mention those ancient cities outside the mountain. The Thousand Needle City, which is very far away from the Hanyu Mountain, is now snowy, and the thick snow has accumulated on both sides of the road outside the city, almost knee-deep. It is extremely inconvenient to travel in such a snowy day, but there are a few pedestrians on the road. Due to a grand gathering in the Thousand Needle City today, many villagers living near the city will come to the city to buy New Year goods. In the wind and snow, the road outside the city gate was full of people. In order to resist the severe cold, the villagers are all heavily dressed, so they have some difficulty in moving. In the Temple of the God of Fire, the largest building in the city, Gong Shu Jie put down his bamboo slips and looked at his subordinates coming outside the door. Are you ready? Asked Gong Shu Jie. The subordinates nodded respectfully, they are well prepared, just wait for Master Wu Zhu to give orders. Okay, Gong Shu Jie nodded with satisfaction, looking at the heavy snow flying outside the window, he thought for a while, and asked, how many clans have responded? The subordinate shook his head. The old people of these clans didn't respond, but some young people wandered around the city. Maybe the old clans knew the news, so they sent these young people out to test. Gong Shu Jie laughed. They wanted to test, so let them go to test it. With the wisdom of those people, how can they understand the meaning of my actions today? Although sooner or later, they will understand. But it will be too late to understand. If today's event is successful, my wish will be half completed. Ha ha. Let's go to the city gate. Today, I, Gong Shu Jie, will make the whole thousand needle city stare. Gong Shu Jie burst out laughing and was in a happy mood. Once he hated and despised the old clans in the city and those who played politics and greedily grabbed interests, but he could not think of a response, so he could only stand by. However, in the Hanyu Mountain, he had a good talk with the Wolf God, which gave him a lot of insight. The Wolf God's words and great righteousness made him see a road he had never imagined. After returning, he prepared a detailed plan, carried out a detailed conception and deduction, and finally established what to do next. Just to do these things, you need to have a foundation. Although the name of Wuzhu is magnificent, it can't accurately convey the will to the villagers. That group of old clans will certainly obstruct him and spoil his good deeds. But after today, the situation will be different. Villagers are stupid, but they can also be educated. Thinking of this, Gong Shu Jie was in a happy mood, and his laughter was even more cheerful. A quarter of an hour later, a log three feet long was erected at the south gate of the Thousand Needle City. A message spread rapidly among the crowd entering the city. Master Wuzhu said that if someone could move the logs from the south gate to the north gate, he would be rewarded with ten gold. Less than an hour after the news was released, it spread all over the Thousand Needle City at an unusual speed. Because of the rally, the Thousand Needle City today was already crowded with people. Many nearby villagers came to the city to buy New Year goods, which can be said to be very lively. 
After such a strange news spread, it immediately caused people's astonished comments. 10 gold. So much. Just move a piece of wood. You can get 10 gold. Is it fake? How can you get so much? Maybe that piece of wood is very heavy and no one can move it. Similar arguments appeared everywhere in the city. No matter if it was the villagers who came to buy New Year's goods nearby or the original residents in the city, everyone was very surprised at the news, and some didn't believe it. Many people even went to the south gate and found that there was a log three feet long. Although heavy, it is not impossible to move. There are also master wuzus of the fire god temple waiting beside the log. They constantly preach to the villagers who go in and out of the city that they can get ten gold if they remove the log. Even the reward is ready to be taken at any time. Such a strange thing soon caused an uproar in the Thousand Needle City. However, from morning to noon, although many villagers gathered at the south gate to see the play, none of them tried it personally. At noon, the snow stopped, and the sun broke through the clouds and shone in the Thousand Needle City. The news about the increased reward spread once again. Master Wu Zhu exclaimed, Now anyone who could move that piece of wood will get a reward of 50 gold. Hiss. 50 gold. Is that true? Why so many? What does Master Wu Zhu want to do? That's right. It's strange that you can get 50 gold for moving a piece of wood. Master Wu Zhu is really profound. It's hard to guess his intention. In the city, there was a lot of talk about the bounty. In one of the quiet mansions, young people came back from outside and went straight to the old house of the family. Grandpa, I went to see it. Gong Shu Jie was serious. He really prepared a 50 gold reward. As long as anyone could move the wood, the person could take away the reward. The yelling of the young people made the old man by the fire look up slightly. He put down the parchment scroll in his hand and asked, is there anything unusual about that wood? Nothing unusual, just ordinary wood. Any strong man can move away by himself, the young man said. Grandpa, what kind of idea is in Gong Shu Jie's mind? Just move a piece of wood, and the reward is fifty. Does he have too much money and just want to spend it? The old man thought for a while and shook his head. Master Wu Zhu must have deep meaning when he acts like this. Let's see how he acts in the future. Today's business is not aimless. Are we going to make trouble? The young man smiled and said, Shall I take the log away and get the fifty gold? The old man stared at him with a smile and scolded, Be careful lest Gong Shu Jie burns you into ashes. Similar questions and answers appeared several times among the old clans in the city. However, because they could not see the profound meaning of Gong Shu Jie's actions, the old clans finally reached an agreement by tacit understanding, let's see how he plays. The atmosphere in the city became more and more lively for the ordinary residents in the city and the villagers outside the city. Countless people went to the south of the city to see what kind of wood was worth the 50 gold reward. On the snow-covered roads in the city, there was a great deal of noise. Above the city tower, Gong Shu Jie looked at the large crowd gathered below, smiling. Listening to the noisy voices in the crowd and feeling the success of today's affairs, he was in a happy mood and could not help looking in the direction of Hanyu Mountain. A smiling face. Will the wolf god be glad to see my success today? What happened today is just the beginning. It was only after this news spread that he could follow up. At that time, the old clan in the city might be able to react and understand his meaning, but it would be too late. Chapter, 53 Lu Heng, who was far away in Hanyu Mountain, didn't know the lively atmosphere in Thousand Needle City. Lu Heng knew nothing about the decisions and plans that Gong Shu Jie made when he went back after listening to Lu Heng's story. Now he is cultivating in the Holy Palace below Wolf God Temple. His last epiphany gave him a deeper understanding of the essence of Heavenly Thunder, however he failed to succeed for a long time. Outside Hanyu Mountain, with the last heavy snow falling before New Year's Eve, the weather in the mountain gradually becomes sunny. On the day of the Lunar New Year on the 23rd day of the 12th lunar month, the sky was clear and the snow inside and outside the mountains disappeared. Although the wind blowing through the mountain still brings a little chill, the coldest days in the middle of winter have passed. 
In the Shueisheng village outside Hanyu Mountain, there were one or two families who held funerals. Even though there is plenty of food and clothing, there are still a few old people who can't survive the severe winter every year. One of the families is even close to Xiao Ai. Although the other party didn't dare to disturb her in the mountains, Xiao Ai got up early on this day of the Lunar New Year. She took a firewood chopper and walked to the back mountain in the morning fog, cut a bundle of firewood, carried it back alone, and then opened a stove to cook. In the Hanyu Mountain in the morning, a wisp of cooking smoke slowly rose from the cooking house behind the Wolf God Temple. Xiao Ai originally meant to bake some cakes for breakfast, then cultivate a little, and then go down the mountain to attend her uncle's funeral in the afternoon. But as soon as the stove was lit, there was a creaking sound outside the door. A white ape crept in from the door. Seeing Xiao Ai looking at it, the white ape hurriedly squeezed out a flattering smile, Gigi. Gigi. Xiao Ai glanced at it and said, Why are you lying outside? Since you are here, come in. It has been more than a month since Xiao Ai last sent the white ape to the mountains, but the white ape has never returned to Wolf God Temple to cultivate with Xiao Ai. Maybe he is playing too happily in the mountains. Of course, it may also be that it is afraid of Xiao Ai, so it doesn't dare come back. As for whether the white ape has been cultivating since then, Xiao Ai doesn't know, nor does she want to know. She calmly asked the white ape to come in. She was not angry because the white ape hadn't come back for more than a month. The white ape didn't see any murderous spirit on Xiao Ai, so he breathed a sigh of relief and walked in with a chirp. He looked at the firewood room in front of him and the girl who was standing beside the stove, sucked his nose, and ran to the fire on the other side of the stove with great dexterity. When the fire in the stove was a little smaller, he cleverly added firewood to the fire without waiting for the girl to say anything. Soon, the girl finished baking the pancakes, and the scallion pancakes with alluring fragrance made the white ape drool. The girl didn't tease it, and directly distributed three cakes to the white ape. Here, yours. After sharing the cake, the girl left the cooking room. The white ape happily took three scallion oil cakes and followed up with a smile. One human and one monkey are sitting on the wooden stairs at the front door of Wolf God Temple, eating the freshly baked scallion cake in the cold winter wind. The white ape happily said this to the girl beside him. The girl was a little surprised. Did you come back especially to spend New Year's Eve with me? Does white ape know about New Year's Eve? The white ape felt embarrassed and scratched the hair on the back of his head. It is intelligent by nature. It is much smarter and stronger than ordinary apes. It has been at Hanyu Mountain for a long time. It knows that people at the foot of the mountain seem to have a very important festival every time. Thinking of the little girl living in Wolf God Temple alone, it struggled for many days before coming back, biting its teeth and risking being beaten. The little girl shook her head wordlessly. You are a monkey, what New Year's Eve? After eating the cake, you can go back to the mountain to play. I don't need your company. The white ape shook his head hurriedly, indicating that he would never go back. In the cold wind, the girl was silent for a while, then she nodded slowly. It's good for you to stay. Human festivals have a lot of stress and trouble, if you stay you have to listen and help me with my work. GG. The white ape nodded repeatedly, indicating that he would be obedient. So the white ape lived in the mountains. When she forced the white ape to cultivate in front of Wolf God Temple, she prepared a room for him. Now Xiao Ai cleaned the house again and let the white ape check in. However with such a delay, today's cultivation has not yet begun, though noon had arrived. Xiao Ai looked at the sky, and went directly to the firewood room to carry the bundle of firewood cut in the morning. She prepared to go down the mountain to attend the funeral in the village. This country believes in the god of fire and advocates cremation. According to custom, every family who goes to the funeral should bring a bundle of firewood to the deceased's family. As for gifts and other things, they are not popular in this remote mountain village. The village holds funerals, and every household in the neighborhood will go to help with cooking, washing dishes, and cleaning up, which requires a lot of manpower. If Xiao Ai is still in the village, she must help such a funeral. 
Now she has a special status, even if she wants to help, the villagers dare not bother her. It's enough to carry a bundle of firewood and send it to them. When White Ape saw that Xiao Ai was going down the mountain, he hurriedly followed and kept asking to go with her. The human village at the foot of the mountain, in which he has never set foot, is full of mystery. Now Xiao Ai is leading the way. He is excited to see what the human village is like. Xiao Ai thought for a while, but she didn't object. She unloaded the firewood on her back and gave it to the white ape. Then she took the white ape out of the mountain. The journey of one human and one monkey is very fast. Ordinary people have to walk the mountain road for more than an hour. Xiao Ai took the white ape for about half an hour and arrived. This is because the cultivation of white apes is low, which hinders Xiao Ai. Otherwise, she would be able to walk outside the mountain in about a quarter of an hour. When arriving at the entrance of the village, the villagers on duty were shocked to see Xiao Ai appear, but they didn't dare to stop her. After Xiao Ai entered the village, the white ape with her attracted the curious eyes of many people. But the villagers were curious and peek at the monkey. The monkey was not scared stiff, but walked all the way, looked left and right all the way, and was very happy. Everything was very novel. Because of the funeral, the village had become quite lively. When Xiao Ai led the white ape to her uncle's house, she saw her uncle's body lying in the morning hall wrapped in white cloth. At meal time, the inside and outside of the morning hall were very lively. Ten tables were set outside the morning hall. The smell of food and meals filled the crowd. Everyone was looking for a place to sit down and wait for dinner while others who could not find a place sat on the firewood by the roadside, warming and chatting. The appearance of Xiao Ai surprised the villagers. The host family, old and young, welcomed the little girl. No one expected Xiao Ai to take the initiative to come down the mountain. After all, no one dared to inform her. However, her appearance made the host proud. But Xiao Ai didn't stay too long, and didn't even stay for lunch. After giving the firewood and chatting with her uncles, Xiao Ai asked the white ape who was hanging around in the crowd to leave. On the way, the white ape was still excited. Today's activity is too novel for it. It can't help but ask the girl what these people are doing together. Xiao Ai glanced at it and explained lightly, funeral for the dead. Didn't you find a body lying in the middle of the morning hall? It was my uncle who died in the heavy snow not long ago. Xiao Ai's explanation stunned the white ape. Gee. White ape didn't seem to understand. So Xiao Ai explained in detail the customs of birth, old age, death, funeral, and cremation to be carried out later. The white ape was more and more confused and kept asking questions. Dead. Cremation. Burned to ashes. Then the ashes are scattered into the river and go with the water. These human customs are very strange to the white apes in the mountains. It listened with a blank face, but vaguely thought of something. The white ape, who was originally lively and happy, suddenly became silent. On the way to coming here, he danced and shouted all the way. At this time, he followed Xiao Ai with his head down. He was depressed. The silent and depressed appearance was in sharp contrast to the cheerfulness of the time when they walked down the mountain. Chapter, 54 After going to the village with the girl to attend the funeral on that day of childhood, the white ape who returned to the mountain was silent and no longer played happily as usual. He began to cultivate actively, and even the number of times when he was lazy and distracted in cultivation was much less. Xiao Ai was quite satisfied and felt that the white ape had finally worked hard. However, in just a few days, the number of times when the white ape was lazy and distracted during his cultivation became more and more often. In the end, the old state started sprouting once again, which was no different from the previous appearance of laziness and idleness. Xiao Ai didn't urge him to cultivate, so he played by himself and idled openly. The lazy and happy appearance made Xiao Ai speechless for a while, and she completely gave up her expectation of the white ape in her heart. However, with this white ape, the originally deserted mountains are much more lively. This white ape plays every day, and occasionally amuses Xiao Ai. 
And although this white ape is not willing to sit and meditate, if it is allowed to work, it will do well. So Xiao Ai gave all the chores in the mountain to the white ape. She let it sweep the fallen leaves in front and around the wolf god temple with a broom every day. Once every three days, let the white ape wipe and wash the floor and altar inside and outside the wolf god temple. Carry water at the foot of the mountain every day, and chop firewood at the back of the mountain every day after all the chores were handed over to the monkey, Xiao Ai saved a lot of time, so that she could focus entirely on cultivation. Time soon arrived for New Year's Eve. On this day, Xiao Ai got up very early and called the white ape who was still sleeping next door. On New Year's Eve, there are many things that need busy preparation, so Xiao Ai doesn't plan to cultivate today. She got up early and cooked some porridge. After having breakfast with White Ape, she began a busy day. The main hall of Wolf God Temple was completely cleaned inside and outside. The empty rooms in front of and behind the main hall were carefully cleaned. The cleaning didn't end until noon. Then Xiao Ai and White Ape set off firecrackers in front of Wolf God Temple. Although Xiao Ai was no longer interested in firecrackers, White Ape likes them very much. He is satisfied after pestering Xiao Ai to set off a few more. After a short rest, she began to prepare for the New Year's Eve dinner. In the past, when she was in the village, her parents prepared the New Year's Eve dinner. The girl just helped her mother pick beans and wash vegetables. Later, her father died and her mother was seriously ill. On New Year's Eve, her mother and Xiao Ai worked together to cook some dishes with meat and fish. However, even though there were two women, one was sick and the other was young, naturally, they couldn't make a rich New Year's Eve dinner. Later, her mother died of illness and the girl was adopted by her uncle. The dinner was a lot richer, but it never tasted the same as before. This year, it is the first time for the girl to spend New Year's Eve alone. Of course, she was accompanied by a white ape. It's just that this white ape obviously doesn't understand the meaning of New Year's Eve. It can do something like washing vegetables and picking beans, but the girl has to kill chickens, kill ducks, and cook vegetables and rice by herself. Doing these things alone, although Xiao Ai was energetic, it still took a long time. It was not until it was completely dark that the smell of vegetables and rice wafted in the mountains. The white ape sat by the stove and looked at the fire in the stove with dull eyes. He was already very hungry. It doesn't quite understand why there are so many dishes on the table, but it can't eat by itself. And why does Xiao Ai have to cook so many dishes can the two of them eat them all this night? In the firewood room, the girl's expression was indifferent, but her forehead was slightly sweaty. It's not that she's tired, but she's a little flustered and anxious when she holds the spoon alone for the first time. It was not easy to finish all the meals, but the soup dishes made earlier have been cold. Just when White Ape thought it could finally have dinner, the little girl shoved it off the table. The little girl stared at the monkey and said, First, sacrifice to Lord Wolf God. The monkey with a growling stomach immediately frowned, but he could only hide aside and watch the little girl worship the Wolf God. At the end of the worship, there were more cold dishes on the table, only one or two dishes that had just come out of the pot were still hot. In the dim light of the candle, White Ape Way sat in a corner of the table, sipping most of the cold soup and vegetables. Although it wants to complain, it dares not speak. The little girl opposite was also a bit depressed, but after seeing the monkey's angry face, she couldn't help but laugh. Ha ha ha. The little girl's laughter spread far away to the mountains. In front of the quiet and dim wolf god temple, there is a window with a light far away. Outside the mountain, the New Year's Eve party of the Wind Raiders department is very lively. The Lee tribe doesn't believe in gods, and in turn doesn't worship gods on New Year's Eve. What they worship is the ancestral holy throne and their holy mountain. When the worship of ancestors was over and each family had a big meal in their own homes, these Lee tribe people who were not afraid of the cold lit a huge bonfire in the center of the camp. The blazing fire lit up the night sky and illuminated the singing and dancing crowd beside the campfire with joy. In the mountains, Xiao Ai and the white ape who had finished dinner began to clean up the table. After leaving the kitchen, the little girl dragged the white ape to the wolf god temple and lit the candle in front of the altar. 
In front of the altar, one candle after another is lit, and the dim candle light illuminates the spacious and huge wolf god temple. The little girl took the white ape and put a stick of incense on the statue of wolf god on the altar, and then sat on the futon. I'll keep vigil tonight, the girl said, so I won't sleep. If you're bored, you can try to enter meditation. The white ape suddenly froze. Gee. Its eyes widened and its face was in disbelief. The girl looked at it indifferently and said, This is the custom of New Year's Eve. You should stay up until dawn. You have learned the method of meditation. If you are really sleepy, you can try to meditate for a while. The white ape was stunned, but the little girl had closed her eyes and settled down. Obviously, she is really not going to sleep tonight. The white ape hesitated for a while, secretly looked at the statue of the white wolf on the altar, and finally didn't dare to say anything. He also imitated Xiao Ai's appearance, sat on his knees on a futon, and entered meditation. In the mountain temple, it was temporarily quiet. At one o'clock, suddenly, a harsh crackling explosion suddenly sounded outside the mountain. Dazzling colored light rose in the Li tribe's camp and burst into the night sky. The strange sound startled the tranquility of New Year's Eve. The girl opened her eyes and saw that the white ape had been lying at the gate. It was just looking at the burst of color light in the night sky outside. Those are the fireworks set off by the Li tribe, Xiao Ai said. If you wish to see it, go outside and watch it. After getting the approval, the white ape was immediately overcome with happiness, and hurriedly pushed open the doors. He ran outside, rushing to the open place to witness the colored fireworks rising in the sky that night. However, as soon as the white ape ran out, there was a scream of panic from the white ape outside. Hearing the scream, the girl's heart trembled and subconsciously rushed out. What happened? She shouted hurriedly. Under the cold moonlight, the girl saw the scene in front of Wolf God Temple. The white ape with white hair was lying on the ground in horror and awe, shivering. And in the direction of white ape worship, in the open space paved with bluestones, there is a figure standing quietly. After hearing the girl's voice, the man slowly turned his head and looked at her and the white ape. In the moonlight, the girl saw the man clearly. His white dress is spotless, as if all the filth in the world could not infect his body, with an indescribable ethereal appearance. His calm eyes seemed to imply a smile. Obviously, he looked young, but facing this man in white, Xiao Ai inexplicably felt awe, as if she was facing a god with long history who had long seen through the world of mortals. Xiao Ai's heart suddenly jumped and thought of some possibility. Wolf Lord Wolf God the girl murmured in a weak voice. But the man in white in front of Wolf God Temple heard it clearly. He smiled and nodded. His warm smile seemed to dispel the cold in winter, making the whole Wolf God Temple feel like a spring breeze inside and outside. Yes, it's me. The man in the moonlight smiled and said, I've come to see you tonight on New Year's Eve. The little girl's breathing suddenly shortened and she was a little excited. Lord Wolf God she subconsciously walked forward a few steps and wanted to salute, but after raising her hand. She remembered that Lord Wolf God would not allow her to do so, and her hand immediately froze in mid-air, neither saluting nor taking back. But fortunately, the man in white didn't seem to notice her embarrassment. Instead, he turned his head to look outside the mountain, gazing at the bright fireworks rising in the sky that night, and nodded. The fireworks set off by the Wind Raiders Department are beautiful, and they have some flavor of the Chinese New Year. The gentle voice of Lord Wolf God made the girl's inner panic gradually calm down. She walked to the Wolf God, couldn't help but secretly looking at the Wolf God beside her, and asked eagerly, Wolf God, you you look like this. It's just the incarnation of my soul, Lu Hang in front of Wolf God Temple glanced at her and said with a smile, I've learned something from this mediation. Although this is just the incarnation of my soul and it can't touch anything, it also has infinite mysteries. In the future, if there is a visitor, there is no need to greet the visitor as a wolf haha. Lu Hang smiled softly, feeling quite happy. The little girl standing beside him bowed her head, clenched her fists excitedly, and her heart beat like a drum. Lord Wolf God came to see her. The girl who had been ready to spend the New Year's Eve and Spring Festival alone suddenly felt dizzy, 
and her whole person felt so happy as if she had fallen into a cloud. Silent tears fell on her grim face. In the night sky, the fireworks set off by the Wind Raiders Department rose to the sky, reflecting the whole Hanyu Mountain in all colors. And also engraved the two people and a monkey in front of the Wolf God Temple in the picture scroll of this moment forever. Chapter, 55 After New Year's Eve, Hanyu Mountain returned to its former tranquility. The white ape returned to the mountains to find its monkeys, and no longer returned to Wolf God Temple. Lu Han went back to the ground and continued to cultivate. The seclusion this time is longer than that of before, because Lu Hang's cultivation has reached an important juncture. Coming out this time is only to spend New Year's Eve with the little girl. Today, he is facing the most critical first hurdle of the way of cultivation, opening the door to heaven. Visualize your inner world and shape your own door to heaven. If you can knock on heaven's door and enter, you can be regarded as having achieved a little success in the way of cultivation. If the demon cultivator can knock on the door of heaven and enter, the demon can become a human. This is a very important threshold for demon cultivation. Therefore, Lu Heng needs to go all out to try and get rid of external interference. In the underground temple, a huge white wolf lay silently in the dark yellow spirit of the earth, his eyes slightly closed, motionless, as if he was asleep. And in front of the white wolf, there was a figure silently floating. Between the human figure and the white wolf, there are faint strands of lightning force flowing. These heavenly thunders, who warm up the white wolf's demon body, are also slowly washing and strengthening Lu Heng's soul. Between the human-shaped soul and the huge white wolf's demon body, the surging power of lightning formed a wonderful cycle, and you could clearly feel that the soul sitting cross-legged in the air is more and more condensed. In such spiritual awareness, the time in the mountains passed day by day. After the Shan Yuan festival, the weather became warmer and warmer. The villagers of Shueisheng village began to prepare for spring plowing and sowing, and the outside of the mountain soon became lively. Spring plowing is a major event that cannot be ignored by the villagers. Even the Wind Raiders Department, a tribe where everyone can fight lions and tigers with their bare hands, is now preparing for spring plowing. All the wastelands reclaimed last winter are now in use. When the sun shines, you can see the rice fields on the plains with shadowy villagers transplanting seedlings, and the people of the Wind Raiders Department are planting yellow rice and sweet potatoes in the mountains, which is very lively. In such a hot atmosphere, in the sword furnace behind the Wind Raiders Department, the alternating cold and hot flames seem to be stronger and stronger. The sword stove has never been opened since it was closed months ago. Two priests were in the sword furnace, casting a heavenly thunder sword for Lu Heng day and night. Up to now, the alternate flame of cold and hot is no longer in a twelve-hour rotation, but the flame changes every six hours or so. The land around the sword stove has already become barren. Even in the early spring when all things sprout, this area is always barren, because no vegetation can survive in such an extreme environment. Even the people of the Wind Raiders Department dare not get close to the sword furnace now, and can't bear the pressure given by the two sacred fires inherited by the Li tribe. The only one who can get close to the sword stove is the girl named Xian. But she had been there several times, though she could only stand outside and guess the progress of the casting of the heavenly thunder sword, and could not contact the two priests in the sword furnace. For the girl, the biggest fun now is to go to Wolf God Temple to find Xiao Ai. But Xiao Ai was busy cultivating and was quite helpless about her frequent visits. Finally, the two made an appointment to see each other once per three days. Today is the day when Qian can enter the mountain. When she came out of the tent early in the morning, the girl carried two jars of wine and hummed happy songs, and directly left the camp and stepped into the river running through Hanyu Mountain. The cold river surged at her feet, and the barefoot and white skirt girl walked on the waves. The swimming fish in the water are now big and fat because they have not been prayed for a long time. When the girl walked along the river, many curious fish even swam to her feet and wriggled their mouths to touch the girl's feet. Although she can fly directly to Wolf God Temple, it's too fast and boring. She came to have fun, not to hurry on the way, so the girl walked at a cheerful but not faster pace than ordinary people. Walked through the mountains on the river, and finally came to the small ferry at the foot of the main peak of Hanyu Mountain. 
no one has used this ferry since it was built. After all, this Hanyu mountain is remote, and no one will row here. Qian stepped on the river to the bank, like an ordinary climber, carrying two jars of wine and started climbing up the stone stairs. The morning sun fell on her, and she had a little heat, but Qian was not tired at all. Xiao Ai. I'm coming. After climbing to the end of the stone steps, Qian shouted to the deep part of the shady path, look what I brought you. She shouted as she walked in. There was no response from the temple, but Qian was also used to Xiao Ai's indifference. She walked to the Wolf God Temple with a smile and saw the girl sitting under the eaves of the Wolf God Temple, who closed her eyes and cultivated. Wow! I haven't seen you for a few days. Xiao Ai, you look more beautiful. Qian put down the wine jar and said with a smile, Come on, let me pinch your face. Your skin is so smooth and tender that people envy you. If the wolf god also helped me reshape my body, that would be great. The girl under the eaves quietly avoided Qian's hand and said, You're already very good. You don't need to reshape your body. By the way, why are you bringing wine here? Xiao Ai looked at the two jars of wine Qian was carrying, and was a little confused, Do you want to drink? Of course not, Qian smiled and hugged Xiao Ai, rubbed her face, and said, Didn't you say last time? The peach blossoms in your back mountain are very fragrant. I want to pick some to soak peach blossom wine, so I brought two jars. Of course, I don't take your peach blossoms for nothing, and one of them is for you. Don't underestimate these two jars of wine. They are the best wines that the priest grandpa has treasured for three hundred years. It's only inferior to the thousand days drunk made by the saint sister herself. I've lost my money this time. Qian boasted about the wine she brought. Xiao Ai looked at her, but she was silent for a while, and finally nodded slowly, I can take you there, but you can't pick too many peach blossoms. Qian immediately smiled happily, of course, of course, never pick more. Just pick a little, a little. Qian was quite happy with Xiao Ai's consent. Since last year's shower, this Hanyu mountain will rain once a month. The rain in the heavenly thunder clouds contains an abundant aura of water-type spirit qi. With the rainfall in recent months, not only the spirit qi in the mountains has gradually become rich, but even the plants and trees in the mountains have been moistened. Among them, the peach blossom forest seems to benefit the most. The peach forest has not withered since the peach blossoms in the late winter of last year. The faint and elegant fragrance of peach blossoms surrounds the mountain, making the main peak of Hanyu Mountain fragrant like entering a fairyland on earth. According to common sense, the flowering period of peach blossom is very short, and it will wither in about ten days. But the peach blossoms in House Han have been in full bloom for four months, and there is still no sign of withering. Such a strange peach blossom has long been noticed by Xiao Ai and Qian. It was the first time for Qian to see such a strange peach blossom, so she wanted to taste the peach blossom wine brewed with this kind of peach blossom. Xiao Ai couldn't stand her pleading, so she had to agree. And she was also curious about what kind of wine this peach blossom could make. If the taste was really excellent, maybe it could be dedicated to Lord Wolf God. Thinking so, Xiao Ai took Qian to the peach forest in the back of the mountain. Aware of the particularity of the peach forest, Xiao Ai has already built a fence to enclose the peach forest to prevent wild animals in the mountains from breaking into and destroying the peach forest. Before they stepped into the peach forest, they had smelled the faint and elegant fragrance of flowers. When they walked into the peach blossom forest, the colorful flowers they saw in their eyes made Qian very happy. However, she was just about to pick peach blossoms when she suddenly saw a strange figure in the depths of the peach forest. He is about the same size as a teenager, with white hair all over his body. Now he is standing on tiptoe and stretching his hands, as if he wants to reach the peach blossoms in full bloom on the peach tree. That's clearly. White ape. What are you doing here? Xiao Ai asked in confusion. The girl's voice startled the white ape. It quickly turned around and saw the two humans behind him. The expression on his face was a little panicked. Xiao Ai took a few steps forward and looked puzzled, do you want to pick peach blossoms? What do you do with peach blossoms? However, 
As soon as she finished speaking, the white ape who had not come to the wolf god temple for many days jumped away in panic. Gee! Gee! Like a thief who was caught red-handed, the white ape escaped towards the depths of the peach forest in a panic. Finally, under the stunned eyes of Qian and Xiao Ai, the panicked white ape climbed up the wall and turned around. Faintly, Xiao Ai and Qian both saw a handful of peach blossoms in the white ape's hand. Both of them were confused. What is this white ape doing? Xiao Ai frowned tightly, and her eyes were full of confusion. There's no need to be so afraid even if it is found stealing peach blossoms, right? Chapter 56 I'll go and have a look. In the peach blossom forest, Xiao Ai said so, so she left Qian and chased along the direction where the white ape disappeared. However, after she left the peach forest, she couldn't see the trace of the white ape. In the morning, the mountains were silent. The white ape didn't leave footprints. She didn't know where it had gone. Xiao Ai searched in the mountains for a while, but she still couldn't find it. She had to return to the peach forest to accompany Qian to pick peach flowers. Shortly after Xiao Ai returned to the peach forest, not far from the peach forest, the ground with dead leaves slowly and suddenly raised a small piece. Then a white ape quietly emerged from the hole covered with dead leaves. Holding a handful of peach blossoms tightly in his hand, he looked at the peach forest not far away with worry and fear. After confirming that the little girl didn't catch up, he left here quietly. The white ape's pace was light, and he ran in the mountains without making any sound. Soon, it left the main peak and dove into the more wild and primitive dense jungle behind the main peak. In this dense and primitive jungle, wild animals are entrenched and snakes and insects are rampant. Even the hunters in Shuashin village are often unwilling to go deep into this place to hunt because the terrain is too rough. But the white ape is light and fast through the jungle and climbs the cliff. This primitive jungle, which is complex and difficult for human beings, is as familiar as its own home. At last, the white ape reached a dark cave. Neither Lu Heng nor Xiao Ai had been there. The cave was hanging on the cliff, and no beast could come up except the clever monkeys in the mountain. As soon as the white ape climbed into the cave, there was an outburst of squeaky ape cries in the small cave. All the monkeys in the cave gathered around and looked curiously at the handful of peach blossoms held by the white ape. The white ape angrily pushed away the monkeys and walked to the center of the monkeys. There, an old monkey lay quietly. Gee! Gee! The white ape held up the peach blossom in his hand and shouted excitedly at the old monkey. However, the old monkey could not answer it, but lay there weakly, reluctantly opened one eye and exhaled a heavy turbid breath. Gee! Gee! The white ape shouted excitedly. No matter how the monkeys around reacted, it ran to the old monkey, stuffed all the peach blossoms in its hands into the old monkey's mouth, and then shouted, Gee! Gee! The white ape can feel that this blooming peach blossom contains a strong spirit chi of life. If these spirit chi can be eaten by the old monkey. It stretched out two hands, grabbed the old monkey's already weak and thin arms, and constantly put weak spirit chi into the old monkey's body. The white ape shouted loudly, trying to use his spirit chi to guide the old monkey to absorb the spirit chi of life, just like the girl taught him to cultivate at the beginning. However, the spirit chi in its body is too weak. No matter how hard it tried, it can't do what the girl did when she taught it to cultivate. The weak old monkey was still lying there lifelessly, and there was no spirit chi entering the old monkey's body. Even after the old monkey reluctantly chewed and swallowed the peach blossom, it didn't become better. Gradually, the old monkey's breathing became heavier and heavier, and the time between breaths became longer and longer. No matter how hard the white ape tried, the faint spirit chi in its body could not help the old monkey. G. G. In the cave, the white ape's confused cry rang out. It sat dumbly beside the old monkey, watching the female monkey who raised it from childhood gradually lose her breath, her body beginning to lose warmth. He was a little flustered. After the old monkey stopped breathing, the white ape was even more flustered and afraid. It shook the old monkey's body desperately. 
But no matter how much the white ape shook her body and shouted, the old monkey didn't move and would never open its eyes again. Inside the dark cave, the voice of the white ape gradually lessened. In the end, it suddenly turned into a bitter howl, which spread far away in the mountains. Lu Hung was still practicing in the underground temple when he heard the noise of the commotion. The incarnation of the soul, suspended in midair, slowly opened his eyes with a slightly surprised expression. After a thought, Lu Hang's soul avatar appeared in front of Wolf God Temple. Under the bloody sunset, a white ape was kneeling in front of the Wolf God Temple, howling and kowtowing desperately. And in the arms of the white ape, holding a completely cold monkey body. The girl named Xiao Ai is standing on the ladder in front of Wolf God Temple to stop the white ape from entering. The expression on her face was both distressed and angry. I said, Lord Wolf God can't help you. Birth, aging, and death are the orders of heaven and earth, which can't be changed. Don't mess around here, will you? If you disturb the cultivation of Lord Wolf God, you can't atone even if I strip your skin off. The girl's words were fierce, but the white ape in front of her turned a deaf ear to the scolding, and just desperately scampered to Wolf God Temple, howling bitterly and hopelessly. The shrill howl spread far away in the mountains, sounding inexplicably sad. When Lu Heng came out, he saw such a scene. A few seconds later, Lu Heng sighed slowly and said. Well, Xiao Ai, you don't have to blame it. Patting the girl on the shoulder, Lu Heng said, let me listen to the white ape's wishes. Xiao Ai was startled by the sudden appearance of Lu Heng. She hurriedly retreated to one side, a little panicked, Lord Wolf God, sorry for disturbing your cultivation. It's all right. It's time to come out and have a look after staying underground for a long time, Lu Heng smiled at the girl. Then he looked at the white ape kneeling at his feet and looked serious. Do you want me to save it? Lu Heng looked at the dead monkey in the white ape's arms and asked directly. The white ape was stunned for a moment, and hurriedly nodded desperately, Gee. Gee. Lu Heng looked at it and asked, Why do you want to save it? It's important to you. Gee. Gee! The white ape shouted excitedly and told the wolf god about the old monkey raising it from childhood. Under the bloody sunset, the white ape, who was holding the old monkey's body, desperately shouted, constantly gesticulating, and whose voice was already hoarse, looked so helpless and pathetic. However, Lu Hang's expression remained unchanged. He stood in front of wolf god temple, quietly listened to the white ape finish all the words, and then slowly said. This old monkey is very important to you, so you immediately come to me to ask for help after it dies. But there are dozens of monkeys in your monkey group in the mountains, including even your children. These monkeys are also very important to you. If they die tomorrow, will you also bring them to beg me for help? Lu Hang's inquiry completely stunned the white ape. It held the body of the old monkey in its arms and knelt there dumbly. For a moment, it didn't know how to answer. Lu Heng looked at it and sighed softly before saying. Birth, old age and death are the order of heaven and earth, which cannot be changed. When you saw that I saved Xiao Ai once, you thought I had the ability to bring back the dead, so after the old monkey died, you thought of coming to me at the first. But have you ever thought that if I can really save all dead creatures and bring everything back to life, can the world still maintain its current appearance? Wouldn't those who come back from the dead be everywhere? Lu Hang's inquiry confused the white ape. It knelt there stupidly, not knowing what to say. Lu Hang continued, in other words, if I can revive the dead at will, why didn't I revive Xiao Ai's uncle? Why didn't I revive the dead old people in Shuaxing village? Lu Hang looked at the white ape with his eyes and said softly. At the beginning, you saved Xiao Ai's life, so Xiao Ai wanted to repay you, so she taught you the method of cultivation, hoping to lead you into the path of demon cultivation, get rid of chaos and ignorance, and live longer. In those days, she was so exhausted physically and mentally, but she didn't dare to give up easily. Why did she have to work so hard? If I can really revive the dead at will, Xiao Ai just needs to watch you play in the mountains. When you die, she will hold you in front of me and let me revive you. Can't you also continue to play in the mountains and be carefree after that? Why must Xiao Ai try her best to teach you the way of immortality? 
Lu Heng said softly, without any criticism in his eyes. However, in front of the wolf god temple, the eyes of the white ape who was kneeling gradually became dull. It understood the meaning of Lu Heng and clearly realized that the monkey in his arms would never open its eyes again. Slightly confused, the white ape lowered his head and stared at the body of the old monkey in his arms. The afterglow of the sunset reflected the monkey's old and tired face. The white ape suddenly found that the body in his arms was so heavy that he almost collapsed. It howled in despair and cried in pain. Kneeling in front of Wolf God Temple, it cowed out heavily to Lu Heng. Chapter, 57 Under the setting sun, the white ape held the cold old monkey's body and left anguished. In front of Wolf God Temple, Lu Heng watched the white ape leave and sighed slightly. Behind him, Xiao Ai hesitated for a moment and whispered, Lord Wolf God. Ha! Huh. Lu Heng looked back at her and saw the little girl's self-reproach on her face. It was my dereliction of duty that made this white ape disturb your cultivation. I should have kicked it out from the beginning. The little girl's extremely sorry self-examination stunned Lu Heng for a moment, and then he laughed loudly. The white ape is your benefactor who saved you. How could you treat it like this? No, no. Lu Heng shook his head and laughed, but after this big change, this white ape should also learn to take heart. In the future, before the wolf god temple, you can be stricter. With that, Lu Heng looked towards the Wind Raiders department camp outside the mountain. There, he could see the blazing fire reddening half the sky. At this time, spring is about to end, and summer is coming. It has been more than five months since the two priests of the Li tribe closed their doors to cast the sword. The foundry of Heavenly Thunder Sword seems to have reached the key point, which Lu Heng in the underground temple can occasionally feel some chi of thunder and anger from the sword furnace outside the mountain. To cast this sword, most of Lu Heng's thunder sands were taken away. Based on such a large number of thunder sands, he expected that they can be cast into the weapons he wants. And when Lu Heng thinks about it carefully, this time his cultivation also lasted for a long time. Since this year, there has been no heavenly thunder cleaving the Hanyu mountain. Although thunderstorms fall every month, there are no more thunders. Although there is no bottleneck in the heavenly thunder cultivation. But the perception of mind cannot be tricked. Perhaps it is also because Lu Heng's foundation of Tao is the heavenly thunder, which is too special. His process of opening the door of heaven is obviously much more difficult than ordinary demon cultivation. When ordinary demons reach this level, they only need enough demon power accumulated in their bodies, and they will naturally evolve. However, Lu Heng has stayed at this stage for nearly half a year. He even realized such a special magic power as the incarnation of the soul in his cultivation, but the knocking of the door of heaven seemed to be far away. Vaguely, he had a vague feeling. It seemed that his opportunity to touch the Great Tao was not in the Hanyu mountain, but outside the mountain. Lu Heng stood silent for a long time in front of the Wolf God Temple. Until the beginning of the moon and the fall of night, he sighed gently and disappeared from the Wolf God Temple. The Heaven Thunder Sword was being cast, and he couldn't leave at this time. What's more, in this mountain, the White Ape still needs to be taught. If the white ape can really devote himself to cultivate because of this great change, Lu Heng should also leave time for Xiao Ai to supervise the white ape's penance. In Lu Heng's heart, he still liked the intelligent white ape. He has an expectation for the white ape. Therefore, after returning to the underground for cultivation, Lu Heng couldn't settle down and distracted himself by observing the situation outside. It was not until he observed that the white ape had really changed that he relaxed and settled down. And after that day, the white ape, which originally liked to play, did have a huge change. It returned to the mountains with the corpse of the old monkey, found the monkeys, gave the body of the old monkey to the monkeys, and then it left. Since then, it has never returned to the mountains to look for other monkeys, completely disconnected from the monkeys. Under the starry night, it came to Wolf God Temple alone and knocked its head several times outside Xiao Ai's door. The kowtow woke Xiao Ai from her deep sleep. The little girl pushed the door open and saw a white ape kneeling in the moonlight with a bruised forehead. Gee! Gee! The white ape shouted loudly. Never before has he been so pious and respectful. 
Xiao Ai naturally didn't embarrass it. In the moonlight, the young girl said to the kneeling white ape, in that case, you can cultivate with me in the future. Don't blame me for being harsh. White ape was extremely happy and wanted to kowtow again, but Xiao Ai stopped him. You can't kneel down under the wolf god's door, Xiao Ai said indifferently, that is, if you enter the wolf god's door, it should be with pride and arrogance. From now on, you are not allowed to kneel down to anyone. Even this world is not worth kneeling down. Only by straightening your waist and strengthening your heart, can you not insult the reputation of wolf god. Xiao Ai's words made the white ape a little confused. He didn't quite understand the meaning of the words. But he nodded hard and remembered these words deeply in his heart. Since then, the white ape has stayed in Wolf God Temple and cultivated with Xiao Ai. The room where the white ape lived before was cleaned again. The white ape has now learned to concentrate and could sit for almost half an hour before his mind began wandering around. While cultivating, Xiao Ai around him naturally supervised it. However, Xiao Ai was no longer as strict as she was at first. Because the white ape understood the importance of cultivating. Even if Xiao Ai didn't say it, he also knew that he should concentrate on it. However, he is still a monkey after all. Even if it tried to restrain itself, it's too difficult. After meditating, Xiao Ai arranged a daily plan for the white ape. Carrying water down the mountain, chopping firewood in the back mountain, cleaning the fallen leaves in front of the court every day, and wiping the dust in the temple these chores were carefully divided into many pieces by Xiao Ai one by one. She asked the white ape to do some chores every time he cultivated for a period of time. Not only let it stop to have a rest when it feels boring, but also let it do these chores to relax. Don't be tired because of idle rest. Since then, the white ape has repeated this life. He cultivated in the mountains with the girl every day. In his spare time of cultivation, he finished the chores assigned to him by Xiao Ai. Such a life has lasted for ten days. The white ape has always been devout and serious. So Xiao Ai went down the mountain on the day of going to the market, went to the market of the Wind Raiders Department and the Shuaxing village, changed cloth, and made two sets of clothes for the white ape. The white ape was very excited to wear human clothes for the first time. It jumped around in the wolf god temple in its new grey robe and cheered loudly. When Qian came to the wolf god temple, she saw a child in grey cloth sweeping the floor in front, and she was immediately startled. Until the white ape turned around, Qian saw the white ape's face and breathed a sigh of relief. I was scared to death. She said, I thought Lord Wolf God had a new disciple. Xiao Ai came out of the temple and explained, since this white ape began to cultivate, I made two sets of clothes for it. But now it seems that it is a monkey dressed in human clothes, and it is a little nondescript. Xiao Ai shook her head and said, maybe he shouldn't wear it. This sentence scared the white ape back quickly and covered his new clothes hard, for fear that the girl would really ask him to take it off. Qian saw the funny appearance of the white ape and burst out laughing. This monkey is getting more and more interesting but Xiao Ai, since you've made clothes for it, why don't you give it a name? Qian suggested, calling it white ape, white ape every day, how unbecoming is that? Give it a powerful name, and it will be more convenient to call it later right? Chapter, 58 Qian's words stunned Xiao Ai. Name She looked at the white ape on the side. The white ape was confused and didn't seem to understand the meaning of name. Xiao Ai thought for a while and shook her head, just call it white ape first. Even if he will have a name, it shouldn't be from me. Next time Lord Wolf God leaves the underground temple, I'll ask Lord Wolf God to give a name to this white ape. Qian couldn't help nodding, it's extremely good, and it's really the most appropriate to be named by the Wolf God. But the Wolf God has been in seclusion for so long, and hasn't left the underground temple yet. Qian asked curiously, Xiao Ai, is the Wolf God studying any rare magical powers? Does its creation still require a long period of cultivation even for the Wolf God? This is something Qian doesn't quite understand. In her opinion, the wolf god has reached the peak of the way of cultivation, why is he still cultivating? This time, however, Lu Heng was closed off for half a year and didn't appear. 
Such long cultivation made Qian very curious, and she wondered whether the wolf god was studying any rare magic powers. The wolf god had an epiphany and subsequently comprehended the terrible magic power of the heavenly thunderclouds, reversing the destructive nature of heaven's punishment to produce rain containing abundant water spirit. Now the wolf god needs to cultivate for so long, he must be studying a very strong power. Xiao A, I just didn't know anything about it, and even if she knew it, she couldn't say it, so she just shook her head. I don't know. Maybe you can ask Lord Wolf God himself when he goes out. Qian smiled, how dare I? Xiao Ai, don't joke around, are you really a fool? What you can say and what can't be said, your sister Qian is still very clear. Well, don't say that, Qian smiled and hugged the indifferent little girl. How was the peach blossom wine made last time? Do you want to take it out and taste it? It's the offering you prepared for the wolf god. In the case it tastes bad, isn't that very disrespectful? Xiao Ai sighed helplessly and said, If you want to drink, don't you have a jar of it yourself? Don't tell me you've already drunk. Air. Xiao Ai was halfway there when she saw the embarrassed and cramped expression of the girl, and was immediately stunned. Have you really finished the jar of wine? Xiao Ai asked in astonishment. Qian looked away with a guilty heart and said, The wine in that jar is originally 300 years old. It's even better after soaking in the peach blossoms of your Hanyu mountain. I just can't control myself. Xiao Ai shook her head wordlessly, I still remember you said that you would leave half a jar of peach blossom wine for priestly Ju. With such good wine, the old priest wouldn't blame you. But now you've drunk it all. Xiao Ai sighed and shook her head constantly. Qian immediately smiled and said, So Xiao Ai, you have to save your sister Qian. Just give me a little bit of your wine, okay? Look at the fire of the sword furnace, Grandpa and Priestly Ju are about to finish their work. When they finish forging the sword and go out, your sister Qian will be dead. Qian begged pitifully, but Xiao Ai was not moved. That jar of peach blossom wine is a sacrifice for Lord Wolf God. Even I dare not touch it, it is impossible to take some for you. You'd better give up. Xiao Ai said, seeing Qian's pitiful appearance, she thought for a while and said again. But I can take you to the peach forest and pick some more peach blossoms you can take it back to make wine and make a jar of peach blossom wine again, so you may not be blamed. Xiao Ai finally gave Qian a way out. Qian also smiled, happily hugged, and constantly rubbed against the little girl, I knew that Xiao Ai was the best. The white ape in grey scratched his head. He didn't understand, so he held the broom and continued sweeping the floor. In front of the temple, there was a temporary silence. Qian picked some more peach flowers and went back happily. In the sword furnace behind the wind raiders department camp, the blazing fire could be seen clearly even in the daytime. The main camp of the wind raiders department had even moved away from its original location to avoid the growing fire of the sword furnace. Because the fire that spread out is not only pure flame, but also contains the aura of thunder, which is so strong that it is frightening. The fire mixed with the aura of thunder rose in the sword furnace, and even the slowly rotating vortex cloud over the main peak of Hanyu Mountain was suppressed. The villagers of Shueisheng village may not know the situation, but every time the people of the Wind Raiders department look at the sword furnace, their eyes are full of eager expectation. For the Li tribe, which is good at metallurgy and iron, it is a lifelong dream and pursuit to be able to forge a peerless magic weapon. Even being able to witness the birth of divine weapons is also an unexpected blessing. Now, the terrifying power in the sword furnace makes all the people of the Wind Raiders Department understand that the things that are about to be born in the sword furnace are by no means ordinary things. And must be peerless magic weapons that can shake the world. Since ancient times, the forging of artifacts has always been about luck. Throughout the ages, there have been countless skilled craftsmen, but few artifacts have been forged. If they can witness the birth of artifacts, for these Li tribe people who are keen on smelting gold and iron, they will have no regrets in this life. But the days flew by, and the fire in the sword furnace became stronger and stronger, but the door of the sword furnace never opened. In the end, the fiery flame in the sword furnace has completely overwhelmed the whirling clouds over the main peak of Hanyu Mountain. 
the terrifying light of the red and blue rotation illuminates half the sky even in the daytime. The five camps of the Wind Raiders Department have all been moved out of Hanyu Mountain and temporarily moved to the nearby Shueishin village. The fire in that mountain is so intense that no creature can bear its extreme environment. Standing outside the Shueishin village and looking around, most of the plants and trees in the Hanyu Mountain are dried up, and there is no sign of anything green, only the bare mountain veins appearing visible to outsiders. As for the crops planted by the Wind Raiders Department in spring, they have long turned into scorched earth. In the sky, the scorching sun was growing hotter day by day, and the heat of summer intensified the fire in the mountain. The alternation of cold and heat caused a gust of wind in the Hanyu Mountain, raising the ashes of vegetation, sand, and dust all over the sky in the bare mountains. When summer recedes and early autumn comes, the environment with great changes in temperature difference between day and night in autumn intensifies the ravages of gales. Even the main peak of Hanyu Mountain, which is far away from the sword furnace, has been affected. The wind roared through the mountains and forests, making the sand fly all over the sky. White Ape and Shao Ai have to clean the inside and outside of Wolf God Temple three times a day in order to barely eliminate dust. Occasionally, when the cleaning is over, Shao Ai would look at the sword furnace outside the mountain. The sky there is an alternating red and blue color. The energy of thunder is turbulent, mixed with violent dust storms, like the destruction of heaven and earth. Even Shao Ai's cold temper can't help feeling a little weak when she sees the dust all over the sky. How long will this sword forging be cast? Chapter 59 On the seventh day of September Hanya Mountain, which has been ravaged by violent dust for nearly half a year, temporarily calmed down on this day. Whether it was inside or outside the mountain, there was no wind. The alternating fire in the sword furnace seemed to be much weaker. Lu Heng's cultivation has lasted for nearly a year. In the underground temple, the huge white wolf demon's eyes were slightly closed and motionless, and there were faint surges of the aura of thunder between breathing and exhaling. The golden soul is suspended in the void, and the wisps of golden lightning wound up, reflecting Lu Heng's soul in uncertain light. For ordinary demon cultivation, the extremely simple open the door of heaven had confused Lu Heng for a long time. In the inner world of visualization, there are pallor and endless clouds. On top of this cloud, there was a huge heavenly gate standing in the clouds, as if it had existed there since the world was born, vaguely emitting a heavy and shocking aura that people dared not ignore. In the sea of clouds, Lu Heng stood with his hands down, silently looking up at the huge door of heaven above. The heavenly thunder in his body has been refined by him again and again becoming transparent and pure. Even the newly created incarnation of the soul is now refined and reshaped with the heavenly thunder. His body can be said to be almost completely cast by the heavenly thunder. Compared to the fragile soul of ordinary cultivators, Lu Heng's soul, which was refined and recast by the heavenly thunder, is strong and abstruse, and he can even resist the enemy's attack with it. However, even when the cultivation reached such a level, the heavy and huge door of heaven was still standing on the other side of the sky and could not be opened. Lu Heng knew what he was missing the last step. However, he could not find the slightest chance he lacked no matter how he cultivated. Today, he was even more frightened and inexplicably felt a little flustered. Lu Heng's eyebrows frowned slightly when he woke up from the cultivation. With his current cultivation, he suddenly had this strange feeling, that something was about to happen. Could it be that Heavenly Thunder Sword is about to be cast? With a thought, Lu Heng's soul incarnation appeared outside the Wolf God Temple. Under the gloomy sky, the previously wooded Hanyu Mountains were now withered and covered with dust. In addition to the main peak and the primitive jungle behind it, Lu Heng saw a scarred mountain terrain. In the direction of the Sword Furnace, the red and blue fires alternated. The fierce fire destroyed everything around and turns the mountains into scorched earth. Fortunately, the paddy fields on the plains outside the mountains are far away from the sword furnace, and the crops planted in the paddy fields have not been greatly affected. The villagers of Shueisheng village don't have to worry about a poor harvest this year. The only unlucky ones are the people of the Wind Raiders Department. All the crops they planted in the mountains during spring plowing have turned into scorched soil, and now they have to reclaim wasteland and sow again outside the mountains. 
Because of the rampant sand and dust in the mountains, Shao Ai and White Ape swept dust and gravel in front of the Wolf God Temple several times a day, and the dust and gravel still could not be completely cleaned. However, today the mountains are inexplicably quiet. The howling wind and dust in the past have also stopped today, and even the sword furnace's fire is much weaker. Lu Hing guessed that maybe Heavenly Thunder Sword is about to be cast. He stood in the open space in front of Wolf God Temple, looking at the direction of the sword furnace outside the mountain. After a long silence, he sighed slightly. Even now, he is still inexplicably jumpy, as if something big is going to happen. In such a state, it is impossible to settle at all. Moreover, after such a long time of cultivation, Lu Hang had no hope of a breakthrough, and he was no longer persistent. Under the dark skylight, the man in white sat down in the small wooden pavilion outside the Wolf God Temple. In his hand, there was a white lightning flash. Ordinary people would fear the heavenly thunder, but now Lu Hang was playing with it and kneading it into different shapes. At one moment, footsteps sounded on the avenue leading up and down, and a white ape dressed in grey cloth came out like a child, carrying a barrel twice its height. The barrel was full of water. When Lu Hang in the pavilion looked at the white ape, the white ape also saw Lu Hang in the roadside wooden pavilion. The white ape was stunned for a moment, and hurriedly put down the barrel, a little flustered. Gee! It hesitated for a moment, not knowing whether to kneel, but finally knelt down towards Lu Hang, gee! The white ape respectfully wanted to salute. However, as soon as it lowered its head, it found that its knees could not bend down. Invisible power limits it and makes it unable to kneel. Lu Hang in the pavilion shook his head and said, Since you entered my door, didn't Xiao Ai tell you not to kneel? The white ape quickly shook his head, Gee. Gee. It hurriedly and loudly explained what the little girl had said to it. After hearing this, Lu Hang couldn't help shaking his head and laughing, Be proud and don't kneel. Ha! This little girl is a little interesting. Looking at the white ape standing respectfully in front of him, Lu Hang asked again, since Xiao Ai told you this, why do you have to kneel after seeing me? The white ape scratched his head and began to gesticulate. Although the little girl told him not to kneel, his first reaction after seeing Lu Hang was to kneel. In the white ape's simple mind, the wolf god is nobler than heaven and earth. Don't kneel to others, but I should kneel to the wolf god. So the white ape hesitated and decided to kneel. Lu Hang sighed after hearing the white ape's excuse, I see. But you remember, since you have entered my door, even I'm not worth your kneeling. With that, Lu Hang looked at the little girl next to the white ape. The girl named Xiao Ai was originally cultivating in the wolf god temple and didn't know that Lu Hang was coming. But the voice of the white ape woke Xiao Ai up. She came immediately and saw the scene of Lu Hang admonishing the white ape. Now she was standing aside, waiting for Lu Hang's orders. Lu Hang looked at her, thought for a moment, and said, People should be proud, but they should not be arrogant. Although the universe and sentient beings are not worth kneeling, they are worth respecting. Don't bully the weak because of your own power, and don't flatter others because of their magnificence. You are you, the life of heaven and earth, so you should respect heaven and earth, respect all beings. If you can do this, you will be my disciple. Lu Hang said with a smile, if you don't kneel down to anyone in the world, it sounds cool, but it's actually a little too arrogant. If you go astray and don't respect anything in the world, you may even break away from the right path and become evil. And such monsters are not worthy of being my disciples. Lu Hang's words were understated, without admonition and blame, but the little girl's face turned slightly pale. She bowed her head respectfully, saluted devoutly, and remembered Lu Hang's words forever in her heart. The white ape on one side was a little confused, and still didn't quite understand the meaning of these words. Just seeing the girl salute, he also knew that what the wolf god said was very important, so he quickly followed Xiao Ai's appearance and saluted respectfully, silently reciting Lu Hang's words. Chapter, 60 Outside the wolf god temple, Lu Hang sat in a small wooden pavilion, quietly looking at the sword furnace outside the mountain. The feeling of hollowness and horror never disappeared in his mind, which created a little uneasy feeling in his heart. After the admonition, the white ape went to the back mountain to chop firewood. 
Xiao Ai was urged back to cultivate by Lu Heng even though the little girl wanted to stand by the wolf god and listen to his orders. However, although Xiao Ai left, she still presented the peach blossom wine she had prepared before leaving. Lord Wolf God, this is Xiao Ai's peach blossom wine soaked in peach blossoms the wine is 300 years old. Xiao Ai offered the carefully brewed peach blossom wine, and her eyes were full of expectation. Although Lu Heng didn't like drinking, he couldn't help but wonder about the taste of the peach blossom wine after smelling the faint fragrance. The peach blossoms in the back of the mountain haven't withered since they bloomed in the middle of winter last year. This is true even as winter is now approaching. The peach blossoms that have been in full bloom for nearly a year have neither withered nor yielded results. Lu Heng was quite surprised by such an abnormal phenomenon, is this peach forest going to be fine? However, after checking, he found that the peach blossom forest didn't show any signs of becoming a demon. It was just because the spirit chi surged, and the roots of underground peach trees absorbed the spirit chi of water all over the mountain. The thundering rain that falls once a month in the mountains, except spirit chi that spills into the air, almost all the spirit chi of water that melts into the soil is sucked away by this peach forest. Seeing the abnormal scene of peach blossoms in the peach forest for nearly a year, Lu Heng couldn't help thinking of the legendary flat peach, which blooms for 3,000 years and bears fruit every 3,000 years. The peach forest in the back mountain will not become a similar spirit tree, will it? Although it is impossible to blossom and bear fruit for thousands of years like flat peaches, the signs of this peach forest now show that it may take a long time for peach trees to bear fruit. Thinking in his heart, Lu Heng, sitting in the pavilion, poured a small cup of peach blossom and savored it. Under the dark sky, Lu Heng had a strange feeling that his body and mind had been baptized at the moment of smelling the faint and elegant fragrance. At that moment, it seemed that the dark mountains also became sunny. Such an extraordinary performance made Lu Heng look down in surprise. Looking at the light red liquor in the glass, he found that the peach blossom wine seemed to be more powerful than he thought. Without hesitation, Lu Heng raised his glass and drank the wine gently. The cool and soft liquor has a light and elegant fragrance, with a soft and delicate touch as it's not as spicy as ordinary wines. Lu Heng closed his eyes and felt it. Subconsciously, he poured another cup. Then there are the third, and fourth cup. When Lu Heng came to his senses, he found that there wasn't any liquor left in the small wine pot. He couldn't help but to laugh. The peach blossom wine gave off an irresistible charm with its magic power. After Lu Heng drank the small pot of beautiful wine, he also clearly understood the real uniqueness of this wine. As a profound cultivator, it was surprising that a wine could improve his cultivation. While compared to mortals, they would simply have their life prolonged. The peach blossom wine carefully brewed by Xiao Ai could already be considered a treasure. He looked back in the direction of Wolf God Temple, where Xiao Ai closed her eyes and was cultivating. Although he only needed to give an order, Xiao Ai would offer the rest of the peach blossom wine, Lu Heng is not an alcoholic, and has never drunk Baijiu Chinese distilled spirits in his previous life. Even if the peach blossom wine was so extraordinary, he didn't have much interest. After putting down the glass, Lu Heng looked out of the mountain again letting his mind slowly drift away. After drinking this peach blossom wine, that intense feeling in his heart started to fade, and he no longer felt depressed. In the direction of the sword furnace outside the mountain, the fire became smaller and smaller, and it was no longer as terrible as before. Lu Heng looked excitingly as the heavenly thunder sword that would truly be forged. The heavenly thunder sword has had him restless. In the afternoon, Hanyu Mountain gradually quieted down. Lu Heng sat in the pavilion and thought randomly. The tranquility in the mountain was broken as a light suddenly cut through the sky. When Lu Heng looked up and saw the figure in the light, Gai Yin also saw the heavenly thunder clouds that enveloped the main peak of Hanyu Mountain in front. Even if it is far away, Gai Yin can clearly feel the power of heavenly thunder clouds. Thinking of Wu Zhu's orders, he didn't dare to delay. He immediately fell from the air and walked into the mountain. Although the Shuaxing village outside Hanyu Mountain is popular, the purpose of his trip is not this remote village. Near the double ninth festival, 
as the chief witch priest of Thousand Needle City, Gai Yin should have waited beside Master Wuzhu and worked for the Vulcan sacrifice in September. But Master Wuzhu gave him a more important task, letting him go to this remote Hanyu mountain to visit the wolf god in the mountain. Since last year, great changes have taken place in Thousand Needle City in this year. Master Wuzhu fought with the old clan with great strategy. Gong Shu Jia, who has always been rebellious and stubborn, suddenly suppressed all the old clans not by force, but by the support of the people. That group of old clans all know that there must be an expert behind him. The whole Thousand Needle City is guessing who is secretly helping Gong Shu Jia, and many old clans are constantly trying to dig out the expert hidden behind Gong Shu Jia. However, as a confidant of Master Wuzhu, Gai Yin knows that the existence that really affects Master Wuzhu is not in the city. He also knew how noble that existence was. Therefore, when he was ordered to visit the wolf god in Hanyu Mountain, Gai Yin was quite nervous. Although Master Wuzhu said that the wolf god in this mountain is an immortal sage, there is no need to worry. But in the face of such a noble existence, Gai Yin is still afraid of being rude. Therefore, before entering the mountain, he fell from the air and walked directly towards the Hanyu mountain on foot. However, after entering the mountain, Gai Yin found that the situation of Hanyu mountain was somewhat abnormal. Except for the deep main peak and the primitive jungle behind the main peak, the surrounding mountains have completely turned into scorched earth, without any green. And not long after walking in, Gai Yin found the sword furnace. At this time, the flames of the sword furnace, which had previously roared loudly enough to shake the earth, had been nearly extinguished. If mortals passed by, they would never associate the existence of this sword furnace with the vision in the mountain. However, Gai Yin is not a mortal. Even if the fire emitted from the sword furnace almost doesn't exist, he is still clearly aware of the extraordinariness of the sword furnace and the terror contained within. After careful observation, he found that the casting style of the sword furnace was quite familiar. This sword furnace seems to have the hallmarks of the Li tribe. Gai Yin was slightly surprised, and it occurred to him that when he entered the mountain before, he did see the tent camp of some tribe near the Shuashing village. It turns out that the tribe gathered outside the mountain is actually the Li tribe. For the legendary Li tribe, Gai Yin had contacted them sixty years ago and knew that their metallurgy was unparalleled in the world. But even the well-informed Gai Yin was shocked by the faint aura of terror emanating from the sword furnace at this time. In this Hanyu mountain, there are people of the Li tribe who forge swords. But to also cause such great damage. Gai Yin subconsciously looked in the direction of the main peak of Hanyu mountain and knew that the sword furnace of the Li tribe must have been approved by the wolf god. But even with such great damage, the wolf god acquiesced. The wolf god in the Hanyu mountain is indeed as broad-minded and divine as Master Wuzhu said. If he was a fierce person, he'd already punished these people of the Li tribe. Thinking of this, the worries in Gai Yin's heart slightly disappeared. He made up his mind, didn't look at the Li tribe's sword furnace anymore, and continued to walk towards the mountain. The purpose of his trip was to visit the wolf god and offer sacrifices. Although the Li tribe sword furnace is extraordinary, it has nothing to do with him. But when Gai Yin arrived at the foot of the main peak and saw the spacious stone stairs in front of him, he was a little confused. This this seems to be different from what Master Wuzhu said. If he remembers correctly, the Hanyu mountain described by Master Wuzhu is just a remote and primitive hill, right? Why are there artificial stairs now? Confused, Gai Yin walked up the stairs directly. Soon, he reached the end of the stone steps and saw the greenstone paved path and the wolf god temple at the end of the path. Although the wolf god temple is made of pure wood and is not as magnificent as the Vulcan temple in Thousand Needle City, it vaguely exudes a majestic atmosphere that cannot be ignored. The statue of the wolf god in Wolf God Temple is far away, but Gai Yin's extraordinary vision can see it clearly. Gai Yin became more and more nervous. The scene in front of him was completely different from what Master Wuzhu said. The low mountain temple is completely invisible is it because he did something wrong? But the wolf god is indeed enshrined in this temple. Or has the place changed in this year? Uneasy, Gai Yin stepped on the path. Not far away, he found a hermit in white sitting in a small pavilion by the roadside. 
When Gai Yin saw the hermit, the hermit in white also looked at him with a smile. Gai Yin was slightly surprised. He didn't realize when the hermit in white appeared. And this person's temperament is ethereal, just sitting there, but he seems to be integrated with this world, which is by no means ordinary. Out of caution, Gai Yin opened his magic eyes and looked at him again to prevent being harmed by evil people. However, as the magic eye saw, the hermit in white was surrounded by thunder and light, with terrible divine power. At a glance, not only could he not see the depth of the other party, but Gai Yin was struggling to breath. It seemed like he suddenly faced terrible lighting, and his heart was shocked. This hermit in white it seems that his whole body is made of the heavenly thunder. Gai Yin immediately guessed the identity of the hermit in white and bowed quickly. Gai Yin, the witch of Thousand Needle City, comes to see Lord Wolf God. Under the dark skylight, Gai Yin's forehead slightly dripped with sweat. At the moment when the magic eye glanced at the Wolf God, the terror and pressure he felt almost broke his heart of Tao. Being able to maintain a calm appearance without losing his temper is the limit of what he can do. No wonder before coming, Master Wuzhu told him not to open his magic eyes in front of the wolf god. It turned out to be such a terrible feeling to peep at the majesty of the gods with mere mortal eyes. Chapter, 61 On the boulevard, Dain bowed and trembled. Lu Heng had a gentle smile. The Wuzhu from Thousand Needle City did Gong Shu Jie send you here. Lu Heng asked. Gai Yin quickly responded, Yes, Master Wu Zhu sent me here. The Double Ninth Festival is approaching. Master Wu Zhu originally wanted to come to Hanyu Mountain to thank the Wolf God in person. But the Fire God sacrifice is imminent, and the old clan in the city is somewhat restless. Master Wu Zhu needs to stay in the city and has no time to leave, so he sent me here to offer a gift to Lord Wolf God. With that, Gai Yin took out the gift he carried with him. It was a yellowed and damaged ancient book, which was ordinary and tattered, without any special characteristics. If you left it on the street, I'm afraid no one would care. However, Gai Yin was extremely respectful and carefully handed the tattered ancient book to Lu Heng, saying, This book is an ancient book. Master Wu Zhu found it inadvertently, but he couldn't read the content of this book. The book was blank. Master Wu Zhu said that the wolf god is knowledgeable and may be able to read this book, so he asked me to send it to you as a token of gratitude. The narration of Gai Yin made Lu Heng understand the cause and effect. But. This gift I don't know what to say. Lu Heng asked curiously, why did he want to thank me? Lu Heng felt that he didn't seem to do anything worthy of Gong Shu Jie's gratitude, had he? Gai Yin smiled and said, the wolf god, don't be modest. It is with your guidance that Master Wu Zhu could suppress the old clan in the city and make it beneficial to the people. The whole city will remember the kindness of the wolf god. The reverence of Gai Yin comes from the heart. Master Wu Zhu is strong in power, but he is withdrawn and rebellious. In the past, he was often manipulated by those old clans who played with politics. However, since he returned from the Hanyu Mountain the last time, Master Wu Zhu's successive measures and reforms have completely suppressed and defeated all the old clans. Before the group of old clans reacted, he already had the upper hand. As Gong Shu Jie's confidant, Gai Yin sincerely respects the wolf god who guided Master Wu Zhu. However, Lu Heng was completely stunned after listening to the reform measures that Gong Shu Jie did after he went back. This Gong Shu Jie really followed his words to carry out a reform, suppress the old clans, and benefit the people. This guy is really. After Lu Heng was silent for a while, he sighed wordlessly, in that case, I'll accept this gift. But the story that he heard last time has a follow-up. You can listen to the story and repeat it to him for me, Lu Heng said. I hope this story I share can enlighten him. Lu Heng's words surprised Gai Yin. Knowing that the wolf god was preaching again, he immediately respectfully stood up and said, The wolf god, I'm listening. In the small wooden pavilion, Lu Heng sighed, as he told the story of Wei Yang's old age. Lu Heng's tone was not fierce, but the content of the story made Gai Yin sweat. After hearing the ending of Wei Yang being dismembered, he was even more frightened and uneasy. Lord Wolf God. After Lu Heng's story, Gai Yin hurriedly said, 
if it's like what you said, will master Wuzhu also. Lu Heng shook his head and said, you don't have to panic. Wei Yang in my story is in a different situation from Gong Shu Jie. Wei Yang, a mortal, will be like a rootless duckweed with nothing to rely on once the general trend falls. But Gong Shu Jie's cultivation base is profound, and he is in a different situation from Wei Yang. Even if he fails in the future, there is no danger of being killed. You just need to tell him the story you heard today and let him learn it in his heart. After a pause, Lu Heng said again, in addition, there is another sentence that you can tell him. Gai Yin saluted hurriedly, the wolf god, please tell me. Lu Heng said with a smile, don't be so generous. I just told a story. As for what the Thousand Needle City can become in the end, it's all your efforts, not mine. You go back and tell Gong Shu Jie that strength is stronger than anything no matter how treacherous the tactics of those old clans are, as long as he remembers this sentence, he will be invincible. Lu Heng smiled and said something, which made Gai Yin stand stunned for a while, and finally made a deep salute, devout and respectful. Gai Yin, on behalf of the Thousand Needle City, thank you for your guidance. Well, well, don't be polite, Lu Heng shook his head. As I said, I'm just sharing a story. I know nothing about state affairs, and I don't know anything about politics. No matter what steps you take in the future, it's the result of your own effort. Don't thank me. Lu Heng's words were not modest, because he really just told some historical stories without giving any guidance. As for the improvements and measures made by Gong Shu Jie, they are all through the effort of Gong Shu Jie himself. Even if Lu Heng is meritorious, he only gave Gong Shu Jie inspiration at most. He doesn't want to be greedy. He left the witch named Gai Yin to chat for a while, and then Gai Yin was about to leave. After hearing the story told by Lu Heng, Gai Yin was extremely anxious. He just wanted to go back to 10,000 Needle City immediately and tell the story he heard today to Master Wuzhu. As for staying here and disturbing the cultivation of wolf god Gai Yin definitely does not dare. Seeing that he was determined to go, Lu Heng said, If so, I won't ask you to stay. But if I let you return with empty hands, it may seem as if I'm too stingy. Lu Heng looked at the wolf god temple and said to the little girl in front of the hall, Xiao Ai, go and get two pots of peach blossom wine. After watching the little girl nod and disappear, Lu Heng smiled and said, There are no rare things in my mountain, but the peach blossom wine tastes good. Now one is given to Gong Shu Jie, and the other to you. The gifts are simple. Please don't laugh at me. Gai Yin hurriedly said, how would I do that? Thank you very much. The wolf god is modest. He doesn't dare be rude. After Xiao Ai took out two pots of peach blossom wine, he smelled the faint and elegant aroma of the wine. Gai Yin understood that the peach blossom wine was not as simple a gift as the wolf god said. It was a completely rare spirit wine. Respectfully accepting the two pots of wine, Gai Yin said goodbye to Lu Heng and went down the mountain. In the pavilion, Lu Heng watched Gai Yin leave, then lowered his head and focused on the light yellow scroll in his hand. This book is very thick, and its material is different from ordinary paper. It is made of leather, but the paper doesn't feel like parchment. After Lu Heng opened it, he saw a blank yellow page without any words. He shook his head helplessly. Sure enough, as he guessed, he could not read this ancient book. Gong Shu Jie didn't know the details of Lu Heng. He thought Lu Heng was an ancient cultivator, so he sent him this book. But Lu Heng knew in his heart that he had been stuck in the first threshold of cultivation, opening the door of heaven for a long time, and he was still a rookie in the way of cultivation. If this ancient book really needs a great magic power to see the content, Lu Heng is obviously not up to the standard. But since it's delivered, Lu Heng will accept it. Maybe he can understand it later. He collected the ancient books and said, It's okay, Xiao Ai, you go back and huh. Lu Heng, who was just halfway through the conversation, suddenly noticed something and looked in the direction of the sword furnace outside the mountain. He saw that the sword furnace, which had been silent for a long time, erupted in a blazing fire that rose straight to the sky. The huge flame light made the heaven and earth pale in comparison. The aura of thunder is terrifying and vast in the sky. Just in a flash, 
the heavenly thunder clouds over Hanyu Mountain surged and were dispersed by a gust of strong chi of fire and lighting. In the Hanyu Mountain, the wind roared and the fire was all over the sky. At this moment, Lu Heng reached the peak of his physical uneasiness. He faced the terrifying fire that reflected heaven and earth and felt the aura of thunder rising in the fire. Even he could not help but feel a shiver at this time. Then heavenly thunder sword is finally forged. But such power is too exaggerated, isn't it? Chapter, 62 Since Lu Heng embarked on his heavenly thunder cultivation, the heavenly thunder, which cultivators fear, has no deterrence to him. Facing the heavenly thunder, he will no longer tremble and feel fear. But today, facing the flame light column that runs through the sky and feeling the aura of thunder rising in the flame, Lu Heng felt a shivering mood after a long absence. His eyes were fixed on the direction of the fire rising, motionless. Lu Heng can't tolerate the horrible aura of thunder, let alone others. In the sword furnace, the two priests sat by the fire with stiff bodies, looking shocked at the sword. In the fire in front of them, there was a sword embryo as red as blood suspended in the flame, emitting crackling thunder and anger, which was the source of this monstrous fire. But even though they are the sword's casters, both of them were breathless and shocked at this time. In order to cast this sword, they spent a lot of effort and rare materials, including Beihai crystal, Shoyan copper, a hundred bird's feathers, dove poison fangs nearly thirty rare materials, regardless of cost. What's more, the cornerstone of casting this sword is the rare thunder sand. The treasured thunder sand in the eyes of ordinary people was refined into slag and only the essence was used by them. Such a luxurious sword casting method is rare in both ancient and modern times. Before the sword was forged, they all had absolute self-confidence and knew that if the heavenly thunder sword was successfully forged, it would be extraordinary. However, when the sword embryo was initially formed and the sword's killing intent poured out, the two people closest to the sword embryo were still greatly impacted. With their current cultivation, they can't resist. The impact of the thunder and fire swept the two Li tribe priests half back. The gloomy and terrifying surge of the aura of thunder made them stiff and afraid to act rashly. They were afraid that under the traction of the air, the heavenly thunder sword would attack them. It was not until a quarter of an hour later that the fire that ran through the sky gradually weakened. And the red sword embryo suspended in the flame slowly restrained the killing intent, that the two priests of the Li tribe breathed a sigh of relief. Li Pe was half burnt and severely injured, but at this time, he laughed happily and enjoyed himself very much. It's done. This sword is done. Once the heavenly thunder sword became a success, he completed the commission of the wolf god and was able to get the desired thunder sand. But the old priest looked serious and said, there's still the last step. Don't take it lightly. Good. Li Pe restrained the smile on his face, took a deep breath, and said, you and I will lead the sword to Hanyu Mountain. The old priest nodded, and both of them worked at the same time. Up. The two kinds of flames in the sword furnace rose instantly, intertwining red and blue. With the flame rising, there were also the two priests of the Li tribe sitting cross-legged in midair, as well as the red sword embryo in the flame. Under the careful envoy of the two priests of the Li tribe, they flew into the Hanyu mountain with the red and blue holy fire and landed in front of the wolf god temple. The heaven thunder sword embryo is finished. At the moment when the old priest fell down from the sky, he said in a loud voice, The wolf god, please show up and sacrifice the sword with blood. In this way, this sword can be forged. In the wooden pavilion, the golden light flashed, and Lu Heng's soul disappeared. At the same time, the sleeping giant white wolf in the underground temple suddenly opened his eyes and stood up. Boom! When the white wolf, who had been sleeping for nearly a year, woke up, the whole Hanyu mountain seemed to be affected, and a dull roar could be heard from underground. After a breath, the huge white wolf appeared in front of the wolf god temple and saw the two priests of the Li tribe sitting cross-legged in midair, holding the flame. Knowing that the time was tight, Lu Heng didn't say anything. He directly opened his mouth to the fire in the void, and a mass of blood containing Lu Heng's chi of heavenly thunder gushed out. At the moment when the blood came out of the body, the two priests withdrew their respective holy flames at the same time. 
The red sword embryo suspended in the flame was instantly sprayed with Lu Heng's blood. Hiss. With a harsh sound, the blood fell on the red sword embryo, causing a burst of white smoke. In the smoke, the golden light surged, and the harsh sound continued, just like a small thunder cloud. It was not until a quarter of an hour later that the white smoke slowly dispersed. What appeared in front of everyone was a dark blue longsword. The sword is three feet long and three inches wide. The body of the sword is densely covered with fine sword patterns, which vaguely seem to contain the aura of thunder. Different from those long swords Lu Heng had seen in his previous life, this sword has a very wide body, which reminds him of the famous sword of Gojian. Seeing this scene, Li Pe, who sat aside to regulate his breath, smiled, finally, the mission has been fulfilled, and the heavenly thunder sword is forged. Old priestly Ju took a deep breath and threw out a blue light. Chang. With a crisp sound, the blue light flew to the heavenly thunder sword falling in the void and turned into a scabbard to store the blade. The old priest explained, the heavenly thunder is terrible, and ordinary gold and iron can't bear it. But this scabbard is made of fusang wood, which is enough to contain thunder's fire and warm the sword spirit. When the sword doesn't come out of the scabbard, it can contain the power of thunder and heaven into the scabbard to warm up. Lu Heng nodded, I see. He looked up at the heavenly thunder sword floating in the air and said, but this sword seems to attract heaven's thunder. Over Hanyu mountain the heavenly thunder clouds dispersed when the heavenly thunder sword fire rose into the sky, revealing the original sky. But now the heavenly thunder sword is completely formed, and heavenly thunder clouds are once again gathered over the originally sunny Hanyu mountain. In the dark clouds of gloom and terror, thunder flashes. The thrilling smell is filled in the Hanyu mountain. However, everyone present was used to the power of thunder at this level. The old priest said, the birth of a rare treasure will definitely lead to the punishment of heaven. But heaven's punishment will never destroy the treasure. The thunder is more like a celebration of heaven and earth. The old priest smiled and said, and this sword is cast with thunder sand as the cornerstone. It is supposed to lead thunder into the sheath and warm the sword spirit with the energy of thunder. I'm afraid it can easily withstand three mere strikes of heaven's punishing thunder. The birth of a rare treasure will lead to different degrees of thunder. If it can lead to heaven's thunder three times, it can be said to be a rare treasure and be called a divine weapon. In the past, the old priest would not say such arrogant words, but now he has this confidence. Because he and Lipa jointly cast this heavenly thunder sword, which is absolutely qualified to attract three heaven's thunders. However, as soon as the old man finished speaking, the heavenly thunder clouds spinning in the air that day changed. Dark red, gloomy and terrifying, slowly emerged from the center of heavenly thunder clouds. Then, the gloomy dark red began to spread outward, and in a flash, the whole dark heavenly thunder clouds were dyed absolute dark red. Under the strange bloody thunder clouds, all the people on Hanyu Mountain were shocked. Lu Heng's heart trembled and he felt great pressure, this heavenly thunder clouds was completely different from what he had known in the past. And the two old priests of the Li tribe were even dumbfounded. Dark red heavenly thunder clouds. Li Pu exclaimed, subconsciously looking at the old priest, but he saw that the old man was equally frightened. The two priests of the Li tribe looked at each other and thought of a power that only existed in a legend. The God slaying heavenly thunder. The old priest murmured, closing his eyes in pain. Although he knew that heavenly thunder sword was extraordinary and could definitely be called a rare godly artifact, he didn't expect it to be extraordinary to this extent. Even heaven and earth can't tolerate its existence, which leads to the legendary God slaying heavenly thunder. His lifelong wish is to forge a legendary weapon. However, as soon as this wish comes true, will the legendary weapon he has painstakingly forged be destroyed by heaven? The ups and downs of life are so cruel. Chapter, 63 In Hanyu Mountain, the wind whimpered and the grass and trees fell low. Over the wolf god temple, the dark red heavenly thunder clouds slowly rotated, and among the heavenly thunder clouds, the terrifying red thunder flashes surged and flickered. Not only did the heavenly thunder clouds turn into a strange shade of red, but even the color of thunder changed that day. Lu Heng's unease that lasted a whole day finally turned into reality at this moment. 
the heavenly thunder clouds over Hanyu Mountain are aimed at destruction. Its appearance is not a celebration. But to destroy this heavenly thunder sword. Lu Heng's foundation of Tao is the heavenly thunder. He can clearly understand the horror of this red heavenly thunder. But this is definitely not something from this world. The God slaying heavenly thunder. Lu Heng stood aside and didn't speak, but Xiao Ai asked anxiously, Grandpa Priest, is the God slaying heavenly thunder very powerful? The old man didn't speak, but Li Pu explained. It is said that there is a punishment that should never appear in the world, which is the legendary God slaying heavenly thunder. Things that shouldn't appear in the world will lead to this kind of punishment. Under the God slaying heavenly thunder, no one can survive, Li Pu explained, with a complex complexion. He knew that the wolf god was divine and the sword had been cast. Even if the heavenly thunder sword was destroyed, the wolf god would certainly give him thunder sand. However, this heavenly thunder sword is the lifelong effort of him and the old priest. The two people put countless treasures they had been searching for in their lives into this heavenly thunder sword. Because they all know that this opportunity to cast the heavenly thunder sword may be the only chance for the two of them to personally cast an artifact in this life. For the Li tribe people who are good at smelting iron, if they can personally cast an artifact, they will be satisfied even if they immediately die afterwards. But he never thought that the heavenly thunder sword, which he and the old priest had worked hard to forge, was so strong that even heaven and earth could not tolerate it. Seeing the dark red heavenly thunder cloud spinning, Li Po was about to see his painstaking work destroyed, his heart was bitter but proud. At this time, the two priests of the Li tribe had given up hope and looked desperate. Lu Hang on the side saw this situation and knew that the situation was indeed desperate. The ordinary thunder is a scourge against evil, and it is not totally irresistible. If there are powerful gods or people with special abilities, there is also hope to escape the disaster. The so-called heaven's punishment also has hidden a trace of vitality. However, the god-slaying heavenly thunder in the sky is full of the breath of annihilation. Although Lu Hang's heavenly thunder was fierce, it is very kind and gentle compared to the dark red heavenly thunder clouds in the sky. He tried to disperse the dark red heavenly thunder clouds in the sky, but the dark red heavenly thunder clouds were not driven by him at all. The energy of the thunder is terrifying, constantly solidifying. In the sky, red thunder flashes and the first thunder is about to fall. Lu Hang looked the old priest aside and asked, How many times do you think the god-slaying heavenly thunder will fall? The old priest subconsciously replied, The same as the heavenly thunder, three at most. After saying that, he realized something and looked stunned, The wolf god, do you want to? Lu Hang smiled and said, I like this sword very much. If it is so easily destroyed by the thunder, I would be heartbroken. I should give it a try, there just might be hope. With that, Lu Hang's soul left the body and appeared in the air. When the man in white appeared under the heavenly thunder clouds, a golden light flashed all over the soul's body, instantly attracting everyone's attention. The two priests of the Li tribe were stunned, this. The incarnation of the soul, Lu Hang said, looking up at the heavenly thunder clouds in the sky, please step back to avoid accidental injury. As Lu Hang said, everyone in front of the wolf god temple withdrew. The white ape shouted in panic and was carried away by Xiao Ai. In front of the wolf god temple, the giant white wolf stood up and looked directly at the red heavenly thunder cloud in midair. On the side of the white wolf, Lu Heng's soul in white smiled. The god slaying heavenly thunder is terrible, but if it only strike down thrice, there may still be hope. After saying that, Lu Heng thought for a moment and saw that above the Hanyu mountain, under the dark red heavenly thunder clouds, there were dark heavenly thunder clouds silently gathering and then rapidly spreading. Dozens of breaths later, a huge and black heavenly thunder cloud flooded the main peak of Hanyu Mountain. It nestled between the dark red heavenly thunder clouds and the heavenly thunder sword. Forking light flickered and flashed through the dark heavenly thunder clouds above. Two completely different kinds of heavenly thunder clouds appear. The terrible aura of thunder surges and connects. The whole Hanyu mountain seems to have stepped into the edge of world destruction, and Lu Heng feels uncomfortable with the fierce and terrible atmosphere. His soul rose directly into the sky and grabbed the dark blue heavenly thunder sword. 
From a distance, a golden light rose to the sky over Hanyu Mountain and pierced into the dark heavenly thunder clouds. The next second, the thunder flashes. In the dark heavenly thunder clouds, Lu Heng's soul completely disappeared, and the only thing that existed was the dark blue heavenly thunder sword. Within the heavenly thunder clouds, the scourge will be surrounded by thunder and lightning flashes, frantically absorbing the heavenly thunder in the heavenly thunder clouds. And over the black heavenly thunder clouds, the dark red terror heavenly thunder clouds has become extremely powerful. Then, a harsh thunder exploded, and the red sky thunder fell from the sky, directly splitting the heavenly thunder sword in the black heavenly thunder clouds. However, Lu Heng's soul appeared at the moment, and the heavenly thunder sword on his side came out of its sheath. In the roaring thunder, a blue light pierced the dark heavenly thunder clouds and soared away. In the face of the god slaying heavenly thunder falling from the sky, Lu Heng didn't dodge, and directly made heavenly thunder sword rush up. The Dark Cyan Heavenly Thunder Sword was surrounded by white thunder. It connected with the dark heavenly thunder clouds below, releasing a blazing thunder that was strong enough to almost illuminate the sky and earth. With a loud noise, two forks of lightning, one white and one red, collided in midair. In an instant, the white heaven's thunder was defeated. The reddish god slaying heavenly thunder directly fell on the Dark Cyan Heavenly Thunder Sword. Clang! With a crisp sound, the dark blue heavenly thunder sword made a crisp sound like disintegration, and the sword's body shook violently. But the sword lines on the sword body flickered, absorbing the red god slaying heavenly thunder crazily. Unexpectedly, this first thunder from heaven was absorbed. Lu Heng breathed a little sigh of relief in the heavenly thunder clouds. The god slaying heavenly thunder is really terrifying. He used a lot of thunder to fight, but it could only reduce its might by 30%. Fortunately, the Heavenly Thunder Sword is special in nature and can accommodate the Heavenly Thunder. After the Dark Red Thunder was dispelled, its power was absorbed by the Heavenly Thunder Sword. However, Lu Heng just breathed a sigh of relief and the change began anew. In the Dark Red Heavenly Thunder Clouds, the second lightning came down. Lu Heng's face instantly became pale. Two god slaying heavenly thunders in a row. Isn't this too much? Without the slightest hesitation, Lu Heng immediately released the red thunder stored in the heavenly thunder sword. In the roar, two dark red thunders collided in the void. Subsequently, the red sky thunder released from the heavenly thunder sword was easily defeated. This first thunder was only roughly absorbed by the sword, and it was not refined at all, so it could not exert its real power. Facing the stronger second god slaying heavenly thunder, it can't resist at all. In the heavenly thunder clouds, Lu Heng clearly felt that the second god slaying heavenly thunder had exceeded the current accommodation limit of the heavenly thunder sword. With a move of thought, Lu Heng's soul flew up directly. He rushed to the fallen god slaying heavenly thunder, and suffered the second thunder with the heavenly thunder sword. Poof! His soul in mid-air suddenly spurted a mouthful of pale golden blood, which quickly became transparent and dim. Even though Lu Heng's soul has been refined and reshaped by the heavenly thunder and can absorb the thunder, he has also been hit hard at this time. He loosened the heavenly thunder sword and returned to the demon body that was on the ground feebly. However, at this time, the dark red heavenly thunder clouds in the sky surged crazily again. The third thunder will fall again. In front of the wolf god temple, the huge white wolf looked up at the third god slaying heavenly thunder that was about to fall, and his eyes were bitter. Three god slaying heavenly thunders in a row the world really hates this sword. Chapter, 64 In front of the wolf god temple, the huge white wolf's eyes looked painful. The dark blue heavenly thunder sword fell from the air and landed in front of Lu Hang. The sword body, covered with sword patterns, flickered with red lightning and crackled. The sword body shook and reached the edge of collapse. Lu Heng's soul at this time was also extremely weak, and suffered the second god slaying heavenly thunder with the heavenly thunder sword. The power of the red heavenly thunder filled his soul and surged madly in his body. The energy of thunder almost tore his body. He also reached the edge of collapse. Barely suppressing those riots in his body is already the limit of what he can do presently. But in the sky above, 
dark red heavenly thunder cloud surge, and the third god-slaying heavenly thunder is about to fall. Outside Hanyu Mountain, the two priests of the Li tribe, who had been far away from the main peak, silently looked in the direction of the wolf god temple and saw the terrifying scene with a complex look on their faces. Lu Heng's terrifying feat of breaking the god slaying heavenly thunder twice has shocked them so much that they don't know what to say. The god slaying heavenly thunder is a legendary divine punishment which doesn't exist in the world. Once it appears, no one can resist it. No matter how strong your power is, you will turn into ashes under the god slaying heavenly thunder. But the wolf god resisted the god slaying heavenly thunder twice. Such a feat is far grander than reversing yin and yang and resurrecting the dead. But the two priests of the Li tribe, Xiao Ai and the white ape on the side saw that the wolf god had reached the limit. He is powerless to resist the third god slaying heavenly thunder which is about to fall. Li Pa slowly closed his eyes and murmured, We can't keep this sword in the end. The old priest looked sad and said nothing. The two priests have devoted half their lives to it. They felt painful at the thought that the heavenly thunder sword would be destroyed. But up to now, the god-slaying heavenly thunder has fallen three times in a row. Unable to change this situation, they have no choice but heartache. Before the wolf god temple, Lu Heng was anxious. Now he and the heavenly thunder sword have reached the limit of collapse, and they can no longer resist the arrival of the third god-slaying heavenly thunder. But if he let the third thunder drop and destroy the heavenly thunder sword? Who? Under the heavenly thunder clouds, the huge white wolf looked up, looked at the red heavenly thunder clouds rotating in the sky, and breathed deeply. He now had a terrible idea, but he didn't know what the consequences there will be if it was implemented, and whether it could be achieved. However, the heavenly thunder sword is so extraordinary that if he watched the sword be destroyed, he would feel reluctant in his heart. If this sword can survive this disaster, it will become an important guarantee for him to settle down in the future. So, under the heavenly thunder clouds, Lu Heng took a deep breath and finally made up his mind. Over Hanyu Mountain, as Lu Heng made up his mind, the dark heavenly thunder clouds slowly dispersed. Under the red heavenly thunder clouds, there is no cover. In the terrifying thunder light flashing, the heavenly thunder sword diagonally inserted in front of the wolf god temple has been locked by the god slaying heavenly thunder. Lu Heng's soul appeared again from the body. But this time the soul was different from the past. Dim, transparent, and faintly emitting a dark red light. Previously, Lu Heng had an epiphany on the truth of life to death, and learned to use his soul to stimulate the heavenly thunder clouds to summon rain. Now, he plans to repeat the old technique and use similar means on the god slaying heavenly thunder. But this divine thunder is different from ordinary disasters. Its destructive power is more absolute and pure, without any vitality. Lu Heng is not sure whether he can succeed. But when things came to an end, he could only try. To be on the safe side, Lu Heng didn't call out his real soul this time, but split half of the power from the original soul. Even if it fails, it will not affect his Numenon. And this dark red soul contains all the power of the god slaying heavenly thunder in Lu Heng's body. Because only this power can hook up the dark red heavenly thunder clouds in the sky. With the appearance of the dark red soul, Lu Heng's huge demon body was almost unstable. Forced to split half of the power of the original soul, he felt the pain of being stabbed by thousands of needles, almost falling into a comatose state. But he endured the unparalleled pain and clawed at consciousness, so that the dark red soul flew into the sky. Outside Hanyu Mountain, people looked from a distance and saw a dark red light rising in front of the wolf god temple. Under the dark sky, the dark red light is so dim and weak. But when the dark red light stabbed into the red heavenly thunder clouds, all the people outside the mountain were stunned. Terrible thunder exploded and appeared in the dark red heavenly thunder clouds. But this time, it was not the god slaying heavenly thunder. That bloody red heavenly thunder clouds were surging. As countless red electric light flashes, it seems that some kind of balance has been broken. Then. Patter, patter. In the mountains, there was a clear sound of rain. The clear sound of rain became louder and denser, and in the end, it had become a torrential rain. The people standing in the rain were stunned. 
The mountains they were in had turned into scorched earth because of the previous sword furnace's fire. However, after the cold rain fell, the Hanya mountains, which originally turned into scorched earth, turned out to be green. Then the green continued to flourish. After a few breaths, the people who had stood in the desolate scorched earth were stunned to find that everything around them had become lush and green. Dense grass stems flourish in the rain. Small tree buds are rapidly growing up in the mountains. In a short time, those newly unearthed tree buds have crossed the growth of trees for decades and become towering giant trees. Originally barren scorched earth, after the rain fell, turned into a dense jungle. The two priests of the Li tribe, who witnessed such a miracle, had a dull expression. They looked at each other and quickly flew up, taking the white ape and the girl to the main peak of Hanyu Mountain. But before the wolf god temple, the wolf god has disappeared. The heavenly thunder sword also disappeared. After they fell, all they heard was the unsteady voice of the wolf god. I need to enter seclusion for a period of time. How much thunder sand do the two priests need? You can find Shao Ai too. With these words, the wolf god's voice disappeared completely. He had started to cultivate in seclusion. In front of the wolf god temple, the two priests of the Li tribe looked at each other and were silent. Li Pe, who searched for thunder sand for half his life, is no longer excited even though he hears that his long cherished wish has been fulfilled. Because they just saw a horrifying miracle that ordinary people can't understand. Chapter 65 This sudden rainfall completely changed Hanyu Mountain's landform. The originally barren and dusty mountains, after the rainstorm, were covered with trees and lush grass, which not only restored the former plants, but made them even more exuberant. But such unrestrained growth didn't last long. A quarter of an hour after the rainstorm, the wild growth trend of trees in the mountains stopped, as if the spirit chi had all been sucked away. And in the back mountain of the wolf god temple, the peach forest surrounded by walls is full of fallen flowers. In the peach blossom forest, which has been blooming for nearly a year, all the peach blossoms withered within a quarter of an hour after the rainstorm. On the green branches, there are faint small green fruits. One night later, when the next morning came, Xiao Ai suddenly found that the fragrance of peach blossoms in the mountains had suddenly disappeared. She rushed to the peach forest and found that all the peach flowers in the peach forest had withered. But on the green branches, there were many small fruits the size of green plums. Seeing this scene, the white ape was very happy, chirping loudly and constantly, thinking that there were peaches to eat. Xiao Ai slapped it on the head and poured a basin of cold water on the excited white ape. They're so small. It will take many years for them to become mature. Xiao Ai said, looking at the sky overhead. Yesterday's rain lasted for three hours. However, after the rainfall, the reddish heavenly thunder clouds disappeared. Now, over Hanyu Mountain, there is a long-lost blue sky. The sudden change in the peach forest must be due to yesterday's rainfall, which brought water vitality. But even such a rainfall only makes the peach blossom wither and bear these small fruits. It will take a long time to wait for these fruits to mature by themselves. However, compared with these green peaches in the peach forest, Xiao Ai is more concerned about the situation of Lord Wolf God at this time. Having witnessed yesterday's divine thunder, and knowing the horror of this god slaying heavenly thunder from the two priests of the Li tribe, Xiao Ai was worried. But now she can do nothing except worrying. The weakness of her own strength made the little girl more determined to devote herself to cultivating harder. She wants to have the ability to take charge of her own affairs, instead of hiding behind the wolf god every time something happens. As for the two priests of the Li tribe, they left yesterday. Li Pe took the required thunder sand from Xiao Ai and dragged his half-disabled body away. Although he didn't take away too much, nearly 70% of the thunder sand was lost when casting the heavenly thunder sword. Now Li Pe has taken away part of what remained, and Xiao Ai has little left of thunder sand. The old priest Li Ju returned to the camp to recuperate. From the moment the embryo of the sword in the furnace was first formed, the two priests were fully immersed in the control of the fire, without the slightest distraction to resist the killing intent emanating from the sword. So after the fire broke out, both of them were hurt by the fire, and they needed to rest for a long time to recover. 
although the old priest wanted Li Pe to stay in the Wind Raiders department for recuperation. But Li Pe, who got thunder sand, was so anxious that he didn't want to delay for a moment. Rejecting the old man's kindness, he dragged his half-disabled body and quickly disappeared in the sight of the public, and immediately returned to the Great Sea Department to make preliminary preparations. Hanya Mountain, which turned into scorched earth due to the rampant sword furnace's fire, has finally restored its former tranquility and greenness. The people of the Wind Raiders Department once again moved the camp back to the mountains and reclaimed the wasteland. But the weather is getting colder and colder, and the midwinter is approaching, so the cultivated wasteland can only be sown tomorrow. Fortunately, the grain reserves in previous years were enough, and they exchanged some rice grains from the Shueishing village. The Wind Raiders Department didn't worry about running out of grain. What's more, there are beasts entrenched in the depths of Hanyu Mountain, and there is a large lake through Hanyu Mountain, in which fish are plump. The mountain is a treacherous obstacle for ordinary people seeking to reach the Great Lake. However, everyone in the Wind Raiders Department is very strong. The mountains and dense forests can't stop their pace at all, and they are not afraid of the beasts in the mountains. They often sent a fishing team to the Great Lake behind the mountain, and it would take them half a day to go back and forth. Outside Hanyu Mountain, the villagers of Shueishing Village are confused about what happened in the mountain. They didn't know about the god slaying heavenly thunder, but they saw the terrible scene of red thunder and the subsequent heavy rain, which made the whole Hanyu Mountain green again after raining. The villagers thought that the red heavenly thunder clouds were the divine power of the wolf god, so they didn't take this matter to heart. Later, on the double ninth festival, the Shueishing village held a grand sacrifice again, and as usual, the villagers came to the bend at the foot of the main peak to hold a sacrifice. However, many people from the Wind Raiders Department also attended the ceremony this year. A temporary market was built at the bend of the river, which was very lively. Xiao Ai, like last year, presided over this sacrifice. But until the end of the sacrifice, the wolf god didn't appear. The anxiety in her heart went up to a higher level. After the double ninth festival, the weather is getting colder and colder, and the little girl has been unable to cultivate for several days. She sat on the bluestone stairs, holding her cheeks in her hands, staring at the green hill in the distance, her eyes full of worry. The restless state made her unable to settle down. In the underground temple, Lu Hun was slowly repairing the damage to his soul. He suffered the god slaying heavenly thunder with heavenly thunder sword. Although it was very damaging to him, it made him see another possibility that he never thought of before. Although now he can only command ordinary thunder. But the power of the god slaying heavenly thunder is forever imprinted in his soul. Like a seed that has not yet sprouted, although it is silent, it may one day bloom an extraordinary future. In the quiet underground temple, the huge white wolf lay down and slept with his eyes closed. Lu Heng's translucent soul was suspended in the void in front of the white wolf. Between his soul and demon body, there is a faint golden breath flowing. But now there is a dark blue sword associated with this soul. In the dark yellow spirit chi of the earth, the heavenly thunder sword, who had survived the god slaying heavenly thunder, floated quietly, without killing intent. The simple and calm appearance looked without the slightest ferocity. The scabbard completely restrained all the sword's strong killing auras. The god slaying heavenly thunder in the sheath has completely disappeared now. Even Lu Heng can't find a trace, which seems to have disappeared in this heavenly thunder sword. But Lu Heng knew that the situation is not that simple. When he eased the injury in his soul a little, his soul in the underground temple directly opened his eyes and flew out of the ground with the sword. A golden light broke through the ground in front of the wolf god temple and went up into the sky. The clear sky over the wolf god temple quickly gathered clouds. In the end, those clouds gathered from all directions directly turned into dark heavenly thunder clouds, rotating slowly over the wolf god temple, like a cold eye of God, silently staring at the earth below. This long lost heavenly thunder clouds appeared, once again obscuring the sky above the main peak. The little girl and the white ape had long been startled by the changes in the sky. Both she and the white ape looked up and saw a human figure faintly below the heavenly thunder clouds. Then came the deafening thunder. For more than a year, the main peak of Hanyu Mountain, which has not fallen any thunder, 
has suffered seven blazing lightning bolts in a row. In the shocked gaze of Shao Ai and the White Ape, all the seven lightning bolts were absorbed by the heavenly thunder sword suspended in the void. But as the flickering lightning bolts were slowly sucked into the scabbard, even the fierce heavenly power gradually disappeared. Lu Hang below the heavenly thunder clouds lowered his head and saw Shao Ai in front of the wolf god temple. He also saw the worry and joy in the little girl's eyes. He smiled slightly, didn't say anything, and directly returned to the ground with heavenly thunder sword. Next, he will go to test his guess. As for Shao Ai, after seeing his appearance, the little girl should put down her worries. Chapter, 66 Within the underground temple, Lu Hang's soul sat cross-legged in the void. In front of him, the dark blue heavenly thunder sword was silently suspended. Lu Hang has been guarding this sword for seven days after seven lighting bolts have been drawn into the sheath. The ancient wooden scabbard is as warm as jade, and there is no hint of a killing aura. But what is more peculiar is that the seven heavenly lighting bolts absorbed into the scabbard also disappeared. This disappearance is not just the disappearance of external breath, because even if Lu Hing feels deeply, he cannot find the existence of heavenly thunder in the heavenly thunder sword. On the contrary, he sensed a trace of terror similar to the god slaying heavenly thunder. Lu Hing smiled helplessly. Unexpectedly, it turned out to be like this. Originally, what he wanted to forge was a self-defense weapon that could contain the heavenly thunder inside it, and lead the thunder in the sword out to kill enemies when it's necessary. The two priests of the Li tribe also built heavenly thunder sword according to this plan. But even the two priests who cast this sword didn't imagine that this heavenly thunder sword has undergone a qualitative change after being hit by the god-slaying heavenly thunder. The seven heavenly lighting bolts that were absorbed by the sword body directly disappeared without a trace. Lu Hang could not use them at all. Lu Hang would have thought that the heavenly thunder sword was broken if he hadn't felt a trace of terror belonging to the god-slaying heavenly thunder brewing slowly inside it. He tried to control the trace of the god-slaying heavenly thunder in the sword, and found that the god-slaying heavenly thunder in the sword was weak, but it was slowly increasing. Probably after a period of time, he can use it to kill. But the sword could only release one hit. Lu Hang was in a mixed mood when he realized this. He doesn't know whether to laugh happily or shake his head with a wry smile. After the original Heavenly Thunder Sword drew the thunder into the sheath, he only needed to wait for a period of time, and then he could kill the enemy at will by controlling the seven lightning bolts in the sword. But now the seven lightning bolts have turned into one. Although the power is more terrifying, it could only be released once. Once using it, he has to draw thunder into the sheath again and wait for another long period. Lu Hang doesn't know whether he has made a profit or lost. The only thing he can be sure of is that Heavenly Thunder Sword can't get out of its sheath at will in the future. If he wastes the god slaying Heavenly Thunder at will, he will be unable to resist when he really encounters a strong enemy. Lu Hang sighed. The sudden arrival of the god slaying Heavenly Thunder didn't break the Heavenly Thunder Sword, but it changed the body of the sword, enhanced the power of the sword, and increased the restrictions at the same time. Perhaps, this is also an alternative kind of punishment. To limit Lu Heng's abuse of the power of heavenly thunder. Lu Heng shook his head helplessly. Having confirmed the change of heavenly thunder sword, Lu Heng has no choice but to accept the reality no matter how many thoughts he has in mind. Next, he needs to focus on cultivating his soul. The previously split soul caused great losses to Lu Heng. Today, he needs to spend a long time concentrating on calming down and cultivating his soul. When his soul is completely repaired, he can try open the door of heaven again. Although in the inner vision world, the huge gate of heaven still stands in the clouds and is difficult to shake. But after finding the slowly growing trace of the god slaying heavenly thunder in the scabbard, Lu Hang had an idea. The gate of heaven is so heavy and difficult to open. Maybe he can try to break through with violence. But he has to wait until he fixes his soul. In the underground temple, Lu Hang entered the state of cultivation again. However, the atmosphere of Thousand Needle City, with cold wind and gloomy sky, is tense now. After many days, Gai Yi finally returned to the familiar city from Hanyu Mountain. Now it is approaching the beginning of winter, 
and the weather is getting colder and colder. Although there was no heavy snow, the residents in the city were much better dressed. On the East Sea not far from the city, the tide surged, bringing a cold sea breeze. Gaiin didn't stop after returning to the city, and even didn't go back to his house, so he went directly to the fire god temple in the city. Through the heavy guards, he finally saw the Wuzhu. In the bleak autumn wind, Gong Shu Jie sat by the window, looking at the autumn leaves outside the window, thinking about something. He didn't notice that the bamboo slips in his hands were reversed. Until Gai Yin called twice, Gong Shu Jie came back to his senses and saw this confidant subordinate. Oh, Gai Yin, Gong Shu Jie stood up from the table and said with a smile, I was thinking that you should almost come back on time. I didn't expect you to come how about? Is there anything you want to report? Gai Yin didn't dare to delay, and immediately told the story of his trip to Hanyu Mountain, meeting the wolf god, and hearing from the wolf god. After saying that, he took out a pot of wine and said, this is the wine sent by the wolf god to the master. Gong Shu Jie took it in an absent-minded way, but his thoughts were not on this pot of wine. The story brought by Gai Yin also brought him a great shock. Strength is stronger than anything. Gong Shu Jie mumbled and repeated such words. After thinking for a while, he slowly shook his head. The wolf god is telling me not to act too hastily. Indeed, I'm a little impatient recently, and I should slow down a little. The atmosphere in the city was so solemn that he naturally knew the reason behind it. However, the wolf god's advice brought by Gai Yin made him see the hope of breaking the game again. Strength is stronger than anything strength is stronger than anything ah. Gong Shu Jie repeated this sentence and couldn't help smiling, indeed, as the wolf god said, as long as the strength is strong enough, I don't need to mind those tricks. The old clan, the old clan ah, if they really make a big deal, it saves my time. If you don't have a strong heart, you won't achieve great things this is what the wolf god wants to tell me. I was too indecisive before. Gong Shu Jie said, smilied happily, relieved his worries, and relaxed a lot. He lowered his head, looked at the pot of wine in his hand, and said, since this wine is given by the wolf god, it must be very delicious let me try it. Saying this, Gong Shu Jie opened the stopper of the wine pot, and in an instant, a faint and elegant fragrance of wine swirled around the room. Gong Shu Jie's eyes lit up and he was surprised, this pot of spirit wine. It's really the best in the world tut tut, good wine, good wine. The surprise laughter suddenly sounded outside the door, making the two people in the room look back at the same time. A slender figure stood in the courtyard at some time in the bleak autumn wind. The person's long red hair was tied at the back of her head and hung down at will, simple and casual. Although her clothes are made of top-level velvet feather, the style is very simple. Even the baggy clothes looked a little sloppy. When Gong Shu Jia and Gai Yin looked at the suddenly appearing woman, the other party was also looking at them and smiled. She carried a wine pot in her hand and was shrouded by a faint smell of wine, just like an alcoholic. A fiery red snake, wrapped around her right arm, silently stared at the two. Compared with this sloppy and lazy woman, the snake in her hand looked elegant. But in the face of this slovenly and lazy woman, both Gong Shu Jie and Gai Yin were slightly surprised and dared not be rude at all. Gai Yin quickly bowed and said, Your Majesty. Gong Shu Jie quietly hid the peach blossom wine behind him, and then smiled, Welcome, Your Majesty. I didn't know of your arrival, please forgive me. TSK the red-haired woman sneered disdainfully, and shook her head when she saw Gong Shu Jie's little act of hiding wine. Gong Shu Jie, you are so dishonest. How can you not share such good wine? Do you want to drink it alone? Gong Shu Jie coughed and said, Your Majesty, you came all the way from the capital. There must be something important. I won't drink this wine today. I'll arrange the kitchen to make a banquet for you. The red-haired woman sneered again, since you got the guidance of the wolf god, you have become more and more slippery I don't need you to prepare the banquet, I'm not free. This time I came to Thousand Needle City because I'm too bored, so I come to have a look. You made a great deal of trouble in Thousand Needle City, which made those old men cry every day to me, so annoying. If you are really so cruel, just cut down those annoying old guys directly, so that they won't bother me. 
When the red-haired woman said such words half seriously and half jokingly, Gai Yin suddenly sweated on his forehead and felt a little nervous. Gong Shu Jia frowned slightly, but there was not much expression change. Facing the red-haired woman in front of him, his attitude was still respectful, don't joke, your majesty. What Gong Shu Jie did in Ten Thousand Needle City is moral and has absolutely no selfishness. If you have orders, you can speak frankly, and I will obey. Gong Shu Jie's attitude was not fake, but the red-haired woman still disdained it. Come on, come on, don't give me this trick. I'm not here to trouble you this time. I've been staying in Ten Thousand Needle City for half a month, and I've almost understood what you're doing. You did a good job, and I support you. As for whether you will be dismembered like that Wei Yang in the story haha you'd better pray for more luck. The red-haired woman said, but if you can manage the Thousand Needle City well, the reform you implemented in the Thousand Needle City may be promoted in the entire country in the future. I'll come to you then, and you can't refuse. When saying this, the red-haired woman's expression was serious. Gong Shu Jia was silent for a while, and gave a deep salute, this Gong Shu Jia will never refuse a righteous cause. Well, it's enough to have your word, said the woman in red with a smile again. With your promise, even if I can't drink the spirit wine, I'm satisfied. With that, the woman in red walked out laughing. Came suddenly, and left suddenly. Gong Shu Jia hurriedly said, Your Majesty, why don't you stay for a few days and let me personally introduce the city to you? You can also have an in-depth understanding of the reform. But the red-haired woman just waved her hand and said without looking back, Will I be able to drink the spirit wine if I stay here? If not, I'd better leave. You can do whatever you have to do. Don't worry about me. I won't chop off your head in the middle of the night. As the voice fell, the woman disappeared from their vision. With the cultivation bases of Gong Shu Jia and Gai Yin, they couldn't see how she left and disappeared. For this woman, the heavily guarded fire god temple is nothing. In the cold wind, Gong Shu Jia sighed and said, Her Majesty's cultivation base has become more refined. Chapter 67 After the double ninth festival, the weather was getting colder and colder. Hanya Mountain has restored its former tranquility. The scenery of green mountains and blue waters makes people feel comfortable. At the same time, there is no more violent dust, which means that there is no need to clean up several times a day. This allowed Xiao Ai and the white ape to spend more time cultivating. Today's white ape has gradually become accustomed to the days of cultivation in the mountains. Even if Xiao Ai didn't supervise it, it would cultivate for a long time. Although he still enjoyed playing, he has more self-control than before, and can slightly restrain his playful nature. Xiao Ai was quite satisfied with this, so she gave the monkey more opportunities to experience new things. Outside Hanyu Mountain, the markets of Wind Raiders Department and the Shueisheng Village were still held every six days. Before, Xiao Ai went to the market in person to exchange for living supplies, but now she handed the job to the white ape. So on the day of going to the market, before dawn every time, the white ape had already got up. The white ape obediently completed the daily chores and homework. When these chores and homework were finished, it was almost noon. After lunch and Xiao Ai's approval, the white ape went down the mountain happily. The noisy market was different from the scenery in the mountains. The white ape crawled around in the market and was very excited, chirping happily. After several times, the white ape became familiar with everyone. Every time, he'd play in the market for a long time. Only when the sunset goes down, the white ape would return to the mountains. Xiao Ai didn't interfere with this apparent laziness, and even condoned it deliberately. So the white ape had a better time every time he went down the mountain. But the happy days were short. With the arrival of winter, the mountains gradually began to snow heavily. The market outside the mountain also stopped because of the cold weather. The white ape, who could no longer go down to the market, often sat alone in front of the wolf god temple and sigh, missing the excitement of the market. Until one day, it heard Xiao Ai inadvertently mention that demons can become humans and enter the world after their cultivation. And the colorful world outside is much more lively than in the remote market. There are hundreds of thousands of people living in the big city, 
the human food that can't be seen in Hanyu Mountain, all kinds of interesting acrobatic performances, and a large market that sells everything. Chimeras whose tears will turn into pearls, winged feathered people, three-headed people, corpse people who only eat blood. Giants who are more than ten feet tall, small people the size of a palm the girl told the white ape the legends she heard from the elders in the village. Hearing the stories, the white ape couldn't help but stare. For the white ape who has been living in Hanyu Mountain, the human market at the foot of the mountain is already an unimaginable lively thing. But outside this Hanyu Mountain, in that vast world, there are so many strange things. Those bizarre legends are full of attraction to this monkey who first understands the prosperity of the world. After listening to the girl's story, it was so excited as if there were ten thousand ants crawling in its heart. He wanted to fly out of the mountain to see the strange and vast world. But the little girl also told it that the world outside was full of monsters and beasts. If a monkey like itself leaves this Hanyu mountain, even a random tiger can eat it. The white ape, who knew his strength was weak, couldn't help sighing and began to be distressed. Why was he so weak? The next day, Xiao Ai took the white ape into the depths of the primitive jungle behind the mountain and visited several beasts raging in the jungle. The beasts that once made the white ape afraid were now easily knocked down by the little girl. This disparity of power made the white ape very excited. It finally clearly realized the importance of cultivation. It turns out that cultivation can not only let him live longer, but can also make him become powerful. If it can be as powerful as Xiao Ai, can't it go down the mountain to play? Go and see those strange and interesting things. Thinking of such a future, the white ape was happy and excited. Since then, the white ape has become more and more serious in cultivation. It cultivated even harder than Xiao Ai. Xiao Ai was very satisfied with this change and began to teach the white ape literacy in addition to cultivation. When she was young, her mother taught her to read and write, but now she teaches the monkey to read and write. Many times, Xiao Ai would inadvertently think of her mother who has died of illness and her father who has been missing for many years. The time when her parents were around was the most carefree time in her life. Although up to now, her memory of her father's appearance has been blurred. But the carefree joy of childhood remained in her heart. When she thought about it occasionally, she felt warm in her heart. But now she also has her own happiness. Being able to stay in front of this wolf god temple, and worship the wolf god all her life is the greatest happiness for the little girl now. The days in the mountains pass day by day. The weather in the mountains is getting colder and colder. Soon, it was the most important and lively New Year's Eve of the year. The outside of Hanyu Mountain is bustling, and the Wind Raiders Department once again reflects the night sky bright with their fireworks. The sound of fire exploding in the night sky spread far away in the mountains. With the experience of last year, Xiao Ai prepared the New Year's Eve dinner quite neatly. She was no longer in a hurry like last year, and she didn't eat cold dishes this year. The white ape is quite happy about this. After dinner, it is a quiet time to watch the New Year. The little girl and the white ape sat in the wolf god temple, lit all the candles in the temple, crossed their knees, closed their eyes in a candlelight, and started meditation. But this time, Xiao Ai was unusually distracted. In the flickering light of yellow candles in the wolf god temple, the girl opened her eyes from time to time and looked out of the door. The cold moonlight fell silently in front of the wolf god temple. But in the moonlight, no man in white appeared with a smile and said to her, I come to see you. The quiet and lonely New Year's Eve passed silently. Until dawn, the candles in the wolf god temple had been burned out, and the rooster in the cage began to crow, announcing the arrival of the new year. In front of the wolf god temple, there was no man in white. In front of the huge statue of wolf god, the little girl silently lowered her head. In her heart, she felt a little disappointed. The wolf god, do you remember that Xiao Ai has been in the mountains for a year? Chapter, 68 After New Year's Eve, the weather in the mountains gradually warmed up. After the melting of the ice and snow, and the sun getting warmer and warmer, the villagers have begun to prepare for the spring plowing in the new year. Such simple life is repeated every year, but no one was bored. 
For the villagers, it was the happiest thing to be able to plant seedlings on time every year and harvest rice in autumn without disease or disaster. In Hanyu Mountain, Xiao Ai was 12 years old. But her figure was the same as when Lu Heng saved her, and she didn't grow tall. In this regard, Qian speculated, it may be the effect of wolf god's reshaping of your body, which temporarily sets your age at 10 years old. Maybe you can reshape your body again in the future after your cultivation base is stronger. After listening to this analysis, Xiao Ai nodded. Neither of them took this matter to heart. For Xiao Ai, it's not inconvenient to temporarily set her figure at the age of 10. She could do what adults can do. Although Qian's appearance is only about 16 years old, her real age has long exceeded this figure, and she doesn't think it's wrong to temporarily set the figure at 10 years old. She's even envious. If her appearance could be set at about 10 years old at that time, she would be able to play freely and cheat with the identity of a little girl, which would be more fun. In the underground temple, after months of cultivating, Lu Heng finally repaired the worn-out soul completely and opened his eyes again. Even in the process of cultivation, he could feel the passage of time. It was the double ninth festival before he started cultivating. Now he wakes up again, it has come to March 20th next year. The rainy weather begins to increase at this time. The main peak of Hanyu Mountain covered by heavenly thunder clouds also happened to have a shower today. The cold rain, containing abundant water-type spirit qi, fell into the mountains. However, as always, in addition to spirit qi, which spilled into the air, those water-type spirit qi has been absorbed by the peach forest in the back mountain before other plants absorb it. In the peach forest, the peach fruit is green and astringent. Last year, the heavy rain formed by the god slaying heavenly thunder made the peach trees in the peach forest bear fruit. But now more than a few months have passed, and the peach fruits on the green branch are still green and small. As Xiao Ai said, there is still a long way to go before maturity. In front of the wolf god temple, Xiao Ai closed her eyes with her knees crossed and went into meditation. At the foot of the mountain, the white ape with huge barrels on his back ran lightly on the stone steps, as if he would not feel tired. Spirit Qi, which is more and more abundant in the mountains, makes the white ape's cultivation speed faster than any ordinary demon. If the original wolf demon saw this, he would be jealous and crazy too. Thinking of this, Lu Heng couldn't help laughing. The situation in the mountain was as quiet as ever, so he put down his heart and began to prepare for a breakthrough. Before, although he had had the idea of opening the door of heaven, his soul was damaged and could not be tried at that time. Now he could give it a try. Lu Heng's mind moved, and his consciousness sank into a vast sea of white clouds without delay. Above the sea of clouds, a huge heavenly gate stands in the clouds. No matter how many times Lu Heng watches it, he thinks the gate is too grand. But this time, he may not have to look at the door and sigh. Above the sea of clouds, from Lu Heng's side silently emerged a wisp of dark red aura. With the appearance of this dark red aura, the originally vast and calm sea of clouds surged violently in vain. The cold wind roared in the sea of clouds. The blue sky quickly became gloomy. Although there is only a trace of the smell of the god slaying heavenly thunder, it still turned the whole world of the clouds upside down. This is the last strand of the god slaying heavenly thunder left in Lu Heng's soul. Although it's extremely weak, it is still a god slaying heavenly thunder after all. Moreover, the world of clouds is closely related to Lu Heng's soul, and he dares not use too violent means. So this trace of God slaying heavenly thunder is enough. Lu Heng's figure rose in the wind. The golden lightning light shines around him. Lu Heng raised his finger like a sword and directly pointed to the huge gate above the clouds. He shouted. Go! The dark red aura instantly turned into a blood red lighting, which cut through the sky and hit the huge gate above the clouds. A deafening bang sounded at the moment when the god-slaying heavenly thunder hit the gate of heaven. Previously, no matter how hard Lu Heng tried, he couldn't shake the heavy gate. Under the blow of the god-slaying heavenly thunder, it unexpectedly had a crack on it. The aura of thunder suddenly poured out of the gate, and then the gate closed again. On the sea of clouds, Lu Heng was rushed by the aura of thunder, and he only felt a buzz in his mind. 
the surrounding heaven and earth quickly fade away in the field of vision. The dark world, after a long time, gradually became clear. In a trance, Lu Hang saw a strange but familiar fuzzy picture. A low mountain temple built on a desolate mountain, a huge white wolf standing in front of the temple, and a pale, coughing sick man. In Lu Hang's blurred vision, he saw the sick man arched his hands at the huge white wolf with a weak smile. Brother Wolf, the mountain temple has been built for you. From now on, you can get rid of the evil road and go the right way. Although there are few incenses in the mountains, if you concentrate on hard cultivation, you will be able to achieve something in the future. The sick man's smile was weak, but his words were sincere. The huge white wolf looked down at him and asked in a deep voice. If I succeed in the future, how can I repay you? The moment this question was asked, somehow, Lu Hang's heart suddenly understood something. The sick man in front of the temple on the mountain smiled, shook his head, and said, Brother Wolf, you saved me from the mouth of the tiger, which is a great favor. I, Wu Chonggu, dare not ask for repayment. The white wolf looked down at him, very serious, cause and effect have been formed. If I don't repay you, my way will be blocked, and I will not be able to achieve Tao in the future. The white wolf's attitude was firm and his words were solemn. After the sick man was silent for a while, he smiled bitterly. As Brother Wolf can see, I'm terminally ill and I'm dying soon. I'm afraid I can't wait for you to repay me. But if you insist well, I'm from Fushan, and I have a family. Brother Wolf, if you can achieve something in the future, I hope you can take care of my descendants this is the only requirement I can think of. Good. The huge white wolf nodded heavily and his eyes were serious, if I achieve, Tao, in the future, I will let your descendants be rich all their lives. The vague and strange picture quickly faded in Lu Heng's vision. In the quiet underground temple, the huge white wolf slowly opened his eyes. The pale golden soul integrated into his body. The long sword floated up and down in the empty air. Looking at such a scene, Lu Heng was silent for a while, and finally sighed slowly. Seeing the wolf demon's vague memory, he finally understood why he had been unable to break through. Cause and effect are already formed. If he can't complete the agreement, he can't go any step forward in cultivation. Thinking of this, Lu Heng couldn't help looking out of the mountain. Maybe it's time to go down the mountain and walk around the world. Chapter 69 The news that the wolf god was going down the mountain soon reached the ears of the old priest of the Wind Raiders Department. Hearing the news, the old man who had just recovered from his serious injury immediately took Qian to the mountain to pay a visit. When the two arrived, Xiao Ai was packing before the wolf god temple. That dark blue heavenly thunder sword is now carried behind Xiao Ai. The little girl is standing in front of the wolf god temple, telling the white ape something. Lu Heng sat in the wooden pavilion, watching Xiao Ai and the white ape. The little girl's nagging appearance made Lu Heng want to laugh. The girl is small, but her serious expression is more and more like a housekeeper. After I leave, you should remember to clean every three days. Don't let the dust accumulate. Go to the peach forest to check every day. Don't let the peaches be stolen. Practice well. Don't go too far away from Hanyu Mountain. The weeds at the back of the mountain should be eradicated. If autumn comes and we haven't come back, you should remember to collect the yellow rice in the field. Remember to wash your clothes yourself, don't always wear these dirty clothes. Remember to wear more clothes after it's cold. Don't get sick. The elders in the village can only cure people, not monkeys. If you are sick, I and Lord Wolf God are not here, and no one can save you. If a guest comes to visit Lord Wolf God, be polite. One by one, the little girl told almost all the matters needing attention. Lu Hung was skeptical about whether or not the white ape can remember so many things. However, the little girl was so serious and the white ape nodded repeatedly, it at least seemed to be listening. Seeing the arrival of the Li tribe's two people, Lu Hung stood up with a smile. I was going to go to the Wind Raiders department, but I didn't expect you to come first please sit down, please. After welcoming the old priest into the wooden pavilion, Lu Heng said, I have learned something about my cultivation recently. And I have seen an opportunity to make a breakthrough, 
so I decided to travel down the mountain and look for that opportunity. After I leave, please take care of the white ape in the mountain. As soon as the old priest sat down, he heard Lu Hang's words, and his heart was stunned. He originally thought that the wolf god was just bored and wanted to play around. So it's not like this. This feeling about to break through. The old priest looked at the wolf god again. Using his magic eye, he couldn't see the depth of the wolf god's cultivation base as usual. As the magic eyes opened, Lu Hang's fiery power of thunder surged around him like a pale sun, shaking the old man's eyes. If his cultivation base is a little poorer, his heart will break on the spot. Closing his magic eyes, the old man sighed silently, his thoughts were myriad. The way of cultivation is like sailing against the current. If you don't advance, you will relapse. But the wolf god is already so strong, and he can still have a breakthrough. The old man who has not made adequate progress for hundreds of years can't help but feel complicated. He said, Wolf God, don't worry. With my Wind Raiders department here, no one dares to be presumptuous in Hanyu Mountain. Lu Heng smiled and thanked, in that case, thank you. Before, you were injured while casting the sword. I don't know how your injury is now. Do you need my help? The old priest said, thank you. Although my injury is serious, the peach blossom wine is a holy healing product. Such an injury should have taken several years to recuperate, but with the peach blossom wine, I will recover within a few months in this case, we have to thank you. Lu Heng was a little surprised by the old man's words. Oh. Does the peach blossom wine have this effect? He couldn't help but look at Xiao Ai and say, Xiao Ai, take two pots of peach blossom wine later. It may be useful after going down the mountain. Yes, Xiao Ai bowed and went to grab the drink with Heavenly Thunder Sword on her back. In the wooden pavilion, Lu Heng chatted with the old priest about interesting things outside the mountain. Lu Heng is still curious about the strange world outside the mountain. Now there is an old man who has traveled all over the world in front of him. Naturally, he seizes the time to ask for information. After a while, Xiao Ai had packed her bags and came out with Heavenly Thunder Sword on her back. In her hand, she was carrying a small package. For people cultivating, even if they go far away, they don't need to carry too many clothes. The little girl spent so long packing, mainly telling the white ape all kinds of things. The white ape, who usually jumped around happily, now followed her step by step, full of reluctance. It can be seen that this white ape also wants to follow Lu Heng down the mountain. It's just that it hasn't been able to transform into a human yet, and its mind is too immature. Lu Heng doesn't plan to take it with him. After all, the mountain also needs someone to take care of it. Under Lu Heng's smiling eyes, the little girl walked to the pavilion and bowed deeply. Lord Wolf God, Xiao Ai is ready. Well, I think you seem to have something to say, Lu Heng said. If you have something to say, you can say it frankly. You don't have to hide it in your heart. The little girl bit her lip, and then said, Xiao Ai pleads with Lord Wolf God to give this white ape a name. Name. Lu Heng looked at the confused white ape and laughed, indeed, it's time to name this white ape. It is really unpleasant to call him white ape every day. Lu Heng waved to the white ape to come over. The white ape was a little confused, but full of curiosity. It jumped in front of Lu Heng and bowed its head obediently. Lu Heng put his hand gently on his head and smiled, White Ape, do you have a name you want? The White Ape was stunned for a moment and shook his head. Obviously, he didn't think about a name. Lu Heng said, Then I'll take it at will well, you're an ape in the mountains, so take you on ape as well take Sun Monkey as your surname. When Lu Heng planned to name the White Ape Yuan, he suddenly thought of the white ape surnamed Yuan in Creation of the Gods. In that novel, the white ape named Yuan Hong died very miserably. Although this is already another world, it is better to avoid it. Lu Heng said, Monkey, Monkey, take Sun Monkey as your surname. But you started cultivating too late, so it's difficult to start with demon cultivation. If there is no opportunity, I'm afraid it will be difficult for you to have some achievements. But I hope you can seize that opportunity, rise to the difficulties, and break through the mystery of life and death. 
the so-called number of yen is 50, and the sky and earth take away 49 I will call you Sun Yen, and I hope you can grasp the one that is left. Lu Heng laughed, and the word yen also means that the water flows into the sea, which can be extended to abundance. I hope that although you have had a bad start, you can finally break through the difficulties and make your own vast expanse on the path of cultivation like the river flows into the sea. From today on, your name will be Sun Yen. Lu Heng's words are incomprehensible to the white ape. But it knows that the name given by the wolf god is very important, because Xiao Ai asked for it. So he saluted hurriedly and kept chirping, thanking the wolf god for his name. The old priest beside him silently read Lu Heng's words. The so-called number of yen is fifty, and the sky and earth take away forty-nine the one that is left. The old man's eyes lit up and he didn't know what to feel. When he looked at Lu Heng again, his eyes were full of admiration and awe. Lu Heng looked at the little girl with silver hair and said with a smile, So, is it okay? The little girl blushed and bowed her head. Thank you, Lord Wolf God. Ha 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 well, it's over, so let's go. In the wooden pavilion, Lu Heng laughed loudly, and a huge white wolf appeared in front of the wolf god temple. The man in white took one step toward the huge white wolf, followed by Xiao Ai carrying the heavenly thunder sword. In front of the wolf god temple, Lu Heng in white turned around and cupped his hands at the old priest and Qian of the Li tribe, laughing, the mountain is high and the road is far away, so Lu Heng is going now. Take care, you too. Take care, the wolf god. Goodbye, Xiao Ai. In the sound of farewell, Lu Heng's soul disappeared, and the huge white wolf opened his eyes and went in the direction of the back mountain. Lu Heng and Xiao Ai soon disappeared in the field of their visions. Qian sighed, the wolf god's body is so handsome. The old priest smiled and said, you are still a little girl and don't know the truly valuable thing. Compared with the wolf god's true body, his human-shaped soul is divine and infinite. It's the first time I've heard of this kind of existence. The breakthrough of the wolf god may be related to his human-shaped soul. The so-called number of yen is 50, and the sky and earth take away 49 This statement alone can break the true meaning of the world. The wolf god is really extraordinary. Chapter 70 In front of the wolf god temple, the white wolf took one step forward and left the main peak of Hanyu Mountain shrouded in heavenly thunder clouds. Using the power of the mountain god, he quickly took Xiao Ai and passed through the primitive jungle of the back mountain and finally reached the great lake at the end of the mountain. Under the sun, the calm lake is sparkling, and a cool wind is blowing in their faces. After crossing this lake, Lu Heng would leave the scope of Hanyu Mountain, and his mountain god's divine power would also stop working. But this time down the mountain, he not only looked for the opportunity to make a breakthrough, but also held the mentality of playing. So he didn't plan to hurry, but to travel leisurely all the way. Even if he still had the power of mountain god, he didn't plan to use it. After a long time in the dark and enclosed underground, he can finally come out and have a look at the original scenery of this world. It is also a different experience. It can even be said that the wind is clear and the air is cool. For example, the crystal clear lake in front of him can be developed as a tourist attraction in his previous life. However, in this era without industrial pollution, such clear and translucent lakes can be seen everywhere. Wild animals are rampant in the wild world, but it also means that everything in this world retains the purest and most primitive appearance, with beautiful mountains and rivers and beautiful scenery. Looking at the swimming fish in the lake, Lu Heng couldn't help feeling nostalgic and laugh. Speaking of it, I haven't eaten for a long time. Before I leave, I'll take a bite of fish. Xiao Ai, who followed Lu Heng, was a little surprised, a bite. She said, if Lord Wolf God wants to eat fish, Xiao Ai will fish and cook for you. The huge white wolf shook his head, no, it's too troublesome to salvage and cook. I'll take a bite and go on the road after eating. With that, under the surprised gaze of the little girl, the white wolf directly opened his mouth to the lake in front of him. Under the power of the mountain god, a surging vortex suddenly appeared in the lake. Then, one by one, the plump, fresh and tender live fish fluttered out of the lake in a line and flew into Lu Heng's mouth. 
Lu Hain swallowed nearly a hundred fish in one breath. Then he nodded contentedly and said, Okay, let's continue on the road. The little girl on the side looked at all this silently, and she didn't know what to say for a moment. But the white wolf had gone far away, and the little girl had to quickly follow. In the afternoon sun, their paces were not fast, but whether it was rough terrain, overgrown wilderness, or even muddy and difficult swamp, they walked as though it was flat ground. Soon, they left behind the lake and stepped into the wilderness south of Hanyu Mountain. Lu Heng didn't know where Fushan City was, but after retrieving the memory of the wolf demon, he had a faint feeling in his heart that the opportunity for this trip was in the south. And when talking with the old priest, the old man also mentioned that Fushan City is located in the south of the Fire Pass country. So although Lu Heng doesn't know the specific route, he just needs to go south. Today, although Lu Heng has not opened the door to heaven, he has already reached the key node of transformation. Even without heavenly thunder, his cultivation base is also better than the original wolf demon. And Xiao Ai, she has the wolf demon's 200 years of demon cultivation, and a wisp of heavenly thunder from Lu Heng. For more than a year, she has been cultivating hard in the Hanyu mountain with abundant spirit qi. Her strength was already beyond ordinary people's imagination. This girl and wolf walked in the wilderness, and no beast with eyes dared to provoke them. After all, there are few monsters with a cultivation base. They walked all the way to the south, passed through the uninhabited wilderness after wilderness, and walked through primitive barren mountains after wilderness. They saw many strange beasts along the way, but they didn't meet a single demon. They traveled during the day and rest at night. Although Xiao Ai and Lu Heng don't need sleep, Lu Heng didn't want to travel at night. If they traveled in the dark, they would miss the scenery along the way and Lu Heng still wanted to maintain some habits as a human, and didn't want to really become inhuman. So when it comes to rest at night, they will stop, find a place to light a bonfire in the wind, roast some wild animals caught in the mountains, and sample their taste. Then the girl and wolf sat around the campfire and closed their eyes until dawn. If they are lucky enough to find a cave, they won't have to sleep in the wilderness. With such a simple itinerary, they walked south for fifteen days before walking out of this wilderness and seeing the galloping road built by human beings. The so-called galloping road is the road connecting human cities. It can be said to be a big livelihood project to open roads in the mountains and wilderness, flatten the forest boulders along the way, tamp the lus and level the road surface. However, although the world is primitive and wild, due to the existence of various cultivators, Lu Heng is not surprised by this galloping road. Looking at the galloping road from a distance, Xiao Ai asked, Lord Wolf God, do we need to avoid the galloping road? Lu Heng shook his head and said, there is no need to avoid it. It's also an interesting experience for us to walk on the galloping road in this world. With that, Lu Heng's body size shrunk rapidly. The original huge body shape quickly shrunk several times smaller. Although it is still huge compared with ordinary wolves, it is not so scary. He stood beside Xiao Ai, almost as tall as Xiao Ai. Lu Heng laughed, let's go south along the road first. If the route of the road changes, we'll leave again. Okay, Xiao Ai nodded heavily, and walked out of the primitive jungle with Lu Heng stepping on the road with compacted ground one after another. On the galloping road, although the road is compacted, flat, and easy to walk, it is still desolate. They walked along the galloping road for a whole morning, but they didn't see a passerby. But this is not surprising. Although there are galloping roads built, there are still mountains and roads between cities, wild animals are rampant, and occasionally monsters run rampant. In such a dangerous world, most ordinary villagers don't travel far. They basically stay in the same place throughout their lifetime. Only merchants would travel between the roads, or those cultivators who are not afraid of beasts. Lu Heng walked along the road all morning, and even met several beasts crouching in the dense forest beside the road. If ordinary people encounter these roadside beasts when they are alone, they will fall directly into the mouths of the beasts. Even those merchants may be attacked by these beasts if they are negligent. After all, some of those beasts are even more fierce than lions and tigers. So after walking along the road this morning, although he didn't meet any passers-by, Lu Heng had a deeper understanding of the dangers of travel in this world. 
Although those beasts didn't dare to jump out and attack Lu Hang and Xiao Ai at all, it was definitely a disaster that was extremely difficult for mortals to resist. A strange and evil beast with four sharp horns on its head. A weird beast looks like a goat, but it is more than twice as big as a goat. A strange beast that looks like a civet cat magnified several times, but has only one eye and three tails. In this wild and treacherous world, beasts such as lions and tigers are not at the top of the food chain. Above the lion and tiger, there are many more terrible things. In the former wilderness, Lu Heng also saw many more strange beasts. Many evil beasts' appearances were so weird that Lu Heng dare not bite them for fear of getting sick. However, there are also several vicious beasts, although they are fierce and violent, their meat tastes very delicious after being roasted by Xiao Ai. Even Lu Heng now can't help but miss some of them and hopes to encounter those kinds of evil beasts in the next journey. Chapter 71 After the valley rain, the weather had become a lot warmer. But in the heat, the rainfall gradually increases, and sometimes it will even last for more than ten days. When the rainstorm falls, the hot earth will gradually return to normal again. At the edge of the desolate galloping road, there stands a deserted post house, which seems to merge with the dark mountains and forests. There are not just a few such post houses in the Fire Pass country. But this kind of area far away from the city has always been uninhabited. If someone dares to live in this lonely wilderness, in a few days, ferocious beasts will enter the house and eat people. However, the mountains between the cities are high and the roads are far away. Those traveling merchants need to stay out of the rain and rest overnight. So on the long road, there will be such unmanned post houses along the way. Although it is uninhabited and not managed, the house is like an empty room for business travelers to rest. When the business travelers check in, they will also consciously maintain the facilities of the post house and clean it before leaving, so the post house is not dirty. By this time, it was evening. The sky was shrouded in dark clouds, and pale lightning flickered in the clouds. The light among the mountains is gloomy, and it is not dark yet, but the road has become blurred and dim. The cold wind, whistling in the wilderness, was a precursor of the coming rainstorm. But in such bad weather, two figures appear far away on the desolate road. A little girl about ten years old, with a dark blue sword on her back, looked serious. The long silver hair fell, but there were a pair of sharp animal ears on the top of the head. Obviously young, but the little girl has a cold and gorgeous temperament, just like the faint plum blossoms proudly blooming in the winter wind. And next to the little girl was a huge white wolf. It appeared much bigger than the ordinary wild wolves that could be found in the mountain. Walking on the deserted road with the little girl who was carrying the sword, the white wolf carried a hint of dignity in his dark golden pupils that people did not dare to look at directly. The appearance of one girl and one beast broke the tranquility in the wilderness. The little girl looked at the post office that was almost integrated with the night ahead and asked, Lord Wolf God, there is a post office in front of us. Do we want to go in and have a rest? The huge white wolf nodded and said, It's going to rain. It's great to have a shelter from the rain. Let's rest here tonight. With that, one girl and one wolf walked towards the post office. This post house has no courtyard wall, and the house is directly built on the roadside. After opening the closed wooden door and entering, the space in the house is huge, and the roof of the beam is extremely high. If you are not picky, it is not a problem to squeeze 40 or 50 people overnight at the same time. Behind the house, there is a barn with a canopy to cover the rain. When entering the main house, they saw traces of charcoal fire on the ground. It seems that there were many people who lived in this post a few days ago. Xiao Ai found a cleaner corner and cleaned it. After cleaning it, she put two green banana leaves on the ground. She didn't want Lord Wolf God to sit directly on the dusty ground. Then, before the rainstorm came down, she went to the roadside to cut a pine tree and drag it back. Under the eaves, the little girl waved her hands and the cold light flashed, and the tough trunk was cut into pieces by sharp and slender nails and turned into firewood. After all this, the sharp nails growing on her slender fingers silently retracted. Then, smoke rose in the room, and the light of the fire lit up the dark and deserted hall. 
Lu Hen lay down beside the fire and closed his eyes, just like an ordinary wolf asleep. Outside, the wind roared, the white lightning cut through the night sky, and the terrible roar sounded from time to time. The torrential rain has fallen on the wilderness and mountains. The cold rain constantly hit the eaves of the post house, making a crisp sound. The little girl dismantled a hair under the eaves, peeled and skinned it, and then let the rain wash out the blood on the rabbit meat. Only then did she skewer it with a stick and bake it next to the fire pit. Lu Heng opened his eyes and took a look. He saw the little girl baking rabbit meat and then closed his eyes again. This rabbit was caught by Xiao Ai near the road in the morning, and the little girl carried it away for a day. Lu Heng thought that the little girl was full of childlike innocence and wanted to raise this rabbit. After all, children have no resistance to cute animals. But he didn't expect Xiao Ai to hold the rabbit all the way, so that she could barbecue when they settled down at night. In the fire, the burning campfire made a crackle from time to time. Outside, there were howling storms, lightning and thunder, giving people the illusion that the roof of the post house was about to be lifted by the wind. The little girl carefully roasted the rabbit in her hand and prepared dinner for Lord Wolf God. She doesn't need to eat every day, and neither does Lord Wolf God. However, during the trip, Xiao Ai found that Lord Wolf God was very interested in food. So every time after dark, when camping, the little girl will prepare some food for Lu Hang. Just because of the restrictions, it's basically just some barbecue. The little girl regretted that she hadn't known that Lord Wolf God liked to eat, she should have brought a small pot when she went out. In this way, you can change the taste for Lord Wolf God from time to time. With this in mind, she decided that if she passed the city next, she would buy a pot in the city and carry it with her. Lu Hung, beside the fire, still closed his eyes and knew nothing about the little girl's thoughts. The quiet bonfire has been burning for a long time, and the rabbit meat in Xiao Ai's hand has been roasted to be shiny and fragrant. But at this time, in the rainstorm outside the house, suddenly there was a dull sound of footsteps. Dong Dong the dull footsteps seemed to be the heavy beasts walking in the rain. Although covered by the rain and far away, Lu Hang and Xiao Ai heard it. The little girl looked in the direction of the road and frowned slightly. About a quarter of an hour later, a group of businessmen appeared before her. The number of people is not small. A group of about twenty businessmen drove five huge beasts out of the rain. The beasts have fat bodies, short limbs, rough skins, and sharp horns above their thick nostrils, which look a little ferocious. Xiao Ai has seen this kind of beast, named rhinoceros, with a large and heavy body and a gentle personality. Even if they encounter lions and tigers in the wilderness, the rhinoceros will not be as scared as ordinary pack horses, so many traders will raise it as a pack animal. Now the one who drives five rhinoceros here is an ordinary commercial team. They were all dressed in coir raincoats and rushed in the rainstorm. But the wind and rain were violent, and even wearing coir raincoats, they were still drenched with rain. When they saw the light of the fire in the post in front of them, no one was surprised. After all, it's normal for them to meet travelers at the roadside post office. The merchants drove five rhinoceros to the gate of the post office. They were preparing to disassemble the goods on the rhino's back, but they saw a girl and a wolf in the house. The huge white wolf lay by the fire, his eyes slightly closed, and seemed to be asleep. But that huge body size made people dare not ignore him. On the side of the white wolf, the young girl was carrying a dark blue ancient sword, quietly turning over and roasting the barbecue on the fire. When the people stood outside the door, she just glanced coldly and looked away, as if she was not interested in the people. But the girl's indifferent gaze made everyone take a sharp breath and feel great pressure. In such a wild rainstorm, there is such a strange person and a wolf. The businessmen looked at each other with some uneasiness in their eyes. The leader hesitated for a few seconds. Finally, he walked into the door and cupped his hands, we are passing merchants, and we are going to Baishir city. But there is a rainstorm today, and it is difficult to travel in the wilderness, I wonder if you can make it convenient for us to take shelter from the rain. The leader of the caravan lowered his posture for fear of offending the little girl in front of him. In such a wilderness, when you meet such a strange person and wolf, any normal people would know that they must be extraordinary. 
Without this violent storm, they didn't dare to ask, but directly drove the pack animals away. The way of businessmen has always been to prefer camping than to annoy people of unknown origin. But now the rainstorm is pouring, and this post house is the only place nearby that can take shelter from the rain. The leader of the caravan had to ask nervously. After hearing his request, the little girl beside the fire just glanced coldly and said, This post is built here to facilitate merchants. Uncles, you can do whatever you want, don't worry about me. With that, the little girl ignored them and continued to look after her barbecue. The leader of the caravan breathed a sigh of relief, quickly thanked, and then asked everyone to quickly unload the beast of the burden on its back and move it into the house, and then drove the beast to the rear corral to shelter from the rain. After all this, the merchants returned to the main house and carefully lit the firewood. The whole process was cautious, and the businessmen tried to keep their footsteps and conversations low, for fear of disturbing the girl and the wolf nearby. Chapter, 72 The merchants' campfire soon lit up. They took firewood from their bags and lit the campfire, and then gathered around the fire to keep warm. At this time, they had changed their wet clothes, wrung them dry, and hung them by the fire to dry. Everyone was hungry after driving all the way in the rain. While baking, they took out the pot in their bags and put it on the fire and began to cook porridge. Others went to the back of the corral and began to feed forage to pack animals. Soon the smell of rice porridge floated in the house. It's good to have a hot porridge when you go out. What's more, the rice porridge also had some broken meat and vegetables, which tasted quite good. When everyone in the caravan filled hot porridge respectively, the leader walked towards the corner with two bowls of hot porridge and came to the little girl and the wolf. His face was full of smiles. Do you want to have some hot porridge? The little girl looked at the white wolf beside her. Seeing that the white wolf was still silent and obviously not interested in the hot porridge, she shook her head and said, No, thank you. She didn't say much, and simply refused, so the leader had to go back with porridge. However, the team leader just asked politely to show goodwill. If it was him, he would not accept strangers' food, so the little girl's refusal was not unexpected to him. But the little girl's action of looking at the white wolf first and then answering made him confused. After returning to his companion, the leader couldn't help looking back at the white wolf over there. In the dim light of the fire, the white wolf was lying down beside the fire and seemed to be asleep. Although the body shape is much larger than that of ordinary wild wolves, fierce beasts larger than this white wolf can be found everywhere in the wilderness. A little girl who can walk alone in the wilderness with a magical white wolf is not surprising. But judging from what the little girl just did, it seems that the white wolf is the dominant party between the two. And the little girl's silver hair and sharp ears are similar to the white wolf. The leader silently lowered his head and dared not look again for fear of misunderstanding. His caravan is actually powerful. As long as they don't encounter evil people, most beasts can't eat their caravan. And even if they encounter demons, it is guaranteed that their team can deal with them. But the one who can deal with evils is not here for the time being. The leader subconsciously looked out of the room, a little worried. If the white wolf is really old Hua, how long are you going to be? The team leader was anxious, but in order to not scare everyone, he didn't even dare to voice his speculations. Instead, he sat in the middle of the crowd, pretending as if nothing had happened. Outside, the wind and rain became more and more violent. Although the thunder and lightning have stopped, the rain is getting heavier and heavier, and the cold wind is tearing everything in the mountain. In the post house with the door open, the cold wind blew in from time to time, and the body was cold, but everyone dared not close the door. Before they came, the gate of the post house opened, and there was a girl with a wolf sitting inside. If they close the door as soon as they come in who knows if such a move will annoy the girl and the wolf. It's better to do less than more when you go out. No one in the caravan has a weak body, and they don't really care about suffering some cold wind. And beside the fire, as the body warms up and the hot porridge goes down, the people also gradually relax. Although he still dared not make a noise, he whispered and talked about his plan to go to Whitestone. Occasionally, there will be a low smile. In this gradually relaxed atmosphere, a dull drum suddenly sounded in the dark rainstorm in the distance. 
Dong Dong. At the moment when the drum sounded, Xiao Ai looked up and looked out, frowning slightly. However, the group of businessmen on the side recognized the voice and all smiled. Old Hua is back. Finally back. I don't know whether Old Hua caught the fat bird or not. If he caught it, he would make a lot of money. Hey, hey Old Hua has been there for so long, that he must have caught it. Otherwise, he would have come back early. The businessmen talked excitedly, and even forgot to lower their voices. The fat bird is a rare beast, shaped like a quail, with yellow feathers and a red beak. Eating it can cure acne. If there are insects and other parasites in the body, eating the fat bird's meat can also kill them, making this bird a natural cure for these parasites. If you brought the bird to Baishur City, you could definitely sell it at a good price. Thinking of this, everyone in the caravan smiled. The leader was even more relieved and secretly glanced at the white wolf beside the fire. But he saw the white wolf still lying quietly beside the fire, closed his eyes and turned a deaf ear to the movement outside. Soon, the noise of rapid hooves sounded. In the dark rain curtain, a pure white horse broke through the rain curtain and appeared in the view of everyone at a very fast speed. The night on the horse was all wet, but he had a bright smile. He carried a comatose fat bird in his hand and laughed at the people in the room. Got it. Brothers, we will make a lot of money this time. With that, he jumped up directly from the horse. Everyone in the caravan was welcomed in, and a happy laugh sounded outside the house. Naturally, some of them also led the white horse to the corral behind. When being led away, the white horse neighed like a drum. It was the white horse that made the drum sound in the previous rainstorm. This strange cry made Lu Hang near the fire open his eyes. He was a little surprised and found that the white horse outside was not an ordinary horse. Although it has a horse's body, its tail is a slender oxtail. The four feet are not horseshoes, but giant tiger-like paws with sharp claws. When the white horse roars, you can see the sharp fangs in its mouth. Although like ordinary horses, they have neat upper and lower rows of teeth, the teeth of this white horse are sharp and terrifying, more like the fangs of sharks. If bitten by this white horse, I'm afraid the whole arm will be torn off. Xiao Ai whispered aside. This is a bow horse. It travels thousands of miles a day and travels very fast. It only eats lions and tigers in the mountains. Eating a tiger and it will not feel hungry for half a year. It's an extremely rare mount. However, the difficulty of subduing this bow horse is also very high, which can only be achieved by people with cultivation. Xiao Ai carefully explained it to Lord Wolf God. These interesting things outside the mountain that she heard from her mother in the past can now be explained to Lord Wolf God. She is very happy. Lu Heng smiled and said, Your mother knows so many things. It seems that her birth is indeed extraordinary Xiao Ai, are you interested in exploring? Lu Heng's inquiry stunned the little girl. She shook her head and whispered, My mother's greatest wish before her death is that I can spend my life safely in Shuaxing village. Now Xiao Ai is a disciple of Wolf God and I don't need to be afraid anymore. My mother's wish has come true. I think if she knew Xiao Ai's luck, she would be very happy. Beside the fire, Lu Hang looked at the little girl's expression, felt the faint melancholy in the little girl's heart, and knew that the little girl was not lying. Lu Hang knew these words were sincere. So he closed his eyes and stopped talking. Outside, the man surnamed Hua had been welcomed in by the crowd. After seeing the strange combination of one girl and one wolf in the corner, Hua Feng was stunned and quickly bowed. Oh, there are friends in the room I'm Hua Feng of the Yun sect. I'm staying here with my brothers today. I hope we don't make trouble for you. Hua Feng, who is a cultivator, doesn't have to be as careful as everyone in the caravan. But it's better to be polite to others, so he salutes in advance. However, the girl beside the fire just finished talking with Lord Wolf God. She missed her mother in her heart and was melancholic. In the face of Hua Feng's politeness, the little girl just nodded coldly and said, Lu Ai, from Hanyu Mountain. With five simple words, she lowered her eyebrows and continued to turn over the rabbit meat on the fire. After a long time of roasting, the rabbit meat is almost ready. 
she has to take care of it carefully to avoid scorching. She is not interested in chatting with these rough and strong men. Seeing her cold temper, Huofeng stopped talking. Although the girl's silver hair and ears are quite strange, those who can walk alone in the wilderness are not ordinary people. It's not surprising that her body is abnormal. He and his brothers came to the fire. After breathing, all the water on his body was evaporated. The fat bird was caged by the caravan people. Huofeng said with a smile, this fat bird is slippery and difficult to catch. If I wasn't riding the bow horse, I'm afraid I wouldn't be able to catch it. After running in the mountains for five or six hours, I finally caught it. Huofeng laughed and talked with the crowd about the hard work of chasing the fat bird during the day. The leader scooped a bowl of hot porridge for him and said, Brother Hua, eat some hot porridge first, or it will be cold later. Good. Huofeng took the hot porridge and sat down. Under the intentional guidance of the team leader, everyone's attention turned to the fat bird and began to discuss the rumors of the fat bird. After everyone temporarily forgot Huofeng, the leader sat next to Huofeng and whispered in a voice that only Huofeng could hear, Brother Hua, do you think that girl and the wolf are demons? Huofeng, who was eating porridge, was stunned for a moment, looked up, and looked at the corner again. He shook his head and said, No, although the little girl has silver hair and ears. Her breath is peaceful, neutral, and even with a shuddering pressure. She is a real cultivator. Her cultivation, I'm afraid, is higher than mine, and she is by no means a demon. What about the white wolf? The leader swallowed his saliva and whispered, When I went to deliver porridge just now, I found that the little woman seemed to listen to the white wolf. Oh. The leader's words made Huofeng raise his head in surprise. He looked at the white wolf again, and saw the white wolf lying beside the fire, sleeping with his eyes closed, without the slightest evil aura. Although it is huge, it doesn't pose a threat to Huofeng. However, the leader's words made him a little curious. With a thought, the breath in Huofeng's body surged, and the magic eye in the middle of his eyebrow immediately opened and looked directly at the white wolf beside the fire. In an instant. Poof. Huofeng, who was carrying the porridge, directly spewed out a mouthful of blood. As if the whole person was hit hard, he flew backward directly and hit the wall heavily. In the stunned gaze of the caravan crowd, Huofeng, who was just in high spirits, now lay on the ground, convulsed and fainted. The miserable appearance made people feel chilly. Chapter, 73 Who? Who's there? Show yourself. The sudden upheaval startled everyone in the caravan. The moment Huofeng flew backward, all the men jumped up and stretched out their hands to draw their swords. While shouting loudly, everyone looked around nervously, trying to find out the enemy who plotted against Huofeng, and at the same time, they also took precautions against sneak attacks in the dark. However, the empty post house was silent, and only the crackling sound of firewood burning sounded from time to time. The little girl in the corner just glanced coldly at them, then looked away and continued to roast the rabbit meat. Everyone was on alert for a while, but no enemy was found, and no one was attacked again. It seemed that Huofeng flew out by himself. Such a strange situation made the people confused. But the caravan people have traveled far and wide for many years, and they have seen many strange things. Even though they didn't see the enemy, they were still nervous and didn't dare to lower their vigilance. Only leader who guessed a little of the truth squatted beside Huofeng and anxiously checked his partner's injury. At this time, Huofeng, pale as paper, breathed intermittently. Clearly, he is a cultivator who can fight lions and tigers and is not afraid of demons, but now he is breathing heavily, and even the injury is so unclear. The leader looked at the girl and the wolf in the corner in horror, and didn't know what to do. Just took a look old Hua just took a look. The leader repented. He knew that he had hurt old Hua. If it weren't for old Hua's magic eyes, the white wolf wouldn't have suddenly attacked him. But what happened just now happened too fast. Everything was between lightning and flint. Old Hua just opened his eyes and took a look, and then flew out in an instant. The team leader didn't know what happened at all. He didn't even see how old Hua was injured. The only thing he is sure of is the existence of one girl and one wolf in that corner, which they can't offend. 
In a dignified atmosphere, the leader swallowed his saliva and forced himself to stand up, ready to walk towards the white wolf. But at this time, the white wolf, who had been lying by the fire and sleeping with his eyes closed, opened his eyes. Seeing the situation of the caravan, the white wolf sighed and said, Xiao Ai, go and pour a cup of wine for Mr. Hua. Since we have seen it, we can't just let him die like this. The white wolf sighed softly and suddenly opened his mouth, which startled everyone in the caravan. Strange animals and fierce birds are not terrible, but the animals that can speak human words must be demons. Most of these monsters are evil and terrifying. If you meet one in the wilderness, you will be doomed. Is it the white wolf who secretly murdered Old Hua? Everyone in the caravan looked frightened and thought of this possibility. But even Hua Fong, who had a strong cultivation base, fell instantly. These twenty-three people are they all going to become the food of this demon tonight? Everyone in the caravan was pale, and the impact of the white wolf's words was so great that most people didn't notice the content of the white wolf's words. The little girl stood up respectfully beside the white wolf, nodded and said, yes. With that, she gently pricked the stick with roast rabbit meat in her hand to the ground, and the stick directly pierced into the compacted hard soil. The use of strength made all the men worried, this girl was indeed not simple. However, Xiao Ai didn't care about the fear of these strong men. After putting down the roast rabbit, she took out a pot of wine from her bag and walked towards the crowd. This peach blossom wine is a holy healing medicine. Uncles, you can take a bowl, and fill some wine for Mr. Hua. It can save his life. The girl with silver hair and ears stood a foot away from the crowd and didn't get close. But even so, everyone in the caravan was still nervous. However, when they looked at the leader and saw that the leader nodded, they silently put down their swords. Someone leaned over carefully with a bowl, but the little girl didn't directly kill him as they feared. She opened the cork of the wine pot and poured some wine out. The moment the plug was pulled open, a faint and elegant fragrance of peach blossoms filled the room. All the people who smelled the fragrance subconsciously took a deep breath and inhaled the faint fragrance of flowers into their hearts. At that moment, everyone in the caravan felt refreshed and light, and the fatigue of traveling in the daytime was completely eliminated. At this moment, how can these men not know that the peach blossom in the pot is an amazing thing? They all put down their guard and looked forward to seeing the clear liquor in the porcelain bowl fed to the mouth of the unconscious Huafeng. Amazingly, after the wine slipped into Huafeng's throat, the man who was pale and breathed intermittently soon regained color on his face. After dozens of breaths, Huafeng, who was dying, opened his eyes again. Although he was still weak, he could barely sit up and look at the people present. Huafeng was stunned for a moment and quickly saluted the white wolf in the corner. Thank you for saving my life, Elder. When he opened his magic eyes, he saw a fiery and terrifying scene. Like the terrible scene of thousands of thunder surging, a mass of white light exploded in his vision. At that moment, he seemed to be submerged by endless terrifying thunder, and the fear he had never experienced flooded his mind. He felt death. Now he woke up and looked around the room. How could he not understand that the white wolf saved him? So he bowed down and thanked the white wolf immediately. This bow was respectful and sincere, coming from the bottom of his heart. Although in the eyes of the public, he was just unconscious and woke up. But for Huafeng, he knew that he has been wandering between life and death. Without the help of the white wolf, he would soon be out of breath. And the great terror between life and death still made his heart feel chilly. The terrifying experience of the heavenly thunder drowning himself has broken his Tao heart and made him almost unable to maintain the operation of spirit chi in his body. His smile was a little bitter, knowing that after this night, he would be unable to continue cultivating. The white wolf beside the fire looked at the bitter face of the man who bowed and saluted. After thinking for a while, he said, Come here and talk to me. I still have a good impression of your yin sect. Lu Heng's words stunned Huafeng, and then he was ecstatic. He hurried over and stood beside the white wolf, Thank you, elder, please ask anything you want to know. Lu Heng glanced at him, shook his head and said, You haven't recovered from your injury. Sit down and rest first. Don't be too formal in front of me. Huafeng nodded, 
cupped his hands and said, Thank you, senior. With that, he sat directly on the ground. In front of such masters, if they are blindly modest and restrained, they will be disliked. Hua Feng's nature is not that kind of literate person. He naturally listens to Lu Heng's words. Chapter 74 In the wild post house in the rainstorm, as Hua Feng sat down beside Lu Heng, the caravan people not far away were relieved. Watching the development of things, although people still don't know why old Hua was suddenly attacked. But with that magical white wolf here, even if there is a demon sneaking around, it must have been scared and run away. People sat down by the fire. Although they didn't dare to eavesdrop on the conversation over there, they couldn't help talking about the magical spirit wine just now. They just took a breath of the aroma of spirit wine, and then their fatigue was removed. It's no wonder that old Hor recovered after a sip. Seeing such a strange thing with your own eyes is more exciting than catching the fat bird. Not far away, everyone in the caravan whispered. In the corner, Xiao Ai sat back to her original position and continued to roast rabbit. Lu Heng talked with Hua Feng about the insect. Lu Heng heard Gong Shu Jia mention this Yun sect before. There is no immortal sect in this world, and there is certainly no such organization where the leader gives an order and the disciples of the whole sect would go down the mountain to subdue the devil. However, there are many sects teaching cultivation methods. Only in Lu Heng's view, the inheritance of sects in this world is mostly loose and strange. Many people of the same sect may not even have seen each other in their lives. Other than what both sides have learned, I'm afraid they can't find the second similarity all over their bodies. And the Yun sect is a very strange sect. The Yun of the Yun sect doesn't mean cloud, but wandering. Most of the people in the Yun sect travel around the world and measure every inch of the earth with their feet. Even their cultivation methods can only be cultivated while walking. Therefore, most of the people in the Yun sect will join a group of businessmen and follow them to walk in the wilderness. At the same time of cultivating, protect these businessmen from being threatened by the monsters they encounter by chance, and earn remuneration. Doing more with one stone. Lu Huang called Hua Feng to come over to better examine Hua Feng's injury. Lu Huang was a little stunned by the sudden serious injury of Hua Feng. Hua Feng just glanced at him and almost died as if he had been struck by lightning and flew backward. If Lu Huang wasn't sure that he hadn't done anything, he would almost think he had secretly murdered this guy. Lu Heng has never encountered such a strange situation before. So after a little talk, the young man's tension slowed down a little. Lu Heng smiled and asked, Mr. Hua, you just looked at me, but what did you see? Lu Heng's words made Hua Feng's heart become a little nervous. But in the face of the white wolf who saved his life, Hua Feng dared not hide it, so he had to tell him that he had just opened his magic eyes and tried to pry at Lu Heng. When he said what his magic eye saw, Hua Feng couldn't help but breathe slightly sluggishly and his face turned pale. The recollection of memory seemed to return him to that terrible moment, as if he were once again under the surge of thunder. After half a second, Hua Feng broke free from his pale fear. By the fire, Lu Heng had fallen into meditation. Was he in that state like that? Hua Feng just glanced at it and was scared to death the foundation of Taoism forged by heavenly thunder was so terrible. But when Gong Shu Jie and the Li tribe's people saw him in the past, they all looked as usual and were not affected. Lu Heng doesn't believe that these people haven't seen him with their magic eyes before. No wonder everyone respected him so much when he was in Hanyu Mountain, a wolf demon who didn't even open the door to heaven. But Gong Shu Jie, the old priest and others peeped, but nothing happened. In other words, Lu Heng's spiritual deterrence is only useful for cultivators with low accomplishments such as Hua Feng, but it can't affect masters at the level of Gong Shu Jie. Thinking of this, Lu Heng couldn't help sighing, a little distressed. Although he can't affect those masters, most in the world are cultivators like Hua Feng. In his current state, if he walks in the city, as long as someone is curious and wants to see him with his magic eyes, they will suffer. Although Hua Feng was saved with the peach blossom wine this time, the quantity of peach blossom wine is limited, only two pots. If tonight's situation continues to happen, can the wine save ten people, twenty people, one hundred people, or even one thousand people? And although Hua Feng was rescued, 
his Tao heart was broken, and his cultivation base was blocked. Although if he can get out of the shadow, he will have a breakthrough and a broader future. But it's not easy to reshape the heart of the Tao and get out of the shadow. I'm afraid it's hard for one in a thousand people to do it. And if you can't reshape the heart of Tao, you probably won't be able to progress another inch in your life. Lu Heng's heart is not comfortable too, even if it is an unintentional loss. What made him even more depressed was that he was in such a state, could he still enter the human city? Does he have to stay away from all cultivators along the way? This. It's a rare trip down the mountain. Am I, Lu Heng, only qualified to camp in the wilderness and not play in the city? Thinking of this, Lu Heng was quite depressed, even in a bad mood. By the fire, Xiao Ai finally roasted the rabbit and respectfully said, Lord Wolf God, the rabbit has been roasted. The little girl's voice called Lu Heng back from meditation. He looked at the two people in front of him and said with a smile, Mr. Hua, let's try it together. Xiao Ai's cooking is very good. Hua Feng quickly waved his hand and said, No, no, senior, thank you for your kindness. But now my internal breathing is unstable and I need to regulate it, so. Lu Heng nodded and said, I understand. Go back now. I'll accompany you through the next journey until Baishir City. You don't have to worry about monster attacks. Lu Heng's words surprised Hua Feng. He sat beside the wolf god. Seeing that the wolf god was suddenly silent, he felt restless. Only then did he want to return to his brothers. But his own Tao heart was damaged, and he began to worry about what to do next. Now he is weak. If he meets a demon, he may be unable to protect the brothers of the caravan. But he didn't expect that the wolf god was willing to accompany them along the way. Hua Feng quickly thanked them, and finally breathed a sigh of relief. After Lu Heng watched the young man named Hua Feng return to the middle of the caravan, he looked at the little girl in front of him and said. Xiao Ai, we may not be able to enter human cities next. Ah. The little girl who was thinking of buying a pot in Baishir City was stunned and a little confused. Lu Heng explained with a bitter smile, I'm in a special state now. I'm afraid I can't appear in front of people. Otherwise, as long as someone is curious and looks at me with their magic eyes, they will end up like Huafeng. Lu Heng's explanation immediately made Xiao Ai understand. She hesitated for a few seconds and whispered, But Lord Wolf God, if you can't appear in front of people, how can you go to Fushan City? Didn't you say that the purpose of our trip is to go to Fushan City to find an old friend? Well this Lu Heng was stunned. Yes. If he has been in this state, how should he enter Fushan City at that time? Even if he doesn't go to Baishir City, he has to go to Fushan City. Is it impossible to hang a piece of cloth on your body, which says don't look at me with your magic eyes? If he does this, he's afraid that more people will look at him with their magic eyes. Chapter, 75 Among the stormy mountains, the sound of rain kept ringing, beating the eaves, the branches, and leaves of the trees outside the house. In the slightly quiet post house, except for the night watchman, the men of the caravan fell asleep. For these strong men who are cultivating martial arts, they have been used to sleeping in the wilderness for many years. Casually cover yourself with a thin quilt, and then lie on the dry ground and fall asleep. Hua Feng, who has just recovered his life and is now sitting cross-legged, closed his eyes and recuperated, trying to straighten out the disordered spirit qi in his body. But such efforts are just futile. He knew in his heart that with his Tao heart now broken, he was afraid that he had no hope of breaking through all his life. But who is to blame for this? He can only blame himself for being reckless and meddling, and even trying to spy on the mysterious wolf god Ha. Considering this, Hua Feng's heart is slightly bitter. Now, he also guessed the origin of the girl and the wolf. The little girl with silver hair and ears called herself Lu Ai, from Hanyu Mountain. Although Hua Feng has never heard of the name of this mountain, the white wolf god is probably the god of this Hanyu mountain. Although in this world, some mountain spirits and monsters will set up incense and become gods of mountains and rivers. However, this kind of monster seemed to be determined to not pretend to be a god, along with it being impossible for these gods to leave their mountains and rivers. 
Because the way of mountain god and river god is closely related to this place once incense is opened and the god name is accepted. If you leave without permission, you will be damaged on the road, or you will lose your soul. You will be bound between mountains and rivers for a long time and cannot move. Only when there is success in cultivation, or an opportunity to get out of the mountain, can that kind of monster leave its own abode without such restrictions. But the white wolf god in front of him is obviously not the so-called stream of mountain spirits and monsters, but a more terrible existence. A glance at him could break Hua Feng's heart. Such a terrible thing is impossible even for the strongest Wuju. The origin of the wolf god is definitely more terrible than the strongest man he has ever seen in his life. At the moment when the magic eyes peeped, Hua Feng saw the scene of thousands of thunder surging, and the dazzling pale thunder light flooded everything. That terrible power almost broke his heart and soul. That's a heavenly thunder, not just any ordinary thunder. The thunder, which carries the power of heavenly punishment, is the power all cultivators are afraid of. And I actually got hit myself. Ha! Huh. Thinking of this, Huafong couldn't help smiling bitterly and sighing low. He even admires his own stupidity and courage. He dares to do such stupid things. It's really. At that time, even if he thought a little with his brain, he knew that one girl and one wolf in that corner could not be demons. Otherwise, everyone in the caravan would have been killed long before he came. The reason to watch with magic eyes is just curiosity this is completely unnecessary and stupid. Hua Feng regretted it in his heart. In his final analysis, he caught the rare fat bird. He was excited and a little complacent. If he was his usual self, no matter how curious he was, he will never use magic eyes to spy on an existence that clearly shows no malice to everyone. Even if such behavior, generally speaking, will not cause terrible consequences. However, it's better to do less than more when you go out. But today, I'm so obsessed that I can only say that this is my fate sigh. Sure enough, as the old people say, complacent people often fall. Now, after being complacent, I not only fell down, but even fell directly into the abyss. In the heart of Huafong, bitterness and regret are hard to say. The broken heart of the Tao and the disordered spirit Qi made him confused. He sat by the fire and didn't rest all night. In the corner, Lu Heng is actually in a bad mood. This time he went down the mountain, he also wanted to join the world, have fun, see the local customs of the world, and taste all kinds of delicacies of human cities. But now he suddenly found that he had become an indescribable and invisible existence, and he couldn't go to the city at all. In this way, doesn't more than half the fun of traveling down the mountain have been lost? Although the strange animals and birds in the wilderness are interesting and can indeed be eaten, they are not as interesting as the human world after all. Lu Heng lay beside the fire, looking at the wind and rain outside the house, he thought to himself. It seems that I have to find a way to study a method that can hide my cultivation base. It's a small problem if he could not enter Baishir city to play, but if he was unable to enter Fushan city, it would become a concerning issue. The descendants of Wu Chonggu, who helped the wolf demon, were in Fushan city. Lu Heng's breakthrough opportunity will most likely fall on the descendants of the Wu family. If you are unable to enter the city, it means you can't repay your debt of kindness, and you will have no chance to break through. If you don't have a chance to break through, you won't be able to transform. You have to maintain the wolf body all the time. Alas the journey of repaying kindness is so bumpy. Lu Heng originally felt that as long as he went all the way south, he could find the descendants of the Wu family, take care of them as agreed, and repay the favor the original wolf demon owed. After this karma was resolved, he could easily take a step forward on his cultivation base. But now, just after leaving Hanyu Mountain, he didn't even touch the edge of Fushan City, and a problem suddenly appeared in front of him. When he arrives at Fushan City, will there be some new problems? No, I must work out a way to hide my cultivation base as soon as possible. In case there are cultivators among the descendants of the Wu family, the descendants of the Wu family open their magic eyes to see me before I warn them. Wouldn't their gratitude turn into a drive for revenge? If that happened, Lu Heng would spit blood on the spot. This night, neither Hua Feng nor Lu Heng fell asleep, thinking about their own thoughts. 
At dawn, the rain gradually decreased. With the dawn, the caravan people woke up one after another. Some people went to the rear corral to check the condition of the pack animals, fed grass, and others set up a pot on the fire and began to cook porridge. In the corner, Xiao Ai still sat with her eyes closed and knees crossed, cultivating silently. The hot porridge brought by the caravan was still declined by Xiao Ai. Lu Heng closed his eyes and studied how to hide the heavenly thunder in his body so that outsiders could not spy. However, Lu Heng's demon body had been baptized by the heavenly thunder and his soul had been reshaped by the heavenly thunder when he cultivated in the mountains. It can be said that Lu Heng is now similar to heavenly thunder with wisdom. Every inch of flesh and blood is full of the fierce power of heavenly punishment. It's not easy to completely hide these fierce and terrible heavenly thunder. Lu Heng studied for a night, but he didn't find any method and made no achievements. However, Lu Heng was not discouraged. He knew that this method of hiding qi was not so easy to study, and Fushan City was still far away, so he was relaxed. When the rain stopped in the mountains, the caravan people cleaned the inside and outside of the post office and prepared to travel, he also woke up. According to the agreement, Lu Heng will accompany the caravan to finish the next journey until both sides reach Baishir City. After all, demons are rampant in the wilderness. If you are a little unlucky, you may encounter man-eating demons. If Lu Heng doesn't protect this group of people, the next journey of this group of businessmen may be really like committing suicide. Chapter, 76 Soon after the rain stopped, the men of the caravan drove the beasts out of the barn, tied the goods unloaded last night back to the beasts' backs, and began to move on. In fact, if it hadn't been for the rain in the early morning, according to the habits of businessmen, they would leave at dawn. There are many dangers in the wilderness. If you can get to Baishir City as soon as possible, you can get out of danger as soon as possible. But now with Lu Heng accompanying, the caravan people are much more relaxed and don't have to worry about demons and beasts. After the leader's explanation last night, everyone clearly understood the power of the white wolf god. Old Hua, who was able to fight against demons, just glanced at the wolf god and his Tao heart was broken. Although it is not clear how powerful the wolf god is, it must be the most powerful existence they have ever seen. It's a great thing that such a powerful existence is willing to protect them. So the caravan people were quite respectful to Lu Heng and Xiao Ai, and even wanted to free a beast of burden to use as a mount for Lu Heng. But Lu Heng's body is a wolf, a wolf riding a rhinoceros Lu Heng directly refused. Anyway, he and Xiao Ai have a cultivation base, and they won't be tired because of walking. Although the caravan people didn't cultivate, they all learned martial arts. Their internal breathing flowed and they walked fast in the mountains, and their speed was not much slower than that of the rhinoceros. The only one in the team who didn't walk was Hua Feng. Although the peach blossom wine saved his life, now Hua Feng's internal breathing was disordered and his soul was damaged. He now could not even fight an ordinary villager, so he had to lie on the back of the white horse and follow the people. Under the gradually brightening sky, the businessmen drove the pack animals and walked quickly on the galloping road. At the back of the business team, Lu Heng followed Xiao Ai and Hua Feng, who was lying on the back of the barge horse, and didn't join the group of businessmen. Xiao Ai was as indifferent as ever, silently following Lu Heng without saying a word. Lu Heng walked and talked with Hua Feng all the way. From the mouth of Hua Feng, Lu Heng learned a lot of common sense belonging to the world and stories among ordinary cultivators. Although there are many cultivation sects in this world, in general, they can be divided into two categories. One is like the Yun sect. It cultivates in the world, integrates into the public, and seeks to be detached from the true self between heaven and earth. These sects are mortal sects. The other is the seclusion sect, which is far away from the mundane world, looking for the secluded mountains and rivers, and pursuing enlightenment in seclusion. The latter is very strict in the selection of disciples. The inheritance is basically that the master cultivates with his disciples, and the number is rare. Only those with the right talent are selected to enter, and there are often some strange rules in these sects. This can't help but make Lu Heng think of the legendary Gaguzi. However, the mortal sects's requirements for their disciples are much more relaxed. 
such as the Yun sect, it can even be said that there is no threshold. The Yun sect disciples travel around the world, and cultivate their minds, and they will also carry several Yun sect cultivation method books with them. If they meet someone with good talent or who is interested in the inheritance of the Yun sect, as long as the other person's nature is not bad, they can directly send the books to them. Only when they really meet a younger generation with excellent talent, will they take the person with them to cultivate. Huofeng was liked by his master when he was found begging, and then he followed his master for ten years. It was not until three years ago that Huofeng separated from his master and traveled alone because of his minor accomplishments and barely being able to take charge of his own affairs. Lu Heng couldn't help but be amazed after hearing what Huofeng said. The cultivators in this world are really interesting. The Yun sect's rule of offering cultivation method books as long as a person is willing to learn also makes Lu Heng curious about their sect secrets. Considering that the Yun sect will not be stingy with their sect's books, Lu Heng directly asked for them. Hua Feng naturally presented three sets of cultivation method books written by himself. Up to now, none of them has been sent out. But Lord Wolf God, these books after Hua Feng took out the books, he suddenly thought of something and hesitated to ask. Do you need me to recite it for you? After taking out the books, he realized that they were now walking in the mountains, and the wolf god could not hold the book at all. In the sun, the huge white wolf shook his head with a smile and said, No, just give me the books. The voice fell, and a white figure suddenly appeared on the side of the white wolf. With a gentle smile and ethereal temperament, he just stood there, and people can't help but know that this man is by no means ordinary. In the stunned eyes of Huofeng, Lu Heng's soul smiled and stretched out his hand, saying, Okay, give me the book. Huofeng came to his senses and hurriedly presented the book. After receiving the book, Lu Heng opened the page and began to read. In the morning light, he walked on the Gallop Road and read the Yun Sex Cultivation Method book. This is Lu Heng's first experience of reading the official cultivation method in the world. The contents of the book are full of novelty to him. Beside him, Xiao Ai walked expressionlessly. After the soul left the body, the huge white wolf didn't stop and followed Lu Heng, although its eyes were a little dull. Huofeng secretly looked at this scene, confused in his heart. Because he can see at a glance that the man in white is the soul of the wolf god. The wolf god has no intention to hide this, so even he can see it at a glance. But the wolf god's soul is actually human. This is not in line with common sense. It should be noted that all things in the world, regardless of their cultivation base, can be transformed into all kinds of forms, but their soul is always unchangeable. Born as a person, your soul will always be a person and cannot become a demon. Born as a demon, the soul will always look like a beast. Even if the demon body can be transformed into the human shape, the soul will always be in the shape of a beast. But the wolf god's soul is actually human. This is the master wrong. In this world, can the powerful people with a profound cultivation base even change their own soul? Huofeng looked at it secretly and saw that the man in white walked for a while. Maybe because it was inconvenient to read while walking, he jumped on the back of the white wolf and was carried away by it. In the morning sunshine, the man in white sat on the back of the white wolf and looked at the pages in his hands leisurely. If people who didn't know the truth see this scene, I am afraid they would think that the white wolf is a mount, and the man in white on the white wolf's back is the master. But Huofeng knew that this man in white is the wolf god. A soul riding his own body this. The corners of Huofeng's mouth twitched and he felt that this scene has really broadened his horizon. Chapter, 77 Lu Heng didn't know the surprise and speechlessness in Huofeng's heart. Now he is leisurely sitting on the back of the white wolf, looking at the book in his hand. Although he has reached the realm of opening the gate of heaven with his self-made heavenly thunder cultivation method. But Lu Heng knows nothing about the real orthodox cultivation method in this world. Now it's quite interesting to look at those novel contents in the book. Moreover, Lu Heng also has his own understanding of the way of cultivation. Therefore, although he has never seen the cultivation method of the Yun sect, he can understand it. All day long, he sat on the white wolf's back reading and never came down. It was not until dark that Lu Heng put down the book and his soul returned to the wolf body to rest. 
Although Lu Hang's soul today is solid and tough, it cannot be separated from the body for long periods of time. In fact, Lu Hang's soul couldn't have stayed outside all day if his soul hadn't been leaning against the demon body. Lu Hang's soul entered the body and entered the state of cultivation and meditation again. It is still the most urgent thing for Lu Hang to develop a technique of hiding his spirit qi. Although the Book of the Yun sect has no records of such secret arts, it belongs to the cultivation method of human cultivators. Lu Hang had some insights from it. In the early morning of the next day, just before dawn and the rising sun, the businessmen were ready to set out. Lu Hang, Xiao Ai and Hua Feng followed the caravan as they did yesterday, and didn't walk with the caravan. After going on the road, Lu Hang's soul appeared again. Sitting on the back of the white wolf, he turned the pages and occasionally asked Hua Feng some questions next to him. Hua Feng was on the back of the bow horse, lying weakly. Although the bow horse is extraordinary, Hua Feng still felt bumpy on its back. After lying on the back of the bow horse all day yesterday, Hua Feng, who was seriously injured and lost his cultivation base, felt that his lungs were about to explode. Although he had a rest all night, he still didn't recover. Today's Hua Feng is powerless, no better than ordinary people. As for the fact that the wolf god soul was able to stay outside all day, he was no longer surprised. Although theoretically speaking, the soul is extremely fragile. Even for those with high-level cultivation bases, their souls cannot leave their bodies for too long, let alone leaving a whole day. But Hua Feng has seen more outrageous things than this. It's only a day can it be more outrageous than the wolf god's human-shaped soul. Now, Hua Feng has determined that his master must have misunderstood something. His master said that the soul can't leave the body for too long and the soul can't be transformed even if these are common sense, they are common sense among ordinary cultivators, not powerful existences like the wolf god. Sai it seems that the master's real strength is far inferior to the wolf god. The master didn't even know such common sense. And the funniest thing is that I believed it foolishly. It's really. Hua Feng sighed and shook his head constantly, feeling that he was still too naive. The image of the great master in his heart collapsed. In this way, the caravan went along the road for three days. After three days of traveling by day and resting at night, Lu Heng finally finished reading the Yun Sex book and his soul returned to the demon body and no longer appeared. After reading the book, he finally understood why the Yun sect liked to recruit disciples everywhere. The Yun sect's cultivation method is indeed mysterious, but it is easy to learn but difficult to master. If you want to get started, as long as you can read and your talent is not so bad, you can enter the door of cultivation. But the more you cultivate later, the more difficult it will be. This difficulty is because the Yun sect's cultivation method is about fate. The more you cultivate, the easier it is to get stuck at a certain stage and be difficult to inch in. Only after you find an opportunity and have an epiphany can you make a breakthrough. This kind of cultivation method is so strict. People who don't have good luck have no hope of reaching a higher level. No wonder the people of the Yun sect want to travel around the world, so that they can meet their chances on the way and go further on the path of cultivation. Lu Heng appreciated the young man named Hua Feng more and more. The young man was originally successful in cultivation, and he was in high spirits and prideful. Suddenly, great changes took place and his cultivation base was lost. Even someone with a good mentality would complain. If the person's mind is a little extreme, the person may go astray and have resentment. Even if the person doesn't dare to provoke Lu Hang, the person will never have peace of mind. But after observing for three days, Lu Heng found that the young man named Hua Feng didn't have any resentment and melancholy. Even if he lost all his strength and was tossed to death by the bow horse every day, he was always easygoing, and occasionally had fun in bitterness, amusing himself with the businessmen. It was as if nothing had happened. And Lu Heng could see that Hua Feng was not forced to smile, was genuinely at peace with himself. With such a good state of mind, Coupled with the special cultivation method of the Yun sect, Lu Heng was a little looking forward to Hua Feng's future. After the Tao heart of an ordinary cultivator is broken, it is difficult to make progress again. But if it's Hua Feng, it is possible to do things that ordinary people cannot do. And if he can really succeed, he will certainly go further in the future. 
In that case, Lu Hang may help him a little. On the fourth day, not long after the caravan was on its way, Hua Feng was still bumping on the back of the barge horse and drowsy. Lu Hang smiled and took the initiative to speak. Brother Hua, do you have any plans when you arrive at Baishir City? Well well Hua Feng thought for a moment, shook his head and said, I wanted to go to my master, but I'm afraid it's difficult to find my master. And now I've lost all my strength, and I don't dare to walk through the wilderness alone. I want to go to Baishir City to join a caravan, and then go south to Yutian Valley. It is said that Wu Gu, one of the ten witches in the Spirit Mountain, is now staying in Yutian Valley. If I take the fat bird to the witch, maybe I can ask her to treat me. The ten witches of the Spirit Mountain have excellent medical skills, which may help me out of my current dilemma. Hua Feng's words surprised Lu Hang a little. Oh. The ten witches of the Spirit Mountain? Are their medical skill very good? Lu Hang asked. Hua Feng smiled and was used to the wolf god's ignorance of human mundane affairs. He explained, the ten witches of the Spirit Mountain are well known among cultivators. Although they are not well known among ordinary people, they are the leader of doctors. Most of the medical skills in the world come from them. It's just that these ten elders have a strange temperament. If I don't have such a rare beast as the fat bird, I'm determined not to disturb them. After Hua Feng explained, Lu Heng nodded and said. I see it happens that my trip is also south, and I'm on the same road as you. Why don't you go with me? In the surprised eyes of Hua Feng, the white wolf smiled and said, When we get to Baishir city, let's separate from everyone. You don't have to go to the city to find a caravan, I'll take you to Yutian Valley myself. Chapter, 78 Lu Heng took the initiative to invite him, which is a great thing for Hua Feng that he can't even dream of. He quickly thanked him, grateful in his heart. Feeling better, even the sky covered by dark clouds no longer feels gloomy. But although Hua Feng was in a good mood, the rest of the caravan couldn't laugh. The further they went, the darker the clouds in the sky became. In the afternoon, dark clouds had almost covered the whole sky, and no sunshine could be seen. In the mountains, the wind is howling, which is clearly a harbinger of the rainstorm in the future. Xian Sheng, the leader of the business, hesitated for a while, then finally came to the rear and found Lu Heng. Lord Wolf God, Xian Sheng's face was anxious, but he still saluted respectfully, dark clouds cover the sky. I'm afraid it's going to rain soon. I want to speed up and climb over the mountain as soon as possible, so. It's all right. Just go ahead, Lu Heng said. We'll follow. Thank you, Lord Wolf God. After being accepted, Xian Xing breathed a sigh of relief and hurried back to the front of the merchant team, telling everyone to speed up. The men who had been restless for a long time immediately began to beat the pack animals. On the rugged and narrow mountain path the caravan speed immediately increased. Behind the caravan, Lu Hang and Xiao Ai still kept a slow pace, but their speed didn't fall, and they always kept the same distance from the caravan. Hua Feng, lying on the back of the bow horse, doesn't have to worry. The bow horse is fierce and can travel thousands of miles a day. It's easy to keep up with these pack animals. It's just that Lu Hang and Xiao Ai are now on a steep uphill mountain path, which is extremely bumpy. After they increased their speed, Hua Feng was even more upset. But even so, Hua Feng still clung to the reins and bowed down, and didn't dare to let go at all. Because there is a cliff on one side, once you step off it, there will be no bones left. And looking at the situation of this mountain path, it is clear that it is a cliff path directly opened up on the hard cliff mountain from scratch. The roads in the wilderness before were spacious and flat, allowing ten horses to run side by side. However, this cliff path is extremely narrow. A single rhinoceros fills the road, so everyone in the caravan is walking in a line. And because the rainstorm is coming, the wind in the mountain is now howling, blowing on everyone's body, which greatly affects the traveling speed of the caravan. But on such a dangerous road, the caravan didn't slow down, but was constantly urging pack animals. Such a strange performance made Lu Heng a little curious. Brother Hua, is there anything in this mountain? Lu Heng asked. He thought that the caravan people wanted to leave this steep mountain path before the rainstorm, 
but now looking at the performance of the people, it was clear that they were afraid of something, so they wanted to leave quickly. This aroused Lu Hang's curiosity. While Hua Feng, who was lying on the back of the bow horse, although his face turned blue, he reluctantly braced himself and explained after hearing the wolf god ask. Lord Wolf God, it is said that there is a monster called Shi Tzu in the mountain. It is as strong as an ox, with black fur, ferocious and terrifying, likes eating humans, and often attacks traveling merchants, so traveling caravans have never dared to stay in the mountain. I see Lu Heng nodded to understand. A fierce beast that can eat humans for a long time on the galloping path, and whose reputation has been spread for so long, but still has not been killed. It must have magical powers unmatched by ordinary beasts. It's no wonder that everyone in the caravan is so nervous. Although they know Lu Heng must be great, what if an accident happens? Once something happens, it will cost them their lives. These businessmen dare not gamble at all. Lu Heng didn't feel offended or disgusted about this. In a different world, he would make the same choice if he were in the place of these businessmen. What's more, he doesn't even feel how great he is. Although he is confident that even if the fierce beast appears, he can kill it, this confidence is actually from the sword on Xiao Ai's back. As for Lu Hang's fighting power today, there are only seven heavenly thunders. Although he can kill common beasts easily, if he really encounters a strong enemy, he doesn't know if he can still win. Lu Hang never thought that he would be invincible even if he could order the heavenly thunder. In this world, crouching tigers, hidden dragons, and strong people emerge in large numbers. Being pretentious because you are a little skilled is no different from looking for death. However, Lu Hang is somewhat interested in the monster named Shi Tzu. Because the stronger the beast is, the harder it is to embark on the path of cultivation. There are many monsters in the wilderness with natural magical powers, and their destructive power is even stronger than many monsters that have not been transformed. But most of these monsters are still animals without wisdom. This Shi Tzu is so powerful that Lu Hang is a little curious. Is it a demon that has achieved something? Or a beast with powerful talent? Therefore, after hearing the rumors of Shi Tzu, Lu Hang began to observe the situation in the mountains, and wanted to see if there was really a fierce beast lurking near the road. It was just that the wind was blowing in the mountains, and dark clouds shrouded the sky. The scene in the distance was almost invisible. Lu Heng failed to find Shi Tzu as he wished, but instead found that the cliff path at his feet was somewhat unusual. This cliff path is cut on the cliff mountain, but the incision is flat, and it is not chiseled out by one blow. After careful observation, it looks like it was split by a sword. A sword splits a path on the mountain. Lu Heng estimated and confirmed that he could not do such an exaggerated thing. The power of thunder is so fierce that sentient beings can hardly resist it. However, in terms of physical destructive ability, it is actually very general, far less than this terrible sword that can break a mountain. Lu Heng still has a long way to go to achieve this level of destruction. On the mountain path, Lu Heng thought in his heart and observed the situation in the mountain, while the people of the caravan had climbed halfway up the mountain. Ahead, there is a pass with two mountains connected. Crossing that pass leads to the path down the mountain. Seeing the pass, everyone in the caravan breathed a sigh of relief. But they didn't dare to relax, and they still drove the pack animals and continued to climb towards the pass. The pass between the two mountains is often windy. Now that the rainstorm is coming, the mountain wind is even more violent to the extent that people can't even stand stably. However, the rhinoceros, as pack animals, were all fat and strong. They were not afraid of the fierce wind. They carried heavy goods and crossed the mountain pass under the urging of the merchants. After crossing the pass, the path down the mountain will be much easier to walk. Not only are the roads much more spacious, but there are no longer steep cliffs next to them. Even the wind on the mountain path is much smaller. After a long time of silence, a voice of conversation finally sounded in the ranks of businessmen. When climbing the mountain, everyone was nervous and didn't want to talk at all. Now relaxed, everyone felt a little bit like a survivor, but they didn't dare to relax. They still hurried the animals and wanted to go down the mountain as soon as possible. In the rear, Lu Heng followed at the end of the team. From time to time, 
He glanced back at the barren mountain behind him, but he never saw the alien figure named Shitsu. There was a little disappointment in his heart. But it's probably a good thing for businessmen not to see Shitsu. Lu Heng thought like this in his heart. Not long after walking, he suddenly heard a burst of sad baby crying in the mountains. Whoa! Whoa! Hearing the baby's cry, Lu Heng immediately looked into the windswept mountains. Because when the wind blew, the baby's cry was approaching rapidly, and it was rushing in their direction, very fast. Stop! The moment Lu Heng spoke, the caravan in the front suddenly stopped and everyone panicked a little. Lord Wolf God, what happened? Xian Sheng came over and asked nervously with fear. Lu Heng walked towards the caravan in front and said, Something from the mountain is coming this way, and its cry is like a baby. Let's stop for a moment. With that, Lu Heng looked at the little girl beside him, Xiao Ai. Yes. The little girl with silver hair and ears flew up directly with the dark blue heavenly thunder sword on her back, landed on the hillside on the side of the road, and looked coldly in the direction of the baby's cry. If the beast is really fierce and difficult to stop, the god slaying heavenly thunder in the heavenly thunder sword may be coming out of its sheath for the first time. Not long after Xiao Ai landed on the hillside, everyone in the caravan also heard the approaching baby crying, and their faces changed greatly. Many monsters in the wilderness make sounds like babies. Most of these monsters are cruel, fierce, and they like eating humans. If a person's mind is not strong, he is likely to be confused by the baby's crying and lured away. It happens that the Shih Tzu sound is said to be like a baby crying is it the Shih Tzu? The caravan crowd quickly gathered behind Lu Heng for fear of being attacked. In the mountains, the wind became more and more violent, and the baby's cry became closer and closer. It was only after dozens of breaths that it appeared in the mountains not far away. Coming! Lu Heng said solemnly, the dark golden animal pupil was staring in that direction, and the heavenly thunder surged in his body, ready to take action at any time. Under the dark sky, the trees trembled rapidly under the strong wind, countless leaves rustled, and the shrill cry of the baby was getting closer and closer. Seeing that the fierce beast running in the mountain has reached the edge of the road, being only a few feet away from everyone. Even the merchants on the road could clearly see the terrible scene of the rapid shaking of the trees, hear the heavy footsteps, and feel the violent breath of the fierce beast. But at the moment when everyone was terrified. Bang! With a dull sound, it seemed that something fell heavily in the mountains. At the same time, the shrill cry of the baby also completely disappeared in the mountains and forests. The trembling of the trees and bushes due to the beast's violent rush have calmed, and only the rustle of the wind blowing the leaves is still ringing. The terrifying beast that has been entrenched here for decades and killed countless merchants seems to have died in the mountains ahead and can't move forward anymore. The strange silence lasted for several seconds on the road, and the merchants all looked at the wolf god, filled with fear and respect. Did the wolf god kill the terrible Shih Tzu? This scene is exactly the same as when Huafeng looked at the wolf god and vomited blood. Chapter, 79 On the mountain path, the wind roared. Everyone in the caravan looked at Lu Heng in awe, thinking that Lu Heng had wiped out the terrible beast Shih Tzu. But Lu Heng knew in his heart that he had done nothing at all. He was sure that no one peeped at him with magic eyes this time. The Shih Tzu running in the mountains and forests fell down by itself. This time, it really has nothing to do with Lu Heng. Lu Heng looked at Xiao Ai aside. He was about to speak, but he saw that Xiao Ai also looked at him with admiration. Obviously, even the little girl thought that the beast that rushed over was scared to death by Lu Heng. Seeing this scene, somehow, Lu Heng suddenly felt a strong sense of powerlessness in his heart. He wants to tell everyone seriously, this time it really has nothing to do with me. But obviously, even if Lu Heng really said so, everyone present would not believe it. He was silent for a few seconds, and then said, Xiao Ai, let us go and have a look. After saying that, he walked directly into the forest. In the forest with rustling leaves, there was a faint smell of blood floating along the wind. Lu Heng understood that the smell of blood might be the reason why Shih Tzu suddenly fell. Probably before meeting everyone, 
the Shitsu had been seriously injured. This fierce beast ran all the way here, not to attack the people of the caravan, but panicked when running for its life. It just happened that its injury worsened and it died directly before it ran to Luheng. Because this scene is too coincidental, it looks like Shi Tzu rushed in front of Lu Heng and was scared to death by Lu Heng. Lu Heng didn't bother to explain this. Anyway, no one believed what he said. He went directly into the woods to check the cause of death of the strange beast Shi Tzu. This fierce beast had been entrenched here for decades, but suddenly died today. There must be an expert behind it. Lu Heng wants to see what kind of expert killed Shi Tzu. Maybe he can have a taste of Shi Tzu too. Since Shi Tzu looks like a cow, does it taste like beef? Lu Heng was curious. As Lu Heng walked into the woods, the smell of blood in the air became stronger, and Xiao Ai, who followed closely, also smelled it. The little girl's eyes became sharp, and she subconsciously went to the wolf god. Soon, they passed through the dense trees and saw the huge beast lying in the mountains. Shi Tzu's massive body is almost like a hill, roughly estimated to be two meters high. Such a huge body, even if the shape is really just a cow, it can give people a great sense of oppression. Moreover, this Shi Tzu has a ferocious face and red eyes, which is much more fierce and terrifying than ordinary cows. Just the blood-red eyes with resentment and anger are bigger than Xiao Ai's head. Although Lu Hang's wolf demon body is larger than that of ordinary wolves, it is nothing compared to this terrible beast. Lord Wolf God Xiao Ai suddenly gave a gentle cry, pointing to a terrible crack on the back of the Shi Tzu. On the back of this terrible beast, there is a huge wound with deep bones. Dark blood was constantly pouring out of the wound. With the strange black blood pouring out, a strange stench gradually appeared in the air. Lu Heng looked serious at it. As the dark blood gushed out, he felt a strong evil spirit. And between the mouth and nose of the Shi Tzu, the color of the blood is clearly blood red. But the blood gushing out of the wound on the back of the body was foul-smelling rotting black blood. Seeing this, Lu Heng knew that it was unlikely that an expert killed Shi Tzu, but instead some strange evil thing. Step back, Lu Heng said, glancing coldly at the woods in front of him, it's better to do less than more. Although Lu Heng's thunder is very powerful, the demons have always had a lot of tricks. If the other party hurt the people of the caravan, even Lu Heng can't protect them all. And the body of Shi Tzu became so disgusting that even the blood went bad, and Lu Heng had no appetite. He directly took Xiao Ai back, intending to stay away from the body of the Shi Tzu. But the two had not gone far, and a strange sound suddenly sounded from the huge wound on the back of the Shi Tzu. Gulu Gulu. Dark blood bubbles constantly gushed out of the wound, as if something inside wanted to climb out. A certain gloomy and terrifying smell swirled among the Shi Tzu's body. Lu Heng frowned and directly split out with a heavenly thunder. Go! A terrible bang exploded among the mountains. The blazing thunder, carrying the power of disaster and punishment, turned the wilderness and dense forest into a white canvas, and even startled all the peddlers on the road not far away. After the thunder dispersed, the massive body of Shi Tzu had turned into a mass of smoke, and even the bones turned into black powder. But on this huge corpse, a translucent shadow unexpectedly rose. It was a Shi Tzu that had shrunk many times, and now it was struggling and screaming desperately in the void. But on its back, wearing a dark chain, which pulled it and tried to drag it into the dark forest. And the location of the chain is the wound on the back of Shi Tzu. Seeing this scene, Xiao Ai widened her eyes in amazement. Lord Wolf God. She said incredulously, this this is the soul. Lu Heng nodded with gloomy eyes. It was obviously the soul of Shi Tzu that was locked by black chains and struggling desperately in midair. This was the first time he had seen a ghost soul. In this world, there is no netherworld. After death, the soul will dissipate between heaven and earth. But it is obvious that the soul of the Shi Tzu is not going to dissipate, but is caught by some terrible evil thing. The dark chain crashed, dragging the struggling soul of Shi Tzu into the dark forest. At the last moment, Lu Heng clearly saw that the translucent soul of Shi Tzu was gradually infected with strange darkness, emitting the eerie aura of evil things. 
Finally, in the gaze of Lu Heng and Xiao Ai, the soul of Shi Tzu was dragged into the depths of the forest by the black chain and completely disappeared from their vision. And Xiao Ai finally understood that the Shi Tzu was not killed by the wolf god but by an unknown demon. Lord Wolf God the little girl looked at Lu Heng. Are we going to catch up? Lu Heng shook his head and said, This has nothing to do with us. It's important to send Xi and Sheng and the others down the mountain first. If the demon doesn't come to us, we'll ignore it. With that, Lu Heng took Xiao Ai out of this gloomy and strange forest. Before leaving, he took a deep look at the direction of the disappearance of the black chain. He didn't tell Xiao Ai that the evil spirit emanating from the black chain seemed to come from the same source as the demon seed in the Shuashing village. It seems that he has a lot of karma with the Green Hell Cave. Chapter, 80 When Lu Heng came out of the woods with Xiao Ai, everyone in the caravan was a little excited. They all gathered together. Lord Wolf God, is that Shi Tzu dead? Xi Anxing asked with a smile, this monster has been entrenched in this mountain for decades. I didn't expect it to be scared to death today ha 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 it's also the fate of this evil beast. Although a sky thunder flashed through the forest just now, it was fleeting. In addition, there was already a strong wind, lightning, and thunder in the mountain. No one in the caravan is a practitioner, and there is no difference between the heavenly thunder and mundane wind and thunder. The moment the lightning shone on the mountains, the caravan people just thought it was thunder again, and they didn't care. Although Huafeng is a cultivator, his Tao heart is broken and his cultivation is lost at this time, and he is not aware of the existence of the power of the thunder. Everyone looked forward to Lu Heng, Xi Anxing said, I don't know how the meat of the Shi Tzu tastes Lord Wolf God, why don't I cut some pieces now and take them away, and eat the Shi Tzu meat soup tonight. Xi Sheng looked forward to Lu Heng and wanted to get Lu Heng's permission. Lu Heng shook his head silently and said, The meat of the Shi Tzu can't be eaten anymore, and I didn't kill it. The person who killed the Shi Tzu was a gloomy and strange demon, who secretly harmed the Shi Tzu with vicious tricks in the distance. In order to prevent that demon from coming, I'll send you down the mountain first. It's not suitable to stay here for a long time. Lu Heng's serious tone stunned the caravan people for a moment, but they understood that even if the wolf god was modest, he would not cheat them on this kind of thing, so they nodded hurriedly. Good. Let's go now. Xian Sheng and others hurried to drive the pack animals, and the merchant team moved again. In the barren mountains, the wind roared. In the sky, dark clouds covered the skylight, and white lightning flashed across the sky from time to time, bringing roaring and terrifying lightning. Lu Heng followed the caravan and walked with Hua Feng on the bow horse and asked. Brother Hua, have you ever heard of the name of the Green Hell Cave? Hua Feng on the horse's back was stunned and shook his head, I haven't heard that. The wolf god, you asked about the Green Hell Cave is it who killed the Shi Tzu? Lu Heng said, it's still uncertain whether it's a man or a devil who killed the Shi Tzu but since you haven't heard of it, the Green Hell Cave must hide deeply in the world. With that, Lu Heng couldn't help sighing. Before going down the mountain, Lu Heng thought that the Green Hell Cave was an evil cave in the Fire Pass country, gathering powerful demons. He killed its demon seed, and maybe he will fight it in the future. But now he asked Hua Feng and found that the situation was different from what he had guessed. To say that the most well-informed people in the world are undoubtedly the Yun sect. People of the Yun sect travel far and wide, walking in the mundane world, where they can contact the rumors and anecdotes of various cultivators. However, Hua Feng had traveled far and wide for many years and had never heard of the name of the Green Hell Cave The hidden depth of the Green Hell Cave is far beyond Lu Heng's imagination. However, the members of a deeply hidden evil cultivation organization were encountered by himself one after another Ah such fate, Lu Heng didn't know what to say. The fate between the two sides is so deep that they may have more than one fight in the future. Lu Heng was quite helpless. Fortunately, his power is the bane of these evil cultivators. Otherwise, knowing that he has offended such a huge evil organization, Lu Heng was afraid he would have trouble resting without looking over his shoulder. He doesn't know where the Green Hell Cave is. If there is a chance in the future, it's better to send them heavenly clouds as a thank you. Lu Heng thought in his heart and looked back from time to time, but he didn't see the evil thing coming. 
Under the increasingly dim light, the caravan finally got out of this barren mountain and returned to the plain again. In the night sky, a little rain has fallen. And the raindrop is still growing, and soon turned into a rainstorm, raging in the mountains and forests. All the businessmen were drenched with rain, and Huafon was even more miserable lying on the back of the bowhorse. Cold, tired and hungry, this once energetic young man was so weak that he seemed to be dying. Lu Heng had to stop the caravan and let everyone take shelter in the post house in front of him. Otherwise, the caravan people want to go further away, completely away from the nearby barren mountains, and then camp in the wilderness. But since Lu Heng stopped them and they also trusted the wolf god, they stopped. In the empty post houses, the layout of the houses is not much different from the several post houses passed by before. It is still a lonely house on the roadside to shelter from the rain, and there is a corral behind the house. After the caravan stopped, they quickly divided their work and moved the goods on the beasts back into the house, and then drove five rhinos into the corral. Then a campfire was lit in the post house, and the caravan people went to the back, changed their wet clothes, and then came in with their wet clothes to dry. In the corner of the room, Lu Heng and Xiao Ai set up their own campfire, far away from the caravan. The picture of this scene seems to return to the night when everyone first met. But now Hua Fong is no longer elated at first sight, but lies weak by the campfire, pale. Seeing his appearance, Lu Heng couldn't help sighing and asked Xiao Ai to send another cup of peach blossom wine, which made Hua Feng's face much better. By the campfire, everyone in the caravan saw that Hua Fong was lucky to get the wine from the wolf god. Although there was only a small cup, they were envious. In the air, the faint fragrance of wine made everyone subconsciously swallow their saliva. Seeing this scene, Lu Heng couldn't help laughing and said, Xiao Ai, give this pot of wine to them. To the surprise of everyone, Lu Heng smiled and said, I'll buy you a drink tonight. In the post house, everyone was stunned, and then an excited cheer broke out. Although there is not much wine in this wine pot, after dividing it, one person will probably have only a small cup. But such a small cup is worth all the good wine they have drunk in their life. The men of the caravan took the wine pot handed over by Xiao Ai with great gratitude. Lu Heng only brought two pots of wine down the mountain this time, but he was not a miser. Now, seeing that everyone liked it, he sent out a pot directly. Seeing the intoxicated and satisfied expression of the men in the caravan after drinking peach blossom wine, he couldn't help but feel much better. Sometimes sharing with others is actually a pleasant thing. Lu Heng accepted the thanks with a smile. Looking at the caravan near the fire not far away, the men talked happily and excitedly about the changes after drinking peach blossom wine, he shook his head and walked out of the gate of the post house with a smile. In the night sky outside, lightning and thunder, heavy rain and cold wind went crazy tearing everything in the mountain. But in this small post house, the light of the campfire was dim and warm, and the men laughed happily and freely. Listening to the happy laughter, the white wolf outside the post house couldn't help laughing, with gentle eyes. The joy in this earthly world, even if it is so simple, can't help but make people happy.